School caught fire right before the college entrance examination. I saved my non-blood-related younger brother, which led to extensive burns all over my body. Later, my parents held the court verdict and said they would take care of me for the rest of my life. But two years later, when my treatment was over and everything was back on track, my parents set a fire themselves, burning me alive in my sleep. They said if I hadn't saved my brother earlier, he wouldn't have lost his legs, so they used my life to make amends. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself back on the day I was found. In my previous life, I was the young master of the Jiang family in Haizhou, missing for 16 years, brought back by the Jiang family on a rainy night. But as a prestigious family, the Jiang family did not clarify my identity right away. At first, I didn't care about these things. After being an orphan for 16 years, I cherished this hard-earned affection to the utmost. But in the past year, no matter how hard I tried to please them, I never received any response. Even my biological parents, Zhang Fon and Lu Qian, treated me as if I were invisible. Even on my birthday, because of a small incident caused by the fake young master Zhang Huayan, they left me alone at home, completely forgetting that it was my first birthday back home. But I didn't really care about these things. After all these years, birthdays for me have long been an existence of little importance. Until one day, when the Zhang family's villa caught fire, my three sisters and parents all rushed to save Jiang Huayan, who hadn't woken up. I completely forgot that I was locked in the nanny's room by them as a punishment. The intense pain of every inch of my skin being burned, I will never forget in my life. Maybe even God couldn't bear to watch, only to give me a chance to start over. But this time, I am really tired. I don't want this long-awaited family affection anymore. You have a bad temper, don't you? Open the door for me quickly. If I had known you were such an ill-mannered child, I wouldn't have brought you back to the Jiang family. Just as second sister Jiang Zi hadn't finished speaking, I opened some old, dilapidated doors. Jiang Zi was about to speak, but then saw me raise a broken puppet with one arm in my hand and smash it heavily on the ground. In my previous life, the reason I was so angry, even to the extent of having a big argument with Jiang Huayan, was because this puppet was given to me by Jiang Zi when I first entered the Jiang family. I've always treasured this puppet, even placing her at the head of my own small bed. And Jiang Huayan clearly knew all this, yet he insisted on snatching it from me, even accidentally breaking one arm of the puppet. At that moment, the corner of Jiang Huayan's eye seemed to warn me not to covet things I shouldn't have. But now, I don't care. I never want to experience that feeling of being burned and consumed by flames again. At this time, several people downstairs also heard the commotion and went upstairs to check. When Father Jiang saw the broken puppet on the floor, his brows couldn't help but furrow slightly. As the fake young master, Jiang Huayan's eyes instantly turned red. I'm sorry, brother. It's my fault. You can hit me or scold me, but don't get angry with sister. Sister called you upstairs for dinner because she cares about you. Hearing these words, if it were before, I would have been furious, but now I find it so funny. Come on, you, a grown man, crying all the time. Don't you feel disgusted? Jiang Huayan was also a bit annoyed. He didn't expect me to say this and calling me downstairs for dinner. Have you ever waited for me once? Whenever it's time for dinner, no one ever notifies me. Whether I'm late or early, I always get scolded by my father, Zhang Feng. Being late means I'm clueless, and being early at the table means I'm greedy. It's really double standards to the extreme. I see you becoming more and more unruly. Your little brother is also looking out for you. At this point, the mother, Lu Qian, stepped forward, looking at her son Zhang Huayan with some heartache. I'm his own flesh and blood, but his attitude towards me and Zhang Huayan is like night and day. I'm already used to this blatant favoritism, just helplessly shrugged it off. Say whatever you want. With that, he directly closed the door. At this point, Zhang Feng couldn't hold back any longer. With an angry tone, he said, Are you rebelling? Then don't eat today. With that, he brought a few people down, leaving only Zhang Zi, the second sister, standing still. Zhang Huayan wanted to pull Zhang Zi down with him, but was taken away by John's mother, Lu Qian. John Zi was staring blankly at the wooden fragments on the ground. It was then that he remembered. These were the ones he had personally given to me. I used to consider them the most precious things. Why did he smash them today? He just felt that I seemed different, but couldn't point out what was different. I didn't care about what was happening outside. I just lay down on the bed and fell asleep. The next morning, after a simple wash, I left. Anyway, no one would care about my existence. It's better to leave early and not bother this family. I believe the family would be happier without my presence. But unexpectedly, I bumped into Jiang Huang, the elder sister, who was having coffee in the hall. Jiang Huang was dressed in professional attire, which perfectly accentuated her well-proportioned figure. 
She looked every bit like a business female powerhouse, and indeed she was. She had just graduated from college and started working at the Jiang family company. Under her leadership, the Jiang company was thriving. She took on several major international orders, which made the Jiang company subtly poised to dominate the gold sea market. This also made Jiang Huang a highly sought-after figure in the entire gold sea. I didn't want to deal with this elder sister, but as soon as I pushed open the door, a cold female voice came from behind. Where are you going? The cold tone carried a hint of authority. It was framed as a question, but felt more like an interrogation. As soon as the topic of going to school was raised, I walked out of the Jiang family villa without giving Jiang Huang any chance to react. Jiang Huang frowned. She didn't understand what was going on with her younger brother. Previously, he would always come up to her and greet her sweetly, but today he completely ignored her. As a member of the Jiang family, we all have a dedicated driver for transportation, but I don't have one. I have always walked or taken public transportation to school. I have never asked for these things before. I don't want this family to think I am after their money. But in the end, it still hasn't changed their views. Walking on the road, I feel the long-lost pride, which makes me realize that I am truly alive. It turns out that if you don't care, you won't get hurt. The affection I desperately longed for may just be a joke in their eyes. From now on, I won't long for these anymore. Arriving at school, I sit in my usual spot, open my own textbook. This year, I will face the college entrance examination. In the past, I put all my thoughts into those so-called family members, wasting my great talent, which caused my once top-notch grades to plummet. This time, I will study hard, to make up for what I missed before as soon as possible. At this moment, Zhang Feng of the Zhang family stared silently at the dining table, like a volcano about to erupt. Where is Zhang Haoyu? Hasn't he gotten up yet? What time is it? Are we supposed to wait for him alone? Zhang Huayan also whispered on the side, Zhang Haoyu may still be mad at Zhang Zi. I'll go apologize to Zhang Haoyu. As Zhang Huayan was about to get up, he was pulled down by Zhang Zi. What right does he have to be angry? It's just a spilled ink, I can buy him another one. When Zhang Zi was about to say something else, the eldest sister, Zhang Huang, who had been silent, spoke up, he's already left. As soon as these words were spoken, the table fell silent. After a while, Father Jiang spoke, where did he go so early? Butler Lu, come here. At this moment, Butler Lu, who was standing nearby, quickly appeared in front of Zhang Feng and asked, what's the matter, sir? Who is responsible for picking up Zhang Haoyu? Sir, Zhang Haoyu has always walked by himself, young master. Zhang Feng slammed the table. Who allowed him to walk by himself? Does he think that our Zhang family can't even afford a driver? Sir, it was you who said that the young master had just returned and shouldn't be too high profile, so I didn't arrange for him, Butler Lu said in a low voice. As soon as these words were spoken, Zhang Feng also fell silent. He thought, I had just returned from outside, and I must still have some bad habits. Let's not make a big deal out of it for now, to avoid doing anything that would embarrass Zhang Jia. So, I didn't arrange for someone to pick me up temporarily. I didn't expect a year to pass so quickly. Zhang Feng rubbed his tense forehead and said, Arrange for someone to pick up Zhang Haoyu. He doesn't even know what he looks like walking alone every day. Clearly, it's his own fault, yet he still wants to blame me for it. All right, sir, Butler Lu said and turned to look for a suitable person. Meanwhile, Zhang's mother, Lu Qian, also looked at Zhang Feng with a face full of blame, as if blaming him for not noticing earlier. He hadn't realized that for this past year, I had been walking to school alone. But that doesn't mean Lu Qian is very kind to me. She just feels ashamed of being such a negligent mother. As expected, after school that evening, a luxury car stopped in front of me. Young master, please get in, said a young man in a suit, quickly getting out of the car to open the door for me. And sitting in the back seat was none other than Jiang Zi. I was a bit stunned, standing there in a daze. Seeing that I was unmoved, Jiang Zi frowned slightly and directly grabbed my hand to pull me in. The driver, Xiao Zhang, also felt a bit awkward. After coughing twice, he started the car after reminding us in the back seat to fasten our seatbelts. Why do I have to wait for you to apologize? Zhang Zi looked at me displeased. But I completely ignored him. If this had been in the past, I would have been very excited for Zhang Zi to come pick me up. But now, I didn't care at all. Seeing that I was unmoved, Zhang Zi became even more annoyed. He grabbed my wrist, and only then did he realize how delicate it was. My wrist was incredibly delicate. It was only now that he truly saw how fragile I was. Before sales, I was an orphan. Being an orphan meant having irregular meals. Surviving was already extremely difficult. After coming to the Jiang family, I often missed mealtimes due to everyone's disregard. Sometimes, when I did manage to eat, I would be scolded for various reasons halfway through, and naturally, I couldn't eat anymore. 
As an esteemed family, the Jungs had strict rules. Once mealtime passed, no one was allowed to eat anything, not even typical snacks. After being scolded once, I never touched them again. If it weren't for the maid living next door who secretly leaves me some food, I would be even thinner than I am now. Have you always been this thin? I pulled my hand back and said lightly, I want to thank the Jung family for giving me a place to stay. What do you mean, the Jung family? Jiangzi, who was feeling a little guilty just now, was instantly filled with anger. Aren't you part of the Jung family? If you hadn't intentionally pushed Jung Huayan down and associated with disreputable people outside, everyone wouldn't dislike you so much. I ignored Jiangzi and turned to look out the window. Back at the Jung family villa, looking at the food on the table, I felt extremely hungry. I hadn't eaten anything since waking up until now, for a whole day and night. So you know how to come back. Zhang Feng slammed the table and then glared fiercely at me. If it were before, I would definitely have lowered my head, trembling, waiting for Zhang Feng's scolding, and then slinked back to my maid's room to reflect. But this time, I just sat down and pulled out an agreement, throwing it in front of Zhang Feng. After Zhang Feng read the contents clearly, he stood up and kicked me to the ground. Are you trying to rebel? Looking at the aggressive Zhang Feng in front of me, I lay on the ground for a long time before recovering. There was even a trace of blood at the corner of my mouth. At this moment, Zhang's mother, Lu Qian, and second sister, Zhang Zi, were also stunned by this sudden turn of events. Only Zhang Huayan sat on the chair, secretly pleased in his heart. When Lu Qian realized what was happening, she hurriedly went up to hug Zhang Feng and asked, What are you doing? By this time, I had already passed out, realizing in the end, I even felt a hint of life slipping away. Perhaps I would just die like this. Zhang Feng also realized that he had been too heavy-handed, and his expression was not as dignified as usual. His eyes were filled with uncontrollable panic. Why hasn't anyone called an ambulance yet? At this moment, the woman who had been watching the whole thing took out her phone in a hurry and dialed 120. When the ambulance arrived, over a dozen people quickly lifted me onto it. Lu Qian sat by my side, praying that I would be okay. Zhang Feng wanted to get on the ambulance, but the doctor stopped him. Several people had to drive to the hospital themselves. Zhang Huayan also wanted to go, but Zhang Feng directly refused. You stay at home. After saying this, he left without even looking back, leaving Zhang Huayan standing there alone. Seeing everyone in a panic for my sake, Zhang Huayan's eyes were filled with resentment. At that moment in the hospital, I was fitted with an oxygen mask and pushed into the emergency room. The people at the door were all stopped by the doctor outside. Lu Qian was so anxious that she desperately slapped Zhang Feng's body. Why did you use such force on the child? I just lost my temper for a moment, mainly because of this. Saying this, Zhang Feng handed the agreement I had given him to everyone. The agreement conspicuously stated the termination of the parent-child relationship. In an instant, everyone's eyes widened in disbelief as they looked at the agreement in front of them. It wasn't until the doors of the operating room opened that everyone came to their senses. Which one of you is the patient's family? Asked the doctor in a white coat, holding a list in his hand. I am his mother. Is Xiaoyu okay? Lu Qian stepped forward and grabbed the doctor's shoulder, her words filled with concern. The doctor looked somewhat puzzled at the people in front of him. They were all dressed well and seemed to be well off, so why was the patient inside so emaciated? He's fine now. It's just long-term malnutrition that has led to the patient's lack of energy and blood. After going home, make sure to rest and supplement more nutrition, and he'll be fine. Hearing the doctor say that you're okay, Lu Chen breathed a sigh of relief. Doctor, can we go in now? You can but don't stimulate the patient. Lu Qian quickly pushed open the door to the ward and came to my bedside. Zhang Feng wanted to go in, but he was directly stopped by Zhang Huang. Dad, you wait outside for now. After saying that, Zhang Huang left Zhang Feng outside alone. Zhang Feng knew he was in the wrong and didn't say anything. He just wanted to teach me a lesson, but I never expected my body to be so weak. And I was fine. I never thought I would have to sever ties with them. If it weren't for the Zhang family, I would still be an orphan. At this time, Zhang Feng still hadn't realized his mistake. If it weren't for them carelessly letting me drift away back then, how could I have suffered so much outside, even lacking the warmth that a normal family should have provided? Lu Qian looked at the pale and thin figure lying on the sickbed, tears welled up in her eyes uncontrollably. She just wanted to touch my cheek, but I dodged her hand directly. Lu Qian's hand awkwardly hovered in the air and then withdrew helplessly. Xiao Yu is your mother. I'm sorry. Can you go home with mom? Hearing this, I propped myself up and sat up. Lu Qian hurriedly supported me, afraid that I would be hurt again. I can go back if you want. I'll send Jiang Huayan away and then return. 
Isn't it too much for him to dominate my life for 17 years? I used to feel that it didn't matter if there was one more person or one less. I have been lacking affection since I was a child. Even without a blood relationship, I was willing to be with Zhang Huayan. This fake young master who has dominated my identity for more than 10 years, let's get along well. But later I found out that Zhang Huayan had no intention of getting along with me. What he wanted was to drive me away and completely take over my identity. Don't go too far. Zhang Zi was the first to stand up, looking at me with anger in his eyes. Yes, Xiao Yu, Xian is already pitiful without any family. If you let him leave now, how will he live? Lu Qian's hand also trembled uncontrollably. He didn't expect me to make such a request. How will he live? He's almost an adult. Can't he live on his own? Then how have I survived for more than 10 years from birth until now? I, an orphan, can survive. Zhang Huayan, an almost adult man, can't survive? It's just an excuse. Don't push your luck. This is the elder sister who has always remained silent, Zhang Huang spoke up. He does feel somewhat guilty towards me as his younger brother, but what he cares about more than me is Zhang Huayan, whom he has lived with for over a decade. Under different circumstances, he might have agreed, but not to this. I yawned as I looked at the three people in front of me. I had long anticipated this outcome. Since you all insist on this, what can I do? Upon hearing my compromise, Lu Qian's heart finally relaxed a bit. Deep down, she still didn't want Zhang Huayan, whom she had raised for over a decade, to leave the Zhang family. After all, the love over these years was genuine. But she never realized that letting two children who had switched identities live together was always a wrong decision. Playing favorites was bound to lead to tragedy. Let's go home then. Before Lu Qian could finish speaking, I interrupted, then let's cut ties. What did you say? Lu Qian shuddered. Although she had seen the determination to sever the parent-child relationship from outside the door, she didn't expect me to say it directly. Are you threatening me? Zhang Huang furrowed his brow. He felt that his younger brother had changed. I would never have said such things before, but the old me would never have imagined that they would leave one person behind in the fire, burning him alive. Since you are unwilling to send Zhang Huayan away, then let's cut ties. I said each word, fearing they might not have heard clearly. At this moment, Zhang Feng, who had been standing outside the door, couldn't bear it any longer and pushed the door open. From now on, you are no longer a member of the Zhang family. With that, Zhang Feng directly signed his name on the agreement and then threw it in front of me. He believed that I was just pretending to be silent and dared not really sever ties with them. After all, becoming a member of the Zhang family is what many people dream of. It won't be long before. I will cry and apologize to him. In fact, even Lu Qian and Zhang Huang feel the same way. They also think that you are just speaking in anger. Then, thank you, Mr. Jiang. Without any hesitation, I picked up the pen used by the doctor and quickly signed my name. This scene left everyone stunned in place. They never expected that I would actually sign my name. Even Zhang Huang, the eldest sister who was a business tycoon, had an unbelieving expression on her face. It was only now that she understood. I really don't care about you, this unfilial son. Zhang Feng angrily glared at me. He never expected that I would actually dare to sign. Well, I want to see how you will survive without the support of the Zhang family. With that, Zhang Feng turned and left. Lu Qian hurried forward, trying to pull Zhang Feng back. Although he never expected that I would actually want to sever ties with them, after all, I am his biological son. Zhang Zi was even more stunned, until Zhang Huang pulled on his sleeve, and only then did he react. Wait, I called out to the people who were about to leave. And Zhang Huang coldly snorted, realizing that I was just bluffing. As soon as they wanted to leave, I couldn't sit still. This time, he won't forgive me so easily. Just because I want to drive Zhang Huayan away, he can see my malice. Lu Qian also breathed a sigh of relief. As long as I'm willing to admit my mistake, she won't pursue anything. After all, we're family. Until now, Lu Qian still thinks that I'm behind all of this. I haven't spent a penny of the money you gave me. A total of 20,000, all intact in the card you gave me. And in this past year, I haven't had many meals at home. Is 50 yuan a day excessive? You only paid the tuition fee once. The previous tuition fees were all covered by scholarships and financial aid. Is it fair to give you 4,000 yuan? I have always been at the top of the class. Scholarships and financial aid naturally fell on me. Originally, no one knew about my return to the Jiang family. I could have continued to receive financial aid, but I refused. These should be left for those who need them more. A person should have their own integrity. Not like Jiang Huayan, a parasite who clearly feeds off me but still wants to drive me away. A total of 22,000. Let's call it even. 
Saying this, I quickly tore a piece of paper from the medical record and wrote an IOU. I'll pay you back once I can work in college. At this point, Zhang Feng's expression had completely changed. He never dreamed that I would actually draw a clear line with him. Even Lu Qian's face turned pale. He didn't expect that the money he spent on me in the past year didn't even reach 30,000. You should know that Zhang Huayan's weekly pocket money is more than 30,000. Watching them leave without taking an IOU, I had no choice but to put it away. When they returned to the villa, Zhang Feng was so angry that he smashed an expensive vase. How dare this kid? Have we done anything to offend him? Meanwhile, Zhang Huayan, who was eavesdropping upstairs, was secretly delighted. The housekeeper went to that kid's room and packed up his things, not believing that he could survive after leaving the Zhang family. But he seemed to forget that I have been an orphan since I was young. I have survived all these years without relying on the Zhang family. Although the housekeeper felt some reluctance, he could only sigh inwardly. Then he prepared to do as instructed. All right, I'll go with you. After saying this, Zhang Zong followed the housekeeper. Lu Chen didn't know what to say, so he followed them as well. When they arrived at the door of my room, the maid in the next room, upon hearing the commotion, thought it was me returning and prepared to give me the small bread in her hand. She knew that I was always unwelcome at home, often missing mealtimes or being scolded so much that I couldn't eat. Therefore, she often took out some snacks from her grandson's stash and gave them to me. Every time I bow and thank him, he sometimes thinks, if only this obedient child were my grandson. But for some reason, the master and madam seem to dislike this child. He also doesn't quite understand. When he pushed the door open and saw that it was Zhang Feng and Lu Qianjie, he thought they had finally noticed my existence. For a moment, there was some joy. What are you holding? Zhang Feng's voice was full of questioning. The nanny also hesitated and took out the small bread in her hand. The young master often doesn't eat enough. Are you the only one who doesn't know that the Zhang family doesn't allow eating this junk food? Or do you think he's not eating enough? Do you think the Zhang family is mistreating him? Zhang Feng looked at the nanny with an icy gaze. He did not allow his authority to be challenged. No, sir, just the young master. The nanny wanted to explain, but was directly interrupted by Zhang Feng. That's enough. If there's a next time, you won't need to do it. The nanny could only reluctantly take back the small bread in her hand. When Zhang Feng pushed open the door, he was dumbfounded. A simple small bed, a desk, and a small wardrobe. Inside, there were only a few pitiful pieces of clothing, and nothing else. Lu Qianjie was also shocked and speechless. She just covered her mouth, and tears kept flowing. But as a mother, not visiting her own son's room for nearly a year. Isn't that a huge joke? John Huang stared blankly at the small items on the table. If he remembered correctly, these were all gifts from the sisters. The small items include the potted plant he gave. There's the portrait from Sanmei and the thriving potted plant. It's clear that I took good care of them. Suddenly, Zhang Huang seemed to remember something and turned his gaze to the dazed Zhang Zi. The puppet you gave me before, Ermii. Yes, that was my gift to him. Zhang Zi remembered the way he scolded me at the time and suddenly felt uncomfortable. It turned out that these things were so important to me. Do you still want to tidy up, master? Lu, the housekeeper, asked at the right time, feeling sorry for me at the same time. Zhang Zongwen didn't lie, but just frowned. He originally just wanted to warn me that even as a member of the Jiang family, I couldn't live extravagantly. But I didn't expect to live like this for the past year. What are you tidying up, Zhang Feng? I'm telling you, if you don't find Xiaoyu, I won't let you off. Lu Qian couldn't help but speak out, directly stopping Zhang Feng. But what's the use of all this? Moreover, the agreement has already been signed. When Lu Qian rushed to the hospital again, she found that I had already disappeared. And they searched for several days before finding me at school. At that time, I was sitting in the classroom, desperately studying. My foundation was very good before, but I was delayed by that family. Suddenly, the classroom door opened, and the principal walked up to me, saying, Come out for a moment. I quickly put down the book in my hand and asked, What's wrong, principal? These people claim to be your mother and sister. Do you know them? The principal also knows that you have been an orphan since childhood, so he brought two security guards to follow behind, afraid that these people might be human traffickers. Everyone in the class also looked curiously at the door. Who are these people? They are all so beautiful. Whether it's Zhang Huang, the business female tycoon, or Lu Qian, the noblewoman, they are both extremely rare and refined individuals. Even Zhang Yuchu, the third sister behind them, couldn't hide her temperament even with sunglasses on. Xiao Yu, where have you been these days? Lu Qian grabbed my hand, and tears flowed directly down her face. But I immediately pulled my hand back. I don't know you. Please leave. After speaking, I went back to the classroom directly. 
Seeing the situation, the principal directly stopped Lu Qian, who wanted to rush into the classroom. Since you don't know each other, please don't cause trouble. After speaking, he was about to drive them away with the security guards. After all, they are strangers. I am not allowed to say that I am from the Zhang family, so until now, besides the Zhang family, no one else knows that I am the little master of the Zhang family who went missing 16 years ago. I am his mother. Let go of me. Lu Qian wanted to say more, but seeing the security guards in front of her, she could only leave slowly. It wasn't until the group was taken outside the school that the principal left with relief, and he instructed the security guards at the door not to let these people in. Zhang Yuchu, who had been silent, took off the sunglasses from her face. If there's someone around him, they would definitely recognize him. He's the recently popular top singer, Zhang Yuchu. Zhang Yuchu's own conditions are excellent, plus with the support of the Zhang family behind him, everything is going smoothly for him. This Zhang Haoyu is really overstepping. He actually dares to say he doesn't know me. Zhang Yuchu angrily looks at the school gate. But it seems he forgot that it's the Zhang family that doesn't allow me to tell others that I'm part of the family. Now he's blaming me for it. Alright, let's go back for now. We'll come back tomorrow. You still want to come? In my opinion, he'll naturally realize his mistake after some time. Lu Qian wanted to say something, but was directly pulled away by Zhang Yuchu. Zhang Huang also glanced in the direction of my classroom. Although he does feel guilty towards me as his younger brother, but what if this is really my way of luring the enemy out? What should I do? Let's go quickly. Big sister, did you forget today is Xia An's birthday? Even if Zhang Huayan has no blood relation to the Zhang family, but Zhang Huayan saved his life. Back then, due to his greed, he accidentally fell into the water. If it weren't for Zhang Huayan, he definitely wouldn't have survived until now. Plus, after more than 10 years of interaction, he doesn't think that just blood relation can break his bond with Zhang Huayan. Actually, I don't quite understand why these people still come here. Isn't it better without my Zhang family? Zhang Feng wouldn't keep hugging Lu Qian for no reason. Nor would he keep rejecting those several sisters. They wouldn't find me disagreeable. Just as I was contemplating, suddenly everything went black before my eyes, followed by a ringing in my ears, and then I collapsed straight onto my desk. In the end, I could only hear my classmates gasps. When I opened my eyes again, I only felt a hint of lingering light shining on my cheeks. I was about to get up, but was stopped by a pure white hand as if made of jade. Don't get up yet. You're being stopped by a female doctor in a white coat. Malnutrition and low blood sugar. Once the four drip is finished, you can go home and rest for a while. Meanwhile, inside the Platinum Hotel, Zhang Feng stood on the stage with a joyful expression, thanking everyone for attending his son's coming-of-age ceremony. The formal dinner is about to begin. As Jiang Feng's words fell, a dozen or so prominent young men and women from the Jiang family gathered around Jiang Huayan, presenting him with their gifts. Jiang Huayan also expressed his gratitude repeatedly, unable to contain his joy on his face. At this moment, Jiang Zi, who was sitting on the central sofa at the banquet, seemed somewhat absent-minded. What's wrong, little sister? Jiang Huang was still in his standard professional attire. He wasn't used to those elaborate gifts and always felt they were restraining him. It's nothing, just thinking about Xiaoyu. As soon as these words were spoken, Zhang Huang fell silent as well. Elder sister, second sister, my gift. At this moment, Zhang Huayan walked over, sat down next to the two of them, and playfully asked for their gifts. Eyes filled with anticipation. Zhang Huang directly took out a delicate little box from behind, and you could tell from its appearance that it was extraordinary. Zhang Huayan opened it and found that it was actually a Patek Philippe. Do you like it? Zhang Huang indulgently patted Zhang Huayan's head. As a female business tycoon, she saved her tender sigh for these younger brothers and sisters. Thank you, big sister. At this moment, the group of rich second generations all looked at Zhang Huayan enviously. This watch was worth at least two million. Although they were rich, their families were far from being like the Zhang family. At this time, Zhang Zi was still absent-minded, until Zhang Huayan's voice woke her up, she reacted. Second sister, what about my gift? You didn't forget, did you? How could I? Zhang Zi also handed a car key to Zhang Huayan. Looking at the Rolls Royce in front of him and the car key, Zhang Huayan's face lit up. He had long wanted to have a car of his own. What Zhang Huayan didn't know was that behind Zhang Zi, there was another small box. Inside the box was the puppet I had broken before. I'm going out for a while. Before Zhang Huayan could thank her, Zhang Zi quickly left, still holding an unknown box in her hand. When I returned to the orphanage, I found that a few lights were still on. I walked into the courtyard but didn't find anyone. I was about to go back to my room when I heard a bang. The lights in the hall suddenly lit up, 
followed by fireworks scattering all over, slowly falling on my shoulders. Brother how you, happy birthday. At this moment, a 15 or 16 year old girl stood up, walked slowly towards me, and handed me her face. Looking at the full jar of origami cranes in front of me, I suddenly felt angry. I understood that this was the girl squeezing out a little time from her studies to fold them for me. Don't overthink it. I bought all these, I didn't fold them myself. Naturally, I wouldn't expose the girl's lie, instead, I patted her little head. Feeling the touch on her head, the girl's cheeks became even rosier. If her classmates saw this, the aloof goddess who always ignored everyone would be shattered. The top student at home showing such a cute expression would definitely break hearts. Seeing the girl about to bristle like a kitten, I timely withdrew my hand. I remember this little girl used to love me patting her head a long time ago. It seems she has grown up. Outside the orphanage at this time, a figure in a gorgeous dress kept pacing back and forth, lifting her dress, and stepping over the dilapidated threshold of the orphanage. As the footsteps sounded, everyone's gaze gradually fell on the figure at the door. After seeing the person clearly, my brows involuntarily furrowed. I'll be right back. Soon after, I took Jiang Zi to the outside of the orphanage. Miss Jiang, if you don't have anything to do, you should go back. I really don't want to talk to this stranger. If I wasn't afraid that they would use the Jiang family's influence to target the orphanage, I would have cursed them out long ago. I'm your second sister. When she heard me call her Miss Jiang, Jiang Zi's face turned red with anger. That's not the case anymore. Do you want me to show you the agreement? After saying this, I was about to turn back, but Jiang Zi held me tightly. Come back with me. As long as you apologize, they won't say anything. Upon hearing this, a sense of desolation arose in my heart. Then, Miss Jiang, please tell me, why should I apologize? Where did I go wrong? Jiang Zi hesitated for a long time, but seemed unable to say a word, as if a fishbone was stuck in her throat. Because she knows that I didn't do anything wrong. She just still thinks that, like before, I will apologize and admit fault regardless of whether it's my mistake or not. After all, I'm just a wild child from the outside, I don't understand the rules. Perhaps in Jiang Zi's eyes, that agreement is just about me threatening them to drive Jiang Huayan away. As long as you apologize to father properly, he will definitely take you back. Didn't I say it? I'll go back once Jiang Huayan is sent away. Don't go too far. Why do you have to drive Xiaoan away? Jiang Zi's voice also became much louder. On one side, there's a foster brother with over a decade of affection, and on the other side, there's a blood-related younger brother. How can he choose? I was indeed too much. As soon as these words were spoken, Jiang Zi's eyes lit up, thinking that I had agreed to go home and apologize to everyone. He believed that as long as I was willing to apologize, even father would not disagree, and I would return to the Jiang family. I waved my hand weakly, but Jiang Zi still held onto my arm tightly. What do you want? Do you want me to scold you? After saying this, I took a few deep breaths before finally calming down. Expecting anything from this so-called family is foolish. I've done it once in my past life, and that's enough. Even Lin Mengyao from the orphanage looked at me in surprise at this moment. In his memory, I had hardly ever cursed in the past decade. Jiang Zi also stood still in place, and the hand that was holding mine tightly silently let go. I'm sorry. If you really feel sorry, then just leave. Jiang Zi also knew that I was truly angry, so he took out the small box from behind. I was wrong before, I shouldn't have said that to you. This is the birthday gift I prepared for you. After saying that, he opened the small box, revealing the intact puppet inside. I personally assembled it. I also carefully examined the puppet, but the next moment, to Jiang Zi's shocked gaze, I threw it directly into the nearby trash can. I personally discarded the puppet that was once considered more important than life. When Jiang Zi returned home in a daze, everyone had been waiting in the living room for a long time. I went to rest first. Jiang Zi was about to go upstairs, but was stopped by Jiang Feng. Where were you during your brother's coming-of-age ceremony? Even Jiang He, who was in school, was called back. But when taking the family photo, they found one person missing. How could he not be angry? Zhang's mother, Lu Qian, anxiously stepped forward and grabbed Zhang Zi's hand. What happened, son? Don't scare your mother, okay? At this point, Zhang Zi finally came to his senses, looked at the people in front of him, and said slowly, I went to see Xiao Yu. With a loud bang, Zhang Feng directly smashed an expensive cup on the ground. Who allowed you to go see him? Even Zhang Huayan beside him was tightly clenching his fists. He couldn't understand why a person who had already left would still affect this family. Today is Xiao Yu's birthday. As soon as this was said, the scene fell silent. Even the words Zhang Feng was about to scold were stuck in his mouth. They didn't even consider that the two of them were naturally born on the same day due to a mistaken birth date. 
If the outside world found out that the Jung family held such a grand coming of age ceremony for a fake young master but drove their own son out of the house, who knows how much gossip would spread? Lu Qian's eyes instantly turned red. As a mother, she actually forgot her own son's birthday. But he seemed to have forgotten that previously, due to a slight fever of Jiang Huayan, he left me alone at home to celebrate Jiang Huayan's birthday outside. I'm going back first. Jiang Zi's expression is still desolate. He still can't believe that I actually threw away the puppet he painstakingly crafted in front of him. Clearly, no matter what happened before, I always listened to him and carefully placed the puppet he gave me on the bedside. But why has everything changed? Suddenly, Jiang Zi seemed to realize something. Jiang Huayan clearly lacks nothing. Why did he want my puppet in particular? At this moment, Jiang Zi, who locked herself in the room, was completely panicked. He slumped against the wall, buried his head in his arms, and held onto his legs tightly. At this point, Lu Qian was also flustered, quickly asking the driver to go find me. All right, it's too late today. Tomorrow, I will go with you. With that, Jiang Feng got up and left. Lu Qian had to return to the room with the support of Jiang Huang. As the people in the hall gradually left, only Jiang He who remained in place seemed somewhat puzzled. He could clearly feel the bias of this family against me, as if everything I did was wrong. But he dared not speak out because he was scolded for saying just one sentence for me, and was scolded harshly. Jiang Huang pushed open Jiang Zi's door, only to find Jiang Zi squatting in the corner. It's better to explain it to Xiao Yu tomorrow. Go to bed first, okay? But Jiang Zi shook his head, saying that he wouldn't forgive me. At the moment when I threw away the puppet with my own hands, he knew that I really didn't care. Seeing the situation, Jiang Huang only furrowed his brows. Why should he forgive himself? He stole his own jewelry and targeted Xiaowen. Isn't it the truth? The next day, several luxury cars came in a grand procession towards the orphanage. The surrounding residents getting off work also cast curious glances. By the time I noticed the few people, it was already too late. I was about to close the gate when Lu Qian called out to me. Wait, Xiao Yu. Lu Qian hurriedly opened the car door and ran towards me. I sighed. In the end, I still didn't choose to close the gate directly. If I didn't explain things to this group of people, it might never end. Lu Qian, seeing that I didn't close the door, also breathed a sigh of relief. What's wrong, Aunt Lu? Do you need something from me? As soon as these words came out, Lu Qian's heart was deeply pierced. She didn't expect that I wouldn't even call her mom. Xiao Yu, I am your mom. First, tell me what you want. I just want to quickly drive these people away. At this moment, Jiang Huang, Jiang Zi, and Jiang Huayan slowly appeared behind me. Jiang Huayan's eyes were slightly red. He reached out to grab me, but I directly pushed him away. You, a grown man, pretending to be pitiful every day, isn't it disgusting? Jiang Huayan was instantly stunned in place. He had never been scolded like this before. A flash of resentment passed through my eyes. Lu Qian also looked at me in disbelief. In his impression, I had never scolded anyone before. Looking at the somewhat dull faces in front of me actually makes me feel much better. Brother Hao Yu, as long as you come back, I'm willing to do anything, even if it means leaving this home. Seeing the extremely affected Jiang Huayan in front of me instantly makes me feel disgusted. Initially, I was also deceived by Jiang Huayan's hypocritical face and wanted to get along well with this so-called brother. Who would have thought that Jiang Huayan would actually frame me? claiming I associate with shady people and saying he had someone beat him up. At that time, no matter how much I explained, it was all in vain. At that time, Jiang Huayan said so. On the surface, he was on my side, but in reality, he was setting me up. Xiuan, your brother Hao Yu is not that kind of person. Lu Qian quickly stopped Jiang Huayan and then looked at me with pleading eyes. He believed I wouldn't really drive Jiang Huayan away. What I said at the hospital was just out of anger, right? If you're just here for this matter, then I won't accompany you. I've made it very clear that it's either him or me. Only Jiang Zi knows that everything I said was not just anger. Mom came to give you a birthday present. At this moment, Lu Qian also realized and quickly took out a delicate little box, Xiao Yu. Before Lu Qian could finish speaking, I interrupted, take it back. My birthday has already passed. After saying that, I closed the door and left. Yesterday was my birthday. What's the point of giving me a gift today? Xiao Yu, open the door. But no matter how much Lu Qian called, there was still no response. We can only return home with a sense of relief. On the way back, Jiang Huayan sat beside Lu Qian, comforting her with words, but a smile couldn't help but appear on his lips. At this moment, Jiang Zi, who had been silent, suddenly looked at Jiang Huayan seriously and asked, Huayan, did you intentionally break Jiang Haoyu's puppet? As soon as these words were spoken, the spacious carriage fell into silence. Second sister, 
Why are you saying this? In an instant, Zhang Huayan's eyes turned red again. Lu Qian timely stood up for Zhang Huayan, it's just a puppet, isn't it? Xiaowen didn't do it on purpose. But that was the puppet I gave to Xiao Yu. Why did you have to take that one? With Jiang Zi pressing on, Jiang Huayan found himself unable to speak for a moment and could only stutter, I was just curious. Second sister, I can compensate Hao Yu, as long as he's willing to forgive me. I'm willing to do anything. Before he could finish his sentence, Jiang Huayan's tears fell like beans. Tears were already rolling down. Seeing this, Lu Qian quickly hugged Jiang Huayan to comfort him, it's okay, Xiao Zi. Xiao Wen didn't do it on purpose. At this moment, Zhang Zi only felt a splitting headache but remained silent, sitting quietly. Meanwhile, Zhang Huayan's aggrieved expression in Lu Qian's embrace gradually became distorted. Clearly, second sister had always been on her side before. Why was she being questioned today because of him? This also made Zhang Huayan feel a hint of crisis. If this continues, her position could very well be replaced by me. An evil plan instantly emerged in his mind. After returning to the Zhang family, Zhang Zi went back to his room, planning to wait a few days before coming to find me. He wants to clarify everything. At this moment, Zhang Feng, seeing that I was not among the people behind him, couldn't help but feel a surge of anger. Is that kid still refusing to come back? I told him that if he doesn't come back, he shouldn't think about entering the Zhang family's gate for the rest of his life. Up to now, Zhang Feng still thinks this threat is effective for me. But he doesn't think. If I really threatened him, why would he have signed that relationship termination agreement? The next day, as I walked to the school gate, a Rolls Royce stopped next to me. The window slowly rolled down, and my third sister Zhang Zhang's face appeared in front of me. Let's talk, she said. Instantly, my brow furrowed. I remember that whenever I spoke to Zhang Zhang before, she always ignored me. Why did she come to find me today? I'm busy. I straightforwardly refused and walked straight ahead. Zhang Zhang didn't expect that I would actually refuse her invitation. She quickly drove to catch up. I'm talking to you, didn't you hear? She said through the car window. Zhang Jiang, with an irritated tone, said to me through the car window. Then, she stepped on the gas, blocking the car in front of me. I just wanted to talk to you. Don't you even listen to your sister's words? Zhang Jiang got out of the car and came to me. Looking at Zhang Jiang in front of me, I sighed and ultimately didn't say anything. After a while, we arrived at a restaurant. Zhang Jiang took out a bank card from her bag and said, Here is two million. Take it and stop bothering the Zhang family. When she said this, I frowned but didn't say anything. I know you've suffered these years. This money is enough for you to improve your current life. Since you choose to leave the Zhang family, don't think about coming back. And don't fantasize about anything else. Zhang Zhang's tone turned sharp. This is your only chance. Take the money and disappear from my sight. Otherwise, you will regret it. In his heart, I, his own brother, am completely inferior to Zhang Huayan. After all, Zhang Huayan saved his life back then. He thinks that the reason I'm willing to leave the Zhang family is definitely to seek something bigger. But when he looked at me again, he saw that I was leisurely drinking my tea. Seeing that I was unmoved, Zhang Zhang's heart was filled with disdain. How come two million isn't enough for you? Then name your price, and I'll satisfy you. Then make it a billion, I said lightly. A billion? Are you crazy? Zhang Jiang snapped, glaring at me angrily. He knew I was coveting the Zhang family's wealth. Yeah, I am crazy. If you don't give me a billion, I'll pester you every day. Seeing the smile on my face, Zhang Zhang knew she had been outsmarted. Very well, don't regret it, she said and tried to splash the water in her hand at me. But I snatched it from her and splashed it back at her. He never expected that I would dare to splash him. You see, before, I couldn't even breathe in his presence, afraid of upsetting him. But even so, Zhang Jiang still refuses to talk to me. Yet now, I actually dared to splash him with water. What's wrong with you? If you're sick, go see a doctor. Don't come to me. And up to now, I haven't gone to find any of your Zhang family members even once. Instead, it's your Zhang family who have been harassing me. After saying this, I directly got up and left. As night fell, the dim yellow light of the street lamps shone on me. All my life, I've only wanted to stay away from the Zhang family. Every time I see the faces of those Zhang family members, I'm reminded of the agony of being eroded by the fierce fire. The next day, just as I was about to open the door, I saw a figure standing by the gate. Miss Zhang, what are you doing here? Seeing that it was Zhang Zi, I felt a bit of a headache. Xiao Yu, can you please invite Miss Zhang to come in and sit? Zhang Zi looks a bit haggard and seems uneasy, as if afraid I might refuse. I didn't hesitate at all. I directly refused. Whatever it is, just say it here. Who knew, Zhang Zi actually took out the tomb that I had previously thrown away. 
Xiaoyu, please take Miss Jung home. I will explain to my parents and older sister. He only now realizes how excessive he was towards me. Explain what? I watched with keen interest as Jiang Zi explained. It was just a moment of impulse that I ended the relationship. I believe my parents won't. But before Jiang Zi could finish speaking, I interrupted, then how will you explain stealing Jiang Huang's jewelry? As soon as I explained this, Jiang Zi was speechless. I looked into Jiang Zi's eyes and continued, when I associate with shady characters, how do you explain it to them? When I want to confront Jiang Huayan, how do you explain it to them? They actually have no idea about these things. There's simply no evidence that I did it. Based solely on Jiang Huayan's words, I was sentenced to death. But if I explain, it's seen as me not repenting and deserving to be burned to death. The time I was put in solitary confinement was because Jiang Huayan said I was in a relationship with Xiao Tai Mei. It was solely based on a photo of me with her. But I don't even know that person, let alone have a relationship with her. And so, I died in that fire without any explanation. Xiaoyu, I'm begging you as your older sister. Can't you just give in? Jiang Zi's eyes were bloodshot. I burst into laughter at the thought of giving in. How much more can Jiang Zi expect me to give in? You say I'm wild, that I don't understand the rules, that I have no dignity. What have I done? But isn't all of this your doing? If it weren't for you, how could I have been an orphan for 16 years? Now, everything has become my fault. I've never complained before because in my eyes, family is more important than life. But giving in only resulted in favoritism and prejudice. I'm sorry. Jiang Zi looked blankly at the puppet in his hand and didn't say anything more. His departing figure was full of loneliness. Watching Jiang Zi leave, I finally breathed a sigh of relief. The next day after school, when I returned to the orphanage, I saw a figure storming angrily towards me. Then, raising their palm, they slapped me across the face. Tomorrow is the weekend, and Jiang Yi is planning where to take Lu Cici for a date. However, he is clueless about dating. Why not ask Xiao Ruoli? Lin Ruoli is about the same age as Lu Cici, both high school students and girls. Without further ado, what happens next can probably be guessed. Zhang Yi just returned to the orphanage and told Lin Ruoli about this, but this little girl kicked him out directly. Get out! With a bang, the door was slammed shut, leaving Zhang Yi standing at the door holding the pillow that Lin Ruoli had just thrown at him. What's wrong with this little girl? Was she bullied at school? Thinking about this, Zhang Yi knocked on the door again anxiously. Ruoli, open the door. Did someone bully you? But the more Jiang he spoke, the angrier Lin Ruoli became. She pushed open the door, startling Jiang He. Seeing Lin Ruoli's red eyes, Jiang He was about to say something when the pillow in his hand was snatched by the little girl, followed by another bang as the door closed again. This time, no matter how Jiang He knocked on the door, Lin Ruoli ignored him. Lin Ruoli curled up on her small bed, tightly hugging the pillow in her hands, biting her lip tightly as tears fell from her eyes. Didn't we agree to always be together? Why, why did he leave her? She was sent to the orphanage when she just started elementary school, the same year her parents passed away in a car accident. The so-called relatives took over her family's property and threw her into the orphanage. She didn't know anything at that time. She only knew that everyone around her had changed, her parents never appeared again, only the orphanage director. How scared and uneasy she was back then. When her classmates found out she was an orphan, they mocked and bullied her. Girls were jealous of her beauty and cut her hair with scissors. The malice between children is no less than that of adults, sometimes even worse, I believe everyone has experienced this. It was Jiang Yi who stood up for her, protecting her and cutting the bad kid's hair in the same way. Those people even wanted to call the police on him. But Jiang Yi was a minor, and since those people started it, the police could only criticize and educate them, and that was the end of it. Since then, the whole school knew that Lin Ruoli was not an orphan, she had a super awesome brother, super awesome. She once asked Jiang Yi if they could always be together. After receiving an affirmative answer, she felt so relieved. But not long ago, Jiang Yi left once. It was when Jiang Yi's family came looking for him. It turned out that Jiang Yi had a family. She wasn't angry, instead, she was happy for Jiang He, happy that he was no longer an orphan. But she was also sad for herself, sad that she lost her brother, becoming an orphan again. When Jiang He returned again, she was so, so happy. But why did he so quickly break their promise again and leave her alone? 
Liar, Zhang He, you big liar. Lin Ruoli buried her head in the pillow, tears quickly wetting one corner of it. Why, why did you lie to me? Suddenly, Lin Ruoli seemed to remember something, or perhaps made a certain decision. She stood up, wiped away the tears from her eyes, tidied her somewhat messy hair, took a deep breath, and came to the door, smiling with determination in her eyes. Zhang Yi, why don't you take me with you? I'll personally guide you, how about that? Ah. Ah. Is that okay? No refusal allowed. All right, all right. Zhang Yi was afraid of upsetting Lin Ruoli, but he had a date with Lu Cici, and having this little girl around might be awkward. Don't worry, I'll just follow behind you, won't disturb you. Lin Ruoli spoke up, seeming to sense Jiang He's dilemma. She wanted to see who this fox spirit was. Well, okay. But Jiang He still planned to tell Lu Cici about this, and if Lu Cici wasn't willing, he would talk to this little girl. Humph. So many people begging me for help, I ignore them all. With that, Lin Ruoli closed the door again. She pressed her body against the door, tightly holding the pendant around her neck, the only keepsake left by her mother. It was taken by thugs before, and Zhang He retrieved it for her. Zhang He, don't leave me. A hint of loneliness flashed in the girl's eyes. The next day after school, Zhang He told Lu Cici about Lin Ruoli wanting to come along. Lu Cici was very understanding. It's okay, I don't mind. Zhang He could tell her about this, showing that he had a clear conscience and respected her as his girlfriend. This also made Lu Cici a little happy. All right, I'll talk to that little girl, how about tomorrow morning? I'll wait for you at the entrance of your residential area. After confirming the time and place, the two parted ways again. When Zhang Yi returned to the orphanage, a figure rushed towards him and slapped him across the face. What did you do to Xiao Zi? Zhang Huang's eyes were full of resentment towards Zhang Yi. Since yesterday, Xiao Zi had locked herself in her room and refused to come out, it had been a day and a night already. And she had come to find Zhang Yi before, so it must be something Zhang Yi did to her that made Xiao Zi like this. But just as the slap was about to land on Zhang Yi's face, he directly blocked it and pushed back forcefully. Zhang Huang didn't expect Zhang He to fight back. Caught off guard, she kept retreating and almost tripped over a piece of gravel. I can't believe this, are all of you crazy or what? What does it have to do with me? Zhang He was really amused, this family was so quick to blame others. Who did Xiao Zi meet last night, besides you? I knew you had bad intentions. Zhang Huang glared at Zhang He, she knew Zhang He had a bad character, like stealing, but she hadn't said anything, she didn't expect him to target her second sister now. Then tell me, what did I do to Zhang Zi? Zhang He understood, he couldn't fall into the trap of self-justification. When he was wrongly accused before, he would desperately try to prove his innocence, but what's the use? They had already made up their minds, why would they listen to Zhang He? I? If you? Can't say it, then get the hell out. With that, Zhang Yi tried to close the door. Zhang Huang was anxious for a moment, not knowing what to say, because she had no idea what Zhang Yi had done. Wait, come back with me and explain. Otherwise, I'll shut down this orphanage, I mean it. With that said, Zhang Yi's hand, which was about to close the door, hesitated. Indeed, what had to happen, happened. Although he anticipated that the Zhang family would threaten him with the orphanage, he didn't expect it to come true so soon. Zhang He, you know I have this power. Indeed, the Zhang family in Haishir was a behemoth, and it would be easy for them to bring down an orphanage. Zhang He couldn't involve the orphanage because of a moment of anger. What kind of man is that? I didn't expect that the famous entrepreneur Miss Zhang Huan would use the orphanage and those dozen children to threaten others. That's quite something. I? I didn't. Zhang Huang realized that what she said was wrong, but since she had already said it, she couldn't take it back and could only stick to her words. It's all because of you, Zhang He. If you had obediently come home with me to explain, would I have used the orphanage against you? Here we go again, anyway, it's all Zhang He's fault, she has nothing to do with it. Obedient? Wasn't I obedient before? 
With just one word from you, I knelt outside the door all night, it was pouring rain at the time, wasn't I obedient? My dear sister? But, that was because you stole something, I wanted you to learn a lesson. Zhang Huang didn't care about anything else, she grabbed Zhang He and pushed her into the car. If you hadn't stolen, why would I punish you? It's all your own doing. Then why are you so sure it was me who stole? It was found under your bed, who else could it be if not you? Zhang He sat in the back and snorted coldly. So, anything found under my bed is automatically assumed to be stolen by me? I? Zhang Huan was momentarily speechless and could only drive in silence. Exactly, you have a bad memory, you can't even remember that I never had the key to your room. At this point, Zhang He had to wave her hand, it didn't matter anymore, let them think whatever they wanted. You're the one with the bad memory. Suddenly, Zhang Huang remembered that Zhang Yi indeed never had the key to her room. Because there were some Zhang family business documents in her room, it was always locked. But in the whole Zhang family, only she had the key. Just then, Zhang Huang suddenly remembered that Zhang Li seemed to have asked her for the key once. He said he was helping his father get something, but it was only that one time, and he returned it to her afterwards. Impossible, how could Zhang Li? I will investigate this matter thoroughly. No. Please don't investigate. If something comes out, you'll come bother me again. If she had known, she wouldn't have said these things, and then she would have to bother him again, wouldn't that be annoying? At this moment, the Jiang family gate gradually appeared in front of Jiang He. Looking at this familiar yet unfamiliar gate, Jiang He's head began to ache again. She never expected there would be a day when she would come back. What do you want me to come back for? Zhang Yi waved her hand, not knowing why Zhang Huang insisted on her coming back. Let's go inside first. There was no other way, Zhang Yi could only follow behind Zhang Huang. Zhang Qin, who had learned that Zhang Yi was coming back, was already sitting in the main seat waiting for her. He knew Zhang Yi would definitely come back, after all, life outside was not as comfortable as in the Zhang family. This time, he would properly discipline Jiang He, even if he was his own son, he couldn't let him act recklessly. Threatening to sever ties with him, it was really outrageous. So you still know how to come back. Upon seeing Jiang He, Jiang Qin slammed the table abruptly, intending to show Jiang He who was in charge. Then I'll leave. Jiang He didn't hesitate at all and turned to leave. If he wasn't welcome, why ask him to come back? It's really absurd. Lao Qin. Lu Ru hurriedly got up and pulled Zhang He back, glaring fiercely at Zhang Qin. Zhang Qin was also surprised that Zhang He was about to leave without hesitation, so he could only awkwardly clear his throat and sit back down. Xiao He, you've suffered during this time. Lu Ru's eyes were full of affection as she reached out to touch Zhang He's head, but Zhang He dodged her directly. It's not a problem, I've been quite comfortable during this time, so Aunt Lu doesn't need to worry. During this period, it can be said that Zhang Yi had the most comfortable days, not having to face the endless humiliation and neglect from the Zhang family, just needing to focus on studying every day. As soon as these words were spoken, Zhang Qin angrily stood up beside him. What Aunt Lu? That's your mother. Zhang Yi also stood up without showing any weakness and locked eyes with Zhang Qin. Mother? Going to celebrate a birthday with an adopted son and leaving your biological son alone at home, is that called a mother? Going on a trip and being afraid that the adopted son might feel left out, leaving your biological son behind again, calling her a mother? As soon as Zhang Yi finished speaking, the scene fell into silence, and Zhang Qin was speechless, because he knew that everything Zhang Yi said was true. In fact, Zhang Yi almost couldn't resist shouting out about being thrown into a fire in his past life. But it had to be said that after shouting it out, his mood did improve quite a bit. Lu Ru also stood still in place, she didn't expect that she had done such a terrible thing to Zhang Yi in order to take care of Zhang Li's feelings before. It turned out that in Zhang Yi's eyes, she really couldn't be considered a mother. Has Xiao He returned? Zhang Zi, who had been locking herself in her room, hurriedly came out of the room upon hearing Zhang Yi's voice. Zhang Zi at this moment had disheveled hair and bloodshot eyes. It was clear that this day and night had not been easy for Zhang. Zi? Xiao? 
Xiao He. Are you willing to come back? Zhang Zi looked at Zhang He in great surprise. But Zhang He still mercilessly said, Your elder sister used the threat of those ten plus children in the orphanage to force me, otherwise, do you think I would come? With these words, the attention of Zhang Qin, Zhang Zi, and Lu Ru all focused on Zhang Wang. I. I just. I was just too worried about my second sister, what did I do wrong? Then, Zhang Huang's gaze fell on Zhang He. If you hadn't refused to come back, would I have said that? Oh? So it's my fault again? Look, it's his fault again, right? TSK TSK, it's become a habit. Isn't it your fault? If it weren't for you, why would Xiao Zi become like that? Xiao Zi, tell me, did Zhang He bully you? Zhang Huang stared fiercely at Zhang He, she just wanted to embarrass Zhang He in front of so many people. Elder sister. It has nothing to do with Xiao He. Zhang Zi anxiously grabbed Zhang Huang's arm, she went to find Zhang He herself. How could Xiao He bully me? Zhang Huang also looked angrily at her sister, why was she still defending Zhang He at this time? Enough. Let's not bring up these matters for now. Zhang He, if you still want to return to the Zhang family, then apologize to me one by one. I can forgive and forget the past, and the agreement can be voided. Remember, this is your last chance. Zhang Qin came to Zhang He, this was the biggest concession he could make. Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? Zhang He was simply doubting if he had misheard. Forgive and forget? Last chance? Did he have to be grateful to Zhang Qin for allowing him to return to the Zhang family? Mr. Zhang, you may not know, but these days, it has always been your Zhang family harassing me. When did I ever say I wanted to return to the Zhang family? But Zhang Qin was as firm as ever, he just snorted directly. Kid, remember, this is your last chance. Even if you cry and beg me later, I won't let you step into the Zhang family again. Well, I really thank you. Zhang He turned and left, but was once again stopped by Zhang Zi. Xiao He, as your sister, I'm begging you, just apologize and stay in the Zhang family, okay? But Zhang He heartlessly pushed her away. Do you all want me to stay in the Zhang family like a dog before you can rest easy? Get lost. He had had enough of being the Zhang family's dog, this time, he wanted to be his own person. Zhang He had just stepped out when he ran into Zhang Li who had just returned from outside. At this moment, Zhang Li was still accompanied by four or five friends, both male and female, all dressed nicely. Seeing Zhang He unexpectedly coming out of the Zhang family villa, Zhang Li was shocked internally. Because the Zhang family had never announced Zhang He's identity, and no one had seen Zhang He before. Yet they all greeted Zhang He one after another. It must be said, this scene was somewhat comical. Zhang Li, who is this? Someone curiously asked Zhang Li. Upon hearing this, Zhang Li broke out in a cold sweat, fearing how these people would view him if they knew he was a fake young master. Just as Zhang Li was about to speak, Zhang Yi interrupted, Who am I? I am his brother. In an instant, Zhang Li's heart sank, as he did not expect Zhang Yi to reveal it directly. Previously, in order to prevent this matter from being exposed, Zhang Li had been deceiving Zhang Yi, not letting him disclose to anyone that he was the real young master. Zhang He had indeed never revealed his identity. But why did Zhang He reveal it directly this time? Brother? Little Li, why have we never heard that you have a brother? With the suspicious gazes around him, Zhang Li couldn't help but sweat nervously. Just as he was thinking about how to explain, Zhang He spoke again, We are not related by blood, I am the child of the maid. Watching Jiang Li's nervous appearance, Jiang He found it quite amusing. Why was he so afraid of his identity being exposed? Didn't he say before that he would return his identity to him? Why was he silent now? I see, Lily, why have you never told us about this? With this remark, Jiang Li could only smile awkwardly. I? I forgot before. Ha, your memory is really bad, isn't it? What did the doctor say? Is everything okay? Zhang He patted his shoulder, considering that he had been living with that family for so long, having a bad memory was normal. 
You guys go in first, I will talk to Jiang Li. Hearing Jiang Yi's words, the others nodded and headed towards the door. What? Afraid of your identity being exposed? Jiang Yi tore off the facade, not caring about Jiang Li's feelings. In the previous life, he had been deceived by Jiang Li's face, only realizing it when he was burned to death. Over the years, all the accusations he had suffered were done by this little beast. Jiang. Jiang He, brother, what are you saying? How could you think like this? Then, Jiang Li's eyes turned red again, as if he would burst into tears the next second. If you dare to pretend again, I will reveal the truth now. Seeing that Jiang He was not buying it, Jiang Li had to put away his pitiful appearance. At that moment, Jiang Li seemed to see something, he grabbed Jiang He's hand and slapped himself on the face. Brother Jiang He, if you forgive me by hitting me, then go ahead and hit me. Seeing this performance in front of him, Jiang He didn't hesitate, he should have someone behind him. Jiang He, what are you doing? Sure enough, the next moment, an angry shout came from behind Jiang He. Jiang Jiang came angrily to Jiang He's front, shielding Jiang Li in front of him. Jiang He. How dare you lay a hand on Xiao Li? At this point, Jiang Li also spoke up, his eyes still red. It must be said, with Jiang Li's acting skills, he could definitely win an award. Sister Jiang, don't blame brother Jiang He, it's my fault that upset brother Jiang He. As long as brother Jiang He is willing to come back, he can hit me however he wants. After saying this, he actually shed two tears, and pretended to cover his slightly red cheeks, as if trying to cover up Jiang He's wrongdoing. Jiang He. Don't. Ever think about coming back to the Jiang family in your lifetime? Our Jiang family cannot tolerate such a malicious person like you. Looking at Jiang He's resentful appearance, Jiang He waved his hand and then walked straight towards the two of them. Remember, in my eyes, the Jiang family is nothing. Even if you kneel down and beg me, I won't go back. Seeing Jiang He approaching step by step, Jiang Jiang wanted to say something, but then saw Jiang He raise his hand directly. You want to. With a loud slap, Jiang He's palm landed on the other side of Jiang Li's face. This slap directly stunned Jiang Li, he never expected that Jiang He would actually dare to hit him. Ha, huh, not bad feeling, let me help you make both sides symmetrical, no need to thank me. Since he wanted to frame him, he might as well help Jiang Li directly establish his guilt, right? Jiang He rubbed his swollen hand, the law of physics is not deceiving me. Looking at Jiang Jiang's shocked gaze, Jiang He was indifferent. What? Shouldn't this be within your expectations? After all, am I so vicious? Jiang He. Ah, I'm leaving now, you can sue me however you want. Just make sure I never set foot in your Jiang family's door for the rest of my life. With that, Jiang He left without looking back. I believe that now, the Jiang family should not bother him anymore. And Jiang Li's eyes at this moment seemed to be poisoned, staring firmly at Jiang He's back. The next morning, Jiang He got up early to get ready because he promised to take Lu Cici on a date today. Jiang He even went to bed at 10 o'clock last night, otherwise he usually studies until 1 in the morning, just to maintain a good mental state to face Lu Cici, he didn't want to leave any regrets for that girl. However, since Jiang He got up, Lin Ruoli, that girl, has been keeping her distance and following behind him, secretly watching him like this. Just like now, whenever Jiang He turns around, he sees Lin Ruoli leaning against the doorframe, only showing a small head. But as soon as Jiang He speaks, she immediately shrinks back, and then after a while, she sticks her head out again. There was no way, Jiang He had to let this girl mess around. Looking at himself in the mirror, under the white shirt, was a slightly thin body, with white arms exposed in the air, and clean-cut jeans on the lower body. How should I put it, he is too delicate, it would be better if he were more robust. Jiang He was also thinking, should he ask Zhang Yan, that muscular man, for advice. When Jiang He arrived at the entrance of Lu Cici's community, he found that Lu Cici had been waiting here early. Lu Cici was wearing a light yellow dress, a woven sun hat on her head, and white sandals on her feet. Moreover, Lu Cici rarely put on light makeup. You know, Lu Cici has always been barefaced at school, but even so, she is still the goddess in the hearts of countless boys. But this time, for her date with Jiang He, she even consulted her mother. How long have you been waiting? 
didn't we agree that you would call me when I arrived? Not, not long, just a little while. A little while? Really? Jung he looked at Lu Cici somewhat helplessly, this girl is good in every way, but she is too considerate of others. By the way, my sister. After speaking, Jung he pointed his hand towards the back. Sure enough, when Lu Cici looked behind Jung he, she saw Lin Ruoli's small head in the corner not far away. The next second, Lin Ruoli retracted her head again. Damn, she's pretty good looking. Lin Ruoli stomped her foot in frustration, and then secretly compared herself with Lu Cici. She found that although she was not inferior to Lu Cici, her flat chest was just. Indeed, Sundara girls are all flat chested, anime doesn't deceive me. Lu Cici couldn't help but cover her mouth and chuckle as she watched the cute expression of Lin Ruoli poking her head out not far away. It's okay, I think your sister is quite cute. Ah, uh, as long as you're okay, let's go. Jang He looked at Lin Ruoli's performance, already feeling a headache. How did he not notice before that this little girl had such a silly side? But last night, Lin Ruoli did teach Jung He a lot about dating etiquette. Although Lin Ruoli had no practical experience. It can be said that one dares to teach, and the other dares to learn. Jung He and Lu Cici boarded the bus, and many people couldn't help but glance at Lu Cici along the way, after all, Lu Cici's charm was quite strong. There were also many young girls who would sneak a glance at Jung He, then quickly lower their heads to whisper to their girlfriends. Lu Cici looked at Jung He beside her, wanting to hold his hand but feeling too shy to do so, her nervous face blushing slightly. Jiang. Jiang. Who knew that the next second, the driver slammed on the brakes? And Lu Cici, who wasn't seated securely, was about to be thrown out. Be careful. Jiang He quickly grabbed Lu Cici's slightly cold hand. It must be said that Lu Cici's hand was delicate and soft, like holding a cool piece of jade in this somewhat hot weather. Are you okay? Jiang He looked at Lu Cici's somewhat pale face with concern, and his grip involuntarily tightened due to nervousness. I'm fine. Lu Cici quickly took two deep breaths, calming her restless heart. She didn't want to ruin this long-awaited date because of herself. If you're uncomfortable, just tell me. We can always reschedule, okay? Jiang He was afraid that this little girl would force herself. Okay, I will. Feeling the warmth of Jiang He's hand, Lu Cici's pale face blushed again. At the same time, she felt a sweet sensation in her heart. Meanwhile, Lin Ruoli, sitting not far away, watched the intertwined hands of the two, grinding her teeth in frustration. Damn it! At the same time, Zhang Huang was preparing for the upcoming evening event with the business giant from Jing City. Looking at the information about the Zhang family in Jing City, as long as they could secure a partnership at this banquet, the leading position in Haishu City would truly belong to the Zhang family. Zhang Xin? Looks like I need to prepare. Well for that. Zhang Huang rubbed his forehead. These days, he had been exhausted by Zhang He's affairs, but he still had confidence in securing the partnership with the Jiang family. Considering Lu Cici's health, Jiang He naturally couldn't take her to any dangerous places, so the previous suggestion of mountain climbing was also vetoed by Jiang He. Therefore, the zoo was a good choice. If that didn't work, they could just take a walk. However, Lu Cici didn't really care about these things. As long as she could be with Jiang He, she was already very happy. Feeling hot? Let's rest under the shade over there for a while. Sensing Lu Cici's rapid breathing, Jiang He quickly found a place for her to rest. I'm fine. Behave, I'll go buy you something to drink. Seeing Jiang He's firm attitude, Lu Cici had no choice but to agree, sitting on a bench under the shade, waiting for Jiang He to return. Soon, Jiang He walked to a nearby store, took out his phone, scanned a code, and ordered a bottle of vitamin drink and a bottle of mineral water for Lu Cici. He would just drink the mineral water. Looking at the pitiful balance on his phone, Jiang He could only sigh. It seemed like it was time to prioritize setting up a stall. But that would greatly reduce Jiang He's study time. Oh well, I'll just sleep at 2 in the morning from now on. The time was squeezed out. 
If it weren't for Jiang Yi's good foundation, it would be difficult to keep up with the progress in this short period of time. At this moment, Lu Cixi was sitting on a bench, staring at Jiang Yi not far away, while Lin Ruoli not far away would occasionally peek out and observe her. Hey, are you alone, little girl? A young man with a shaved head and ear studs sat directly beside Lu Cixi in a carefree manner. He saw a very beautiful girl sitting on the bench from afar. Lu Cixi frowned slightly, stood up directly, and ignored him, walking towards Jiang Yi without a word. She didn't want to have any dealings with this kind of person. Damn, I'm talking to you. The young man directly blocked Lu Cixi's way, he had never been ignored like this before. How about this, give me your contact information, and I'll let you go, okay? As long as he could get her contact information, he had ways to win over this beautiful girl. After all, it was just harassment, a trick he had tried and tested many times. Get out of my way. Lu Cixi felt her heart beating faster, wanting to leave but being stopped by the young man again. Little girl, since you're alone, why not go with Big Brother? Big Brother will take you to a good place. Just as the young man was about to grab Lu Cixi's hand, even Lin Ruoli was about to come out and give him a punch. The young man suddenly felt a sharp pain in his ear. Ah! Let go of me! It was Jiang Yi who firmly held onto the young man's ear stud, towering over him like holding a little chicken. Apologize, don't make me say it a second time. Jiang Yi had stood up to these kinds of people many times before to protect Lin Ruoli, and had been in many fights. Despite Jiang Yi's slender body, years of hard labor had given him considerable strength. I... I'm sorry, please let go of me. The young man couldn't bear the pain and had to apologize. But just as Jiang Yi released him, the young man actually pulled out a spring knife from his waist. Damn it, go to hell. The blade gleaming with cold light flashed in front of Lu Cixi, and even Lin Ruoli's heart skipped a beat. Be careful. At the critical moment, Jiang Yi dodged the blade with a side movement, but his arm was a beat too slow due to protecting Lu Cixi. Then a cold light flashed in Jiang Yi's eyes as he grabbed the young man's arm and twisted it. With a crack, the young man's painful groans echoed through the square as he fell to the ground, writhing in an attempt to relieve the pain in his arm. Seeing the knife, the onlookers on the side of the road quickly called the police. Seeing that the young man still refused to drop the knife, Jiang Yi didn't hesitate and kicked the hand holding the knife again. Another ear-piercing crack, and the young man's hand bones were probably broken. This was Jiang Yi's years of experience dealing with delinquent youths if the other party pulled out a knife, there was no need to hold back, they had to be subdued until they couldn't resist. Brother Jiang Yi, there's, so much blood. Hearing Lu Cixi's words, Jiang Yi finally felt the warmth on his arm and the pool of blood on the ground. Without hesitation, Lu Cixi tore her skirt hem to use as a makeshift bandage to stop the bleeding on Jiang Yi's arm. But what Jiang Yi didn't know was that Lu Cixi had been afraid of blood since she was young, and at this moment, her face was terrifyingly pale. Brother Jiang Yi, it's all my fault, I'm a jinx. Lu Cixi couldn't hold back anymore, tears streaming down her face. If it weren't for her, how could her family have been exhausted by her illness? If it weren't for her, how could Jiang Yi have been injured? At this moment, the sound of police sirens and ambulance sirens could be heard one after another. Jiang Yi and Lu Cixi, along with the young man lying half-dead on the ground, were taken to the hospital together, with the police following behind the ambulance the whole way. By the time the process was completed, it was already evening, with the setting sun hanging in the sky. However, the entire incident was captured on surveillance cameras, and many enthusiastic bystanders testified on behalf of Jiang Yi. Even when the parents of the young man came to cause trouble, it was to no avail. Jiang Yi, come over and sign here. Also, do you want to settle this matter? The police officer took out a form and handed it to Jiang Yi, but seeing that both Jiang Yi and Lu Cixi were still children, he couldn't help but remind them. Next time, don't act so impulsively. Dealing with that kind of scum is not worth jeopardizing your future. Do you understand? That was a knife, what if it had cut deeper? Yes, we understand. Jiang Yi knew he had acted impulsively, especially since Lu Cixi was with him. Do you want to settle this? Matter? The other party's parents are willing to pay 20,000. 
Initially, the young man's parents were very arrogant, believing that their son's arm was broken and three fingers were crushed by Jiang He, so Jiang He should go to jail. But when the police showed them the surveillance footage, they instantly backed down, realizing that there could be a prison sentence, and even knelt down in front of the police out of fear. The police stated that it all depended on whether Jiang He was willing, as he was the victim. So the young man's parents quickly expressed their willingness to pay, even though they were not wealthy, as he was their only son. Cici, you decide. Jiang He left the decision to lose Cici, as in his eyes, she was the victim and should be the one to decide. I'll follow your lead. Lu Cici stood by Jiang He's side, holding his arm tightly once again, showing that she trusted him. In fact, she still blamed herself, wondering why she had insisted on going on a date with Jiang He. If it weren't for her, Jiang He wouldn't have been injured. Let's settle, but I want to talk to them first. The punishment the young man had received was already severe, with four broken bones throughout his body, likely preventing him from moving freely for a long time. However, 20,000 was still too little. Okay, come with me. The police officer stood up to take Jiang He away, and Lu Cici wanted to follow, but Jiang He stopped her. Please wait for me here, okay? It would be better if Lu Cici didn't witness what was about to happen next. I. I understand. Lu Cici wanted to say more, but realizing that she wouldn't be of much help if she followed, she reluctantly agreed to stay. Jiang He smiled and then led Lu Cici to a female police officer at the front desk. Police sister, could you please look after her? She's not feeling well. Seeing Lu Cici's quiet demeanor, the female police officer naturally agreed to help. I'll be back. After another reminder, Jiang He left with peace of mind. The female officer, noticing Lu Cici's unease, smiled and poured her a glass of warm water. Meanwhile, Jiang He went to the mediation room with the police officer, where the young man's parents were anxiously waiting inside, fearing that Jiang He might not agree. Fortunately, Jiang He did show up. However, in their eyes, Jiang He was just a brat, and 20,000 should have been enough. We were wrong, we are willing to pay. 100,000. Without letting them finish their sentence, Jiang He directly stated his demand. 100,000. Are you trying to rob us? This statement shocked the young man's parents, as 100,000 was not a small amount. He he, molesting a student and intentionally causing harm, how many years do you think that should be sentenced for? Oh, and for wielding a knife to harm others in a public place, threatening public safety, there should be some additional charges. When the time comes, I'll find another media outlet and say that your son intentionally harmed students. Guess how netizens will react? As soon as these words were spoken, even the police officer nearby couldn't sit still. Ahem, maybe we shouldn't inform the media about this matter. After all, once an incident involving student safety like this gets out, their police station will inevitably be in the spotlight. There will be a big inspection, promotions, and evaluations. Who let this happen in their jurisdiction? So, the police officer also spoke up for Jiang He. There was no choice and the parents of this young man could only reluctantly nod. All right, let's have both parties sign a reconciliation agreement. Seeing this matter resolved perfectly, the police officers breathed a sigh of relief. Suddenly, after the young man's parents left, Jiang He pulled aside a police officer and whispered something. This police officer happened to be the captain of the station, and he smiled and agreed on the spot. So, sitting next to the female officer, Lu Cici, saw Jiang He rushing towards her the next moment. Then Jiang He suddenly hugged Lu Cici, and off he went. Behind him, a dozen police officers chased after him. Stop right there, kid. Don't run. Even the female officer sitting at the front desk was stunned by this scene. What's going on? Lu Cici curled up nervously in Jiang He's arms, wondering if Jiang He had committed a crime. Should she help Jiang He find a place to hide? Little girl, your thoughts are very dangerous. It wasn't until Jiang He ran out the door that the police officers inside stopped. Ha, huh, this kid is quite interesting. The captain, an old police officer, also found it very amusing. This kid actually made them help pretend to chase him, a first for him. The other police officers also admitted that Jiang He had fooled them. 
Otherwise, next time, should they bring their girlfriends to try it out? Try it and die. The captain would show them what it means to fail at pretending and get embarrassed. Ah, youth is good. All right, let's go back. Meanwhile, Zhang Yi was still running through the streets with Lu Cici in his arms, moving against the crowd leaving work, paying no attention to others' gazes. Zhang. Zhang Yi, should we turn ourselves in? Lu Cici thought the young man had been killed by Zhang Yi, and that's why. Seeing Lu Cici's worried look in his arms, Zhang Yi gently put her down and said to her with a smile on his face. Exciting, right? Zhang Yi, you tricked me. Lu Cici only then realized that Zhang Yi was joking with her. I'm sorry the date got delayed today. I just wanted to show you a different experience. Under the setting sun, Zhang Yi looked at Lu Cici in front of him and said seriously. You don't have to feel guilty towards me. Since I promised you, I will do what a boyfriend should do. You can be cute with me, get angry with me, treat me as a trash can for venting, understand? Zhang Yi did this to tell Lu Cici that he had never blamed her for what happened before. At the same time, he hoped Lu Cici could be less restrained in front of him, not always thinking about him, not fearing that he would get angry about. Everything. Zhang Yi. A tear welled up in the corner of Lu Cici's eye, and she threw herself into Zhang Yi's arms. I'm scared. I'm afraid that you will hate me, Zhang Yi. I'm really scared. Zhang Yi gently stroked Lu Cici's hair, his eyes full of tenderness. He understood this feeling, the fear of losing, the fear of making mistakes, the fear of angering the other person. That extreme humility, just to gain the attention of family members, just to make his family not dislike him. So, he didn't want Lu Cici to become like him, that feeling, just thinking about it would feel painful. Don't worry, I won't. This was Zhang He's promise. Then, can I make a request? Lu Cici let go of Zhang He, after all, there were so many people watching her, she was still a little shy. Of course you can. Now Jiang Yi could be considered a wealthy person, after a few days when the police gave him the money, he would leave half for Lu Cici, use the other half to repay the Jiang family's 30,000 yuan, and save another 20,000, just enough to serve as the startup capital for his stall. I want to see the sea, see the sunset in the sea. But suddenly, Lu Cici thought the bus seemed to be stopping. Forget it, let's wait. Jiang Yi took out his phone, then directly picked up Lu Cici again, rushing towards the oncoming pedestrians. We can make it. Zhang He had just calculated, they could just catch the last bus back. Even if they were late, they could take a taxi. And so, amidst the curious gazes of others, the two squeezed onto the last bus to the Bund. But Lu Cici was still a little worried. Maybe we should go back, what if? Get off quickly. Zhang He didn't give Lu Cici a chance to speak, he directly grabbed her little hand and ran towards the bund. Zhang. Zhang He, brother. Lu Cici looked at Zhang He's back in front of her, her voice choked with emotion. We made it, like I said. Zhang He once again held Lu Cici in his arms and began to sprint towards the bund. At this moment, Zhang He's thin body, in the last rays of the setting sun, seemed to stretch longer and longer. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Feeling Jiang Yi's heart beating wildly from the intense exercise, tears welled up in the corners of Lu Cici's eyes and couldn't stop falling. We made it. Finally, in the last second before the sunset, Jiang Yi finally arrived at the edge of the beach with Lu Cici in his arms. And Jiang Yi continued to exert himself, one misstep, his strength failed and he knelt on the beach, but he still tightly protected Lu Cici in his hands. At this moment, the sea surface, illuminated by the last rays of the setting sun, was dyed golden by the surging waves. Everyone on the beach was attracted by this scene, it was so beautiful that they couldn't bear to look away. But the sunset would eventually set, as the last ray of light disappeared, the sea surface returned to its original state. By now, Lu Cici was already stunned, the sea breeze blowing her hair off her forehead, but she didn't care. Thank you, Jiang He, brother. The girl's heartbeat, under the ripples of the sea breeze, seemed to magically synchronize with the boys. Not caring about her own health, not caring about the gaze of others. Since their last date, Lu Cici had become more natural when facing Zhang He, no longer constantly worried. 
But when Lin Ruoli went back, she treated Jiang He as if he were a different person, no longer as close to him, keeping her distance no matter what. This also made Jiang He think that Lin Ruoli had grown up to be like this, after all, isn't it normal for siblings to be like this? They loved to cling to each other when they were young, but as they grew up, they would become extremely disdainful. After Jiang He finished tidying up the clinic, Jiang Xian took out a gray suit from the closet and handed it to Jiang He. Cici, you follow me, Jiang He, are you okay? Jiang He looked at the suit in front of him, since Lu Cici had already agreed to let Jiang Xian help deal with someone named Lu Yu, attend some banquet, he naturally wouldn't say anything. So when the three of them appeared at the banquet, they instantly attracted a lot of attention. Jiang He, of course, didn't need to say, dressed in a suit, he also shed the youthful innocence that belonged to high school students, after all, his heart was that of an adult. It was Jiang Xian who, not wearing a white coat, was even more dazzling. And at this moment, Jiang Chong was in the conference hall on the second floor, talking with Jiang Qin. We must secure the cooperation with the Jiang family this time. As long as we secure the cooperation with the Jiang family, our Jiang family will be second in the entire city by the sea. Who dares to claim the first place? Jiang Qin looked at the proposal in front of him with great ambition. This was their Jiang family's opportunity to leap forward, and they absolutely could not miss it. Xiao Huang, do you know anything about that Miss Jiang Xian from the Jiang family? After all, Jiang Xian was the protagonist of this banquet. The family groups in the capital city wanted to enter the city by the sea, while the family groups in the city by the sea wanted to rely on the power of the capital city to reach new heights. Both sides had the willingness to cooperate, otherwise there wouldn't be this banquet today. But there were opinions on who should cooperate with whom. The most desired cooperation partner for the Jiang family was naturally the powerful Jiang family in the capital city. I have some understanding. She is a top medical student from the Capital Medical University, and she recently came to a school in the city by the sea to work as a school doctor. A school doctor? Which school? Zhang Qin was somewhat surprised that a miss from the Zhang family in the capital city would go to a school to work as a doctor. A school? It seems to be Erzhong, the school Jiang He attended before. Mentioning Jiang He, both of them fell silent instantly. Dad, why not let Jiang He come back? Jiang Chong remembered threatening Jiang He with the orphanage before and felt somewhat guilty. Also, she had hastily concluded that Jiang He was responsible for the theft of the jewelry without investigating thoroughly. No matter what, Jiang He is still a member of the Jiang family. If this matter is known by outsiders, it will not be good for the reputation of the Jiang family. But when Jiang Qin heard this, he was even more furious and slammed the table. I gave him a chance before, but what did he do? I said, unless he apologizes to everyone, he can forget about returning to the Jiang family. Seeing Jiang Qin in front of her, Jiang Chong could only sigh. Because she knew that Jiang he would never apologize. But how could Jiang Qin, as the head of the family, allow someone to challenge his authority? At this time, Jiang Xian was leading Jiang He and Lu Cixi to a secluded corner. She really didn't want to be disturbed by these people. The reason she left the capital city and came to the city by the sea was to have a few peaceful days. But this banquet was requested by the Jiang family, and she had to attend and couldn't refuse, so she reluctantly agreed. Thinking of her sister Jiang Bai, Jiang Xian felt a headache. Stubborn, ruthless, and crazy, she would do anything to achieve her goals. Although she had no intention of competing for the position of family head, it was still better to keep some distance to avoid misunderstandings with Jiang Bai. Wasn't it good to be uninterested in the position of family head and be free? Why did she have to be bound by it? But for some reason this time, her family specifically asked her to represent the Jiang family and interact with the business families in the city by the sea. Cici, try this, this is also good, and this one too. Looking at the mountain of pastries in front of her, Lu Cici felt a bit embarrassed. Dr. Jiang, Cici should eat less. Oh, right, I forgot, my mistake, my mistake. Lu Cici saw Jiang Xian apologize and quickly waved her hands nervously. I? I'm fine, it's okay to eat a little less. Suddenly, Jiang Xian seemed to think of something and said to Lu Cici, 
How about this? You taste each one and give the rest to Jiang He, okay? Jiang He, are you okay? As soon as these words were spoken, Lu Cixi's face turned red. Taste one and give the rest to Jiang He, isn't this like an indirect kiss? Although they were nominally boyfriend and girlfriend these days, the most intimate thing they had done was holding hands. Just then, Jiang Chong, standing at the staircase on the second floor, seemed to notice the figure in the corner. The first person she saw was Jiang Xian, the daughter of the Jiang family. But upon closer inspection, why did the man next to her look so familiar? When the man turned his profile towards her, she stood frozen in place. Jiang. Jiang He? At this moment, a familiar figure appeared in front of them. Yes, the person who came was none other than Lu Yu, who had been pestering Jiang Xian before. Jiang Xian could only helplessly rub her temples, knowing that this guy would definitely show up. Miss Jiang Xian, what a coincidence, perhaps this is fate. Lu Yu wanted to make a heartfelt speech, but Jiang Xian interrupted him directly. Not a coincidence at all, and also, this is my boyfriend. With that, Jiang Xian pulled Jiang Yi in front of her and wrapped her arm around his. W.H. What? How is this possible? Miss Jiang, don't joke around. Lu Yu stammered, looking at the young Jiang Yi beside him, his thoughts becoming more firm. Joking? Little he, say something. Jiang Xian picked up a half-eaten pastry and brought it to Jiang Yi's mouth. This pastry had been bitten by Lu Cixi before, and at this moment, the girl's face was already blushing uncontrollably, even lowering her head and not daring to look at Jiang Yi again. Seeing the slightly moist pastry, Lu Yu's heart twisted, unable to believe everything happening before his eyes. Jiang Xian, is there a big age difference between you two? Lu Yu looked at the two with a forced smile, Jiang Yi looked at most 17 or 18, while Jiang Xian was almost 24. Oh? Do you have a say in this? I just like them young. With that, she leaned Jiang Yi closer to herself. This scene completely broke Lu Yu's defenses. Fine. Fine. I'll leave you alone. With that, Lu Yu left without looking back. But his gnashing teeth and fierce expression exposed his true thoughts. Since he couldn't touch Jiang Xian, could he not touch this damn pretty boy? Seeing Lu Yu leave, Jiang Xian finally breathed a sigh of relief, quickly letting go of Jiang He and turning to embrace Lu Cixi. Thank you, Cixi. After that, she lightly kissed Lu Cixi's cheek. It's, it's nothing. Watching the two fooling around, Jiang He didn't mind. Since the matter was resolved, he felt relieved, feeling that he had repaid Jiang Xian for her care towards him. Meanwhile, Jiang Huang at the staircase on the second floor, after witnessing the whole process, was left speechless. What, what, what is going on? How did Jiang He know Jiang Xian and behave so intimately? And what did those words just now mean? What do you mean by liking them young? Due to the distance, Jiang Huang only heard this sentence. Could it be that Jiang He is being kept? Looking at Jiang He not far away, Jiang Huang felt powerless. If Jiang He and Jiang Xian really had that kind of relationship, with Jiang He's attitude towards the Jiang family, coupled with the previous threats, this cooperation would be even more difficult. As time passed, the dinner officially began, and many people came to find Jiang Xian, but she refused them for various reasons. After all, these small families in the city couldn't handle the business of the Jiang family. In her heart, she already had two options. One was the old family in the city, the Lin family, and the other was the recently rising Jiang family. Or, she could work independently without cooperating with any family, which was actually Jiang Xian's true intention, as only in this way could she be free from constraints. At that moment, Jiang Huang also walked towards them. And Jiang He, who was originally sitting on the side, couldn't help but pat his head when he saw the newcomer. How could he forget that the Jiang family would also attend such a dinner? So Jiang He stood up to leave, not wanting to have any contact with the Jiang family. When Jiang He was about to leave, Lu Cixi also stood up, after all, she was accompanying Jiang He. Xiao He, wait. Jiang Chao hurriedly called out to Jiang He. Ah? Uh, you know each other? Jiang Xian was somewhat surprised. 
How could Jiang Yi know Jiang Chao? After all, Jiang Chao was the most popular business genius in the entire city. It was hard to imagine how a student like Jiang Yi could know such a person. Although they shared the same surname, Jiang Xin did not think of them as relatives. After all, Jiang Yi had fainted before due to hypoglycemia and malnutrition. She knew that Jiang Yi really had no money and even lived in an orphanage. The difference between them was too great. Seeing Jiang Xian silent, Jiang Yi had no choice but to turn back and say, we've met a few times, but we're not close. These words deeply pierced Jiang Chao's heart. But Jiang Yi was telling the truth. When he was still with the Jiang family, Jiang Chao had always ignored him. Wasn't that considered not being close? Xiao Yi, go home with your sister. As long as you admit your mistake. Hearing this, Jiang Xian looked at Jiang Yi in shock. What? Jiang Chao was Jiang Yi's sister? Jiang Yi also sensed that something was wrong. When did Jiang Chao become so easy to talk to? Suddenly, Jiang Yi glanced at Jiang Xian beside him. Could it be? You don't have to pretend. I won't interfere in your affairs. That's it. With that, Jiang Yi left the banquet with Lu Cixi. He had probably guessed that Zhang Xian's identity was not simple. Zhang Xian chose not to leave but instead looked with interest at the glamorous woman in front of her, a complete mismatch with Zhang He. You are Zhang He's sister? Zhang Xian squinted at Zhang Chao, her eyes flashing with a dangerous gleam. Well, Miss Zhang, forgive my brother for being a bit ignorant. Since Zhang He had not told Zhang Xian about her situation, here was an opportunity. Although Jiang Chao felt some guilt towards Jiang He, compared to the opportunity to cooperate with the Jiang family, it seemed insignificant. What she didn't know was that as Jiang He's school doctor, how could Jiang Xian not know about Jiang He's situation? Even if Jiang He had never mentioned it, she could guess. Oh? I'd like to hear more. Please tell me more, Miss Jiang. I also want to know more about Jiang He. Jiang Xian appeared very interested, which made Jiang Chao feel even more confident. The other families in the city, seeing the representative of the Jiang family chatting happily with Jiang Xian, felt a chill. It seemed that the cooperation with the Jiang family in the capital was a done deal. The most uncomfortable among them was the Lin family, an old family in the city. But at this moment, they could only feel anxious. I'm sorry, Jiang He. This is all for the Jiang family. Jiang Chao said to herself, then turned to Jiang Xian with a worried look. Miss Jiang, my brother, he's a bit unscrupulous, and he. And what? He once stole my necklace, but I didn't blame him. I just hope he can learn from it. Jiang Xian also showed a surprised expression, seemingly shocked by the incident. How could this happen? I didn't expect Jiang He to. It's my fault for not educating him well. Sigh. How can you blame yourself, Miss Jiang? Jiang He turned out to be this kind of person. I'm so disappointed. With that, anger flashed across Jiang Xian's face, as if she was about to explode in the next second. I told you, Miss Jiang, none of this is his fault. Suddenly, Jiang Chao changed the subject. But no matter what Jiang He did, he shouldn't cut off ties with his family. This sentence was crucial because Jiang Chao knew that if Jiang Yi was really being supported by Jiang Xian, then even if Jiang Xian was foolish, she should have understood Jiang Yi's situation. Why did Jiang Yi want to break away from the Jiang family? It is his own fault. Absolutely cannot let Jiang Xian think that it is the Jiang family's fault for not treating Jiang Yi well. What? Cut off relations? Jiang Xian only understood at this moment why Jiang Yi lived in the orphanage. Why Jiang He couldn't even come up with a few hundred dollars, and even had to work to pay off debts for her. That's right, the family just forgot to assign a driver to him, so he. After speaking, Jiang Huang also lowered his head, looking like he didn't want to reveal family secrets. At this moment, Jiang He had already left with Lu Cixi, perhaps even he did not expect that Jiang Huang would actually defame him in order to cooperate with the Jiang family. This is a businessman, perhaps in Jiang Huang's eyes, he is that kind of person. Prejudice is a mountain that cannot be crossed in a short time, even Jiang Zi just made him apologize and bow his head when he returned home, 
as for driving away Jiang Li, that was not even a consideration. In their eyes, being able to return him to the Jiang family was already a gift from the Jiang family. Suddenly, a Porsche passed by the two of them. The person inside saw that the figure that had just flashed by was actually Jiang He, and cursed under their breath. That's right, the one sitting in the Porsche was Jiang Jiang, Jiang He's third sister. But her mood was still good at the moment, because through her investigation, she found out that the little boy who had saved her before was nearby. This time she didn't care about the time and came to search in the middle of the night, although she knew the hope was slim, she still wanted to try. When she was young, she got separated from her family because of playing around and ended up by the water, accidentally falling in. After struggling in vain, she passed out due to lack of oxygen. When she woke up again, she was already lying next to Jiang Li. At first, Jiang Li did say that he was the one who saved her alone, and Jiang Jiang had always believed it until now. But later, in a chance encounter, Jiang Jiang discovered that Jiang Li seemed to not know how to swim at all. So, under Jiang. Jiang's questioning, Jiang Li finally admitted that it was the two of them who saved her together back then. But in fact, when Jiang Li arrived at the water's edge back then, he had already noticed Jiang Jiang being rescued ashore, and the boy who saved her only left him with a silhouette before turning and leaving. And Jiang Li had accepted Jiang Jiang's gratitude over the years without any guilt, even when he was found out to not know how to swim, he still refused to reveal the truth. Anyway, so many years had passed, and Jiang Jiang couldn't possibly find that person. As Jiang He walked back to the orphanage, she unexpectedly ran into Jiang Jiang again. Originally, Jiang He planned to pretend not to recognize her, but Jiang Jiang directly grabbed her. Let go. I won't let go, what can you do to me? Jiang Jiang had a bad temper, so naturally she wouldn't just let Jiang He go. Are you crazy? Don't make me use force. Jiang He was truly speechless, what was she thinking coming out at this time of night? I, I'm afraid of the dark. Seeing Jiang Yi angry, Jiang Jiang finally revealed the truth. Who would have thought that the arrogant Miss Jiang Jiang was actually afraid of the dark? Oh? Afraid of the dark? W-H? What's wrong? Is it embarrassing? This time Jiang Yi shook her head. Since Jiang Jiang was afraid of the dark, why did she lock him alone in a dark room in his past life? Jiang He remembered that it was Jiang Jiang's idea to lock him in a dark room for discipline, saying something about making him behave better? I? Goodbye to you. Jiang He took advantage of Jiang Jiang's distraction and pulled her arm out, then turned and ran. Help Jiang Jian? Don't be ridiculous. Jiang He. Come back here. Watching Jiang He's gradually receding figure, Jiang Jiang's voice also carried a hint of choking. The area here was relatively remote, with only a few street lights. There was no other way, she could only turn on the flashlight on her phone and slowly make her way towards where she had parked. At the evening banquet scene, Jiang Xian was still chatting with Jiang Huang, nodding from time to time. Even Jiang Qin, not far away, was very satisfied with the performance of his eldest daughter. Jiang Qin, you really have a good daughter. The representative of the Lin family this time was naturally their family head, Lin Cheng. Although his son and two daughters were only interested in having fun, they were no match for Jiang Chong. But he had no choice. Jiang Qin naturally chatted with Lin Cheng with a smile. In his eyes, the dominance of High City was already a sure thing, and even Lin Qing, the head of the Lin family, would have to bow down to him. By the way, Miss Jiang, this is the business plan of our Jiang group, Please take a look. Seizing the opportunity, Jiang Chong handed his business plan to Jiang Xian. She also believed that this cooperation was a sure thing. Although the people nearby couldn't hear what they were talking about, when they saw Jiang Chong handing over the business plan, they understood that the cooperation was probably over. But just when Jiang Chong was full of confidence, Jiang Xian did not reach out to take it. What, what's wrong, Miss Jiang Xian? Seeing Jiang Xian hesitating to accept, Jiang Chong couldn't help but feel a bit flustered. Miss Jiang, why is the Jiang Yi in my eyes different from the one you mentioned? Jiang Xian's eyes changed, her previously pleasant expression instantly clouded over. With these words, Jiang Chang's hand trembled slightly as he handed over the business plan. 
Zhang Xian stood up directly and looked down at Zhang Chong. To be honest, her heart was very complicated at the moment. She never expected that Zhang Yi's family would look like this. No wonder Jiang He never mentioned it. How deeply he must have been hurt to keep it hidden. Miss Jiang, you said Jiang He is not clean and stole your necklace, right? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Let's talk about this later. But before, in order to repay a few hundred dollars, Jiang He was willing to work odd jobs at my place for a month. Do you think he would steal your necklace? Zhang Xian looked straight at the so-called sister Zhang He and continued speaking. You said he cut ties with his family because they didn't provide him with a driver. But would he agree to come here to help me for a small favor, even if he knew it would offend someone he couldn't afford to provoke? Even for a small favor, he is willing to do everything to repay it. Do you still think Zhang He would cut ties with your family over a driver? Zhang Xian believed that even if the Zhang family had been a little good to Zhang He, he would never go as far as cutting ties. The words Zhang Chong had said earlier were hard for her to bear, even though she hadn't known Zhang He for long. I can see these things clearly as an outsider, let alone you as family members. Miss Zhang Chong, I think there is no need for cooperation between our two families. With that, Zhang Xian turned and left, leaving behind a pale faced Zhang Chong. Miss Jiang, wait. This time, Zhang Chong didn't even look at the business plan on the table, he just quietly asked, Is Zhang Yi doing well recently? Zhang Xian was somewhat surprised that Zhang Chong would ask that. You should ask him yourself. Zhang Xian didn't give a direct answer because she didn't know how Zhang Yi's life was going, but judging from his thin figure, it probably wasn't good. As for cooperation, in Zhang Xian's heart, she had already made a decision. The way of business was about weighing the pros and cons, maximizing profits between gains and losses. That is, going solo. Not cooperating with any family, so that future development would not be constrained by others, just a bit difficult to start. The people at the banquet, watching Jiang Xian leave without taking the business plan, were all discussing, and their gazes towards Jiang Chong had changed. Jiang Qin even came directly to Jiang Chong and questioned loudly. What's going on? Why did Miss Jiang Xian leave? But this time, when faced with Zhang Qin's questioning, Zhang Huang just rubbed his forehead. I'm a bit tired. I'll go back first. She just wants to go back now to investigate the truth of that year, whether Zhang he really stole her jewelry necklace. Come back to me. Watching Zhang Huang leave, not even Zhang Qin's words could make her turn back. No one knew how Zhang Jiang got home that night, only that when she got home, her legs were shaking. At this moment, the Jiang family was unexpectedly quiet for a while. Jiang Zi locked herself in her room, saying she was contemplating a painting. Except for mealtimes, she would go downstairs, but otherwise, she was nowhere to be seen. Jiang Huang searched for surveillance footage from a few years ago, starting to search frame by frame for the truth. Perhaps in her heart, she also didn't believe that Jiang Li falsely accused Jiang He. Zhang Jiang would occasionally run out, saying she was going to find someone and would be gone all day, sometimes even cancelling appearances on programs. Looking at the dining table with only Zhang Qin and Lu Ru left, Zhang Li's heart was filled with resentment towards Zhang He. Why, after he left, did such a big change happen in this family? Who does Zhang He think he is? Originally, his eldest sister who loved him is now actually investigating the truth of that year. Fortunately, he had already bribed the former nanny, and that surveillance footage had long been destroyed. And the second sister Jiang Zi would actually lock herself in her room all day for a broken puppet given to Jiang He, suspecting him, something that would never have happened before. Lost in thought, Jiang Li didn't even realize that his hands were already red from squeezing too hard. What's wrong, Xiao Li? Jiang's mother Lu Ru also noticed that Jiang Li was not right and asked. Nothing, mom. I'm just thinking about brother Jiang He. After speaking, Jiang Li put on a sad look, lowering his eyes. Seeing Jiang Li like this, Lu Ru couldn't help but hug him. She also knew that she had wronged Jiang He before, not treating the two fairly, but now she knew she was wrong, as long as Jiang He was willing to come back, she would never treat him like before. But why doesn't Jiang He want Jiang Li to stay in this house? It was her fault before, nothing to do with Jiang Li, what do you want him for? 
Zhang Qin slammed his chopsticks, thinking of Zhang his confrontational attitude towards him at the time, he was so angry, how could he talk to his father like that? At the same time, Zhang Huang, who was upstairs checking the surveillance, also noticed something wrong. Why is there a missing segment in the surveillance footage from this period? If you didn't look carefully, you might not notice, the surveillance footage during this period showed a jump from 10 o'clock straight to 12 o'clock. Zhang Huang immediately went downstairs. And Zhang Li, watching Zhang Huang go downstairs, was also a bit confused for a moment. But when Zhang Huang spoke, Zhang Li was instantly startled. Dad, who was in charge of the surveillance from that year? Why is there a missing segment? With these words, Zhang Li's face changed slightly. He didn't expect that Zhang Huang would actually start investigating the truth of that year, and even found this suspicious point. But Jiang Li quickly recovered because he knew that even if Zhang Huang found out, so what? He had gone to great lengths to frame Jiang He back then. Not only did he bribe the nanny, change the surveillance, but also gave her money to leave and never come back. He didn't believe that the truth could still be dug up like this. Surveillance? Why are you looking at that? Zhang Qin was puzzled by his eldest daughter's behavior but still mentioned the events of that year. Resigned, right? I see. Zhang Huang frowned slightly, it was just around the time of the incident that she resigned, could it really be just a coincidence? Suddenly, Zhang Huang changed the subject and looked at Jiang Li beside him, asking. Xiao Li, do you remember when you asked me for the key to my room back then? With these words, Zhang Li's heart was even more shocked, but then she blushed and looked at Zhang Huang with teary eyes. Big sister, do you suspect me? No, I just. I said, as long as brother Zhang He comes back, I'm willing to leave this house. After speaking, Zhang Li stood up directly, leaving only a desolate figure behind. Xiao Li, I'm not. Enough. For that kid, look at what the house looks like now. Why, do you have to drive your brother away? Zhang Qin couldn't bear to watch anymore. What has become of this family because of Zhang He alone? If only I hadn't brought him back, a wild child is a wild child, no matter what, he can't change his bad habits. I didn't mean that, I just want to know the truth from back then. Xiao Li, are you sure you didn't give the key to someone else back then? Zhang Li didn't expect Zhang Huang to still be questioning, and her heart was even more panicked. This was a situation that had never happened before. In the past, as long as he acted cute, no one would blame him, let alone question him. It's all Jiang He's fault. Why didn't he just die back then? Why did he have to stay and cause trouble for him? But Jiang Li still forced herself to remain calm. I'm feeling unwell, I'll go back to my room first. After speaking, Jiang Huang wanted to ask more, but was stopped by Jiang Qin again. Jiang Huang. It was me who asked Xiao Li to go to your room to get the documents. Why, do you even suspect me now? Lu Ru also advised Zhang Huang from the side. Your brother is not that kind of person. Looking at the two people in front of her, Zhang Huang could only sigh and go upstairs. She just didn't believe that Zhang Li was that kind of person, that's why she wanted to know the truth about this matter. She didn't believe that Zhang Li would falsely accuse Zhang He, maybe he accidentally gave the key to someone else before. A few days later, Zhang He received a payment of 100,000 yuan from the police. But no matter what Zhang Yi said, Lu Cici refused to accept half of it, and even returned Zhang Yi's transfer. Cici, just take the money your boyfriend gave you. Zhang Xian watched the two of them pushing back and forth, making her head spin. No, brother Zhang Yi got hurt protecting me, how can I accept this? Lu Cici firmly refused, not allowing Zhang Yi to argue. Well, how about this? This 50,000 yuan is like you investing, can we do that? When Jiang Yi said this, Zhang Xian immediately showed interest. Invest? What kind of investment? Take me along. Ha! Huh? I just thought of setting up a small stall to make some money. Zhang Yi had already guessed Jiang Xian's identity before, at least not inferior to Zhang Huang, otherwise, Zhang Huang would not have actively come to her. What's wrong with setting up a stall? Many people have made a fortune by setting up stalls. 
Jiang Xian was very knowledgeable about these things, although she was a medical student, her talent in business was no less than her genius sister Jiang Bai. Ah, uh, it's possible, but maybe. Oh, stop talking nonsense, I'll put in 100. 100,000, how about that? Truly a wealthy woman, so generous. Originally, Jiang Xian wanted to put in 1 million, but considering that this amount was too large for a student, if she were to be deceived, with Jiang Yi's personality, she might end up selling herself to him to repay the debt, 100,000. Dr. Jiang, aren't you afraid of losing? Jiang Yi was also somewhat shocked for a moment. 100,000 yuan, she just took it out like that, is this Jiang Xian's strength? To be honest, Jiang Xian's daily pocket money was probably around 100,000. And that was just pocket money. It's okay, it's okay, if I lose, your CC will be mine. After speaking, Jiang Xian once again leaned close to Lu Cici's small face. After spending these days together, Jiang Xian also discovered that Lu Cici was really a good girl, and she was also willing to become true best friends with Lu Cici. Jiang. Miss Jiang, what are you saying? Oh. You're blushing. Perhaps Lu Cici hadn't noticed, but during these days with Jiang He and Jiang Xian, her heart palpitations had not occurred even once. Then it's settled, you'll take me there, and I'll give you advice. Since they were setting up a stall, they naturally needed a favorable location. They also needed to choose products to sell. So, the three of them went together to the nearby Haishir Pedestrian Street, and Lu Cici had already informed her family. In fact, Lu Cici's family was quite supportive of her relationship with Jiang He. Since childhood, Lu Cici had been very obedient and understanding, and Zhang Yi had once saved her. Considering Lu Cici's health condition, they felt that as long as Lu Cici was happy, it was all good. But how much helplessness was hidden within this? By the way, Zhang Yi, what are you going to sell? Zhang Xian observed the constant stream of pedestrians around her, most of whom were young couples out for fun, as this area was surrounded by schools and the Haishir University city was nearby. To be honest, the businesses that can make money now have already been taken by others. This is not my main business, so it's hard to compete with these old hands. Listening to Jiang He's words, Jiang Xian also nodded. She hadn't expected that Jiang He, a newcomer, would have such a clear understanding of his position, completely unlike a naive youth. Suddenly, a figure rushed towards Jiang He and the others. Get out of the way. Move. A young man with dyed yellow hair was about to collide with Lu Cici. Zhang Yi quickly pulled Lu Cici to his side. Then, a girl holding a broom appeared in front of them. The girl tied her hair into a neat ponytail, with a small and pretty face, but the words from her mouth. Damn it, if my mom catches you. What are you looking at? The girl's fierce appearance had a unique charm. Seeing the crowd dispersing, the girl finally noticed the three people in front of her, her face filled with apologies. Sorry, didn't scare you, did I? How about I treat you to a bowl of noodles at my shop? Zhang Yi was about to refuse, but the girl had already grabbed Lu Cici and Zhang Xian, leading them to her shop. Helpless, Zhang Yi had no choice but to follow. The girl's noodle shop was located at the end of the night market, but even so, there should have been customers. After all, the entire night market was bustling with people. Looking at the clean environment of the shop, Zhang Xian nodded in satisfaction. If it wasn't clean, she wouldn't sit down no matter what. Wait a moment, it'll be ready soon. The girl was still efficient, settling the three of them before heading to the kitchen. Before long, three bowls of delicious beef noodle soup appeared in front of them. I'm really sorry, I almost bumped into you earlier. After speaking, the girl looked at them expectantly. However, the noodles that looked delicious on the outside didn't taste as good once they were in their mouths. Did you forget to add salt? When Jiang He said this, everyone looked at each other, and the atmosphere became quite awkward for a moment. Ahem, sorry, sorry, I forgot, I'll go get you a new bowl. The girl picked up the bowls in front of the three and rushed back into the kitchen, with Jiang He unable to stop her. Zhang Xian stood up and walked outside the shop, nodded, and then returned. Although the location isn't great, it's definitely not bad. Why are there no customers? 
Zhang Xian pondered to herself, and Jiang He naturally noticed some issues as well. Normally, how could a chef forget to add salt, unless the girl just now wasn't a professional? Suddenly, Jiang Xian asked Zhang He, How do you feel about this place? At that moment, three figures appeared in the shop. Just as Zhang He thought they were other customers, the three spoke directly. Zhou Ruayun, come out. With these words, even Zhang He and the others, no matter how clueless, knew that the three in front of them were looking for trouble. Just as Jiang He was about to quietly call the police, Zhou Ruoyun had already heard the commotion and came out from the kitchen. And in her hand, she was still holding a shiny kitchen knife. I said, go ask that gambler for money. But obviously, the three had been here. Before, completely unfazed by the kitchen knife in the girl's hand. Girl, let's not beat around the bush. This shop is under the name of your gambler father, right? The leader of the burly men looked around, seemingly satisfied with the shop. Here's the deal, you give me this shop, and we'll call it even with this hundred thousand. With these words, Zhou Ruoyun's body began to tremble slightly. This shop belongs to my mother. Not that gambler's. Seeing Zhou Ruoyun about to lose control, Zhang Xian quickly stood up and shielded her. You think you can take this shop for a hundred thousand, you must be out of your mind? Zhang Xian estimated the location and size of the shop, at the very least, it was worth over 800,000, even if sold in a hurry, it could fetch around 600,000. Who are you? What's it to you? The burly man, realizing his plan had been exposed, also became a bit agitated. Who am I? I'm an investor in this shop. Zhang Xian waved her hand, knowing these thugs probably wouldn't recognize her. A hundred thousand, right? I'll pay. With that, Zhang Xian took out a card from her bag, originally intended for Zhang He, but now used to help him invest. But seeing Zhang Xian being generous and easy to talk to, the burly man immediately changed his tune. Not a hundred thousand. It's, it's a million. With these words, even the henchmen behind the burly man exchanged looks, this was a million. Even the burly man's forehead broke out in a cold sweat, he was actually quite panicked. But Jiang Xian just looked disappointed at the burly man in front of her, she had thought he would ask for more, but it was only a million. If Jiang He knew that Jiang Xian actually referred to a million as only, he would probably be speechless. But Jiang Xian was no fool, she would take whatever was offered. You mother fasterisk asterisk asterisk her. I'll chop you up first. Zhou Ruoyun's eyes were red, these days, she had spent too much mental energy trying to protect the only thing her mother had left behind. Now she just wanted to fight these scumbags. Miss Zhou, calm down. Zhang He and Lu Cixi also quickly stepped forward to stop Zhou Ruoyun. If she really impulsively attacked these people, it would be a loss. Facing the thugs' outrageous demands, Zhang Xian's eyes also gradually turned cold and dangerous. Those familiar with Zhang Xian knew that this was an extremely dangerous signal from her. Do you know that the law does not recognize debts and transactions from gambling? Zhang Xian was very clear about these legal provisions. What, what are you saying, we, we don't understand, I only know her dad owes money and won't pay back. Seeing the burly man say this, Zhang Xian naturally had anticipated it, she also knew that for these people, the law didn't have much deterrent power. So Zhang Xian continued. I recorded the incident where you extorted a million from me, want to hear it? The burly man, upon hearing the word extortion, became anxious. What do you mean, when did I extort? You, you can't just make baseless accusations. Seeing the burly man still denying, Zhang Xian had no choice but to play the recording from earlier. Hearing the recording on Zhang Xian's phone, the burly man's face changed slightly, but he still tried to remain calm. Just based on these few words? Jiang Xian saw that the burly man showed no signs of remorse, his eyes becoming even colder. Gambling, extortion, coercion, you may not know my capabilities, but sending you to prison for a few years would be no problem. If you don't believe me, you can try it, she said. The thought of this made Jiang Xian feel a headache coming on. If it really came to that, she would have to face her crazy sister again. Knowing that she had come to the Jiang family's lawyers for help just for a million, it would surely make Zhang Bai laugh to death. You, you, you. 
The burly man glanced at his two lackeys behind him, who were also shaking their heads in fear. He understood that this woman, who could easily take out a hundred thousand, was not someone they could handle. So, the burly man grabbed the bank card from the table, uttered a threat, and hurriedly left. Seeing them finally leave, Zhou Ruoyan sat on the ground and cried, even the kitchen knife was thrown aside. Perhaps that strong-willed personality was a color of protection unique to young girls. After a while, Zhou Ruoyun calmed down and looked apologetically at the people in front of her. I? I don't have money right now, can I write an IOU first? After saying this, Zhou Ruoyun lowered her head. She knew that her current embarrassed appearance must be very unsightly. Are you Miss Zhou? You don't need to repay this money, and I can even invest another hundred thousand, Zhang Xian said, shocking Zhou Ruoyun. I just want to invest. How about we split the profits of this store 3070? Ah. Zhou Ruoyun was a bit confused and quickly explained to Jiang Xian. Miss, I. Just call me Jiang Xian. Miss Jiang, the profit of this store may not even reach a hundred thousand in a year. Zhou Ruoyun was not afraid that Jiang Xian wanted something from her. She just wanted to remind Jiang Xian that her investment might not yield any returns. After all, a hundred thousand was not a small amount. After thinking for a moment, Jiang Xian decided to leave the decision to Jiang He. Jiang He, what do you think? To be honest, Jiang Xian had high hopes for this store. If they could achieve some success, the profits would definitely be substantial. Jiang He also pondered for a moment. Miss Zhou, why do you think there are no customers in your store? This question made Zhou Ruoyun blush. It was because of those troublemakers before. And? Zhang He didn't give Zhou Ruoyun any face and continued to question her. And? I'm not very good at cooking noodles. Indeed, Zhou Ruoyun admitted the truth, as the manager of a noodle shop, she couldn't even cook noodles. After all, she had just graduated from college. Being exposed by Zhang He, Zhou Ruoyun's cheeks turned even redder, making people want to take a bite. Is that so? I understand. Zhang Yi said after some thought, deciding to give it a try. Let me go to the kitchen and try. What did he mean? Zhang Yi could cook noodles too? Zhang Xian became interested, while Lu Cici looked at Zhang Yi with anticipation, as in the eyes of this young girl, Zhang Yi was an all-powerful figure. Why are you all looking at me like that? Zhang Yi couldn't help but smile wryly at the expressions of the two women. After all, with his years of orphanhood, it would be strange if he didn't know a bit of cooking, right? But in fact, the skill of cooking noodles was learned during his time at the Jiang family. Let's not dwell on that. With Jiang Yi's completion, a bowl of somewhat different noodles appeared in front of Jiang Xian and Lu Cici. You can try it first. Zhang He brought out three small bowls and handed them to the three women, indicating that they should each try a bit. Looking at the white soup base in front of them, the women were momentarily unsure of what Zhang He had added. But when they tasted the noodle soup, their eyes lit up for a moment. How is it? It's fresh, but the taste is not strange, very mild, right? Seeing the women nodding one after another, Zhang He finally relaxed, it seemed that his cooking skills were not forgotten. In fact, there was nothing to hide. Zhang He used to please Zhang Chong by serving him a steaming bowl of noodle soup every night when he worked until midnight. In order to enter the kitchen at midnight, he had to avoid others, and even got scolded by Zhang Qin several times for being greedy. But being scolded for just a bowl of noodles was really funny. Thinking back now, Zhang He felt that he was so despicable at that time. Others ignored him, but he still approached without hesitation. How did you do this? Zhou Ruoyun looked at Zhang He in disbelief. She originally thought Zhang He was just bragging, after all, Zhang He looked like just a high school student who could barely cook a meal. But she didn't expect Zhang He to be so talented. What she didn't know was that Zhang He had been an orphan for 16 years. As the eldest in the orphanage, he always took care of others. Ahem, it's a secret, I'll teach you later. A cautious mind is necessary. This was Jiang He's experience over the years. Is that settled? Jiang Xian wanted to take out another hundred thousand, but Jiang He stopped her. 
Dr. Jiang, the previous hundred thousand has already been counted as investment, I'll take care of the rest. With that, Zhang he transferred twenty thousand directly to Zhou Ruoyun. This is a deposit, I'll give you the remaining fifty thousand next month, profit sharing three seven. Before Jiang he could finish speaking, Zhou Ruoyun interrupted. Fifty fifty is fine, I don't really need that much. Zhou Ruoyun scratched her head, to be honest, she could only make noodles. All right, then Dr. Jiang gets 30%, and the remaining 20% will be split between me and Cece. With this said, Jiang Xian waved her hands repeatedly. I'll take 10%, the rest can be split between you two. She didn't want to squeeze money out of Jiang He, she just wanted to have some fun. After all, the money meant nothing to her. Unfortunately, the life of a rich woman is so boring. As for the subsequent contract signing, Jiang Xian said she would take care of it, as it was her expertise. Since it was already late, Jiang He first dropped Lu Cici off at her doorstep, then took Jiang Xian back to the school dormitory. Jiang Xian lived in the school dormitory for safety reasons, hiring a bodyguard as a school doctor was not appropriate, and she didn't want to attract too much attention. When Jiang He returned to the orphanage, it was around midnight, and he saw a figure at the door. Lin Ruoli saw Jiang He coming back and turned back into the house without saying a word to him. Ruoli, wait a moment. Jiang He wanted to chat with the girl, but she seemed not to hear him and continued without stopping. Helplessly, Jiang He could only shake his head. What's wrong with this girl lately? Is it the rebellious stage of adolescence? Well, when she was young, she liked to stick to her brother, but as she grew up, she didn't care about her brother anymore. This should be a normal phenomenon, right? So Jiang He didn't take this matter to heart and turned back into the house to study until 2 o'clock. After these days of hard work, Jiang He had caught up with the progress, but if he wanted to squeeze back into the top 10 of the grade, there was still a considerable gap, which required Jiang He to work even harder. And how to balance studying and working was also something Jiang He needed to take seriously. Lin Ruoli, who returned to her room at this time, also turned on her desk lamp to study, but no matter what, she couldn't calm down to study. Just thinking about how Jiang He got hurt protecting Lu Cici made her mind go crazy. Why, you have your family who loves you, why do you have to come and snatch my Jiang He? In Lin Ruoli's eyes, Jiang He was just a dispensable presence to Lu Cici, but Jiang He was her everything. But why did this person, who lacked nothing in love, have to come and take everything away from her, on what grounds? Thinking of this, Lin Ruoli almost broke the pen in her hand. And Lin Ruoli made up her mind to talk to Lu Cici tomorrow and ask her to return Jiang He to her. Of course, Jiang He was completely unaware of all this. Meanwhile, the Jiang family's villa was still brightly lit. Jiang Qin looked at the video in front of him, as well as the maid Xiaoshen who had resigned and been brought back by Jiang Huang, and for a moment didn't know what to say. Are all these true? Rubbing his forehead, Jiang Qin couldn't believe that Jiang Li had actually. Master, madam. This really has nothing to do with me. It was all ordered by the young master, I did it, and the young master even gave me some money and told me never to come back. Enough. Get out. Yes, yes, I'm leaving right now. Zhao Shen also hurriedly left, fearing that the next moment the anger would fall on her. And Jiang Huang, who had uncovered. The truth, was also shocked, she never thought that her beloved brother would do such a thing. Thinking back to how she had made Jiang He kneel in the rain all night without knowing the truth, she felt unsteady on her feet. No wonder, no wonder Jiang He had become so distant from her. And thinking back to how Jiang He would always bring her a bowl of steaming hot noodle soup when she stayed up all night, her heart ached. It really hurt. It turned out, she was not a good sister after all. Where is Jiang Li? Let him come back to see me. Master Jiang Li went to a classmate's house, he will be back tomorrow. Lu, the housekeeper who had been standing next to Jiang Qin, also answered. Call him. Tell him to come back to me. Just as Jiang Huang was about to call Jiang Li, she was stopped by Lu Ru. Huang Er, Xiao Li may have just been confused for a moment, he, he just. Mom. It's already this late, and you're still siding with Jiang Li. Jiang Huang only now realized how deep the Jiang family's favoritism towards Jiang Li was, and how deep their bias against Jiang Yi was. 
Lu Ru also hurriedly explained. I... I just don't want Xiao Li to be upset, he has no parents anymore, if we... Zhang Li has no parents to pity him, so Zhang Yi, who has parents but didn't receive the love she deserved, is not worthy of pity? Is it her fault to be an orphan for 16 years? Enough, let's not mention this matter for now, let's bring Zhang Yi back first. Zhang Qin kept rubbing his forehead and spoke up. Dad! How can we do that? Zhang Huang was anxious when she heard this, at the very least, this matter should be clarified in front of Zhang Li, how could they just let it go like this? Then what do you suggest? We just tell the coming of age ceremony for Xiao Li and the Zhang family, if this matter gets out, where will our Zhang family's face be? With these words, Zhang Huang fell silent as well. Well, let's bring Xiao Yi back first, we'll deal with the rest later, understood? This was the best solution Zhang Qin could come up with. Helpless, Zhang Huang could only nod in a daze, then turned and went back to her room. It wasn't until the next afternoon after school that Zhang Yi first took a day off with Zhang Xian, then sent Lu Cici home early. He was going to the Zhang family to return the 30,000 yuan to them. From now on, he would completely cut off contact with the Zhang family, and neither side would owe each other anything. He looked up at the already dim sky and let out a long sigh of relief. Lu Cici's thoughts were delicate, and it was natural for her to notice that Zhang Yi seemed different today, so she spoke up. Zhang Yi Gij, can I accompany you? Seeing Lu Cici's concerned expression, Zhang Yi also smiled. No need, it's just some small matters, you should go back quickly. With that, Zhang Yi turned and left. As Lu Cici watched Zhang Yi's departing figure, she also understood that Zhang Yi still saw her as a little sister. Zhang Yi had always pitied her in the end. But that was fine too, Lu Cici smiled brightly. This way, when she died, Zhang Yi wouldn't be so heartbroken. Suddenly, a figure jumped out from the bushes in the neighborhood. Lu Cici looked and couldn't help but laugh, wasn't this the little sister who had been secretly following her in Zhang Yi? Why are you laughing? Seeing Lu Cici laughing at her, Lin Ruoli immediately became like an angry little cat, glaring at Lu Cici. It's nothing, come upstairs and sit with your sister. Lu Cici gently brushed the dry leaves off Lin Ruoli's hair, she could probably guess why this little girl had come to find her. Of course, Zhang Yi had no idea about any of this, he was still on his way to the Zhang family, with 30,000 yuan in his bag. As Zhang Yi arrived at the gate of the Zhang family, the first person to spot him was the steward Lu. Steward Lu was surprised to see Zhang Yi, then quickly opened the gate for him to enter. Young master, you're finally back. Steward Lu looked at Zhang Yi with some excitement, had the master finally relented? He had always sympathized with Zhang Yi's situation in the Zhang family, although he couldn't openly speak up for Zhang Yi, he still took good care of him behind the scenes. Is Steward Lu doing well recently? Zhang Yi asked with a smile, he was not someone who couldn't distinguish right from wrong, he knew who treated him well. By the way, don't call me young master, I'm no longer part of the Zhang family. Young, young master, don't joke around, the master was just impulsive at that time. Steward Lu quickly changed the subject and led Zhang He to the living room of the Zhang family villa. At that moment, Zhang Qin was sitting in the living room reading the newspaper, he preferred this kind of printed news over a phone. Whether it was old-fashioned or nostalgic, it was hard to say. Master, the young master is back. Upon hearing this, Zhang Qin immediately put down the newspaper and stood up. Ah, you're back, please sit, I'll go call your mother and sister down. Upon hearing these words, Zhang Yi was stunned, wondering if he had misheard, was this really Zhang Qin? Uh, sure. It was a good opportunity to clarify things in front of everyone, so they wouldn't bother him again. When Lu Ru heard that Zhang Yi had returned, she hurried downstairs to try to hug him. But Zhang Yi dodged slightly and avoided her embrace. Lu Ru trembled slightly, her eyes red as she looked at her son who was cold to her. Xiao He, can mom hug you? Lu Ru knew she had wronged Zhang He, and now she just wanted to make it up to him. It's not necessary, I'll leave after I'm done. Zhang He said coldly. In the past, if Lu Ru had wanted to hug him, he would have been overjoyed. Do you know what a mother's embrace means to an orphan? But when Lu Ru first saw Zhang He return home, 
She only withdrew her outstretched arms towards him to avoid misunderstandings with Jiang Li. Do you know how disappointed Jiang He was at that time? But now, Jiang He no longer expects anything. Why do you want to leave? Xiao He, please, can you stay for mom? Even in the face of Lu Ru's plea, Jiang He remained silent. Then, the mother agreed to take you out for dinner tonight. Lu Ru seemed a bit flustered and quickly got up to go back to her room to tidy up. Watching Lu Ru's figure, Jiang He shook his head. It's already this late, why bother? Meanwhile, Jiang Zi, who was participating in the exhibition, left directly upon hearing that Jiang He had returned home, leaving only the disheveled staff behind in the wind. Staff, waiting online, what should we do if the exhibitors run away? Urgent. Of course, none of this was within Jiang Zi's consideration. After all, there was nothing more important than Jiang He coming home now. But what she didn't know was how much of a response her painting Broken Puppet would receive. At the same time, Jiang Huang, who had been using overtime at the company to numb himself, also received the news of Jiang He returning home. He immediately instructed his secretary to prepare the car and rushed downstairs at the fastest speed. This also frightened the secretary enough, thinking that Zhang Huang was going to attend some very important meeting, so she didn't dare delay and parked the car downstairs, waiting for Zhang Huang to arrive. At this time, Lin Ruoli followed Lu Cici back home. Would you like something to eat? Lu Cici asked Lin Ruoli, offering a pair of pink slippers with rabbit ears in front of her. Oomph, I'm not eating. Lin Ruoli directly refused, how could she accept food from her love rival? But the rumbling sound coming from Lin Ruoli's stomach made her blush slightly. Because she had been preoccupied with confronting Lu Cici, she had no appetite for breakfast and lunch and had been hungry until now. Lu Cici smiled and asked her to sit for a while while she went to cook something. Lin Ruoli had no choice but to sit for a while. Looking around Lu Cici's house, the first impression was clean and bright. In fact, Lu Cici came from a middle class family. Both parents were highly educated intellectuals. If they hadn't been busy with Lu Cici's affairs all these years, their lives could have been even better now. Lu Cici's parents were still at work, giving the two girls a chance to talk alone. Soon, Lu Cici brought out two steaming bowls of instant noodles. Ahem, sorry, I don't know how to cook anything else. Lu Cici was a bit embarrassed, but instant noodles were the only dish she couldn't mess up. It's okay. I don't mind. Lin Ruoli picked up one of the bowls, ate a little, she was indeed hungry. Seeing that Lin Ruoli didn't mind, Lu Cici breathed a sigh of relief. Then she asked Lin Ruoli softly. Do you like Jiang He, big brother? Put. Lin Ruoli was startled by the question, spitting out a bit of noodle soup. Are you okay? Lu Cici quickly took out a tissue to wipe Lin Ruoli's mouth. She should have waited for the girl to finish eating before asking. Cough, I can do it myself. Lin Ruoli took the tissue from Lu Cici's hand, how could she let her love rival wipe her mouth? How did you know? To be honest, Lin Ruoli admitted that she had a moment of panic just now. Was her behavior really that obvious? I guessed, but now it seems that my guess was correct. Lu Cici still had a gentle smile on her face, she wasn't angry about this matter. Why yes. I do like Jiang He, so what? Lin Ruoli was also direct, she liked Jiang He, so what? Why do you like Jiang He then? Lu Cici looked curiously at the angry yet cute girl in front of her. In an instant, Lin Ruoli also looked at Lu Cici with some incredulity. She originally thought that Lu Cici would turn against her directly when she heard that she also liked Jiang He. But now she was actually asking her why she liked Jiang He? Is this what rivals should do? Or is it that Lu Cici doesn't really love Zhang Yi, she just wants to play with him? Then she must not back down. She would never allow a bad woman to toy with Zhang Yi's feelings. Zhang Yi and I grew up together. Lu Cici handed a cup of warm water to Lin Ruoli again, wanting to know more about Zhang Yi's past and why this girl liked Zhang Yi. Growing up together, does that mean you will fall in love with each other? This made Lu Cici very curious, because she had no playmates since she was young, naturally she envied having a companion from childhood to adulthood. Of course not. 
So Lin Ruoli told Lu Cixi how Jiang He helped her seek justice after her parents died and became an orphan, how he had always protected her. Brother Jiang He once promised me that he would always protect me. As she spoke, Lin Ruoli's voice lowered, and she added a brotherly suffix to Jiang He's name. But he lied to me. He left me alone. Lin Ruoli's eyes filled with tears, containing both resentment towards Jiang He and love for him. After listening to all this, Lu Cixi was also silent for a moment. She didn't expect Jiang He to be so important in the heart of this somewhat proud girl. Perhaps, it was not excessive to call the relationship between the two as family. So, please, give brother Jiang He back to me. Lin Ruoli pleaded with Lu Cixi. She had never begged anyone before. Jiang He had taught her that in any situation, she must be self-reliant and strong, that others were unreliable and the only one she could rely on was herself. Over the years, Lin Ruoli had always kept this in mind. So she always strived to be the best in everything, academics, sports, she excelled through her own efforts. But in this matter, she was truly afraid. She was really afraid of losing Jiang He, losing this boy whom she already considered as family. Lu Cixi looked at the pitiful appearance of the girl in front of her and just smiled faintly. Actually, I don't have much time left to live. When this was said, Lin Ruoli could hardly believe her ears. You? What did you say? You don't have much time left to live? But Lu Cixi seemed to have accepted this fact already. Actually, I have had a heart condition since I was young, the doctor said I wouldn't live past 20. Seeing Lin Ruoli's shocked and speechless expression, Lu Cixi smiled again. And also, the reason brother Jiang he is willing to be with me is because. So Lu Cixi told the whole story of what happened between her and Jiang he to the girl in front of her. After listening, Lin Ruoli was in a daze. She, she was actually arguing with someone who wouldn't live long due to a heart condition. Thinking of this, Lin Ruoli felt extremely ashamed. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know about you. But before Lin Ruoli could finish her sentence, Lu Cixi interrupted her. Oh, it's okay, I've long stopped caring about these things. Then, how did you meet Jiang He? Do you really like Jiang He? Lin Ruoli knew that asking Lu Cixi like this was very impolite and disrespectful, but she still wanted to know if Lu Cixi's feelings for Jiang He were genuine. It was probably about five years ago, my parents took me to the hospital and we were targeted by human traffickers. Lu Cixi mentioned the events of that year, still feeling a sense of fear. They took advantage of my parents being out and deceived me into going with them. By the time I realized something was wrong, it was already too late. The terrifying scene was so desperate for a 13 or 14 year old girl. Hearing this, Lin Ruoli couldn't help but feel a tug at her heart. Just as I was about to be taken away by these human traffickers, Jiang He brother appeared. Perhaps he heard my cries for help, I only remember, at that moment Jiang He brother was holding a red brick and smashed it down on the leader. At that time, Jiang He's appearance was like a ray of hope shining into Lu Cixi's darkening world. I still remember to this day, the scene of Jiang He brother protecting me. The slender and weak body of a 13 or 14 year old boy may seem insignificant in front of those fierce human traffickers, even tiny. But in Lu Cixi's eyes at that time, Jiang He's body was like a mountain, unshakable. Despite Jiang He being small at that time, he was not foolish at all, immediately attracting the attention of passersby by shouting loudly, knowing he was no match for those human traffickers. And those human traffickers, seeing they were about to be exposed, dared not linger and could only flee in their car. But eventually, at the intersection outside the city, they were caught by the police. That time, the police followed the clues and rescued four or five abducted children who were about to be sold to remote mountain areas, Jiang He's credit was undeniable. If Jiang He hadn't appeared, I dare not think about what would have happened, perhaps I would have died in an unknown mountain area long ago. Saying this, Lu Cixi also lowered her head. But she ultimately, for her own selfish gain, used her illness to make Jiang He be with her. And Lin Ruoli now remembered, it seemed that there was another time when Jiang He came back all covered in injuries. At that time, Lin Ruoli asked him why he didn't stay there, maybe he could have been hailed as a hero. But Jiang He said he was not interested in those things. Now it seems, he's just a fool. 
A big fool. But why, why is it that this fool is so likable? Lin Ruoli chuckled self-deprecatingly, she also ended up liking this fool anyway? Since she had understood enough, Lin Ruoli didn't need to stay any longer. She got up and looked at Lu Cici in front of her. I'm sorry, Miss Lu, I was too impulsive earlier. Lin Ruoli was someone who clearly distinguished between love and hate, she couldn't demand a patient to give up her love, she couldn't do it, nor could she. It's okay, I didn't blame you. Lu Cici tried to get up, but Lin Ruoli pressed her down. Just as Lin Ruoli was about to leave, Lu Cici called out to her again. If I'm not here one day, Jiang Yi brother will be in your care. Lu Cici understood, she would leave this world sooner or later, and she was happy that there was such a good girl by Jiang Yi's side. Upon hearing this, Lin Ruoli also paused. You can't say that, you'll be fine. Seeing Lin Ruoli's anxious look, Lu Cici couldn't help but cover her mouth and smile lightly. She knew that this proud girl had a soft heart. Okay, I got it. Even after leaving Lu Cici's home community gate, Lin Ruoli was still somewhat dazed. She had actually thought about a patient just now. Oh no. It's all Jiang He's fault. Why, Jiang He, do you have to be so likable? Lin Ruoli squatted on the roadside, tears falling uncontrollably. At this moment in the Jiang family, apart from Jiang Mo who was studying in the capital and Jiang Jiang who refused to come back, most of the Jiang family members were present, including Jiang Li. When Jiang Li learned that Jiang Yi had returned to the Jiang family, it was like a bolt from the blue in his heart. He knew that Jiang Yi would never give up his identity as the young master of the Jiang family so easily. This is something that many people can't even dream of. Jiang Yi, since you insist on disturbing my life, don't blame me. Jiang Li clenched his fists secretly, he would never allow anyone to take his place in the Jiang family. But he never thought that this position originally belonged to Jiang He, and he had occupied it for so many years. Since everyone is here, let me say one thing. But before Jiang He could finish speaking, he was interrupted by Lu Ru. Xiao. Xiao He, can we talk about this later? Can we finish our meal first? Seeing Lu Ru's pleading expression, Jiang He originally planned to ignore her. But he thought that if he didn't clarify things today, the Jiang family might come to disturb him in the future, so he agreed. Okay, okay, Lu housekeeper, go prepare the car. Upon hearing this, the housekeeper Lu hurriedly went to arrange the car. However, Jiang Li, who was hidden in the shadows, was looking at Jiang He with a very resentful gaze. Those looks should have been directed at him. Why does Jiang He deserve it? When everyone arrived at the Platinum Duke, the waiters at the door had already received instructions and were waiting for the Jiang family. Upon entering the private room, Jiang Yi still casually found a corner to sit in, it was just a meal, same as before, finish eating early and leave early. Previously, whenever. They went out to eat, Jiang Yi always sat in a corner. Jiang Yi understood that this was just Jiang Li's way of excluding him, but he didn't care before, and now he wouldn't care even more. Xiao He, come sit next to Mom, okay? Seeing Jiang He sitting in the corner, Lu Ru quickly waved for Jiang He to come over. And Jiang Li, who was originally sitting next to Lu Ru, forced a smile but stood up directly. Yes, Jiang He, this seat was originally yours, I'll move over. Just as Jiang Li was about to burst into tears, Jiang He interrupted him directly, unable to stand Jiang Li's crying appearance. It's fine, I'm good here, I'm used to it. Seeing that Jiang He had no intention of getting up, Jiang Li relaxed slightly, but clenched his fists tighter under the table. Xiao He, come over, both you and Xiao Li sit next to mom, okay? Lu Ru still hoped that Jiang He and Jiang Li could get along, not knowing what she was thinking. No, please don't, if it makes your son Jiang Li angry, he might kick me out on the spot? Jiang He said lightly, knowing that whenever Jiang Li was upset, they would take it out on him, making Jiang He doubt if he was the adopted son. Hearing this, Lu Ru became anxious. Xiao He, Mom, why would Mom do that? Lu Ru wanted to explain, but Jiang He interrupted her directly. Jiang He tapped his ear. What? How could this happen? Do you want me to recount your past merits? Jiang He said indifferently, it was all in the past. Alright, sit down, can't you see your son Jiang Li's face turning pale? 
When Jiang Li heard Jiang Yi's comment, he quickly changed his expression, afraid of others discovering his thoughts. But what Jiang Yi didn't expect was that Jiang Zi and Jiang Huang actually took the initiative to sit next to Jiang Yi. Ha! Huh? What are you guys up to? Jiang Yi was a bit confused, Jiang Zi was one thing, but why was Jiang Huang joining in? Jiang Zi spoke first, her eyes lowered. Xiao He, it was my fault before, can you forgive your sister? As she spoke, Jiang Li's face instantly turned pale, his second sister was actually apologizing to Jiang Yi. How could this be possible? Okay, okay, I forgive you, alright? Jiang Zi did not expect Jiang Yi to agree, her eyes immediately lit up with joy as she took out the somewhat damaged puppet from behind. Xiao He, can you accept this? Sure, give it to me. Zhang Yi accepted it directly and casually put it in her bag. Seeing this, Zhang Zi was almost moved to tears. Zhang Yi actually forgave her. Xiao He, can you call me sister again? Looking at Zhang Zi's expectant expression, Zhang He shook her head. Let's talk about that later. Oh, okay, sister was too hasty. Zhang Zi quickly suppressed her emotions. It was indeed her impatience earlier. Jiang Yi's willingness to forgive her was already a big step forward, not to mention that Jiang Yi had just accepted her puppet. What she didn't know was that Jiang Yi now only saw her as a stranger. The puppet that had once been so important to Jiang Yi was now just an ordinary puppet. What's the point of forgiving a stranger? Anyway, he didn't care, so forgiveness was forgiveness. Jiang Huan wanted to say something to Jiang Yi, but she was interrupted. Let's eat first. Zhang He was afraid that these people would cause trouble again, and he didn't want to deal with it. The sooner they finished eating, the sooner he could return the money to the Zhang family, and then they would be even. Seeing this, Lu Ru and Zhang Qin didn't say anything more. Xiao He, have you been doing well these days? Lu Ru couldn't help but ask. After all, she hadn't seen Zhang He for days, and when she tried to visit her at school, she was stopped by security. And because she had been kicked out by the principal last time, no matter what Lu Ru said, the security wouldn't let her in. I'm doing great, sleeping well, eating well. Can't you see I've gained weight? These days, Zhang Yi had been living very comfortably, no longer facing the endless troubles from the Zhang family. If they didn't come to disturb her, that would be even better. Hearing this, Lu Ru and Zhang Qin felt a bit awkward. It turned out that Zhang Yi was doing even better after leaving the Zhang family. If this news got out, where would the Zhang family's face be? It was ridiculous to still care about the Zhang family's reputation at this point. Zhang Qin spoke up at the right time. Ahem, Xiao He, the second middle school is still not as good as Hai Gao. I'll arrange for you to transfer to Hai Gao in a few days. As soon as Jiang Qin finished speaking, there was a loud snap as Jiang Li accidentally broke his chopsticks. I? I'm sorry, I need to go to the restroom. With that, Jiang Li quickly left his seat. As for why Jiang Li's reaction was so strong, it was because Hai Gao was the best high school in the entire city, and he was a student there. Earlier, Jiang Qin had mentioned transferring Jiang Yi to Hai Gao, as the gap between the second middle school and Hai Gao was significant. Hai Gao mostly hired senior special education teachers, while the second middle school had regular teachers. Just this difference was enough to create a gap. In terms of educational resources, while the second middle school was still using chalkboards, Hai Gao had already switched to electronic screens, and even had its own laboratory. Even the cafeteria at Hai Gao had three floors. Of course, there was also a gap in student quality. Most of Hai Gao's students were either wealthy or talented emphasizing elite education. Entering Hai Gao was like stepping through a big door, not to mention the networking opportunities. Zhang Li washed his face and looked at his disheveled self in the mirror, feeling an inexplicable fear in his heart. He was afraid that Zhang He would really replace him. Previously, he had prevented Zhang He from entering Hai Gao by spreading rumors that she associated with unsavory characters outside of school and falsely accused her of wanting to have someone beat him up. This made Zhang Qin not send Zhang He to Hai Gao, fearing that Zhang He would tarnish the reputation of the Zhang family. Zhang He, if I can't make you go once, then you will never be able to go to Hai Gao in your lifetime. At the same time, 
Jiang Yi in the private room decisively refused. No need, Erzhang is fine. In fact, when Jiang Qin wanted to transfer him, he didn't want to go in the first place. He only reluctantly agreed to avoid upsetting Jiang Qin. Moreover, the principal and teachers at Erzhong were very nice to him, and he had a group of lovely classmates. Why would he want to go to a high school where he was unfamiliar? Whether he can get into a good university depends on the individual. It all depends on whether you want it or not. No matter where you are, as long as you work hard, there will definitely be rewards. This is also Jiang Yi's attitude towards his own life. He would not become a parasite like Jiang Li, who only knew how to play tricks and act pitiful. Disgusting. Jiang Qin also sighed. Xiao Yi, the gap between Erzhong and Haigao is not small, with your grades. Grades? You don't need to worry about that. Jiang Yi said lightly. But when it came to Jiang Yi's college entrance exam, Lu Ru couldn't help but speak up again. Xiao Yi, why don't you listen to your dad, your grades are still. In Lu Ru's impression, Jiang Yi's grades always seem to be at the bottom. Is it your good son Jiang Li who said my grades are at the bottom? Jiang Yi saw through Lu Ru's thoughts at a glance. He knew that it must be Jiang Li playing tricks. But it couldn't all be blamed on Jiang Li. Which parents don't care about their own son's grades? Should we believe everything others say? They never cared before, never asked, and now they care, is it too late? Ah! Xiao Li. Lu Ru was also speechless for a while. She seemed to always hear about Jiang Yi's grades from Jiang Li in the last mock exam, I was in the top 200 in the city. I shouldn't be worse than your son Jiang Li, right? Jiang Yi took a sip of water. He remembered that although Jiang Li's grades were good, he could only rank around 500 in the whole city. When this was said, Jiang Qin was also surprised. How could this be possible? In fact, there was still a big gap between Erzhong and Haigao. The top 100 in the city were mostly taken by Haigao. Zhang Yi, as one of the top 20 in Erzhong, barely squeezed into the top 200. To enter the top 100 in Erzhong, one had to be in the top 10, and even then it was a lower position. Xiao He, are you lying to us? When this was said, Jiang Qin immediately realized that he had said the wrong thing. However, Jiang Yi still didn't care about it. He was already used to these prejudices. If Jiang Li said he ranked in the top 200 in the whole city, they would probably be celebrating now. I didn't mean that. I know what you mean, you just think I'm lying, right? Jiang Yi said nonchalantly. Just when everyone thought Jiang Yi was going to present some evidence, he shrugged his shoulders. Why should I make you believe me? Jiang Yi indicated, who are you guys? Are we close? Why should I prove it to you? Seeing this, Zhang Zi quickly stepped forward to defuse the situation. Since Xiaoyi doesn't want to go to Haigao, then let's not go, Erzhong is also good. Yes, let's eat first. With that, the previously tense atmosphere finally eased. Suddenly, a dull thud was heard from outside the door. Everyone put down their chopsticks, and Jiang Qin got up to open the door, only to find Jiang Li fainted at the door. Xiao Li. Lu Ru saw Jiang Li faint, and even his forehead had a large bruise from the impact just now. Quick, take him to the hospital. Jiang Qin quickly picked up Jiang Li from the ground and hurried towards the door. When Jiang Zi and Jiang Huang reacted, the people had already disappeared, leaving only the two of them and Jiang He. All right, you two better catch up quickly, or else your dear brother Jiang Li might die without seeing you one last time. Jiang He still appeared indifferent, having long given up any hope on this group of people. As for Jiang Li, he was indeed ruthless towards himself, just thinking about the bruises from earlier made Jiang He wince. But why bother? Did he not want to return to the Jiang family? But he never planned to return to the Jiang family in the first place, he would pay back the money after dinner and leave. Why resort to such low-level tactics? Jiang Zi and Jiang Huang also looked ashamed, they never expected Lu Ru and Jiang Qin to leave Jiang He behind. Xiao He, we. Jiang Huang wanted to explain, but Jiang He interrupted directly. You two go ahead, I'll wait for you at your Jiang family villa, alright? 
Mainly because his bag and the 30,000 yuan he owed the Zhang family were still at the villa. Upon hearing that Zhang Yi wanted to return to the Zhang family, Zhang Zi and Zhang Huang also showed joy. Then, it settled, Xiao He, you must wait for your sister to come back. Until the two women left, Zhang Yi watched their backs and sat in place for a long time. He remembered a time in his past life when they finally agreed to take him on a trip at Zhang Li's kind request. At that time, he was truly happy. He had never imagined that as an orphan for 16 years, he would have the opportunity to travel with his family. Those three days were perhaps the happiest days since Jiang Yi arrived at the Jiang family. After all, it was a trip, and even though Jiang Yi was still ignored, no one would scold him. Lu Ru even personally bought him a bottle of drink. You heard that right, just a bottle of drink, but because it was bought by Lu Ru, he couldn't bear to take a sip for half a day. When one is at their lowest, even just a bottle of drink would be treasured by Jiang Yi. It wasn't until later that Zhang Yi realized that Zhang Li's previous kindness was just a means to toy with him. Similar to today's situation, Zhang Li was still unconscious. So, their attention once again focused on Zhang Li. When Zhang Yi came to his senses, he was alone in the same spot. Ha ha, the scene is repeating itself. Zhang Yi suddenly laughed self-deprecatingly. He didn't know. How he got back? He just knew that the staff at the scenic area called Zhang Qin and Lu Ru's phone multiple times, but no one answered. Just because they were afraid of disturbing Zhang Li in the ward, they turned off their phones and completely forgot about Zhang He. In the end, the local police station sent Zhang He back. Why didn't Zhang He use his phone? His phone was still in their car at that time. Is it ridiculous or not? Zhang He was indeed ridiculous. After a moment's pause, Zhang Yi finally hailed a cab back to the Zhang family villa. No one knew what Zhang Yi was thinking during that moment. Perhaps it was relief, or maybe relaxation, but most likely, it was acceptance. Meanwhile, after Zhang Li was taken to the emergency room, Lu Ru remembered Zhang Yi's existence. I want to go back and find Xiao He. Instantly, Lu Ru's face turned pale. She had just made up her mind to treat both of them fairly. How could she just leave Jiang Yi like that? Fortunately, Jiang Huang and Jiang Zi arrived in time. Upon hearing that Jiang Yi had already returned to the Jiang family, Lu Ru breathed a sigh of relief. I was too hasty just now, I will definitely make it up to Xiao He when I go back. At the same time, there was a hint of joy in Lu Ru's heart. Since Jiang Yi was willing to return to the Jiang family, it meant that he was willing to stay, allowing her to better compensate Jiang Yi. But this time, she might be disappointed. What Jiang Yi didn't know was that Lu Yu, who had been harassing Jiang Xian before, was in the next private room. At this moment, Lu Yu was drinking until his face turned red and his neck thickened. He never thought that Jiang Xian would actually like a pretty boy, and even said she liked them young. Drink. Drink it all. There were also two little brothers sitting next to Lu Yu. Even though the Lu family behind Lu Yu was far inferior to the Zhang family, he was still a super-rich second generation. Having two little brothers in this seaside city was just too normal. But at this moment, these two little brothers were also somewhat afraid as they looked at Lu Yu. Tonight, Lu Yu had already drunk 18 cans of 500 milliliters Qingdao beer. If he continued like this, they were afraid that Lu Yu might die suddenly. Big brother. Why don't we take a break first and order some food? The taller and thinner little brother quickly grabbed Lu Yu's hand that was trying to pour alcohol into his mouth. To be honest, Lu Yu was indeed generous to them. Without Lu Yu, they might never have dared to come here in their lifetime. Whoa, whoa, I don't want to, why, why are you abandoning me? With these words, the two little brothers looked at each other in surprise. No way, would a super rich second generation like Lu Yu act like a lapdog? That's not cool at all. The two brothers glanced at each other and nodded. Big brother, can you talk to us? We also want to learn from you. Seeing the two little brothers asking him actively, and now that he was drunk, he naturally had no secrets. She, she actually hooked up with a pretty boy six years younger than her. What does that pretty boy have that I don't? With these words, the slightly chubby little brother was also shocked. What does he mean, an old cow eating tender grass? 
Big brother, is it possible that they are just pretending in front of you? Unexpectedly, the tall and thin little brother hit the nail on the head. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. Jang Xian is a clean freak, how could she tolerate someone eating her leftovers? But what Liu Yu didn't know was that when Jiang Xian handed the dessert to Jiang He, it was bitten by Lu Cixi. Seeing his big brother starting to drink heavily again, the two little brothers had no choice but to drag Lu Yu out first. What are you doing? Let me go. I want to drink more. Woo woo. It wasn't until they reached the side of the bridge, where the slightly cool evening breeze blew, that Lu Yu became slightly more sober. Big brother, we can't let that kid be so arrogant. We have to think of a way. With these words, Lu Yu also got up from the ground, swaying unsteadily. Right. We must make that kid pay, damn it, how dare he try to steal my woman. I'm fed up with it. Seeing Lu Yu regain his fighting spirit, the two little brothers breathed a sigh of relief. Big brother, do you think that kid might still be a student? According to the tall and thin little brother's deduction, Jiang He was very likely to be a student at school, and it was very possible that he was a high school student. A student? Lu Yu carefully recalled the situation at that time. Suddenly, Lu Yu seemed to remember something. I remember. He is a student at Jiang Xian's school. I've seen him. With Lu Yu shouting, it also attracted the attention of passers-by but he naturally didn't care about them now. He remembered that when he went to the school infirmary to find Jiang Xian, Jiang He was by Jiang Xian's side. No wonder Jiang Xian had been rejecting him all along, she had already hooked up with someone else. So he was just a clown. Woo woo. Big brother, pull yourself together. I have an idea. With these words, Lu Yu also instantly became energized. What idea? Tell me quickly. Seeing Lu Yu's excited look, the tall and thin little brother slowly revealed his plan. Big brother, think about it. Since Miss Jiangxin is the school doctor, and that kid is a student at the school, do you think the school would allow such a relationship to exist? Yeah. How could the school possibly agree to them being together? Upon hearing this, Lu Yu became even more excited. How did he not think of this before? The tall and thin little brother continued, let's report it to the school first. They will definitely not withstand the pressure from the school and separate. Then, when Miss Jiangxin is heartbroken, won't your chance come, big brother? It has to be said, this tall and thin little brother is truly talented. But, I've been pursuing Jiangxin for so long, and still haven't succeeded. Although Lu Yu is shameless enough and patient enough, he really doesn't know how to please Jiangxin. Big brother, have you heard of a hero saving a beauty? Since ancient times, beauties love heroes. When I and Daswan pretend to be hooligans to bully Miss Jiangxin, big brother, you can appear and save Miss Jiangxin. Won't that work out? After listening to the explanation from the tall and thin little brother, Li Yu became even more excited. All right, all right. When it succeeds, you guys will definitely be rewarded. With these words, the two little brothers were also overjoyed. So now, he he. Lu Yu directly called his contacts in Haishu to help find the phone number of the principal of Jiangxin School. Looking at the number on his phone, Lu Yu dialed without hesitation. Hello? Is this the principal of Erzhong? I want to report. When Jiang Yi returned to the Jiang family villa, the housekeeper Lu was already waiting at the door. But seeing Jiang He coming back alone, he was also puzzled. Young master, why did you come back alone? Where are the master and madam? The housekeeper Lu still thought that this time Jiang He would stay at the Jiang family. They are at the hospital accompanying their good son Jiang Li. Jiang He said indifferently. With these words, the housekeeper Lu was also surprised. Today was the day when young master Jiang He returned home, no matter what, someone should stay to accompany young master Jiang He. Young master, please wait a moment, I will go and tidy up your room for you. But just as the housekeeper Lu was about to turn around, he was stopped by Jiang He. Grandpa Lu, there's no need to trouble yourself, I won't stay here. 
Zhang Yi shook his head, he was no longer the young master of the Zhang family. Young master. The two of them were silent for a moment, and it was Zhang Yi who broke the silence first. Take me in first, I will wait for them to come back and clarify some things. When they arrived at the Zhang family villa, the substitute nanny Zhang was just tidying up the room. When she saw Zhang He, she was both surprised and delighted. Why young master? Why you're back? Zhang He looked at the nanny Zhang, who used to often give him snacks, and felt a bit uncomfortable for a moment. Zhang, how have you been lately? In this home, the warmth he received came from these unfamiliar people. They may not have high status, but their kindness was deeply ingrained. I've been good, young master. Will you be leaving again this time you're back? With these words, everyone fell into silence once again. At this moment, Zhang seemed to understand something. Young master, I'm just a worker and don't understand much about big things, but I believe that a good child like you will be blessed by heaven. Thank you, Zhang. Zhang he nodded solemnly. Thank you for these, they were always left for you by me. Saying that, Zhang took out a small white plastic bag from her pocket, filled with candies or small snacks like pastries. Even though Zhang Qin had said she would quit if she gave snacks to Zhang Yi again. Zhang Yi did not refuse, but his eyes welled up for a moment. Zhang, can I go to my room to take a look? Zhang Yi didn't know why, he just wanted to take a look. That somewhat cramped room was exactly where he had died in his past life. Upon opening the room, a sour feeling surged in his heart, everything was just the same. Lu the housekeeper also tugged on An Zhang's sleeve, indicating to give Jiang Yi some time alone. It was still the same somewhat crude small bed, with the desk still holding those small items. However, what surprised Jiang Yi was that the potted plant Jiang Huang had given him before was still thriving, obviously being taken care of. Could it be Jiang Huang? Jiang Yi shook his head, not caring about these things. Suddenly, Jiang Yi saw a photo frame on the table. The only photo inside the frame was a group picture taken by Lu the housekeeper with his phone when he returned to the Jiang family at that time. Originally, they had planned to take a formal family portrait at a photo studio, but due to fear of Jiang Li's overthinking, they kept postponing it until now. Jiang Yi gently wiped the dust off the surface of the frame, looking at his past self in the photo, couldn't help but smile slightly. Things had changed, the Jiang Yi who used to cherish family affection had long died in the fire of his past life. Taking out the photo inside, because it was taken with a phone, it was a bit blurry. Zhang Yi gently tore off the edge of the photo with himself, then put the photo back. Looking at the family in the photo, Zhang Yi nodded in satisfaction. Without him, this family should be happy, right? This way, they wouldn't disturb his life anymore, they would meet as strangers. At this moment, Zhang Yi took out the puppet that Zhang Zi had just returned to him. First, it was broken by Jiang Li, then smashed by Jiang He, so even though Jiang Zi repaired it very carefully, the puppet's modeled cracks couldn't be hidden. Why bother? Jiang He shook his head, remembering what Jiang Zi had said to him at that time. Jiang He, what's gotten into you? It's just a broken puppet, isn't it? Jiang Li didn't mean it. Yeah, Jiang Li didn't mean it, he was just careless, too fond of it. So why bother returning this puppet to him now? Perhaps, the previous Jiang he did indeed treasure this puppet. But now, what Jiang Zi said earlier was right, it was just a broken puppet. Jiang He thought for a moment, then placed the puppet back on the table. I'll leave you here. Keeping it by his side would only add to his longing, it was better to leave it here, along with these potted plants and the photo frame. From then on, Jiang He had completely let go of any attachment to the Jiang family. He just didn't know what Jiang Zi would think when she saw it. Goodbye. Jiang He stood up, took one last look, and gently closed the door. It wasn't until the early hours of the morning that they returned from the hospital as a family. Jiang He had waited for almost two hours. The first thing Lu Ru did when she got home was to try to hug Jiang He. But the result was the same. Jiang He still avoided her. I'm sorry, Xiao Wu, mom was just too anxious and forgot about you, mom will tidy up your room now, okay? After saying that, Lu Ru was about to go upstairs to tidy up the room, naturally not letting Jiang He stay in the nanny room anymore. No need, 
I'll leave soon. With these words, Jiang Zi and Jiang Huang were surprised and quickly reached out to hold Jiang Yi's hand. Xiao. Xiao Wu, didn't you say you would wait for us to come back to the Jiang family? Why do you want to leave? Jiang Yi gently pulled his hand out of their grasp. Yes, I just said I would wait for you to come back, not that I would live in the Jiang family, right? Lu Ru also looked at Jiang Yi with teary eyes. Xiao Wu, I know you still resent mom, but your brother. It has nothing to do with Jiang Li, Jiang Yi waved his hand, creating the current situation. Jiang Li's contribution was indeed significant, but if the Jiang family could treat Jiang Yi fairly, how could Jiang Yi have ended up like this today? Prejudice is the blade that killed Jiang Yi. At this moment, Jiang Qin also stepped forward to speak. Xiao He, it was father who wronged you before. As long as you are willing to come back, I will immediately announce to the outside world that you are the young master of our Jiang family. Jiang Qin believed that Jiang Yi left the Jiang family because of these false titles. Mr. Yi Jiang, don't you think these are things you should have done long ago? But how did the Jiang family act? They treated him as a maid's child. Is the so-called reputation of the Jiang family really that important? Jiang Yi now wishes he really was the child of a maid. Perhaps the various pains of his past life would not have happened to him. Jiang He. Don't push your luck. Jiang Qin cououldn't hold back anymore and roared at Jiang He directly. This Jiang He still called him Mr. Jiang. Could it be that he really wanted to leave this family? Lao Jiang. Lu Ru hurriedly stepped forward to stop the imminent outburst of Jiang Qin. Look, clearly it was your fault, but now it seems like I'm the culprit. Jiang Yi waved his hand, even now Jiang Qin still hadn't realized his mistake. What did I do wrong? Without the Jiang family, where would your stinky brat be now? Jiang Qin continued to angrily question Jiang Yi. Over the years, he had poured all his efforts into the Jiang family, and he would never allow anyone to tarnish the reputation of the Jiang family. Not even himself. Is that so? Then how did I survive these 16 years? Jiang He also did not back down. He had already backed down enough before, and now he didn't want to back down anymore. You. With these words, Jiang Qin was instantly speechless. In these 16 years, I have never relied on the Jiang family. Even in the year you brought me back, I still did not rely on the Jiang family once. Jiang He calmly recounted the events of these years. He was not complaining or lamenting for himself but simply telling the Jiang family that he was the young master of the Jiang family, and hardly anyone knew about it. By leaving the Jiang family, he would not cause any harm to them. I'm leaving, shouldn't you be happy? Jiang He smiled self-deprecatingly. Isn't this the best outcome? Xiao He, what are you, what are you saying, how could we be happy if you leave? Lu Ru's voice trembled as she spoke. What had they done to Jiang He over the years to make him think like this about them? If I leave, won't your good son, good brother Jiang Li, no longer have to worry about you driving him away? Xiao Li is not. Lu Ru wanted to say something, but was directly interrupted by Jiang He. I know, Xiao Li is so kind, how could he worry about these things? Right? Mom didn't mean that. For a moment, Lu Ru didn't know what to say. All right. Here is the 3,000 yuan we owed you before, do you want to count it? When Jiang Yi took out 3,000 yuan from his bag and placed it in front of the Jiang family, everyone looked at each other in silence for a moment. Jiang Huan was even more surprised. Jiang Yi, where did you get this money? Jiang Huang was afraid, was Jiang Yi really being supported by that Jiang Xian? No, she had to go find Jiang Xian herself and ask clearly. Jiang He was still a student, how could Jiang Xian? Don't worry, it's clean money, earned honestly. After speaking, Jiang He was about to turn and leave, but was stopped by Jiang Zi. Jiang Zi at this moment had lost her previous arrogance and looked at Jiang He with tearful eyes. Xiao He, didn't you say you forgave your sister before? Please, don't go, okay? Looking at Jiang Zi's pitiful appearance, Jiang He still had no intention of staying, just quietly pulled his hand out. Yes, Miss Jiang, I have forgiven you a long time ago, so please, Miss Jiang, don't disturb me anymore. At this moment, 
Jiang Zi finally understood that Jiang He now only treated her as a stranger. Jiang He would never call her sister again. After Jiang He left, the Jiang family fell into a long silence. Jiang Qin never dreamed that Jiang He really didn't care about the position of the young master of the Jiang family. Little He, will he come back, right? Lu Ru asked Jiang Qin beside her in a daze. She already understood that Jiang He had made up his mind to leave the Jiang family but still wanted to numb herself with Zhang Qin's answer. Mom, little he really left. Zhang Huang finished the sentence and went upstairs in a daze. This time, Zhang He would never sweetly call her sister again, never again bring her a bowl of steaming hot noodle soup when she stayed up late. Back in his room, Zhang Huang squatted in the corner of the room, a tear falling from the corner of his eye. Why, why? Not give little he justice. Zhang Huang didn't understand why Zhang Qin and Lu Ru were unwilling to speak out about the injustice Zhang he suffered in the past, just for the ridiculous reputation of the Zhang family? If justice was given to Zhang He, would he, would he stay? But Zhang Huang knew that Zhang He had been hurt too deeply by the Zhang family. I'm sorry, little He, it's sister's fault, I'm sorry. Zhang Huang buried his head deeply in his arms, crying silently. If someone saw Jiang Huang in this state, they would surely be shocked. What kind of thing could turn this decisive and powerful businesswoman into this state? Suddenly, Jiang Huang seemed to think of something, his eyes becoming sharp again. Jiang Xian If Jiang Xian really laid a hand on Jiang He, even if he had to risk it, he would fight Jiang Xian to the end. She had been crazy in front of Jiang Xian before, now she was going to cause trouble for Jiang Xian for Jiang He. She really didn't know what she was thinking. At the same time, Jiang Zi was also in a daze. Why did it turn out like this? What exactly happened? Why? Why did Jiang Yi choose to leave without hesitation? Don't you really know? Jiang Zi suddenly thought of something and ran towards the nanny room where Jiang Yi used to live. At this moment, she still held a glimmer of hope in her heart, hoping that she was just thinking too much, that Jiang Yi didn't. But when she pushed open the door, that puppet was placed on the table. Seeing this puppet, Zhang Zi couldn't help but cry out in pain. Little He. As for everything that happened in the Zhang family, Zhang He naturally had no idea. Walking back to the orphanage, Zhang He felt his whole body relax. Finally, there were no more debts between him and the Zhang family. The evening breeze was refreshing, and the summer night wind was very comfortable. Even though it was already early morning, there were still many barbecue stalls bustling with people. To be honest, Zhang He used to envy these people very much, free and carefree, not having to care about what others thought. In other words, living for themselves. However, now Jiang He would also live for himself. When Zhang He returned to the orphanage, a familiar figure was still standing at the entrance. When Zhang He saw that it was Lin Ruali, he thought she would run away like before. But this time, Lin Ruali actually walked towards him on her own. Suddenly, Lin Ruali took a quick step and rushed into Jiang He's arms. Jiang He was also stunned, feeling the warmth in his arms, he smiled and patted the little girl's head. What's wrong? Why didn't you talk to me before? Once these words were spoken, Lin Ruali fiercely twisted around Jiang He's waist. Ouch! What are you doing? Oomph! Just wanted to tease you a bit, is that not allowed? Lin Ruoli still had that proud and spoiled look, which made Jiang He feel like the Lin Ruoli from before had returned. But the next moment, Lin Ruoli burst into tears. Brother Jiang He. You're a big idiot, a big fool, a big dummy. The young girl placed all her adolescent naive emotions on Jiang He. But why couldn't Jiang He feel it? Seeing Lin Ruoli cry, Jiang He also scrambled to comfort her. Why are you crying? Did someone bully you? Tell me, I'll go. It's you who bullied me. Lin Ruoli pointed at Jiang He, with a pitiful look in her eyes still teary, truly making one feel sorry for her. Ah! How did I bully you? Jiang He touched his nose, did he bully this little girl? Anyway, it's you, why do you care so much? Lin Ruoli couldn't possibly say that she liked Jiang He, who already had another girlfriend, right? She would absolutely not say it. Absolutely. 
If anyone should say it, it should be Jiang Yi first. Indeed, as the saying goes, the proud often lose out in love, and anime never deceives me. All right, all right, I was wrong, is that enough, miss? Oomph, that's about right. This time, Lin Ruoli forgave Jiang Yi just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Then, Lin Ruoli hugged Jiang Yi tightly again, this time, she spoke to him as a younger sister. Lu Cici is a good girl, you're not allowed to bully her, got it? After saying that, Lin Ruoli let go of Jiang Yi and turned back to her room. Jiang Yi watched the little girl's back with a slight smile, perhaps this is what they call harsh words hide a kind heart? Early the next morning, as soon as Jiang Yi arrived at school, he was taken away by the principal at the school gate. Naturally, Jiang Yi was confused. Principal, how come you have time to come find me? The principal glanced at Jiang Yi, he actually didn't quite believe what the person on the phone had said earlier, so he wanted to test this kid Jiang Yi first. If Jiang Yi really showed any signs, it would be better to snuff it out early. What? Can't I come to see you? The principal stood with his hands behind his back, looking calm and composed. Don't bully me just because I'm young. Jiang Yi naturally didn't believe the principal's words. All right, come with me to the office. I've already informed your class teacher, and I want to ask why your grades have dropped significantly recently. The principal had always been watching Jiang Yi's efforts, but for some reason, in the past year, Jiang Yi's grades had been declining, although they were gradually improving recently. But you should know, Jiang Yi used to be in the top 10 of his grade, with hopes of getting into Qingbei University. In the last joint exam, he was stable in the top 20 of the grade, but before that, it was even more extreme, dropping to the 200th place in the grade. Ahem, all right then. There was no choice, so Jiang Yi followed the principal back to the office. Sit down, I'll make you some tea. The principal was about to get up, but Jiang Yi stopped him. How can I let you do it yourself? I'll do it. Ha! Huh? Why are you so proactive today? The principal was also a bit surprised, feeling that Jiang Yi seemed a bit different from before. But then he thought, this kid is so attentive, could it be because of Dr. Jiang? Is that so? Isn't it just to show my respect to you? This statement from Jiang Yi was sincere, after all, the principal had really helped him a lot. But because of the Jiang family before, he had fallen behind in his grades, so the principal must be quite disappointed in him. Even so, when Lu Ru came to the school to find him before, the principal still firmly believed in him and protected him. You still have a bit of conscience. The principal took a small sip of the teacup handed to him by Jiang He. Ha! Huh? Is this kid good at making tea too? No. The principal instantly realized something was wrong. What kind of tea did you brew? Just the tea from your cupboard. Jiang He also leisurely took a sip. Hmm. You know what, it's really good. You you you. The principal suddenly felt a surge of anger. This was the premium Da Hong Pao his old comrade gave him. He rarely touched it himself, but this kid just poured so much at once. Forget it, after drinking my premium Da Hong Pao, study well and show some character, you know? Jiang He naturally nodded. He understood that the principal was doing it for his own good, so he would naturally study hard and try to save face for this old man. But he also thought that the tea was really good, and he would ask the principal for some before leaving. The principal said, should I just give you my life too? Suddenly, the next words from the principal caught Jiang He off guard. Jiang He, are you dating Dr. Jiang? Put. With these words, Jiang He directly sprayed out the tea leaves. Cough cough, what did you say, principal? Jiang Yi wiped the tea off his mouth, unable to believe what he had just heard. You kid, you've been fooling around, be honest, why have you been going to the medical room every day after school? It wasn't that the principal disagreed, but student in school doctor dating was taboo. The person on the phone before said that if he didn't investigate thoroughly, they would report it to the education bureau. And he knew about Jiang Xian's background which was formidable to the point of being terrifying. If it was really exposed, then the one who would be expelled would definitely be Jiang Yi. His future would be ruined. This is not a trivial matter, be honest with me. 
Zhang Yi calmed down at this point. Principal, you misunderstood. The reason I go to the medical room every night is because I fainted before, and I didn't have money to pay Dr. Zhang, so I chose to work for her to pay off the debt. Then what about you and Dr. Zhang entering and leaving the campus together? And late at night, how come you brought Dr. Zhang back to school? The principal was afraid that Zhang Yi and Zhang Xian had done everything they were supposed to do, and it would be really hard to explain later. Ha! Huh? Principal, you really misunderstood. Let me explain to you slowly. So, Zhang Yi told the principal about the dinner he had with Zhang Xian before, no, attending the banquet. CC was there too. CC? The principal glanced at Zhang Yi, who instantly realized his mistake and corrected himself. It's Lu Cici, a classmate of mine. She is a good friend of Dr. Zhang. After listening, the principal fell silent for a moment. All right, you come with me to talk to Dr. Zhang in person. Ha! Huh? Isn't that necessary? What? Are you afraid? The principal was afraid that Zhang Yi would lie, and it would be disastrous if it couldn't be salvaged. It's not that. However, how to explain to Dr. Zhang? Zhang Yi was also a little panicked, hoping that Zhang Xian wouldn't misunderstand. But all of this was overheard by Lu Cici, a teacher who came to deliver exam papers outside the door. Lu Cici couldn't help but tighten the hand that was delivering the exam papers. It's impossible, how could Zhang Yi be with Dr. Zhang? When Zhang Yi followed the principal to the medical room, Zhang Xian was treating a student, and Lu Cici was cautiously following behind Zhang Yi. Take some cold capsules, keep warm, and drink more hot water usually. After the student left, the principal led Zhang Yi inside. Ha, huh, principal? And Zhang Yi? How did you guys come here? Zhang Xian was a bit confused. Why were these two looking for her? Dr. Jiang, I came to talk to you about something. The principal was straightforward and directly mentioned the previous report about Zhang Xian being in a relationship with a student. Zhang Xian was puzzled, who would be so bored to do this? Suddenly, Zhang Xian remembered someone. Lu Yu. Needless to say, besides this person, who else would do such a boring thing? Zhang Xian had no choice but to explain the situation to the principal. That's good, now that it's explained, I feel relieved. Hearing Zhang Xian and Zhang Yi's explanation, the principal also felt at ease. And Lu Cici, who was eavesdropping at the door, also breathed a sigh of relief. She knew that Zhang Yi wouldn't. Thinking about how kind Dr. Zhang Xian was to her, Lu Cici felt ashamed and her face turned slightly red. Then I and this kid will go back first, sorry for disturbing Dr. Zhang. Just as the principal and Zhang Yi left, a woman in a refined professional outfit and black high heels appeared at the door of the medical office. Zhang Xian was thinking about how to teach Lu Yu a lesson and make him understand that she was not someone to be trifled with. Suddenly, the door of the medical office opened again. Zhang Xian thought it was a student coming for treatment, but to her surprise, a somewhat unfamiliar woman walked in. Who are you? Zhang Xian carefully recalled the woman in front of her and suddenly remembered that she was the one who claimed to be Zhang Yi's sister at the banquet. However, Zhang Xian had no good feelings towards this person. What are you here for? Did this woman come today for cooperation? What am I here for? You should ask yourself what you've done. With these words, Zhang Xian was even more confused. What was this woman talking about? What do you mean? What have I done? Seeing that Zhang Xian was not admitting it, Zhang Chong slapped the table fiercely and looked at Zhang Xian fiercely. What did you do to Zhang Yi? Seeing that it was related to Zhang Yi again, Zhang Xian couldn't help but feel a headache. What was happening today? What does my relationship with Zhang Yi have to do with you? Zhang Xian responded without showing any weakness. Not to mention that she and Zhang Yi had no crossing boundaries, even if they did, what did this woman count for? I am Zhang Yi's sister. Do you think it doesn't matter? Oh? Zhang Yi's sister? With these words, Zhang Xian looked at Zhang Cho mockingly. Are you still daring to call yourself Zhang Yi's sister? 
How did you slander Zhang Yi in front of me before? Have you forgotten? Now you claim to be Zhang Yi's sister. Zhang Xian's eyes suddenly became extremely sharp. Isn't that too shameless? Hearing Zhang Xian's words, Zhang Chong lost her previous arrogance. She also remembered the nonsense she said to Jiang Xian before in order to cooperate with her. I? I before. Regardless, I am still Jiang Yi's sister. Jiang Chong quickly shook her head, almost being led astray by Jiang Xian. Let's not talk about that for now, are you keeping Jiang Yi? With these words, Jiang Xian almost spat out blood. What are you saying? Previously, someone reported that she was in a relationship with Jiang He, which she thought was outrageous enough, but now they were directly accusing her of keeping Jiang He? Don't try to deceive me. Otherwise, I won't let you off. With these words, Jiang Chong snorted. Did they all think she was easy to bully? Even if I didn't, what can you do even if I did keep him? With a bang, Jiang Chong pushed the chair behind her and grabbed Jiang Xian's collar. What did you say? Looking at Jiang Chang's angry appearance, Jiang Xian still calmly shook off Jiang Chang's hand, then tidied up her own collar. At this moment, Jiang Xian's voice was filled with coldness. What? Do you want to challenge my Jiang family? The Jiang family has never been afraid of anyone. Jiang Xian raised her nose slightly and said lightly, What qualifications do you have to question me? Just because you are Jiang Yi's sister? Where were you when Jiang Yi fainted due to low blood sugar? Where were you when Jiang Yi had no money for medical treatment? Now you remember to question her, but where were you before? What did you say? Little he fainted before? Jiang Chong was also in a panic after hearing this. How did she not know about this? Of course, she wouldn't know, as Jiang Yi had already severed ties with the Jiang family at that time, how could she possibly know? Ha ha! Do you still have the face to ask? Jiang Xian also said without hesitation. In any case, you better not have any ideas about little he. After speaking, Jiang Chong, who knew she was in the wrong, could only turn and leave. She would wait for Jiang He to finish school and ask her in person. Seeing Jiang Chong leave, Jiang Xian also muttered to herself that she was crazy. It wasn't until the afternoon when Jiang Yi came to the school infirmary to help out that she learned about Jiang Chang's visit. And Lu Cici, who was beside her, kept her head down, unable to look at Jiang Xian again, still feeling ashamed for doubting Jiang Xian before. Moreover, when Jiang Yi returned home, she immediately told her about the incident. By the way, Dr. Jiang, do you know who reported to the principal? Hearing this, Jiang Xian frowned slightly but ultimately did not express her thoughts to Jiang Yi. After all, Li Yu was not someone Jiang Yi could deal with. I'm not sure for now, but don't worry, leave this matter to me. Forget it, let's go find her sister Jiang Bai. But the thought of Jiang Bai, that lunatic, gave Jiang Xian a headache. Just then, Jiang Yi suddenly received a phone call. Looking at it, it was Zhou Ruoyun, the girl from the noodle shop. On the other end of the phone, Zhou Ruoyun hesitated for a long time and couldn't say a complete sentence. But Jiang Yi could hear a hint of choking in her voice. Something's not right. Don't worry, take your time to speak, okay? Jiang Yi comforted softly, while putting the phone on speaker, to reassure Lu Cici. Jiang Yi, my, my sister is sick and needs 50,000 yuan. Zhou Ruoyun on the phone tried to hold back her tears knowing that borrowing money from someone she had just met would surely be seen as a gold digger or even a scammer. But she had already borrowed from all her relatives, and her relatives all knew that her family had a gambling addict, and she was just a recent college graduate, how could they be willing to lend her money? Even online lending had blacklisted her due to her father, who borrowed money and never paid it back. Since her mother passed away, it was just her and her sister relying on each other. She had tried very hard to face life, Transforming from a quiet girl to a foul-mouthed woman, she didn't care about all this, it was her way of protecting herself and her sister. Jiang Yi's arrival also made her feel that everything was getting better. But it seemed like fate was playing a joke on her, her sister was diagnosed with leukemia. This news was like a bolt from the blue for her. 
The only good news was that the hospital had successfully found a bone marrow match for her sister and could perform the surgery at any time. But the bad news was that the surgery cost a whopping 200,000. Even if Joe Ruoyan sold everything in her house, including the small 40 square meter room, she could barely gather 15,000. She even planned to sell her blood, but was kicked out because her body was not qualified. Even this store, she planned to sell. But because of the troublemakers before, they all knew that she had a gambling father in debt, and no one was willing to take over her store, afraid of getting into trouble. She had thought of every possible way, but when she had no choice, she finally thought of Jiang He. I? I know this request is unreasonable, but I really have no other way. Zhou Ruoyun bit her lip tightly, not even noticing if she drew blood. Upon hearing this, Zhang He glanced at Lu Cici. Cici, Dr. Jiang, what do you think? Zhang He was not a saint, he couldn't unconditionally give to someone he had just met a few days ago. In addition to the previous 20,000 he gave to Zhou Ruoyun, Zhang He had the last 50,000 left, which he planned to use to improve the noodle shop. Both Jiang Xian and Lu Cici were silent for a moment. It's not that Jiang Xian couldn't come up with the 5,000, but why should she? She had no emotional connection with Zhou Ruoyun, even though she had helped her before. She had already paid 100,000 for Zhou Ruoyun, she was a businesswoman, and business people had to consider the pros and cons. She now doubted whether Zhou Ruoyun had the ability to repay. With Jiang Yi silent on the phone, Zhou Ruoyun became anxious and blurted out. As long as you are willing to lend me, I am willing to do anything. With these words, everyone present was shocked, even Jiang Yi frowned. I'm sorry, Miss Xiao, you are mistaken. With that, Jiang Yi hung up the phone. Seeing Jiang Yi hang up, Zhou Ruoyun couldn't hold back anymore, leaning against the wall and crying out loud. I'm not. I'm not. For her sister, she was willing to sacrifice her dignity, but still didn't get a glimmer of hope. At the same time, Lu Cici also held Jiang Yi's hand, looking into his eyes seriously. Lend it to Miss Zhou. With these words, Jiang Yi and Jiang Xian were also slightly surprised. Jiang Xian directly spoke up. Cici, she just. It's okay, I trust brother Jiang Yi, and I believe Miss Zhou didn't mean that. Lu Cici shook her head, she understood that Zhou Ruoyun was just too anxious. Cici, are you sure? Zhang Yi asked Lu Cici again, the 5000 was originally Lu Cici's. Yes, I'm sure. Lu Cici nodded, understanding the torment of illness, why not help Zhou Ruoyun if she could? Seeing Lu Cici agree, Zhang Yi naturally didn't say anything, he would go to the noodle shop later and give the money to Zhou Ruoyun. Oh Cici, why are you so lovely? Jiang Xian also came forward to rub Lu Cici's head, this little girl. When Jiang Yi finished his work and walked to the school gate, he found that Jiang Chao had been waiting there for a long time. When Jiang Chao saw Jiang Yi coming out, he immediately stepped forward to stop him. Jiang Yi also saw Jiang Chao in the crowd, feeling a headache for a moment. Why are these Jiang family members so persistent? Didn't they already make things clear before? Why do they have to disturb his life? Zhang Yi directly took Lu Cici's hand and wanted to leave quickly. But the school gate was full of parents and students picking up their children, how could Zhang Yi escape? Zhang Chao grabbed Zhang Yi's arm, but Zhang Yi shook it off. Xiao. Xiao Yi, can I talk to you, sister? No need, if you have something to say, say it here. Zhang Yi still refused directly, what was there to talk about between them? Seeing Jiang Yi's refusal, Jiang Chao turned his gaze to Lu Cici. Little girl, you are Jiang Yi's classmate, right? I am Jiang Yi's sister. Enough! Jiang Yi interrupted Jiang Chong before he could finish speaking, not wanting others to know about his relationship with the Jiang family. Now little he can. Jiang Chong had no choice but to seek Jiang Yi's forgiveness and show concern for him. However, is it too late to care for Jiang Yi now? Let's go. To be honest, this was the second time Lu Cici had seen Jiang Yi so angry, the first time being when Jiang Yi faced the knife-wielding youth for her. Also, she remembered that Jiang Yi seemed to be an orphan, so who was this person claiming to be Jiang Yi's sister? Jiang Yi, do you need me? 
Seeing Lu Cici looking worried, Zhang Yi also restrained his temper and comforted her with a smile. It's okay, you'll be in charge of eating later. On the side, Zhang Chong couldn't help but have some thoughts seeing Zhang Yi and Lu Cici getting so close. If she could get along well with Lu Cici, maybe Zhang Yi would forgive her? Arriving at a coffee shop, Zhang Chong had already reserved a window seat with few people around. What's the matter, just say it. Zhang Yi still wanted to leave quickly. Little He, you haven't eaten yet, right? Waiter, bring the food I ordered earlier. Zhang Chong knew that Zhang He didn't want to talk to her, so she made these preparations to keep Zhang He. Zhang He had no choice but to suppress the urge to leave immediately. By the way, have you met this classmate? When Zhang Chong asked her, Lu Cici was a bit flustered for a moment. This was her first time facing Zhang He's family, and she didn't know what to do. It's not surprising that Lu Cici didn't know, as few people knew about Zhang He's relationship with the Zhang family. I? I'm Lu Cici. Lu Cici? What a nice name. I'm Jiang Yi's sister, you can call me Jiang Chong. But before Jiang Chong could finish her sentence, she was interrupted by Jiang Yi again. Enough. Just say what you need to say. Jiang Yi didn't want Lu Cici to get involved, worrying about her later. Jiang Chong glanced at Lu Cici and decided to speak directly. Little He, are you being supported by Jiang Xin? Hearing this, Lu Cici's eyes widened involuntarily. What was this woman talking about? Zhang Yi was also puzzled. Zhang Xian had only mentioned that Zhang Chong had visited her, not the purpose of the visit. What does it have to do with you? Zhang Yi's face was cold. Besides, even if he was supported by Zhang Xian, what did it have to do with Zhang Chong? Little He, you can't just for the sake of money. Seeing Zhang Yi not answering her, Zhang Chong became anxious. Yes? I'm just for the money. I returned to the Jiang family for the money, stole your jewelry for the money. Are you satisfied now? With that, Jiang He stood up and left with Lu Cici. Seeing Jiang He about to leave, Jiang Chong hurried to catch up. Little He, sister. Sister didn't mean that. Sister was just worried that you were being deceived, so. Hearing the words behind her, Jiang He stopped in his tracks. Sister? You haven't been my sister for a long time, have you forgotten? With that, Jiang He never looked back. Hearing Jiang He say that she was no longer his sister, Jiang Chong also stood still, only coming to her senses after a while. Why? Jiang. Chong felt a sharp pain in her heart, why? Why wouldn't Jiang He forgive her? It was ridiculous, she didn't even have the courage to return Jiang Yi's innocence, yet she still thought Jiang Yi would forgive her? When Jiang Yi arrived at the ramen shop in the night market on Haishur Street, he found that although the door was open, there was no one inside. Hmm. Where is Miss Sho? Jiang Yi couldn't help but frown slightly, a sense of foreboding spreading in his heart. At the same time, in a factory located in the outskirts of the city, there was a special large underground room unknown to the public. The underground room was bustling with people, with dozens of gambling tables crowded with gamblers. Can you match? If you don't have money, then get lost. What? Are you cheating? How could I be smaller than you? Lend me some more. I will definitely win it back. Voices of all sizes echoed into Zhou Ruoyun's ears as she had just arrived. It was her first time facing such a scene, and she couldn't help but nervously grip the dagger hidden at her waist. Hurry up, don't dawdle. Leading Zhou Ruoyun was actually the burly man who had caused trouble at the noodle shop before. It wasn't until they reached the last room that the burly man stopped. He then respectfully knocked on the door. Come in. A somewhat old voice came out, only two words, but chilling. You are Zhou Laogue's daughter? The boss looked Zhou Ruoyun up and down, nodding as if satisfied. I have no relationship with that old gambler. If it weren't for that gambler, how could her mother have passed away early due to overwork? How could their family of three live in a small room of less than 40 square meters? I'm not interested in those, I'll buy your shop for a hundred thousand. 
With these words, Zhou Ruoyun couldn't help but widen her eyes. A hundred thousand. In that location, it's worth at least six hundred thousand. Zhou Ruoyun wasn't a fool, she had done her research before coming. Oh? Do you think you can sell it now? Your sister seems to be waiting for money to save her life, right? The boss seemed to have Zhou Ruoyun figured out, with them around, who would dare to buy Zhou Ruoyun's shop. Two hundred thousand. Not a penny less. Zhou Ruoyun clenched her fists, this shop was her mother's only wish. But now, she had no choice. As for why she needed 200,000, it was to repay the 12,000 that Zheng he had helped her with before. Okay. Then, the boss handed a contract to Zhou Ruoyun. Zhou Ruoyun didn't expect the boss behind the scenes to agree so easily, and quickly signed her name on the contract. Is this okay? When will you transfer the money? Seeing Zhou Ruoyun sign, the boss laughed. Old Zhou, come out. With that said, a slender man in a sweatshirt appeared in front of Zhou Ruoyun. Yes, the person who came was Zhou Ruoyun's gambler father, Zhou Wang. What are you doing, Ugh? The burly man who had been standing behind Zhou Ruoyun suddenly pulled out a handkerchief, approached her, and covered her mouth and nose while she was unprepared. By the time Zhou Ruoyun realized something was wrong, it was too late. Even the dagger at her waist lost its strength halfway out and could only watch as the knife and her body fell to the ground together. With a clang as the knife hit the ground, both the burly man and the boss behind the scenes couldn't help but shudder. No one expected Zhou Ruoyun to have a knife on her. Fortunately, Zhou Ruoyun couldn't move now. The handkerchief used by the burly man was sprayed with the latest type of sedative, which could keep the victim awake but unable to resist. Old Zhou, your daughter is good this is your reward. After speaking, the boss casually threw a stack of banknotes. Zhou Wang quickly caught it and thanked the boss profusely. Yes, with just a hundred thousand, Zhou Wang was able to sell his own biological daughter. For gamblers, wives, daughters, parents, are all disposable at any time. People deeply involved in gambling can no longer be called human. Tears of regret also flowed from the corners of Zhou Ruoyun's eyes. She should not have resorted to desperate measures and trusted these shameless scoundrels. Zhou Ruoyun struggled desperately to sit up, and actually managed to move a bit. She couldn't fall down. This was the money that saved her sister's life. The burly man and the boss couldn't help but marvel at Zhou Ruoyun's strength. You should know that this latest type of drug, even if Tyson took a puff, would turn into a teddy bear, but this Zhou Ruoyun, a young girl, could still move. Take her away. Let the brothers have a taste first, remember to take a video. The burly man also nodded quickly, he had been craving Zhou Ruoyun for a long time. Although this girl was a bit fierce and even tough, her looks were undeniable, she was definitely a top beauty. Now, in this vulnerable state, she was even more enticing. Feeling her body moving, Zhou Ruoyun was no longer able to resist. I'm sorry, little sister, it's sister's fault. I'm sorry. Tears welled up in Zhou Ruoyun's eyes, she also understood what would happen next, even if she was strong, she was still a young girl who had just graduated. If she was really threatened to be filmed, she would rather die than live. And Zhou Ruoyun's gambling father, after getting the money, turned around without saying a word and went back to the gambling table. The boss behind the scenes looked at Zhou Wang's back and smirked coldly. He knew that Zhou Lao Gui, after taking the money, would definitely go back to gamble, and in the end, the money would return to his pocket. This was a case of losing 9 times out of 10, you might win once or twice, but it was just a taste of sweetness. Just as Zhou Wan was happily gambling, a slender and fair hand was placed on his shoulder. Where is Zhou Ruayun? In an instant, Zhou Wan turned to look at the person behind him, only to see a young man who completely ignored him. I'll ask again, where is Zhou Ruayun? With a sudden forceful grip of the fingers, Zhou Wan let out a painful cry and squatted straight on the ground. Who? Who are you? With these words, many gamblers around looked towards Zhou Wang. Yes, the person who came was Jiang Yi. And this time, Jiang Yi was not alone, at the entrance of the basement, there were fully armed special police officers standing. Jiang Yi came alone to avoid alerting the enemy and to quickly find Zhou Ruoyun's location. 
Why could Jiang Yi find this place so quickly? It was naturally thanks to Jiang Xian. At this moment, Jiang Xian was having a conversation with her good sister Jiang Bai. Jiang Xian looked helpless, she really didn't want to contact her crazy sister, but there was no other way. Without Jiang Bai's help, it would be difficult to find this place so quickly. Whether Zhou Ruoyun was alive or dead, it was unknown. In Jiang Xian's phone call, there was a sound of laughter like silver bells. Sister, you will never escape from my grasp. Followed by a painful scream, it was obvious that Jiang Bai was torturing a lucky one. This was Jiang Bai's way of doing things, if she wanted to make someone talk, she had ways. Alright, thank you this time, I'm hanging up. Jiang Xian quickly hung up the phone, every time she talked to Jiang Bai, she felt a sense of fear, like a little lamb being stared at by a fierce tiger, even though she was the older sister. Seeing Jiang Xian hang up the phone, Jiang Bai licked her lips excitedly. Sister adult. Sister adult needs me. It's my sister adult. On Jiang Bai's innocent face, there was an extreme sense of madness, giving people a chilling feeling. Even the two burly bodyguards beside her couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat. Woo woo woo. The man who was tied to the chair and tortured was already scared out of his wits by Jiang Bai, his eyes full of pleading. Shut up. Jiang Bai stared fiercely at the man in front of him. I have investigated everything you did before human trafficking, forcing women into prostitution, running a gambling den, Jiang Bai said calmly. Actually, I don't care about any of that. Suddenly, Jiang Bai grabbed a baseball bat and smashed it down on the man's thigh. There was a dull thud as the man, with his mouth taped shut, let out a muffled scream of extreme pain, his thigh was broken. Why, why did he provoke this madman? Who will save him? But he never thought about those children and women he trafficked, who will save them? But you shouldn't have laid a hand on Miss Sister. Another dull thud, and Jiang Bai directly broke the man's other leg. You should know, human thigh bones are very hard, so you can imagine how strong Jiang Bai's force is, the metal baseball bat was slightly bent at this point. Looking at the man who had passed out, Jiang Bai threw away the baseball bat in his hand and then said the most terrifying thing in that pleasant voice of his. Cut off his two legs, then throw him into a mental hospital, understood? Yes. As soon as these words were spoken, the two burly bodyguards immediately bowed and nodded, even breaking out in a cold sweat. At the same time, Jiang He, seeing that Zhou Wan was unwilling to reveal Zhou Ruoyan's location, was gradually losing patience. Every second wasted now meant more danger for Zhou Ruoyun. Let me go, or I'll call for help. Zhou Wang didn't expect this somewhat thin-looking boy to be so strong. And Zhang He really did let go of Zhou Wang because he saw a familiar face. It was the burly man who had caused trouble at the noodle shop before. And when the burly man saw Zhang He, he also felt that things were not good, just about to report this matter to the boss behind the scenes, but was stopped by Jiang He taking a step forward. Where is Zhou Ruoyun? As soon as these words were spoken, the burly man appeared momentarily flustered, quietly closing the door behind him. What did you say? I don't know. The burly man then put on a fierce look and said to Jiang He in a menacing manner. Kid, this is not a place you should be, get out of here. At the same time, Zhou Ruoyun in the room seemed to hear some movement, as if it was Jiang He's voice. Zhou Ruoyun desperately tried to struggle, making some noise to attract Jiang He's attention. But when she heard the footsteps of Jiang He leaving, she fell into despair once again. Save me. Even though hope was right in front of her, Zhou Ruoyun could only watch hope slip away. You can act now. Zhang He gave a signal for action on the hidden intercom on his collar, then turned around and kicked the burly man in the crotch. With a dull thud, the burly man never expected Zhang He to make this move, and he lay on the ground clutching his crotch, starting to wail in pain. Jiang He was not a gentleman who cared about fairness. And the next moment, countless special police officers rushed in, and the entire casino instantly descended into chaos. Get down and don't move. Don't move. Hands up. Meanwhile, the boss behind the scenes, learning of all this from the surveillance, tried to escape through the back door of the casino, only to be caught by the special police waiting at the back door. Jiang He kicked open the door directly. Sure enough, Zhou Ruoyun was lying on the sofa. 
Zhou Ruoyun? Zhou Ruoyun? Zhang Yi saw that Zhou Ruoyun couldn't answer, so he picked her up and ran towards the ambulance that had been waiting outside for a long time. After sending Zhou Ruoyun into the ambulance, Zhang Yi finally breathed a sigh of relief. Fortunately, Zhou Ruoyun had not been violated, it should have been just the effect of the drugs. When all was said and done, Zhang Yi, along with Lu Cici and Zhang Xian, went to the hospital to visit Zhou Ruoyun. When Zhou Ruoyun saw that it was Zhang Yi, she quickly got up, but was stopped by Lu Cici. You should rest first, we can talk about other things later. Looking at Lu Cici's caring expression, Zhou Ruoyun couldn't help but cry. I'm sorry, Cici. You must think I'm despicable for what I said to Zhang Yi before, right? Lu Cici had only known her for a short time, but was still willing to help her. While she, for money, said those things to her boyfriend Zhang Yi. Seeing Zhou Ruoyun crying. Uncontrollably, Lu Cici gently touched her head. Why would you think that? I know everything about your situation. Lu Cici wasn't angry because of Zhou Ruoyun's previous words, she also believed in Jiang Yi, that he was not that kind of person. If Jiang Yi was really a lecherous person, he would have made a move on her long ago, and she wouldn't still be inexperienced in kissing. As she thought about it, Lu Cici's face suddenly turned red, and she quickly shook her head to clear her mind of distractions. But once this thought appeared, Lu Cici couldn't help but fantasize. Cici, what's wrong? Zhang Yi thought Lu Cici was feeling unwell and quickly asked. And nothing. Lu Cici didn't have the heart to say, and just shook her head repeatedly to indicate that she was fine. Just then, a female police officer knocked on the door of the ward. Hello, are you Miss Zhou Ruoyun? Your father wants to see you. At this point, Zhou Wang had already been detained by the special police. He understood that if it was just gambling, he would soon be released. But if Zhou Ruoyun revealed the matter of the 100,000 yuan, it wouldn't be that simple. So he had to see Zhou Ruoyun, no matter what, he was Zhou Ruoyun's father. As long as Zhou Ruoyun didn't speak, he would be able to get out soon, and then he could gamble again. And when Zhou Ruoyun, dragging her weak body, came in front of Zhou Wang, he was even more excited. Little, little Ruoyun, Dad knows he was wrong, you must not. With a loud slap, Zhou Ruoyun fiercely slapped Zhou Wang's face, anger in her eyes but tears in her eyes. Do you know that my sister has leukemia, and that 100,000 yuan is her life-saving money? If it weren't for Zhang Yi's appearance, Zhou Ruoyun didn't dare to think about what would happen in the future. She would face endless insults, and her sister would die because she couldn't afford the surgery. And the mastermind behind all this was the man in front of her, her biological father. Let's not talk about this now, Ruoyun, go explain to the police officers, it's best to get me out first, and when I come out, I will definitely repent. At this point, Zhou Wan was still fantasizing. Ruoyun, please believe in dad this time, okay? I beg you. Zhou Wan was about to kneel down in front of Zhou Ruoyun. But halfway through kneeling, seeing no one stopping him, he actually stood up again. Kneel. Why aren't you kneeling? Zhou Ruoyun looked at Zhou Wang coldly. Beast, I haven't even mentioned how you sold me for 100,000 to those scum. With these words, even Zhang He and the others looked at Zhou Wan with strange eyes. Selling his daughter? They never expected that Zhou Wang had become so depraved. Al little Ruoyun, please, don't say anything, okay? Indeed, people only know what true repentance is when faced with great difficulties. But Zhou Ruoyun didn't say anything at all, she would never believe Zhou Wang's lies again. Seeing Zhou Ruoyun about to leave, Zhou Wang hardened his heart and knelt down in front of her. Ruoyun! Dad is begging you! Zhou Wang was truly scared. He couldn't accept the days of leaving the gambling table. But Zhou Ruoyun just coldly said a sentence. This kneeling is what you owe mom. Go to prison and repent. With that, Zhou Ruoyun never looked back. It wasn't until she finished writing her statement and left the police station that Zhou Ruoyun solemnly bowed to Jiang He. At the same time, she realized something very wrong. She seemed to have truly fallen for Jiang He. The scene where Jiang He saved her was deeply ingrained in her mind, and she would never forget the man who appeared when she was in despair. 
but she would never do anything to betray Lu Cici. She would forever bury this matter in her heart, forever. Zhang Yi was not in a hurry to reopen the store for Zhou Ruoyun. After such a big incident, it wouldn't hurt to wait until her sister's surgery was done before reopening. When Jiang Yi returned to the orphanage, he found a figure constantly pacing at the door. Jiang Yi? What are you doing here? Jiang Jiang, wearing black sunglasses, looked down at Jiang Yi as if he owed her money. Why can't I be here? Move aside, you're blocking my way. Jiang Yi cursed his luck, wishing he had checked the almanac before coming out this morning. I won't move, what can you do to me? She just wanted to make things difficult for Jiang Yi, after all, he had left her alone in the dark night before. Suddenly, Jiang Jiang seemed to notice another orphanage not far away, so she looked at Jiang Yi and asked, Do you live around here? She came here to find the boy who had saved her before. But the area was not large, but it was definitely not small. For several days, she had not found any clues. The only thing Jiang Jiang could be sure of was that the boy who saved her years ago was thin and tall. However, after so many years, Jiang Jiang was not sure what the boy looked like now. Continuing to search like this was like finding a needle in a haystack. Seeing Jiang Jiang constantly blocking his way, Jiang he finally couldn't hold back. Yes, I live here, are you satisfied now? Seeing Jiang Yi's impatience, Jiang Jiang also became more aggressive. What's with your attitude? I'm your third sister, how can you talk to me like that? Didn't you say you didn't want any contact with the Jung family? What's the deal with you going back home as mom and dad told me? Jung He, that's enough, don't make everyone lose patience in the end, it's not worth it. Faced with Jung Jung's barrage of questions, Jung He remained indifferent. You're right, I longed for the Jung family's life, I wanted to return to the Jiang family, so can you let this dog of a family go now? Jiang Yi said calmly, as if it were a trivial matter. You? Jiang Jiang was surprised by Jiang Yi's words and was momentarily speechless. But then she regained her composure. Answer a few questions before you speak. Jiang Jiang also took this opportunity to ask for some useful information. Did you always live here before returning to the Jiang family? Jiang Jiang looked around at the surroundings, most of the buildings were bungalows, and the only two-story building was the orphanage. Most of the people passing by were workers coming to the seaside city for work, looking for cheap rent. Yes, I live here now. Jiang He waved his hand, not feeling embarrassed at all. Jiang Jiang was also surprised that Jiang He had been living in such a place all along. Could people really live here? For someone like Zhang Zhang, it was hard to imagine living in such a place. Do you remember a tall, thin boy in this area? He should be around my age now. Ha! Huh? With this question, Zhang He was also puzzled. Why was Zhang Zhang asking about a tall, thin boy? Zhang He was a bit curious, who was worth Miss Zhang personally coming here to look for, even stopping him at all costs. Of course it was him before. Just then, Jiang Jiang's phone suddenly rang. What? Clue found? I'm on my way. After finishing the call, Jiang Jiang left in a hurry, leaving Jiang Yi looking puzzled. I really don't understand. Jiang Yi shook his head, how come none of these Jiang family members seem quite normal? Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of Jiang Yi after Jiang Jiang walked away. However, the unexpected person was Jiang Li Jiang Li? What are you doing here? Zhang He frowned, shouldn't this kid be lying in the hospital? And Zhang Li walked up to Zhang He without hesitation. Zhang He, as long as I'm around, you'll never be able to return to the Zhang family. Zhang Li warned, a face that no one had seen before, perhaps this was his true face. Are you not done yet? Zhang He grabbed Zhang Li's collar, why is this kid so persistent? Didn't he say before that he would never return to the Jiang family? Why come looking for him? Brother Jiang He, what are you doing? Let go of me, cough cough. Seeing Jiang Li's affected appearance, Jiang He could only smile helplessly, here we go again? Sure enough, the next moment, Lu Ru and Jiang Qin appeared behind Jiang He. Xiao, Xiao He, what are you doing? Let go of your brother. 
Hearing Liu Ru's words, Zhang Yi roughly understood why Zhang Li had run out of the hospital and why he had provoked him to take action. It was all planned. In fact, Zhang Yi also admired Zhang Li's cunning a bit. If Zhang Li could focus his scheming on studying, he could definitely rank in the top five in the city. Xiao He, can you please let go of your brother? Lu Ru quickly stepped forward to try to stop Jiang Yi. At this point, Jiang Li also spoke up. Mom, just let brother Jiang Yi hit me. Brother Jiang Yi, as long as you're willing to come home, you can hit me however you want. Seeing Jiang Li's tearful and pitiful expression, Lu Ru couldn't help but feel sorry for him. Xiao He, your brother just wants you to come home, don't make it difficult for him, okay? Sit down and let's talk. Hearing this, Zhang Yi chuckled. Is that so? Then I really have to thank my good brother. Dot. With that, Zhang Yi slapped the brat twice. Ignoring the shocked expressions of the others, he whispered in Zhang Li's ear. If you haven't learned your lesson from last time, don't forget it this time. With that, Zhang Yi threw Zhang Li aside and turned back to the orphanage. He dared to hit Zhang Li in front of Zhang Zhang last time, and now that Zhang Li was trying the same trick, Zhang Yi was not going to tolerate it. He would hit him every time he came, as he had never thought of returning to the Zhang family. In short, Zhang Li's trick was useless against the current Zhang Yi. The reason Zhang Li had repeatedly failed before was simply because Zhang Yi cared too much about his family. After Zhang Yi left, Zhang Li's face turned pale again and he fainted once more. Lu Ru, who had wanted to go after Zhang Yi, had no choice but to take Zhang Li to the hospital first. When Zhang Jiang arrived at the hospital, she heard Zhang Qin angrily saying, no matter what, Zhang Yi shouldn't have laid a hand on his brother. How is Xiao Li? Did that brat Jiang Yi lay a hand on him again? Seeing Zhang Zhang's arrival, Zhang Li struggled to sit up. It's not Jiang Yi's fault, I was just too anxious, which made brother Jiang Yi unhappy. Seeing Jiang Li looking so wronged, Zhang Jiang became even angrier. I'll go find him and make him come apologize to Xiao Li. After saying that, she left without looking back to find trouble with Jiang Yi, no matter how much Lu Ru called her back. Seeing this scene, Jiang Li was also pleased. In fact, the phone call to Jiang Jiang saying that he found a clue earlier was instructed by him. Because he found out that the person who truly saved Jiang Jiang before was Jiang Yi. He would never allow this matter to be exposed. Otherwise, his position in the Jiang family would be shaken again. You should know that whether it was Zhang Qin Lu Ru or his three sisters before, they have always stood firmly by his side. And now, everything has changed just because Zhang Yi left. Zhang Zi actually questioned him for a trivial matter before, and Zhang Huang's recent attitude towards him was also a bit strange, even the way he looked at him was no longer as doting as before. He absolutely could not allow Zhang He to return to the Zhang family. He had to take the initiative, thoroughly crush Zhang He under his feet, and let him know that the Jiang family belonged to him. Jiang Yi, blame yourself for appearing in the Jiang family. At the same time, Jiang Jiang had already arrived at the orphanage's door, and she also pushed the door open without saying a word. Jiang Yi, get out of here. Faced with Jiang Jiang's anger, Jiang Yi also understood. Of course, he knew that Jiang Jiang had come to find him because of Jiang Li. When Jiang Yi came out, Jiang Jiang quickly approached, grabbed Jiang Yi's collar, and her eyes were full of anger. What did you do to Xiao Li? Do you know that Xiao Li is in the hospital now? Looking at Zhang Zhang's expression as if she wanted to eat Zhang Yi, one would think that Zhang Li was her real younger brother. I warned him before not to jump around in front of me. Zhang Yi said indifferently. If it weren't. For Zhang Li insisting on coming out to find trouble, he wouldn't bother. Zhang Yi. Look at yourself now, always resorting to violence at the slightest provocation, you're simply an unreasonable violent man. With these words, Zhang Yi became slightly interested. Then what was I like before? Since I wasn't like this before, you should have liked me very much, right? Isn't that right, my dear sisters? Zhang Zhang could hate his current state, that was just perfect. The Zhang Yi who used to never fight back or talk back, the Zhang Yi who never dared to contradict anyone, the Zhang Yi who always tried to please his family, had long died in the fire of the previous life. I? At this moment, Zhang Zhang was also stimulated by Zhang Yi's words and couldn't speak. 
She knew about Jiang Yi's situation in the Jiang family before. It could be said that Zhang Jian was instrumental in creating the current state of Jiang He. Regardless, you shouldn't have laid a hand on Xiao Li. Apologize to me at the hospital. Zhang Jian was a bit crazy at this point. She knew what she was doing was wrong, but she chose to stick to her decision. Yes, in her heart, her own younger brother Jiang He was not as good as Jiang Li. Even though Jiang Li had no blood relation to her, she had long considered Jiang Li as her true family, after all, Jiang Li had saved her life. I can go apologize with you, but you have to swear never to disturb me again. Jiang He looked coldly at Jiang Jiang. What do you mean? What do you mean by disturbing you? Am I not showing concern for you? Is it showing concern for me? Coming to bother me in the middle of the night, is that showing concern for me? Forcing me to apologize to a little brat, is that showing concern for me? Jiang He no longer indulged her, he directly shook off Jiang Zhang's hand and turned back, he hated being both soft and hard. Clearly, it was all for Jiang Li, but he had to pretend to be good for him. Jiang He If you don't come apologize with me, don't ever think I'll agree to you returning to the Jiang family in this lifetime. Hearing this, Jiang He shook his head. This woman really thought he was playing hard to get and wanted to return to the Jiang family. I couldn't ask for more. After finishing speaking, Jiang He directly closed the door, ignoring Jiang Zhang's attempts to open it again. Seeing that Jiang He really didn't want to deal with her anymore, Jiang Jiang had no choice but to leave in frustration, cursing Jiang He for not knowing how to appreciate her. She thought to herself that he would come back crying for her eventually. Just then, Jiang Jiang received a phone call from a private detective she had hired. Miss Jiang, regarding the person we were investigating for you, we have used big data and conducted interviews to narrow down the scope. We can roughly confirm that the boy who saved you years ago is still living in the orphanage in the suburbs. At the same time, we have arranged a large number of people to conduct a massive search, going door to door to find him. Please rest assured, we will soon be able to give you a satisfactory answer. It was mainly because Jiang Jiang had given too much, perhaps this was her financial ability. Still in the orphanage area? I see. Jiang Jiang hung up the phone, feeling puzzled. The informant from her previous call had said that the boy who saved him had gone abroad and his whereabouts were unknown. So why did the private detective now say he was still here, even near the orphanage? But no matter what, having a lead was ultimately a good thing. I will definitely find you. Zhang Jiang also showed a rare hint of tenderness, still remembering the warm feeling of the boy from years ago. She vowed that if she found the boy, she would definitely repay him well. The next afternoon after school, Zhang Yi finished up in the medical room, bid farewell to Zhang Xian, and then went to Zhou Ruoyan's noodle shop with Lu Cixi. When Zhou Ruoyan saw Zhang Yi and Lu Cixi, she quickly went up to greet them. Cixi! Zhou Ruoyan rushed up to hug Lu Cixi, having missed her so much these days. So, the two bright and beautiful girls walked hand in hand back into the shop. And Zhang Yi was naturally ignored. Zhang Yi touched his nose, realizing that Zhou Ruoyan, this little girl, had regained her past vitality, which was a good thing. Zhang Yi was afraid that after the incident before, where her own biological father had tried to sell her, she would be discouraged. But now it seemed he had worried too much. Cece, thank you so much before. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't know what to do. But Lu Cece kept waving her hands. All of this is thanks to Zhang Yi's efforts. I actually didn't help much. Lu Cece was very embarrassed in the face of Zhou Ruoyun's gratitude. Seeing this, Zhou Ruoyun suddenly stood up and bowed a perfect 90 degrees directly to Zhang Yi. Mr. Zhang Yi, thank you very much. Ah, uh, you're welcome. Facing this scene, Zhang Yi could only think of one word, very spirited. Indeed, Zhou Ruoyun was starting to feel like a hot-blooded anime protagonist. In fact, this was Zhou Ruoyun's way of facing Zhang He when she was at the hospital with her sister. She knew she truly liked Zhang He, but she had said before that she would never do anything to betray Lu Cixi, even emotionally. But she also knew that once she got closer to Zhang He, her heart would inevitably start to stir. So, when facing Zhang He, she chose to ignore him first. 
As long as she ignored Zhang He, she could avoid thinking about him. If she had to communicate with Zhang He, then she would show extreme spirit, like facing an elder. In short, the very spirited method. She believed that as a girl who only knew how to shout and was not at all gentle, Zhang He as a man would definitely not develop any feelings for her. Just then, a very sturdy figure walked into the noodle shop. Boss, three bowls of noodles, please. But the next second, the sturdy figure was dumbfounded. Zhang He? Sergeant Liu? What are you doing here? With these words, Zhou Ruoyun also looked curiously at the group. Ahem. Zhang Yin, how come you're here? Zhang He felt a little guilty for a moment. Yes, the newcomer was his strong male deskmate, Zhang Yin. I should be asking you. Tell me, are you hiding the fact that you're with me and Sergeant Liu? Zhang Yin stepped forward and used a move called Strongman Lock on Zhang He, locking him tightly to prevent him from slipping away. With these words, Liu Cixi's face instantly turned red. The fact that they were together, she hadn't even told her best friend. But in reality, Liu Cixi wanted others to know about it, but as a student, she knew she couldn't say. That's right, just as you thought, Cixi is my girlfriend now. Zhang Yi openly revealed the truth, believing that Zhang Yan wouldn't spread it, especially since he could see Liu Cixi's thoughts. Liu Cixi's face also showed a hint of shyness, her eyes revealing a bit of panic and nervousness, but she couldn't help stealing a glance at Zhang Yi. A hint of joy rose in her heart. These were the thoughts of a young girl, afraid of being discovered but also hoping for blessings and envy. With these words, Zhang Yan's eyes widened, his mouth agape in an expression of disbelief. To be honest, he had indeed had feelings for Lu Cixi before, after all, she was so beautiful, good at studying, and a gentle class monitor. It could be said that the vast majority of male classmates had liked Lu Cixi at some point. But now, his good buddy had fulfilled the dream of all male students. He didn't know whether to be happy or sad, or perhaps jealous. You little rascal! You actually kept this from me for so long. Zhang Yan pulled Zhang He aside and said something mysterious to him. Ahem, can you teach me, little brother? I'm truly envious. Zhang He looked at Zhang Yan's massive chest muscles and strong physique. Young man, you have to believe in yourself. It wasn't that Zhang He didn't want to say, but he simply didn't know how. If it weren't for Lu Cixi taking the initiative, how could Zhang He have spoken up? He and Zhang Yan were just about the same. By the way, why do you have time to come here today? Zhang He remembered that this kid went to the gym right after school every day, after all, he was on the sports track and was currently preparing for a bodybuilding competition. Ah, don't mention it. Zhang Yan waved his hand, looking helpless. The food sold around the gym is all heavy on oil and salt. Every time I finish working out and get hungry, I have to run all the way here, or bring my own food from home, but after a while, even if I keep it warm, it gets cold. Three bowls of noodles, just like before. All right. Zhou Ruoyun readily agreed, this was her first repeat customer. Unexpectedly, it was Jiang Yi's classmate. Ha! Huh? What's the same as before? Jiang Yi looked at Jiang Yin in confusion, could it be? Less oil and salt, you know, the first time I came, I was amazed, the noodles were so light, it was just too thoughtful. With these words, Jiang He also slapped his forehead, goodness, it was just as he had thought. Was that less oil and salt? It was more like there was none at all. Only a gym fanatic like Zhang Yan would think that way. Suddenly, Zhang He seemed to remember something and asked Zhang Yan, are there many people at your gym? Of course, our gym is the largest in the whole city. Saying this, Zhang Yan proudly patted his chest, then pinched Zhang He's slender frame. Do you want to work out too? How about I take you with me? I guarantee you'll be satisfied. Zhang Yin thought Zhang He wanted to exercise with him. Ahem, we don't need this dish, how many people are there in your gym? Can you give me a more specific number? Upon hearing this, although Zhang Yin didn't know what Zhang He was up to, he carefully thought about it and then said, probably over a thousand people, but that includes coaches and staff, as well as some who don't come regularly. To be honest, this number greatly exceeded Jiang He's expectations, so many people. In fact, 
Jiang Yi's reaction was quite normal, as he thought a typical gym would have at most a hundred people, including coaches and staff. He never expected that the largest gym in the city would have around a thousand people. Although they wouldn't all be there at the same time, the online number would still be stable at around a hundred people, which means the total number divided by ten. With so many people and no stable and suitable dining options for fitness enthusiasts nearby, isn't this an opportunity? So, can you do me a favor? Just say it, no need to be polite with me. Zhang Yan patted his chest again. He exercised to be able to help others better and improve himself. A man should be fierce. Introduce me to the owner of your gym, I want to discuss some cooperation with him. As soon as these words were spoken, Zhang Yan also looked at Zhang He with curiosity. Are Zhang He and He both students? Or is Zhang He some kind of invisible rich second generation? Zhang He, tell me the truth, are you a rich second generation? Seeing Zhang Yan's inquisitive look, Zhang He couldn't help but laugh and cry at the same time. I used to be, but not anymore. As the young master of the Zhang family, he could indeed be considered a rich second generation before, but now, he's just an ordinary student. You're not lying to me? How could I? Do I look like a rich second generation to you? Lu Cici looked at the two of them and couldn't help but cover her mouth and chuckle. However, suddenly, she felt a sharp pain in her heart. But she didn't say anything, just quietly took out a pill, put it in her mouth, and swallowed it. She didn't want to make Zhang He worried or scared during their time together. At the same time, Zhang Xian was also packing up, getting ready to go out. Actually, Zhang Bai didn't know why he had come to the city by the sea and insisted on meeting her himself. There was no choice, as he had helped her before. In a small alley not far from Erzhong, three people were staring at each other, waiting for something. Yes, these three people were Lu Yu and his two little brothers. We've been waiting for so many days, why hasn't Zhang Xian come out yet? They had been squatting at the entrance of Erzhong for several days, but they hadn't seen a trace of Zhang Xian, let alone found an opportunity to make a move. It doesn't make sense, big brother, shouldn't Miss Zhang, as the young lady of the Zhang family, be able to live in the school? The tall and thin little brother scratched his head. The plan had been going smoothly before, so why did it get stuck at this crucial step? Suddenly, a graceful figure appeared in front of them. Lu Yu widened his eyes, it was Zhang Xian. The two brothers looked at each other and immediately put on their bandit masks. Action! At the same time, Zhang Xian was completely unaware, just looking at her phone. Coming to pick me up? And almost here? A message from Zhang Bai popped up, causing Zhang Xian to touch her forehead. Didn't they agree that she would go by herself? Why did he want to pick her up again? But since Jiang Bai said so, she could only wait in place. When the others saw that Jiang Xian wasn't moving, they realized the opportunity had come. Lu Yu began to tidy up his appearance, preparing to play the hero, and then capture Jiang Xian. Girl, are you alone? The chubby little brother spoke first, giving off a creepy vibe even with a mask on, unable to hide his demeanor. It can be said that this little brother is naturally cut out for this kind of work. Zhang Xian looked at the two people in front of her, her eyebrows furrowed, completely ignoring their intentions. The two brothers also exchanged a smile. Oh, not paying attention to us, the little girl has character, the brothers really like it. With that, the skinny tall little brother was about to reach out to grab Zhang Xian, but Zhang Xian dodged directly. There was a cold light flashing in Zhang Xian's eyes. For many years, no one dared to treat her like this. She didn't expect someone to be so reckless. She was not a fragile woman, having undergone strict family training and possessing extensive medical knowledge. She could easily give these two men a dozen cuts and still classify it as minor injuries. Dealing with two ordinary people was no big deal for her. Ha ha, little girl, come with the brothers. The brothers will take you to a good place later, guaranteeing you a great time. The two were also preparing for a final attack, creating the perfect opportunity for Lu Yu to play the hero and save the beauty. And Lu Yu was also ready to act, to show Jiang Xian what a real man is like. Just then, Jiang Xian suddenly looked at the two with a smile on her face. 
The two little brothers were slightly puzzled, not understanding what Jiang Xian meant. The next moment, two figures as imposing as mountains overshadowed the two, followed by two giant hands like fans gently placed on their heads. Patting one's head, it might not grant longevity, but it could also mean crushing skulls with force. Feeling the extreme pressure, the two men trembled and slowly turned around. They saw two men in black suits, wearing sunglasses, quietly looking at them. In front of these two bodyguards in black suits, the two men were like two small pieces of cake. Oh, who is this? Turns out it's my lady sister. Jiang Bai bounced over to Jiang Xian, looking at her with curiosity. Lady sister, now even these riffraff dare to harass you? How pathetic. Faced with Jiang Bai's provocation, Jiang Xian just smiled without saying a word. There was nothing she could do, as she was no match for Jiang Bai now. The Jiang family was now under Jiang Bai's control. It was hard to imagine that this innocent-looking girl in front of them was the actual controller of the Jiang family, a behemoth. The two little brothers were still trembling all over, just the pressure from the two bodyguards was enough to make them shiver. They dared not move, not at all. As for Lu Yu? He was currently cowering in a corner, scared out of his wits. Jiang. Jiang Bai. If there was one person that the rich kids in the capital feared the most, it was definitely Jiang Bai. When she acted, she didn't give anyone face, she was a true madwoman. Back when the parents of the Jiang family passed away, leaving behind the two sisters, all the wolves and tigers in the capital set their sights on this giant cake. But no one expected that these two sisters were not to be trifled with. First, Jiang Xian stabilized the Jiang family, then Jiang Bai used absolute ruthlessness to suppress all the wolves. Anyone who didn't listen was out. Even Jiang Xian was included. Lady sister, how should we deal with these two? Burn them, or sink them in the sea? Jiang Bai covered her mouth and chuckled lightly, her eyes still filled with madness. Hearing this, the two little brothers were so scared that they almost peed themselves, and one of them knelt down in front of Jiang Bai. Ha, huh, just kidding, using torture is illegal. Jiang Bai looked at their expressions and almost burst out laughing. Lady sister, you wouldn't want me to break the law, would you? All right, all right, no more jokes. Take these two to the police station. Jiang Bai waved his hand, not wanting to appear too ruthless in front of Jiang Xian, in case her elder sister got scared. When they heard that there was no intention to get rid of them, the two little brothers breathed a sigh of relief and collapsed, unable to walk. The two burly bodyguards looked at each other and, like carrying little chicks, threw the two into the business car behind. Get in, my elder sister. I helped you so much this time, how will you thank me? Jiang Bai looked at Jiang Xian, curious about how Jiang Xian viewed her now. Tell me, as long as I can do it. Oh? Is that so? Then I'll have to think about it. Suddenly, Jiang Bai changed the subject. You've been getting close to that Jiang Yi recently. With these words, Jiang Xian's expression changed instantly. She grabbed Jiang Bai's collar and said fiercely, You're investigating me. Seeing Jiang Xian in such a furious state, Jiang Bai didn't feel afraid but rather excited. It had been a long time since she had seen Jiang Xian like this. Oh dear, is this how you treat someone? Who helped you? At this point, Jiang Xian slowly let go of Jiang Bai's collar. Seeing Jiang Bai's indifferent look, Jiang Xian rubbed her forehead in frustration. She knew that in Jiang Bai's eyes, she posed no threat, or perhaps she had no ability to threaten Jiang Bai. I've already withdrawn from the core of the Jiang family, and I have no intention of fighting for the position of family head. Even so, you still won't let me go? When we were young, every time you misbehaved and were punished, I pleaded for you and took the punishment for you. Now you treat me like this? Jiang Xian looked into Jiang Bai's eyes, not understanding how they had come to this point. Did Jiang Bai see her as someone who coveted power? If I really coveted that position, why would I leave the capital? Watching Jiang Xian continue to explain herself, Jiang Bai chuckled. What are you laughing at? Jiang Bai's expression made Jiang Xian unable to contain her anger. Nothing. I just find my elder sister really cute and naive. Naive to the point of being disgusting. 
After saying this, Zhang Bai looked at Jiang Xian, her big eyes revealing a hint of innocence, but causing Jiang Xian to shiver slightly. Jiang Bai suddenly lifted Jiang Xian's chin, gazing at her beautiful face, unable to help but be captivated. I've said it before, everything about you belongs to me. Now come with me to find Jiang Yi. It's best not to let me find out about any relationship between you two, otherwise, sister, you know what I'm capable of. You're a lunatic. Unreasonable. Jiang Xian shook off Jiang Bai's hand. She couldn't understand how the clingy crybaby had turned into this lunatic. Oh? So my elder sister knows I'm a lunatic, then my elder sister better not let the lunatic go crazy. With that, she headed straight for where Jiang Yi was. Meanwhile, Jiang Yi, who was discussing cooperation with the gym at the noodle shop, was completely unaware of the impending danger. A trial for a week? Of course, no problem. Through Zhang Yan's phone, Zhang Yi was discussing cooperation with the gym owner across from him. Whether it was a week or a month trial for noodle delivery, Zhang Yi would agree. Having the opportunity for this contact already made Zhang Yi very happy, success always comes step by step. This matter could only come to fruition thanks to Zhang Yan. No one expected that Zhang Yan's fitness coach was actually the owner of the largest gym in the city. Zhang Yan was also highly regarded by that owner, otherwise, he wouldn't have taken him to participate in various competitions. Of course, Zhou Ruoyun also played a role in this. Her hand-pulled noodles and clear broth were truly amazing. Miss Zhou, I'll leave the rest to you. It would be best to hire another delivery person, otherwise, with me attending classes during the day, you'll definitely be overwhelmed on your own. When Jiang Yi spoke to her, Zhou Ruoyun was momentarily stunned before coming back to her senses. Got it. Indeed, she was still full of energy. Jiang Yi felt a bit embarrassed for a moment. Miss Zhou, you don't need to be so serious. Just treat it as a conversation between friends. Mainly because Jiang Yi could handle it, but Zhou Ruoyun's throat might not. All right. Spirited. Well, let's pretend Jiang Yi didn't say that. At that moment, the latest model of a Maybach pulled up in front of the noodle shop. The bustling crowd on the pedestrian street also stopped and stared, some even took out their phones to take pictures. Beijing license plate. And it's a consecutive number. Who is this top-tier tycoon? My goodness, this car must cost at least a million. A million? This is the latest Maybach model, even if you have the money, you might not be able to buy it. Listening to the chatter outside, Zhang Xian also felt a bit helpless. Zhang Bai, on the other hand, was excited to get off the car. She wanted to see who this Zhang Yi was, to be able to get so close to her elder sister. Zhang Yi, at that moment, noticed the commotion at the door and was about to go out to check when two figures walked in. Dr. Jiang? And who is this? You must be Jiang Yi, right? I'm Jiang Xian's sister, you can call me Xiao Bai. Jiang Bai gently linked her arm with Jiang Xian's, her eyes devoid of the previous frenzy, coupled with her innocent appearance, she looked like a lovely girl next door. By the way, my sister mentioned that you two are very close, is that true? Looking at Jiang Bai's harmless appearance, Jiang Yi naturally had no guard up and didn't sense any danger. Dr. Jiang has been helping me, so I'm very grateful to Dr. Jiang. With these words, Jiang Bai blinked her clear big eyes and curiously looked at Jiang Xian. Sister, can you tell me about it? I really want to know. But Jiang Xian was not deceived by Jiang Bai's facade. She understood that if Jiang Bai found out that Jiang Yi had pretended to be her boyfriend before, she would definitely go crazy. What's it to you? Zhang Xian's cold voice echoed in the shop, leaving everyone in an awkward silence. No one expected Zhang Xian to say that, including Zhang Bai. Zhang Bai's expression changed slightly, but quickly returned to normal. The more Zhang Xian concealed, the more curious Zhang Bai became about Zhang Yi. Ahem, let's sit down and talk, I'll go get you some food. Zhang Yi also stepped forward to ease the tension, even though he didn't know what was going on between Zhang Xian and her sister. Sure, I was just thinking. Before Jiang Bai could finish her sentence, Zhang Xian pulled her out. In the alley outside, Zhang Xian looked coldly at Zhang Bai, who still had that innocent look, 
as if Jiang Xian had really bullied her. I warn you, don't attract Jiang He's attention. I have no relationship with him, do you understand? Why? Is elder sister afraid of something? Jiang Bai chuckled lightly. What's wrong with you? What does it have to do with me? Jiang Xian couldn't stand Jiang Bai's current demeanor, it was simply unreasonable. But sister, you weren't like this before. A hint of loneliness flashed in Jiang Bai's eyes. You clearly said you would protect me for a lifetime. With those words, Jiang Xian was also momentarily stunned, she did say such things to Jiang Bai. Since the death of her parents, the Jiang family could be said to be in a precarious situation, with external threats looming and numerous relatives emerging to claim a share of the family's assets. At that time, Jiang Xian secretly vowed to hold on, for Jiang Bai, she could not lose. But how did Jiang Bai treat her? Jiang Bai, do you have any conscience left? Has it been eaten by dogs? Seeing Jiang Xian's gritted teeth, Jiang Bai seemed somewhat excited. How did I treat you? And how did you repay me? Kicking me out of the board of directors, forcing me to leave the capital, aren't these all your doings? Now that I choose to leave and live in the coastal city, you still won't let me go. Jiang Xian really misunderstood this sister. She regarded Jiang Bai as her only family, but what did Jiang Bai think of her? Just a plaything? So this is how my sister thinks of me? Jiang Bai fell silent for a moment, but quickly recovered, a hint of madness appearing on her face again, she didn't need understanding. Then why won't you agree to stay by my side, my dear sister? Stay by your side? As your dog? Jiang Bai, what do you take me for? Jiang Xian sneered, staying by Jiang Bai's side meant obeying her in everything, even reporting when going out, isn't that being treated like a dog? Suddenly, Jiang Bai reached out and touched Jiang Xian's chin. My dear sister, you can never escape from my grasp. Jiang Xian slapped Jiang Bai's hand away, she was getting infuriated by Jiang Bai. You're insane. With that, Jiang Xian turned and went back to the noodle shop, she and Jiang Bai simply couldn't communicate. Jiang Bai didn't care at all, since Jiang Xian cared so much about Jiang He, she would start with him. She wanted to see if Jiang He could resist her temptation or reveal his true nature. When Jiang Bai returned to the shop, Jiang He had already served four steaming bowls of secret recipe noodles. Jiang Bai went straight to sit beside Jiang He. Can I call you brother Jiang He? With these words, Lu Cixi's body trembled slightly, and Jiang Xian directly slammed the chopsticks on the table. Come here. Jiang Bai looked at Jiang Xian in confusion. Why? You. Jiang Xian was about to be driven crazy, what was Jiang Bai up to now? Miss Jiang. Miss Jiang, why don't you sit beside me? Lu Cixi couldn't help but speak up, even if she had a good temper, she couldn't allow anyone to do anything to Jiang He in front of her. Oh? This beautiful lady, are you brother Jiang He's girlfriend? Jiang Bai's eyes were full of mockery. Beautiful lady, with such a weak character, can you hold on to brother Jiang He? Instantly, the atmosphere became tense again, and Jiang He frowned. Miss Jiang Bai, Cici is my girlfriend, even though you are Dr. Jiang's sister, please leave. Jiang He naturally didn't indulge Jiang Bai at all. Lu Cici was also very nervous, gripping her small hand tightly until it turned pale, she knew she was indeed very weak and couldn't help Jiang He at all. But then, a warm hand covered her small hand, and Jiang He gave her a reassuring look, everything was under his control. Oh, I was just joking, Sister Cici, you're not mad at me, are you? Watching their interactions, Jiang Bai took the initiative to come to Lu Cici's side, smiling as she held Lu Cici's arm. I'm sorry, Sister Cici, I misspoke earlier, can you forgive your little sister? Jiang Bai blinked innocently, showing a repentant expression. Lu Cixi nodded, after all, she was Jiang Xian's sister, since she admitted her mistake, she couldn't say anything more. But she still remained wary of Jiang Bai in her heart. Okay, Jiang Bai, come back with me. Jiang Xian said wearily, not wanting to play these deceptive games with Jiang Bai anymore. Sure, goodbye sister Cixi, brother Jiang He. After saying that, Jiang Bai actually walked out of the noodle shop on his own, which relieved Jiang Xian. 
Sorry, my sister is a bit out of her mind, so I'll leave first. Zhang Xian didn't want to explain anything, just hoping that Zhang Bai wouldn't disturb Zhang Yi anymore. Well, goodbye Dr. Zhang. Two days later, Zhang Yi also breathed a sigh of relief. Zhang Bai was really strange, he couldn't figure out what Zhang Bai wanted to do. Cici, it's getting late, let me take you home. It was already completely dark, although Cici's parents didn't oppose the two of them, coming back too late would still worry them. Okay, let's go. But for some reason, Cici seemed to be burdened with something. And so, Zhang Yi bid farewell to Zhou Ruoyun first, then returned to Cici's side. The two walked on the street, with people bustling around, and only the dim street lamps shining so neatly. To be honest, the two didn't really look like a real couple, how could a couple walk together without holding hands? Brother Zhang He, am I useless? When Miss Zhang Bai spoke just now, I didn't dare to respond. Cici's voice was very soft, but now it couldn't help but sound a bit low and dim. I'm not as lively as Sister Ruoli, not as carefree as Miss Zhou, and not as steady as Dr. Zhang. I even caused Brother Zhang He to get hurt before. As she spoke, tears fell uncontrollably from Cici's cheeks, but she still kept her head down, not wanting Zhang He to see her like this. In fact, every time Zhang He discussed matters with others, she really wanted, really wanted to be able to help Zhang He, even just a little bit. But because of her health issues, everyone was always taking care of her all the time. Listening to what Cici said, Zhang He didn't speak up immediately, but gave Cici time to open up her heart. Brother Zhang He, should we still? Before Cici could finish her sentence, Zhang He spoke directly. Are you going to abandon me too? No, no, I just feel that I. Cici hurriedly explained, she just felt that staying by Zhang He's side would only burden him, she once had Zhang He, that was enough. Cici, I like you. Zhang He walked straight to Cici, looking at her directly. W-H. What? I like you. Zhang He gently wiped away. The tears from the corner of Cici's eyes, he now knew very clearly, he really liked Cici, it was no longer the kind of care he had for his sister. Since his rebirth, he had found it difficult to feel love, the Zhang family had hurt him too deeply. At first, Zhang He did pity Cici, which was why he agreed to be with her temporarily. But through various experiences, Zhang He realized that whenever Cici was by his side, he would feel an inexplicable sense of peace. And when Cici was not around, he would often think of that gentle little girl. Feelings are never instant, only through the test of time can they be confirmed, can they be affirmed. You confessed to me before, now it's my turn. Zhang He knelt on one knee, looking at this lovely little crybaby. Miss, would you like to be my girlfriend? Fireworks may be fleeting, but true love is not. Woo woo, I. I, at one point, Lu Cici cried even harder, almost out of breath. She had never imagined that Zhang He would do this to her, a scene that had only appeared in her dreams. Zhang He saw Lu Cici's eyes shimmering with tears, and for a moment, he was a little mesmerized, slowly moving closer to her. Looking at Lu Cici's tempting pink lips, Zhang He. Hmm. Zhang He? And Lu Cici? Not coming home late at night, what are you two doing? Hearing the familiar voice, Zhang He stiffly turned his head. Principal. Principal, what are you doing here? Jiang He felt a bit overwhelmed, why now of all times? Oh? You even know I'm the principal? The visitor was the principal of Erzhong. He was riding a bicycle late at night, originally in a hurry to investigate some matters at the education bureau, but happened to run into Jiang He, this little rascal. Continue kissing, why did you stop? The principal looked at the two of them impatiently, really troublesome. Ahem, what are you saying, principal? Zhang He tried to play dumb to escape this situation, but it was clear that it didn't work on the principal. Alright, if you don't rank in the top 100 in the next citywide exam, you're done for, got it? Got it. There was no way out, so Zhang He could only agree for now. It seemed like he would have to study until 3 in the morning from now on. The principal glanced at Lu Cici, who was blushing behind Zhang He. Lu Cici was feeling a bit dizzy at this point. Wasn't Zhang He about to kiss her? Should she let him kiss her? 
but this was her first kiss. If she gave it to Jiang Yi just like that, would he think she was too frivolous? But if she didn't, would Jiang Yi get angry? What should she do? The girl's mind was almost crashing because of a kiss from Jiang Yi. All right, take care of Lu Cici and go home early. In the end, the principal didn't say much, after all, Lu Cici's situation was a bit special, so it was best not to make her sad if possible. If it were someone else, he might have to think about it, but he trusted Jiang Yi. Got it, goodbye, principal. Jiang Yi waved his hand repeatedly, and it wasn't until the principal walked away that he finally breathed a sigh of relief. Damn, this was in front of the principal. If Zhang Yan and the others found out, they would be scared to death. Zhang Yi could already imagine their shocked expressions. Suddenly, Zhang Yi felt his cheeks warming up. Zhang Yi looked at Lu Cici in surprise. Did she just kiss him? Zhang. Zhang Yi, I. I don't know what I'm doing. In just a moment, Lu Cici almost turned into a steam locomotive. Her face is red as a ripe apple, so alluring that one couldn't help but want to taste her. Jung Hee, I really like you, I really like you. Perhaps the girl's brain had been fried by the heat of love at this moment, saying all kinds of heartfelt words. Oh my, what is she saying? The girl realized what she had said after she finished speaking, but it was already too late. Ah, I like you too. Jung Hee gently held Lu Cece's hand. Let's stop here for today. If they continued, he was afraid Lu Cici wouldn't be able to handle it. Really? Lu Cici blinked, her eyes still showing traces of tears, as if she was asking and confirming at the same time. Really? You're not lying to me? Of course not. With that, one sentence after another, the two figures gradually disappeared into the street. Meanwhile, Lu Yu was not having a good time. He knew well about Jiang Bai's methods. His two little brothers might not be in serious trouble, at most, they would be locked up for a few days and suffer a bit. Jiang Bai usually wouldn't go too hard on ordinary people. But if Jiang Bai finds out that he was behind it, he's done for. So, Lu Yu packed his bags overnight and prepared to board the plane to leave Haishir. Passengers of Flight 3891, please proceed quickly to the boarding gate for ticket inspection and boarding. Passengers of Flight 3891, Please proceed quickly to the boarding gate for ticket inspection and boarding. Looking at his ticket and the flight about to take off, Lu Yu also breathed a sigh of relief, quickly heading to the boarding gate to prepare for ticket inspection and boarding. Jiang Xin. Just wait, I will come back. Lu Yu is not a man who gives up easily. For the Lu family, and for himself, he must take down Jiang Xin no matter what. However, at this moment, Two burly men in black suits approached behind Lu Yu, neither fast nor slow. Lu Yu thought they were other passengers and paid no attention. It wasn't until he found that he couldn't move his luggage that he turned around to see what was going on. What are you doing? Trying to rob me? Let go now. Lu Yu frowned, wanting to snatch back his luggage from the two men, but found it impossible to move. With the support of the two burly men, the luggage was as steady as a rock. Do you know who I am? Lu Yu looked somewhat arrogant at the two men. He is the young master of the Lu family in Jing City. In Haishir, besides the Top Lin family and Zhang family, who would dare not to give him face. The two men in suits looked at each other as if they heard something funny. Then, a slender figure appeared in front of Lu Yu. Let go of me, or else don't blame me. Damn it! Zhang Bai! The moment Lu Yu saw Jiang Bai, he knelt down directly because he knew he was finished. The next afternoon after school, Jiang Yi went to ask Jiang Xian for a day off. He wanted to have a detailed discussion with the owner of the gym. What Jiang Yi didn't expect was that Jiang Bai was also there. In fact, Jiang Xian was very troubled by this. No matter how she tried to drive Jiang Bai away, he remained indifferent. In the end, Jiang Xian even resorted to using the Jiang family to pressure her. If you don't return to Jing City, aren't you afraid of trouble for the Jiang family? But Jiang Bai remained indifferent. In fact, this was also part of her plan. Although the current Jiang family seemed calm on the surface, there were still many rotten tumors deep inside. 
She wanted to lure those tumors out by leaving. Only by completely eradicating these tumors attached to the giant tree of the Jiang family could she avoid future troubles and rest easy. Of course, during this time, she could also let Jiang Xian see Jiang Yi's true colors. She didn't believe that a man would approach her sister for no reason. Maybe even the fainting incident last time was staged by Jiang He, all for Jiang Xian. It had to be said that Jiang Bai's imagination was quite powerful. Brother Jiang He, why not take me with you, I'm very capable. Finally, Jiang Bai revealed her fangs to Jiang He. She wanted Jiang He to gradually understand her abilities and the forces behind her. When the time came, Jiang He would fall into her trap. Abandon Lu Cici for her, and then Jiang Xian would see Jiang Yi's true colors, right? With her looks and abilities, no man could resist her. Absolutely. That won't trouble Miss Jiang Bai. Jiang Yi shattered Jiang Bai's fantasy directly, bluntly rejecting her. Based on what Jiang Bai said about Lu Cici yesterday, Jiang Yi's impression of her was very negative now. Jiang Yi was not one to judge based on appearances, even if Jiang Bai was good looking and innocent, so what? Jiang Bai's face was now a bit strained, her mouth twitching occasionally, clearly showing some anger. Brother Jiang Yi, you may not know, but I am the chief business consultant of the Jing City Jiang family. Many people consult me. Then it's even more reason not to trouble Miss Jiang Bai. Cici, let's go. After speaking, Jiang Yi held Lu Cici's hand and left leaving Jiang Bai with a bewildered look. At this moment, Jiang Xian also watched Jiang Bai cover her mouth and chuckle, this was the first time she had seen Jiang Bai so embarrassed. Jiang Bai also did not expect that a man would reject her so directly. Jiang He, well done. You have successfully caught my attention. With these words, Jiang Xian looked at Jiang Bai somewhat speechlessly and commented. Is this the plot of a domineering CEO falling in love with me? How exciting! I have said it before, Jiang Yi and I are just ordinary friends, I know very well what kind of person Jiang Yi is, you don't think. But before Jiang Xian could finish her sentence, Jiang Bai interrupted her directly, even looking at her good sister with interest. Sister, would an ordinary friend pretend to be a boyfriend? I remember that sister has a cleanliness obsession, would you let an ordinary friend eat something you have bitten into? With that, Jiang Bai's heart was filled with suppression and madness, all of which were pried out of that boy Lu Yu's mouth. How, how do you know? Jiang Xian couldn't help but panic, wasn't it only her, Jiang Yi, and Lu Cici who knew about this? How did Jiang Xian know about this, and even knew that Jiang Yi had eaten something she had bitten into? But all of that was just for show to let Lu Yu see. It wasn't actually her bite. Jiang Bai, listen to me. No need to say, sister, I won't lay a hand on Jiang He for now, I will personally make Jiang He reveal her true colors, and then sister will know that everything I did was right. With that, Jiang Bai left directly, she was going to set up a good show, a show specifically targeting Jiang He. Watching Jiang Bai's departing figure, Jiang Xian couldn't help but hold her forehead, what was all this about? She did have a slight fondness for Jiang He, but there was a six-year age gap between them. Meanwhile, Zhang He and Lu Cici were already on their way to the gym. Zhang He had already informed Zhang Yan in advance to wait for him at the gym entrance. Suddenly, Lu Cici seemed to make a certain decision and spoke up. Brother Zhang He, why not bring Miss Jiang Bai along? She couldn't help much, but she didn't want others to be unable to help because of her. Aren't you afraid that I'll be taken away by someone else? Zhang He smiled, wanting to tease this cute and kind girl. How could that happen? I, I believe in brother Jiang He. Lu Cici also felt a bit anxious when she heard this, she wouldn't let anyone take Jiang He away from her. Since you believe in me, then there's no need to worry, I've got everything under control. With Zhang Yan's assistance this time, coupled with the previous conversation with the gym owner over the phone, it was basically a sure thing. Okay. Lu Cici also tightened her grip on Jiang He's hand, she believed that Jiang He would definitely succeed. But what the two of them didn't know was that Jiang Bai was following behind them, unhurriedly. When Jiang He arrived at the gym that Jiang Yan had mentioned before, he was also slightly shocked by the small building in front of him. Who would have thought that this gym was actually a five-story building? And there was more than one. 
Even from the outside windows, you could see those strong men inside sweating profusely, exuding a hormonal scent from head to toe. Of course, only the first floor was visible, obviously for promotional purposes, the remaining floors were all made of one-way glass, not visible from the outside. At this moment, Zhang Yan also noticed Zhang He and Lu Cici's figures and waved to them. Let me introduce you, this is my coach, and also the owner here, you can call him Brother Lu. Lu Hui also reached out his hand to Zhang He proactively. It was evident that he valued this cooperation and did not find it unreliable just because the two people in front of him were students. Come in, little brother, you look a bit thin. Do you want to get a membership card first? With these words, the previously tense atmosphere instantly became much more relaxed. Sure, I was thinking of exercising too. I might need Lu Gu to give me some guidance. Zhang He's intention to exercise was just one aspect, the main focus was to strengthen his relationship with Lu Hui through getting a membership card. Seeing Jiang He being so savvy, Lu Hui nodded inwardly, realizing that he was not naive, which made him more confident about this cooperation. Lu Hui led a few people to the top floor meeting room and instructed his secretary to serve tea to Zhang He and the others. Zhang He, I am very interested in the cooperation you mentioned earlier, but I have one condition. What is it, Lu Gu? I hope that we can facilitate this cooperation through equity participation. Lu Hui was not foolish, he understood the enormous business opportunities and market potential involved. Therefore, he did not want to enter as a mere collaborator, he wanted to be a controller alongside Zhang He to avoid being kicked out at any time. With these words, Zhang He remained silent for a moment. He had considered this issue before coming here, but the decision was not in his hands. It all depended on Zhou Ruayun's opinion. Sorry, Lu Gu, I may need some time to give you an answer on this matter. Zhang He was straightforward, without any intention of hiding his thoughts. No problem, take your time to consider. If you agree, I am willing to invest one million to participate, but even if you disagree, it's okay. We can cooperate in whatever way works. Lu Hui did not insist, he just had a positive outlook on this industry. If he couldn't secure it, so be it. He was more easygoing. Thank you, Lu Gu. I won't disappoint you during tomorrow's trial. The two quickly reached an agreement, and everything went smoothly, even Jiang He felt it was going too smoothly. Oh, Jiang He, since you wanted to get a membership card, let me offer you a free one-year trial. Although it was called a one-year trial, it was essentially a lifetime free membership as long as the cooperation continued, a way to strengthen the bond between them. No need, Lu Gu, I can pay for it myself. What are you saying? You are Zhang Yan's classmate and my partner. If you come here and still have to pay, wouldn't that be embarrassing for me? Zhang Yi had no choice but to accept. Lu Duo Or. Come out quickly. As soon as Lu Hui called out, the office door opened, revealing a tall, healthy-looking woman holding dumbbells. What's up, Dad? Lu Duor looked at the group in front of her, somewhat nonchalantly. You go and teach this Jiang He, pay attention to the boundaries, okay? With these words, Zhang Yan also looked surprised at Lu Hui. Coach, isn't it a bit unusual to have seen your sister come? This was no joke. Zhang Yan was really afraid that Zhang He would be trained to death by his senior sister Lu Duor. It's okay, what are young people afraid of? Back in my day, I also. Seeing Lu Hui about to start recounting his glorious past, Lu Duor quickly took Zhang He and Lu Cici away. Once her father started, there was no end to it. Taking Zhang He to a gym, surrounded by people exercising, Zhang He, with his somewhat slender frame, indeed seemed out of place. Shigo, you give it a try first, and later I will teach you personally. With that, Lu Duor turned to get water, showing no interest in Zhang He, the Shigo dot. Zhang He was somewhat speechless. First, he found a resting area for Lu Cici. It must be said that this gym is truly professional, even specially designed a resting area for the family and friends of these fitness enthusiasts, with all kinds of snacks and drinks available. However, the resting area was full of young girls, and the strong men and women were not too comfortable coming here. Cece, you stay here and watch me. If anything happens, you must let me know, okay? 
Zhang Yi even asked the other young girls next to Lu Cixi to help take care of her. It wasn't until Jiang Yi left that these young girls spoke to Lu Cixi. Your boyfriend is really considerate, but he's a bit thin. If something happens, can he protect you? Lu Cixi looked through the glass of the resting area and muttered to herself, he can. Whether in the past or now, Zhang Yi has always been protecting her at all times. At the same time, Lu Duor also brought back three bottles of water. Seeing Lu Cixi go to the resting area, she directly threw a bottle to Jiang Yi. Try your limits later. If you can't handle it, speak up, understand? This was also to prevent Jiang Yi from getting injured. First, try the barbell front squats, don't force yourself, okay? Lu Duor removed all the rubber plates from the barbell as soon as she arrived, leaving only the barbell bar. This was the minimum weight of the barbell, which was 20 kilograms, the weight of a standard barbell bar. At this time, many curious fitness enthusiasts came to watch. After all, beginners like Jiang Yi were relatively rare, and it was their senior sister personally guiding him. You know, even those who have been training for a year or so can't handle Lu Duor's high-intensity training, let alone someone like Jiang Yi who is thin. How much do you think this kid can lift? Hmm, hard to say, I guess this bar is too much for him. I feel like he might not be able to do it, he's too skinny. Many people shook their heads, especially with Jiang He's body there. Even Lu Cixi looked at Jiang He with some concern, praying that he wouldn't get hurt, whether he could lift it or not didn't matter. But the other young girls in the resting area didn't think so. They curiously watched the somewhat weak and handsome young man Jiang He, and some even started betting. I bet this handsome guy can't lift this bar. Don't talk nonsense, a normal person can definitely lift it. I bet 40 kilograms. I bet 30. I bet. Hey, hey, hey. What? Are you doing? Can't you see his girlfriend is still here? Some couldn't bear to watch, but ultimately they were outnumbered, and their voices were drowned out. Right, right, how much do you bet your boyfriend can lift? Some busybodies directly asked Lu Cici for her opinion. For a moment, everyone's eyes were on Lu Cixi. To be honest, they were all quite envious of Lu Cixi for being so beautiful and having such a handsome boyfriend. I? I guess 20. As soon as this was said, there was a sigh, unexpectedly Lu Cixi had so little confidence in her boyfriend. Faced with ridicule, others might hope that their boyfriends could lift a little more, but Lu Cixi just hoped that Zhang Yi wouldn't get hurt. At this moment, Jiang Yi looked at the barbell bar in front of him, feeling somewhat speechless. Miss Lu, do you know what a porter is? Porter? What does that mean? Lu Duor was a bit puzzled, thinking that Jiang Yi didn't want to lose face and was deliberately delaying time, but she still hoped that Jiang Yi could give it a try so she could plan his workout. It's when you help others carry heavy luggage or goods at the train station or mall, and you can earn about 5 to 10 yuan per trip. Lu Duor was born in a wealthy family and naturally didn't understand. Actually, Jiang Yi also has some memories that he can't recall. He has done too much dirty and tiring work. He only remembers that it seems that Lin Ruoli, that little girl, got sick back then, and the orphanage subsidy was delayed. Jiang Yi had to work as a hammer for a while, just like that, relying on 10 or 5 dollars, he managed to save a thousand dollars to pay for Lin Ruoli's medical expenses. It's a bit similar to this, just not as fancy, and there's a frame holding it up. After speaking, Jiang He stood under the barbell according to the standard, and easily lifted it up. Miss Lu wants to test my limits, right? Add two more to make it 40 kilograms. Since it's a limit test, Jiang He also wanted to give it a try. Lu Duer also frowned slightly, she originally thought Jiang He was just a pampered young master, looking down on him from the bottom of her heart. But from Jiang He's words just now, she realized that Jiang He may have grown up enduring hardships. At this moment, the onlooker's eyes all showed subtle changes, quietly watching Jiang He's test. Add two more. Looking at the six barbell plates on Jiang He's shoulders, Lu Duer also started to worry about Jiang He. Are you sure? If you can't hold it, you must speak up. Even the several burly men watching also stepped forward to support Jiang He. It's okay, I can handle this weight. 
Jiang Yi felt that his limit should be around 100 kilograms. Sure enough, when the last two plates were added, Jiang Yi started to tremble all over. Just when everyone thought Jiang Yi couldn't hold on, the burly men beside him were ready to reach out to help. But Jiang Yi actually managed to put back the 100 kilograms of barbell back on the rack steadily. Suddenly, the entire gym was filled with intense applause. Lu Duer also looked at Jiang Yi in disbelief, finding it hard to imagine how Jiang Yi, with his slender body, could lift such a heavy barbell. How much hardship must he have endured? At that moment, Lu Duer couldn't help but feel sorry for Jiang Yi. At the same time, the gym owner Lu Hui, who was observing Jiang Yi upstairs, nodded. It seems that Jiang Yi is indeed a talent worth nurturing. Capable, understanding of human affairs, and willing to endure hardships. If only her precious daughter could take a liking to this young man. Just then, an anonymous call came to Lu Hui's phone. Lu Hui thought it was a nuisance call and was about to answer and hang up to confirm. However, the voice on the other end made Lu Hui furrow his brows. Lu Hui, the owner of Haishir Tongda Gym, who also manages many construction companies, worth over a billion, am I right? The voice on the other end was obviously processed in a special way, making it impossible to tell who it was. What do you want to say? Don't beat around the bush. Lu Hui was not a good person to mess with. As a big boss, he had encountered many threatening calls in Haishir, his own territory. Lu Hui, from now on, you just need to do as I say, otherwise, your companies, including this gym, may not be able to survive. To confirm his words, Lu Hui received an internal call the next second, a call that only his trusted aides could make. Director Lu. Something's wrong. Our stock price. After listening to the report from his subordinate, Lu Hui's frown deepened. Who are you? The fact that someone could acquire such a large stake in his company in such a short time indicated the other party's strength. But what kind of existence could easily bring down his company and require his help? Or rather, require his obedience? Who I am doesn't matter, you just need to do as I say. Yes, the person on the other end was Jiang Bai. The whole city estimates that only she has the strength to forcefully invest in a crushing manner, even the top two families in Jianglin cannot do it so easily. What she wants to do is to raise the requirements of the cooperation with Jiang He's partner, in order to force Jiang He to ask her for help. No one can refuse me yet. Jiang Bai hated it when she thought that Jiang He actually dared to refuse her without hesitation, she was determined to make Jiang He bow down and beg for her help. After hearing Jiang Bai's request, Lu Hui also sat paralyzed in his chair. The power on the opposite side is completely beyond his resistance, he doesn't even have the qualification to compete with it. Sorry, Jiang Yi little brother. Not only for himself, but also for his daughter, he cannot provoke such a terrifying existence just because of Jiang Yi. And Jiang Yi is naturally unaware of all this, still training according to Lu Duor's plan. Wow! Your boyfriend is so amazing. I envy you, your boyfriend is so handsome and makes you feel so secure. Sister, how about your boyfriend lending me for two days? These girls can say anything in their conversations. Lu Cici actually wants to see if Jiang Yi is injured, but when she sees Jiang Yi giving her a reassuring look, she can only sit still. Oh, exchanging glances, so cheesy. I can't take it anymore. Why isn't my boyfriend this romantic? Damn it, I want a breakup. Lu Cici didn't expect that her actions just now were seen by them, her face was even more embarrassed. But she felt sweet in her heart. Jiang Yi, can you tell me about your past stories? Lu Duor propped up her chin and looked at Jiang Yi on the treadmill like that. Jiang Yi's various indicators far exceed the strength that his weight and body should have, and Lu Duor is becoming more and more curious about Jiang Yi. She also feels very guilty for looking down on Jiang Yi before. Ha! Huh? My past stories? There's really nothing much to it. Oh, why are you, a grown man, so fussy? I'm just more interested in you. When Lu Duor said this, the blush on her weak colored ears couldn't hide the redness. There was no way, Jiang Yi had to slowly tell some of his past stories. Ah, you're an orphan. Lu Duor opened her mouth wide, for a moment she was somewhat incredulous, but soon realized that she had said the wrong thing, 
and quickly apologized to Jiang Yi. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I spoke too quickly. It's okay, I don't mind at all. Zhang Yi smiled and shook his head, he had long stopped caring about these things. But Lu Duor still felt ashamed, her face quickly blushing, she actually looked down on an orphan before, and even said it out loud. She deserved to die. With Lu Duor's personality, she probably had to get up in the middle of the night and give herself a slap. At this moment, Lu Hui suddenly appeared and asked Zhang Yi to go up with him first. What's going on? Lu Duor was also puzzled, wasn't she supposed to take Jiang Yi for training? It's none of your business, Jiang Yi little brother, come up with me. Lu Hui didn't want Lu Duor to know about this, otherwise, with this girl's temper, she would definitely make a fuss with him. Sorry, little girl, forgive your father's weakness. He can give up everything, except Lu Duor, even if it means abandoning his pride for so many years. And Jiang Yi also sensed something was wrong, so he followed Lu Hui upstairs alone, while asking Lu Duor to help take care of Lu Cici and tell her that he would be back soon. Lu Duor nodded, not sure what her old man was up to. When Jiang Yi arrived at the office, Lu Hui quietly closed the door. Lu Gu, just say what you want to say. Jiang Yi broke the silence first, believing that there would be a solution to the problem. Jiang Yi, my little brother, I've been thinking, we need to be cautious about this cooperation. Lu Hui's words were particularly difficult. He had never gone back on his word, but this time he had to. Well, Lu Gu, go on. Zhang Yi could probably guess what was going on, but he didn't think it was related to Zhang Bai. One million, as long as you can come up with one million, you can do whatever you want in this cooperation. Lu Hui finally said it, this was also the challenge that Zhang Bai left for Zhang Yi. She believed that Jiang Yi would come back to beg her for this one million. As for Jiang Xin? As long as Jiang Bai wanted to, she could freeze her bank card at any time, this was her right as the head of the Jiang family. Lu Gu, may I ask boldly, is there someone? Sorry, I can't say. Before Jiang Yi could finish his sentence, Lu Hui interrupted, indirectly telling Jiang Yi the reason for this matter, just as Jiang Yi had thought. Well, I understand. Thank you, Lu Gu. After saying that, Zhang Yi was about to leave, but Lu Hui stopped him. Zhang Yi, my little brother, I'll call you Xiao Jiang, as long as you get through this difficult time, I, Lu Hui, swear that your affairs in the future will be my affairs. Seeing Zhang Yi leave, Lu Hui finally breathed a sigh of relief, hoping that Zhang Yi would be able to succeed smoothly. When Zhang Yi went downstairs, he saw Lu Cici standing anxiously at the stairway. Seeing Jiang He coming down, she hurriedly went up to meet him. Jiang He, are you okay? Looking at Lu Cici's worried look, Jiang He smiled slightly. He had seen and experienced so much over the years, and this alone was not enough to defeat him. But he would not let Lu Cici worry. I'm fine, just discussing some cooperation matters with Boss Lu. After that, Jiang He turned to Lu Duor. Miss Lu, Cici, and I will leave first. We'll come find you for guidance next time we have the chance. Hearing this, Lu Duor frowned. What do you mean? What do you mean by finding me next time? Did my old man make things difficult for you? I'll go ask him. Lu Duor was always straightforward, never one to hide her feelings, and she was about to go upstairs to find Lu Hui. Wasn't this cooperation agreed upon beforehand? How could they go back on their word? Jiang He couldn't stop her, not even giving him a chance to explain. Helpless, Jiang He had to leave with Lu Cici first. To be honest, he didn't have a good solution for this one million right now. Meanwhile, Lu Duor had already rushed to Lu Hui's office. And when Lu Hui saw it was Lu Duor, he felt guilty. Ahem, why did you come up? Tell me, did you make things difficult for Jiang He? With that said, Lu Hui widened his eyes, looking very curious at Lu Duor. Don't you dislike that kid Zhang Yi? He remembered the look of disdain Lu Duor had towards Zhang Yi before. What, what do you mean by dislike? I? I'm just standing up for justice. Really? What was her old man thinking? At most, she felt pity and a little guilt towards Zhang Yi. Did Zhang Yi tell you about this? No, I guessed it. Once this was said, Lu Hui also understood. 
He knew that Zhang He was the kind of man who would handle things on his own, so how could he possibly report on him? So, are you now questioning your old man based on a guess? Or is it that you like that kid Zhang He? Put. What are you talking about, old man? How long have I known this kid? Seeing that Lu Duo really didn't mean anything by it, Lu Hui also felt a little relieved. He had indeed considered Zhang He as a good candidate for a son in law, but Zhang He already had a girlfriend. Remember, our Lu family would never do something like stealing someone else's boyfriend, understand? When did I ever try to steal someone else's boyfriend? Lu Duor was really going crazy. How did her old man become so abnormal? And wasn't she here to ask Lu Hui about what was going on with Zhang Yi? How did the conversation veer off track like this? Seeing that Lu Duor was persistent, Lu Hui had no choice but to truthfully recount the previous situation. After hearing it, Lu Duor's face turned pale. Are there people even you, old man, can't afford to provoke? Zhang Yi, an orphan who had suffered so much along the way, why would anyone have a problem with him? Are they even human? But more than that, there was a sense of guilt towards Zhang Yi. Sai, I'm sorry, daughter, it's your old man's incompetence. Lu Hui also sighed. In that one sentence, there was so much helplessness. At the same time, Zhang Yi and Lu Cixi were walking home, and Zhang Yi took the initiative to hold Lu Cixi's hand. Zhang Yi, is it? Lu Cixi was sensitive, how could she not see Jiang Yi's dilemma? Don't worry, everything will pass. Zhang Yi was just about to brush it off, after all, Lu Cixi knew about this, it only added to her worries. But Lu Cixi stood still, just looking at Zhang Yi. Zhang Yi, I wanna know. I want to help Jiang He, even if it's just a little bit. A determined look appeared on Lu Cixi's face. If Jiang He didn't agree, she wouldn't leave. Looking at the cute and silly girl in front of him, Jiang He couldn't help but chuckle. Why are you laughing, Jiang He? Silly girl, it's about the investment that Mr. Lu wants to make. We can discuss it with Miss Zhou later. Jiang He's tone was light, showing no sign of his previous worries. Lu Cixi always wanted to consider Zhang Yi, and Zhang Yi felt the same way. Love is so wonderful, clearly understanding each other's hearts, yet always filled with well-intentioned lies. Really? Zhang Yi, you're not lying to me? Of course not, do you not trust me? With that said, Lu Cixi shook her head repeatedly. Of course not. Seeing this scene, Zhang Yi once again held Lu Cixi's hand and moved closer. Hey! Get a room. Don't block the way. The driver of the nearby car shouted angrily as he rolled down the window towards Zhang He. It was only then that Zhang He realized he and Lu Cixi were in the middle of the crosswalk, and the green light was about to end. Hurry! Without hesitation, Zhang He quickly grabbed Lu Cixi's hand and walked briskly. But what Zhang He didn't know was that Lu Cixi's face was already starting to blush. A girl's blushing cheeks spoke volumes. At the same time, Jiang Bai also received a call from Lu Hui. After learning that things had been done according to her instructions, she waited quietly for Jiang He to come. She didn't believe that Jiang He would give up on this collaboration. Now Jiang He's only way out was to beg her or go to Jiang Xian. But in the end, whether it was to beg her or go to Jiang Xian, the final decision rested in her hands. Just waiting until the next day dawned, Jiang Bai still did not receive a call from Jiang He. It was then that Jiang Bai remembered, Jiang He probably never had her number in the first place. Miscalculated. But it's okay, I'll take the initiative to go to him. After tidying up, Jiang Bai set off from the villa she had just bought in Haishur to Jiang He's school. Coincidentally, Jiang He had just finished school and was helping Jiang Xian move new medicines and remove some expired ones. Oh my, isn't this brother Jiang He? With that, Zhang Bai blinked her innocent big eyes and looked at Zhang He like that. Zhang He was almost scared by Zhang Bai's inexplicable words, almost dropping the box in his hand. Brother Zhang He, don't you have anything to say to me when you see me? Zhang Bai continued to stare at Zhang He persistently, waiting for him to ask for her number first. Zhang Bai, what are you up to again? Zhang Xian couldn't help but speak first, 
feeling embarrassed to have such a sister with a bad head. Sister, please hold off for a moment, brother Jiang He has something to say to me. With that said, Jiang He was even more confused. Miss Jiang Bai, I don't seem to have anything to say to you. If you're free, you can go inside and sit for a while. With that, Jiang He left without looking back, continuing to move his boxes. You you you. Jiang Bai was also infuriated by Jiang He's attitude, this Jiang He really doesn't know how to appreciate her. Did she have to personally give him her number? What are you doing? Although Jiang Xian thought Jiang Bai had a bad head, she knew that Jiang Bai never did things without a purpose. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of the two. The newcomer, Jiang Xian, looked somewhat familiar. Still dressed in exquisite office attire, paired with black high heels, her perfect figure was probably only comparable to Jiang Xian's. The visitor was Jiang He's older sister, Jiang Huang. Where's Xiao Hu? He's here, right? With that said, Jiang Xian frowned slightly, wondering what this woman was up to again. Just as Jiang Xian was about to say that Jiang He wasn't there, she was bumped into by Jiang He carrying a box. Xiao Hu. What are you doing this kind of work for? Jiang Xian, what do you mean? Jiang Huang stepped forward and took the box from Jiang He, surprised by its weight, as it contained medical. Equipment. Xiao Wu, come with sister. And Jiang Xian, I'm not done with you. With that, Jiang Huang tried to pull Jiang He away. She didn't expect that during the days Jiang He was away from the Jiang family, he had been doing labor for Jiang Xian. Jiang Xian was speechless, is this woman crazy? But no matter how hard Jiang Huang tried, Jiang He stood still without moving. Faced with Jiang Huang's actions, Jiang He also felt a headache. Miss Jiang, didn't we already clear things up before? Why are you coming to bother me again? With that said, Jiang Huang's body trembled slightly. Xiao. Xiao Hu, how could sister be coming to bother you? Sister just saw you moving such heavy things just now, did Jiang Xian bully you? With that, Jiang Huang glared fiercely at Jiang Xian, but Jiang Xian naturally ignored her. Miss Jiang, you don't need to worry about this, Dr. Jiang is very good to me, and the things I moved before were much heavier than this. Then, Jiang He picked up the box on the ground again, his movements were so skilled that it made Jiang Huang's heart ache. Xiao Hu, have you done this kind of work before? As someone born with a silver spoon in her mouth, how could Jiang Huang imagine Jiang He's previous life, how could she understand that someone would work all day for a couple hundred yuan, sometimes even have their wages unfairly deducted? There was no way, who made the previous Jiang He not an adult yet? When bullying, there was no consideration, ah? Uh, you don't know? I remember telling you about it before. Jiang He also didn't want to deal with her too much. He had clearly mentioned this matter to Jiang Chong before, but Jiang Chong simply didn't care. Is that so? I? I? With these words, Jiang Chong also blushed with embarrassment. She had. All right, Miss Jiang, if you don't have anything else, you should go back first. After speaking, Jiang He continued to move the boxes onto the car. Wait, Xiao He. Sister has something to tell you. Jiang Chong stepped forward and grabbed Jiang He's sleeve. She had made up her mind to reveal the truth of that year, regardless of whether Jiang Li could bear it, but this was what he had done. It was Jiang He who was falsely accused by Jiang Li. Miss Jiang, if you have something to say, say it here. Jiang He just turned slightly with the box in his arms and shook off Jiang Chang's hand. Jiang Chang's hand lingered in the air for a few seconds before awkwardly retracting. Xiao He, I already know the truth of that year. It wasn't you who stole the necklace, it was Jiang Li. Although she had made up her mind, the last few words were difficult to say. Jiang Xian and Jiang Bai also looked at Jiang Chong with some curiosity. Indeed, no one could resist the allure of gossip. No need to say, I don't care. Jiang He knew what Jiang Chong was talking about. His life was good now, and he didn't want to understand this matter or have the mood to play any deceptive games with the Jiang family. If the Jiang family bothered him again because of this matter, it would not be worth it. With these words, Jiang Chong was stunned, her voice slightly trembling. Xiao. 
Xiao He, please, come back with sister. I will make Jiang Li apologize to you, I will never. Apologize? What's the use? Jiang He laughed directly. At this point, what use was an apology? He had been kneeling in the rain all night back then. Could it be resolved with a light apology? Jiang He didn't care, but that didn't mean he would forgive. I? I misspoke, I will. I will make Jiang Li. At this moment, Jiang Chong was completely flustered, no longer showing the strong woman appearance. Make him leave the Jiang family? Or make him kneel to me? Can you do either? All right, Miss Jiang, you should leave quickly, or it will rain soon. Looking at the dark clouds gathering in the dim sky and the faint smell of water in the air, Jiang Yi could sense that it would rain soon. I? I will make Jiang Li leave the Jiang family. Xiao He, believe me. As if making a certain decision, after giving Jiang He a last glance, Jiang Chong left straight away, even if the wind scattered her delicate hair, she did not stop. Jiang He did not expect Jiang Chong to say that, his brows furrowed slightly. What was going on? Wasn't Jiang Chong always doting on Jiang Li, that little beast? Why would she say that? But even if Jiang Li was driven out of the Jiang family, he would not go back. He had never agreed to return because of this matter. He had said that he would never go back in this lifetime. Jiang Chang's actions were doomed to be in vain. Is it raining? Jiang Yi felt the raindrops falling on his palm, cool and moist, murmuring to himself. Jiang Yi, come back first, we'll continue moving later. Jiang Xian saw the rain getting heavier and quickly asked Jiang Yi to come back first. It's okay, I'll move quickly. The others were fine, but these medicines, once wet, would be unusable. Besides, the rain wasn't too heavy now. As long as he moved fast enough, he would make it, even if he got a little wet. Jiang Xian wanted to say something, but then saw Lu Cici holding her own umbrella and heading straight towards Jiang Yi. Go back quickly, it's just a little rain. Jiang Yi didn't mind, but it would be troublesome if Lu Cici caught a cold. However, Lu Cici shook her head at Jiang Yi, which was rare. She wasn't made of clay, so she wouldn't break so easily. Ah, you silly girl. There was no choice, so Jiang Yi had to speed up and complete the task before the rain got heavier. Meanwhile, the scene of Jiang Xian and the two of them in the rainy night, one holding an umbrella and the other carrying things, also made her heartache a bit. She actually started to feel a bit envious. As for Jiang Bai, it was even more obvious. He was about to rush over and take Lu Cici's umbrella, but Jiang Xian stopped him directly, without any room for negotiation. Don't cause trouble. What do you mean by causing trouble? I'm just trying to help. Jiang He still hadn't asked for her phone number. Now that she was helping, it was giving Jiang He a way out. In fact, she was afraid that if Jiang He didn't ask for it himself, it would be too embarrassing for her to give it. Fortunately, Jiang He soon finished moving all the boxes. Jiang He quickly took Lu Cici back to the medical room. Feeling Lu Cici's slightly cold hand, her trembling body, and the water droplets on her hair, Jiang Yi felt a bit angry. Promise me you'll listen to me next time, okay? Really, he hadn't realized before that this little girl was so stubborn? Mmm, -hmm, I got it. Lu Cici smiled, happy to help Jiang Yi. So, she would do the same next time. Alright, wait for the rain to ease up a bit, and I'll call a cab for you two to go home. Watching the two of them being affectionate, Jiang Xian couldn't help but feel a strange restlessness in her heart. It's not surprising that as a single woman who had been single since birth, seeing this scene naturally made her slightly tremble, after all, who hasn't fantasized about a love that never leaves or abandons? Soon, the rain subsided a bit. Jiang Xian looked at the weather forecast on her phone, furrowing her brows slightly. Let's go now, it will rain harder later, and there will be strong winds. The car is already at the school gate, just text me when you get there. It wasn't unexpected either, as a coastal city, Haishir sure often experienced heavy rain and strong winds. This time, it hadn't rained for so many days. When Jiang Xian mentioned her phone number, Jiang Bai realized that Jiang He still hadn't asked for her number. How could her plan proceed like this? Jiang. 
Zhang Yi, did you forget something? Zhang Bai decided to take the initiative and remind Zhang Yi. Upon hearing this, Zhang Yi seemed to remember something. Oh right. Tell me, tell me. Zhang Bai looked at Zhang Yi expectantly, say it. Say it. After all, how many people in Jing City begged for her phone number? Now, as long as Jiang Yi spoke up, she would. I forgot to take the umbrella, thanks for reminding me, Miss Jiang Bai. With that, Jiang Yi left with Lu Cici without looking back, wanting to take advantage of this calm period to reach the school gate. Hearing this, Jiang Bai was petrified on the spot. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Jiang Yi. You wait for me. Jiang Bai's angry shout made Jiang Yi sneeze in the distance. What's wrong? Did you catch a cold? Zhang He shook his head, he wasn't that easy to get sick. Zhang He, are you okay? Lu Cici gently touched Zhang He's cheek and found that his temperature was normal, which made her feel a little relieved. Um, why don't you come to my house today, Zhang He, I'll make some ginger soup for you. When she finished speaking, Lu Cici's pretty face was as red as a ripe apple. It's okay, it's okay, I just sneezed. It's you who's almost not covered by the umbrella. Zhang Yi looked at this silly girl trying to keep him from getting wet, pushing most of the umbrella towards him. Zhang Yi directly shielded Lu Cici in his chest, using his arm to block the wind for her. Isn't this fine? Anyway, there weren't many people on the road now, and there was nothing wrong with being a little reckless. Feeling the warmth of Zhang Yi's chest, Lu Cici's already rosy cheeks became even hotter, almost steaming. In the room. And so, the two arrived at the school gate, with the online car driver waiting there early. Get in the car quickly, it's going to pour soon. Sure enough, as soon as the driver's words fell, a strong wind blew towards the two. But at this moment, Jiang He's phone suddenly rang. And the caller turned out to be the director of the orphanage. Although Jiang He didn't know why the director was calling him, he understood that it must be something important. What? Rua Li still hasn't returned? Zhang Yi looked out the car window at the raging storm outside, his brow furrowing deeper. Could she have gone to pay respects to her parents? Zhang Yi remembered that these days seemed to be the anniversary of the little girl's parents' death. Could it be true? Zhang Yi cursed himself inwardly, but there was nothing he could do. He knew Rua Li's temperament, no matter what happened, she would go to the cemetery to pay her respects that day. Hanging up the phone, Zhang Yi took a deep breath. And Lu Cici naturally heard what Zhang Yi had just said, and couldn't help but squeeze his hand again. Ruali will be fine. Lu Cici understood that Zhang Yi really treated Lin Ruali as a younger sister, so he wouldn't be jealous in such a big matter. Thank you, Cici. Every time Lu Cici spoke, she could calm his restless emotions, and Zhang Yi was really grateful that Lu Cici could like him. Zhang Yi first had the driver drop Lu Cici off at her doorstep. Lu Cici wanted to go with Zhang Yi, but how could Zhang Yi agree? Driver, just drop me off here. Zhang Yi didn't even bother with an umbrella, just held it in his hand and hurried towards the cemetery on the outskirts of the city, where Lin Ruali's parents were buried. In fact, the cemetery was not far from the orphanage, which also made Zhang Yi feel a little relieved. Suddenly, a figure stumbled in front of Zhang Yi. The person was soaked all over by the rain, with raindrops still dripping from her hair, and blood oozing from her arm due to abrasions. Zhang He? Take me to the orphanage. Zhang He looked at the woman in front of him, finding it hard to imagine that she was Zhang Jiang. Yes, the disheveled woman in front of him was Zhang He's third sister, Zhang Jiang, who was completely different from her previous arrogant celebrity appearance. Move aside. I don't have time to argue with you. Zhang Yi was in a hurry to find Lin Ruali now, how could he have time to deal with her? Zhang. Zhang Yi. Please, it's getting dark soon, and it's still raining. I'm really scared, I need to go to the orphanage to find someone very important. Please. Zhang Zhang's eyes were teary. She had just received the news today that the boy who had saved her before was in the orphanage in the outskirts of the city. So she didn't care about the pouring rain, even walking here on foot after her car broke down from being soaked in water. She had been waiting for this day for too long. Zhang Jiang. 
I'm begging. You too. Let me go, okay? But no matter how Jiang Yi struggled, he couldn't break free from Jiang Zhang's control. Jiang Jiang was starting to lose her mind. Let go of me, damn it. Jiang Yi looked at the gradually dimming sky and knew that once it got dark, Lin Ruoli would really be in danger. There was no other way, Jiang Yi could only suppress the restlessness in his heart and hand the umbrella in his hand to Jiang Jiang. Keep walking straight ahead, cross a stone bridge, and then walk for a while to reach the orphanage, do you understand? The more urgent the situation, the more one must not lose their wits, they must remain calm. Calm. Whether Jiang Jian lived or died, he didn't care, but if Lin Ruoli got involved because of Jiang Jiang, he absolutely could not accept it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Jiang Jiang tremblingly took the umbrella from Jiang Yi's hand, tears streaming down uncontrollably, she was really scared, so scared. Now you know what fear is? You didn't know when you treated Jiang Yi like that before? Breaking free from Jiang Zhang's control, Jiang Yi quickened his pace, he must find Lin Ruoli before it got completely dark. When Jiang Yi arrived at the cemetery, he was already soaked by the rain, even his eyes couldn't open due to the storm blowing water droplets. Lin Ruoli Relying on his memory, Jiang Yi continued to search for Lin Ruoli's figure. But after shouting for a long time, he still didn't get any response. By now, it was almost completely dark, Jiang Yi's breathing became more rapid, and his inner turmoil grew more and more chaotic. Lin Ruoli Where the hell are you? Suddenly, a figure in a white school uniform appeared in Jiang Yi's field of vision. At this moment, blood was oozing from Lin Ruoli's forehead, her once pristine ankles were swollen and red, she was sitting on a stone platform in the cemetery at a loss, tears streaming down her cheeks. Jiang Jiang Yi Gij when Jiang Yi saw that Lin Ruoli was unharmed, he relaxed like a taut bowstring suddenly released, even making him feel a bit unsteady. What's wrong with your head? Did you waste all those years of schooling? With such heavy rain, do you want to die? Jiang Yi's voice was trembling as he was angry that Lin Ruoli didn't take care of herself, what if? I'm sorry, Jiang Yi Gij, I'm sorry. The girl cried hoarsely, but she really, really missed her parents, she really, really wanted. Jiang Yi didn't say anything more, just let Lin Ruoli cry and vent. He understood that feeling. The rain continued unabated, the natural weather wouldn't lessen because of Lin Ruoli's pain. There was no other way, so Jiang Yi had to take off his soaked coat and put it on Lin Ruoli. Although it was already wet, it could still withstand the onslaught of the strong wind. Come, I'll carry you on my back. Lin Ruoli had sprained her ankle, so she couldn't walk on her own. M.M. Lin Ruoli obediently leaned on Jiang Yi's back, but this scene seemed somewhat familiar. Remember? When you were bullied and I went to stand up for you, I carried you back to the orphanage like this. Facing the rain's onslaught, Jiang Yi still held his chest high, as if he had returned to that time before, he was still the big brother shielding Lin Ruoli from the wind and rain. Jiang Yi Gij, I'm sorry. Lin Ruoli buried her head in Jiang Yi's back, her hot tears occasionally mixed with raindrops falling. Feeling the warmth on his back, Jiang Yi understood that the little girl was crying again, but he still had to be stern. If you know you're sorry, then don't do such stupid things again, understand? To be honest, ever since this little girl Lin Ruoli entered high school, she rarely called him brother again. Hmm, I know. Even if you must go, you have to inform me or the headmaster, I'll accompany you. Lin Ruoli listened to the howling of the wind and rain in her ears, as well as Jiang Yi's voice, and couldn't help but shiver all over. Okay, stop talking, we'll be there soon, Jiang Yi quickened his pace. This storm probably won't stop for a while, and the drainage system in the outskirts of the city is not good. If the roads get flooded, it will be bad. Lin Ruoli pressed her hot little face against Jiang Yi's back, murmuring to herself in a voice he couldn't hear. Why can it only be my brother? If one day Jiang Yi gets married, will he still care about her? Every time she thought about this, Lin Ruoli's heart would clench. At the same time, Jiang Jiang had followed Jiang Yi's directions and arrived at the orphanage located in the outskirts of the city. When Jiang Jiang knocked on the heavy door, footsteps followed. The orphanage's matron thought it was Jiang Yi returning and opened the door directly. 
But when she saw that it was Zhang Zhang, a stranger, her cloudy eyes flashed with caution. There have been many human traffickers recently, many of them young women like Zhang Jiang. Is there something you need? The matron did not relax her guard just because of Zhang Zhang's disheveled appearance, she invited her in directly. Hello, I'm here to find someone. Zhang Jiang gestured with her hands and feet, trying to explain her purpose urgently. But the more one rushes, the harder it is to explain. It's a tall, skinny boy, about the same age as me, he saved my life before. After a long time, Zhang Zhang finally explained her intentions completely. The matron seemed to think of someone, didn't say anything more, just asked Zhang Zhang to come in first. The person you're looking for hasn't returned yet, go change into some clean clothes first. The matron handed Zhang Zhang a few clean clothes, then returned to the courtyard, waiting for Zhang He and Lin Ruoli to return. Zhang Jiang also thanked repeatedly. Although the clothes in her hands were not from a big brand, and the style was just ordinary short-sleeved pants, the quality was good and comfortable to touch, obviously made by the matron herself. At the same time, many little radishes in the orphanage heard the commotion in the courtyard and peeked out from behind various pieces of furniture to observe this. Beautiful and fashionable woman. Hello. Zhang Jiang also greeted the group of children friendly, she also noticed that although these children were dressed plainly, they were all clean and full of vitality. It was clear that the matron was a very responsible person. The contrast between Zhang Zhang's attire and the simple orphanage was stark. Many little girls, after seeing Zhang Zhang's face, were shocked and exclaimed. It's Zhang Jiang. We often see her on TV. Really? Really? Wow! She's even more beautiful than on TV. The little boys were not so surprised, they still preferred the armored warriors. When Zhang Jiang changed into clean clothes and came out of the room, the chattering little girls scattered like birds and beasts. Although they admired big stars like Zhang Jiang very much, they were still a bit afraid of her when they met for the first time, and only dared to sneak a peek. Seeing that the group of little girls seemed a little afraid of her, Zhang Zhang smiled gently and waved to them, indicating that they could come over. But obviously, the little girls looked at each other and didn't dare to go out. It wasn't until a girl in the ninth grade appeared that she slowly approached Zhang Jiang. Do you know me? Looking at the girl in front of her, Zhang Jiang miraculously pulled out a candy from behind. I'm not a child anymore. The girl looked at Zhang Jiang with a hint of helplessness in her eyes, she was not a child. Zhang Jiang, is she being looked down upon by a child? Hu hu hu. Zhang Yi gasped for breath continuously, his head feeling dizzy and throbbing. Lin Ruoli on his back also sensed that something was wrong with Zhang Yi's body, quickly reaching out to touch his forehead. So hot. Lin Ruoli exclaimed, quickly wanting to get off Zhang Yi. Don't move. We'll be there soon. Zhang Yi frowned, gritting his teeth. But no matter how hard he tried to hold on, he couldn't stop trembling all over, and his hands and feet began to grow cold. Finally reaching the orphanage gate, Zhang Yi had no strength left to knock on the door. What's wrong with me? But before Jiang Yi could finish his sentence, he felt a sudden weakness, followed by a dizziness, and fell heavily to the ground, only hearing Lin Ruoli's cries and sobs in his ears. At this moment, even Zhang Jiang in the inner hall heard the commotion in the front yard. Just as she was about to rush out to see what was happening, she was stopped by the young girl from earlier. Don't forget your umbrella, silly sister. With these words, Zhang Zhang couldn't help but feel a mix of amusement and exasperation. Was she being educated by a middle schooler? But Zhang Zhang still patted the girl's head, said thank you, and went out with the umbrella. When she saw Lin Ruoli and the orphanage director dragging someone inside, Zhang Zhang quickly went to hold the umbrella for them. But when she saw clearly who was being dragged, she was also shocked. Jiang. Jiang He. What's wrong with him? Seeing the two struggling, Jiang Jiang didn't mind getting wet in the rain, handed the umbrella to the director, and directly lifted Jiang He up. When she felt Jiang He's weight, she was even more surprised. At 1.8 meters tall, he was incredibly light. It was known that Zhang Yi had been eating fairly well recently, so one could imagine what kind of life he had lived before. Brother Zhang Yi. Lin Ruoli wanted to follow Zhang Jiang into the bedroom, 
but was stopped by the orphanage director. Change your clothes first. The orphanage director glanced at Lin Ruoli, didn't say anything more, believing she would realize her foolishness. She would understand that her foolishness had affected more than just herself. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Clutching the coat that used to belong to Zhang He, Lin Ruoli felt as if her soul had been ripped out, tears streaming down uncontrollably. At this moment, Zhang He, who had changed into dry clothes, was lying on his bed, his brow furrowed, cheeks flushed, and forehead still scorching hot. Zhang Jiang sat by Zhang He's bed, feeling a sense of panic and heartache that she couldn't explain. But wasn't it Zhang He himself who had caused the current situation? If he had just stayed honestly at the Zhang family's house and not caused so much trouble, how could he have ended up back at the orphanage again? It's your own fault. Xiaoli has always treated you like a brother, why can't you accept him? If Jiang He could hear this, he would probably be shocked awake. And why are you so thin? If you're not eating well, why didn't you say so? Do we have to find out on our own? Zhang Jian looked angrily at Jiang He, she hadn't expected him to be so light, but could they really be blamed for all this? But no matter how Zhang Jiang tried to justify her lies, she couldn't help but feel panicked inside. It's all your fault. Couldn't you have just stayed at the Zhang family's house? Then you wouldn't have to suffer here. Even at this point, Zhang Zhang still placed all the blame on Zhang He. At this moment, the orphanage director's wife appeared with a bowl of ginger soup. Zhang Zhang stopped scolding the unconscious Zhang He and took the bowl. Drink it, it will help with the cold. Zhang Zhang didn't expect it to be for her, so she quickly took it and thanked her. Have you given the medicine to Xiaoli? Eaten, but still burning. The dean's mother-in-law reached out to touch Jiang He's forehead, which was still scorching. Let's wait a bit longer. If the fever doesn't go down, then we'll go to the hospital. But with the storm raging outside, in this weather, how could they possibly get a car? The dean's mother-in-law's only option was probably her three-wheeled bike. But the dean's mother-in-law's words were so calm. If Jiang He couldn't hold on, she would climb, even if she had to take Jiang He to the hospital. The children at the orphanage all knew that the dean's mother-in-law spoke very little, but her love for each child was genuine. By the way, aren't you looking for that tall, skinny boy around your age? That's him. After saying this to Zhang. Zhang, the dean's mother-in-law left to prepare, ready to take Zhang He to the hospital if he couldn't hold on. Hearing this, Zhang Jiang was struck as if by lightning, frozen on the bench. How could it be? Looking at Jiang Yi in bed, Jiang Jiang felt like even her breathing was stopping. How could it be, could it really be? Yes, living in this area, around her age, tall and skinny, wasn't that Jiang Yi? But if it was Jiang Yi, why had he never mentioned this to her? Jiang Yi. Wake up! Sister, sister has something to ask you. Jiang Jiang was completely panicked at this point not even noticing Lin Ruoli's presence, still shaking Jiang He forcefully. What are you doing? Lin Ruoli's pupils suddenly contracted, pushing Jiang Jiang away forcefully. What are you doing to Jiang He? Get out! Hearing the angry shouts in her ears and feeling the pain of her body hitting the wall, Jiang Jiang finally came to her senses. What had she just been doing? Get out! Seeing Lin Ruoli burning with anger and resentment, Zhang Jian could only apologize repeatedly with a vacant look in her eyes, then hurriedly left to calm down. Outside, Zhang Jian looked at the raging storm and slapped herself. She had to wait for Zhang He to wake up, she had to wait for Zhang He to give her an answer she had been waiting for for many years, even if that answer would plunge her into endless self-blame hell. Meanwhile, at the Zhang family villa, Zhang's father and mother, Zhang Qin and Lu Ru, were also anxiously waiting for something. Where did Xiao Jiang go? Lu Ru looked at the raging storm outside, tears almost falling. The phone was unreachable, and now it was dangerous outside. Even her agent was getting anxious, knowing how important today's interview was. If they couldn't find her, they were planning to call the police. Many hands make light work, even if they had to search the entire city, they had to find Zhang Jiang. Found her. Zhang Jiang has been found. Zhang Wu quickly handed the phone to Lu Ru. Xiao Jiang, where are you? 
Why aren't you answering the phone? I'll come get you now. But on the other end of the phone, Zhang Jian was unexpectedly calm. I'm sorry, mom, I might not be back for a while. What? What did you say? When Lu Ru wanted to say something else, the call was already hung up. It's okay, mom, Xiao Jiang might be feeling down. As long as she's safe, it's fine. Zhang Hua comforted the panicked Lu Ru. At the same time, Zhang Jiang received a call from her agent. Zhang Jiang. My little ancestor, where are you? Do you know what day it is today? Do you know what this interview means for you? The agent on the other end was already frantic. But Zhang Jiang remained very calm. Those things she had once valued so much now couldn't stir a ripple in her heart. Zhang Jiang, come over quickly, I'll hold them off for you. I'm not going. What? What are you saying? The agent's heart was on the verge of collapse. Zhang Jiang. This is about your best actress selection this year. Do you know how many people? Hmm, I don't care. Zhang Jiang still hung up the phone expressionlessly, as if she was not the protagonist of this matter. Xiao He, sister is waiting for your answer. Zhang Jiang just stared at the door in front of her, no one knew what her current mood was, only that it was very painful. At this moment, Zhang Huang had finally managed to comfort Lu Ru, and after glancing at Zhang Li's room, he seemed to have made a certain decision, and said to Zhang Qin and Lu Ru, Dad, Mom, send Xiao Li away. These words shocked both Zhang Qin and Lu Ru. Lu Ru even tightened her grip on Zhang Huang's hand. Why? Huang Er, why are you saying this? But Zhang Huang shook off Lu Ru's hand. Dad, Mom, don't you think it's foolish to keep both the adopted son and the biological son in the Zhang family? This matter, clearly visible to anyone with eyes, how could a fake young master who had enjoyed the glory and wealth of a real young master for so many years peacefully coexist with another person? But up to now, only Jiang Huang had stood up in the Jiang family. Why, why? Xiao Li. Mom. Xiao He has suffered for so many years, and now he still lives in the orphanage. When I went to see him before, do you know what he was doing? What, what was he doing? Lu Ru was also stunned, her voice trembling. He was carrying boxes for others. Doing dirty and tiring work every day. With these words, Lu Ru completely couldn't hold back, tears streaming down uncontrollably. Xiao. Xiao He, He. And Zhang Qin stood silently on the side. Dad. Let's give Xiao Li some money, then buy a house in his name, guaranteeing that he won't suffer. Can't we do this? Zhang Huang's voice was full of pleading, after all the suffering Zhang Yi had endured for so many years, couldn't Zhang Li do this much? Dad. Stop talking. We just celebrated Xiao Li's coming of age ceremony in the whole city, who doesn't know? Now you want Xiao Li to leave, where will our Jiang family's face go? With these words, Zhang Huang also trembled. Is. Is Xiao Li not worth more than this so called face? Is reputation more important than anything? Seeing Zhang Qin still silent, Zhang Huang was completely disappointed. If that day I brought shame to the Zhang family, I will also leave the Zhang family. After speaking, Zhang Huang lowered his eyes and lightly stepped onto the stairs back to his room. What Zhang Huang didn't notice was that Zhang Li upstairs had already heard everything. When he heard that his once most beloved elder sister was actually going to drive him away because of Zhang Yi, his whole body went cold, his nails embedded in his flesh, even bleeding, but Zhang Li felt nothing, just letting the blood drip onto the carpet. Zhang Yi, you brought this upon yourself. This time, he wanted Zhang Yi to disappear completely. Meanwhile, inside the orphanage, Zhang Yi, although still running a fever, had already lowered it significantly, at least there was no danger. This also made Lin Ruali slightly relieved. Lin Ruali gently wiped Jiang He's palms with a hot towel, it was said that this could lower the fever. Looking at Jiang He lying on the bed with a furrowed brow, Lin Ruali's heart was breaking, she knew that all of this was because of her. It was all because of her stubbornness that had made Jiang He become like this now. I'm sorry, Jiang He Gij, I'm really sorry, but. 
In Lin Ruoli's eyes, there were tears shimmering, as she whispered words of apology, afraid of disturbing Jiang He, yet also afraid that he wouldn't hear. People are such contradictory beings, but this is precisely a reflection of human nature. Do you really know you were wrong? A slightly weak voice came, causing Lin Ruoli to be startled, but she quickly reacted. Jiang He, you're awake. How do you feel? Let me pour you some water. Lin Ruoli was about to get up, but was stopped by Jiang He. Cough, cough. I'm not thirsty, please sit down first. Seeing this, Lin Ruoli obediently sat down by Jiang He's bedside. Outside the window, the rain was still pouring heavily, with countless raindrops hitting the window, making a pitter patter sound. Didn't you just call me brother earlier? Why, now that I'm awake, you're not calling me that anymore. Jiang Yi teased, not actually blaming the girl, but only worried about Lin Ruoli getting into trouble. Perhaps this is the mentality of an old father? Why? Why should I call you brother? Lin Ruoli suddenly stood up, and Jiang Yi didn't know which words had offended the girl, weren't things fine just now? Jiang Yi, don't you really know why I don't want to call you brother? Lin Ruoli's voice was mixed with a sob and a hint of desolation, under the backdrop of the rain, her sense of grievance was even more pronounced. She had loved for so many years, waited for so long, why couldn't Jiang Yi understand? Proud, being proud ruins a lifetime? You want to be my brother, but I don't want to be your sister. Do you understand? As Lin Ruoli spoke, Jiang Yi was engulfed in a fit of coughing. Cough, cough, cough. Why? Didn't you say before that you wanted to be my sister for life? Jiang Yi still remembered how Lin Ruoli used to cling to him when she was young, relying on him. At that time, he had already regarded Lin Ruoli as a true family member, but why now? In fact, Jiang Yi had misunderstood, after all, he had never thought in terms of romantic feelings towards a sibling, would you develop feelings for your sister? Even though Lin Ruoli wasn't his biological sister, in Jiang Yi's heart, she already was. But Lin Ruoli didn't see it that way. This was also the reason why the two were drifting further apart. Both deeply loved each other, but these two kinds of love were different, one was love for family, the other was love for a lover. Love is complicated. Zhang Yi, you will understand in the future, rest well now, I know I was wrong, I won't be so foolish next time. At this moment, Lin Ruoli suddenly calmed down, sitting back beside Zhang Yi, once again wiping his hands to cool them down. In that moment, Lin Ruoli seemed to have truly grown up. She understood that if they continued to quarrel like this, they would eventually drift further apart from each other. And now that Zhang Yi already had a girlfriend, anything she did would be in vain, she understood what kind of person Zhang Yi was. It was better to wait for the right moment. Ah? Is this what you mean? I understand. Zhang Yi quickly lay down, feeling that something was off with Lin Ruoli but he couldn't quite put his finger on it. Meanwhile, Zhang Jiang, who had been standing at the door, upon hearing the commotion of Zhang Yi waking up, chose not to rush in to ask about the truth of the past. Because she didn't know how to face Zhang Yi. If Zhang Yi was really the boy who had saved her back then, how should she face him? Ever since Zhang Yi returned to the Zhang family, she had always disliked him, even ignoring his greetings, never responding. Every time Zhang Yi and Zhang Li had a conflict, she always stood on Zhang Li's side to blame Zhang Yi. Even when Zhang Yi returned home last time, Zhang's father and mother asked her to go home to see Zhang Yi, she didn't pay attention and didn't even go back. Would she really forgive her sister, Zhang Yi? Perhaps, the answer to this question has long been in her heart, but she is unwilling to accept it. Zhang Jiang stood outside the door, tightly gripping the handle, even though the rain outside splashed on her, she still couldn't make up her mind. But Zhang Jiang finally made up her mind and opened the door that had oppressed her for so long. When Zhang Yi saw the person at the door, he was not surprised, after all, Zhang Jiang had persistently asked him to tell her the location of the orphanage before. But Zhang Yi didn't know why Zhang Jiang had to come to the orphanage, even risking such bad weather. It shouldn't be to find him, Zhang Yi could be sure of that, otherwise why would she only ask him about the orphanage's location before? This also made Zhang Yi breathe a sigh of relief, as long as she wasn't here to find him. Get out of here! Lin Ruoli was now full of hostility towards Zhang Jiang, 
She clearly saw how this crazy woman had treated the unconscious Jiang Yi just now. Xiao. Xiao He, can sister ask you a few questions? Hmm. With these words, Jiang He was instantly full of question marks. Xiao He? Sister? Could these words come out of Jiang Jiang's mouth? Are you not feeling well? Is something wrong with your brain? Could it be that Jiang Jian was also feverish like him? Or was it more serious, with her brain already fried? Could it be that her brain was just soaked and waterlogged by the rain? That would be troublesome, it is recommended to send her to a mental hospital for treatment first. When Jiang Jiang saw Jiang He's incredulous expression, her heart almost turned cold, she understood that Jiang He had really been hurt too deeply by her, even if she changed now, it would be difficult to change Jiang He's opinion of her. Sister is fine, sister will ask you a few questions and then leave, okay? Jiang Jiang Knew that some things couldn't be rushed, she could only take it slowly. Ask and then leave? Go ahead. He had no secrets, so if Jiang Jian wanted to ask, she could ask and then leave sooner. Jiang Jiang also realized that the reason Jiang He was willing to answer her questions was just to get her to leave quickly. At this moment, her voice involuntarily choked up, her eyes slightly reddened, tears kept rolling in her eyes. Hey hey hey, ask if you want, cry outside if you want to cry. Jiang He naturally didn't indulge her, he didn't cry, why should this woman cry? Ah. Uh, Okay okay, sister won't cry, sister won't cry. Jiang Jiang quickly composed herself and then asked the questions that had been buried in her heart for so many years. Xiao He, do you remember saving a person a few years ago? With these words, Jiang He also paused. I remember, it was Lu Cici, what's wrong? Why was this woman asking about this? He did save Lu Cici back then, but what did that have to do with Jiang Jiang? No, no, it was a girl who fell into the water, do you remember? It was in the nearby river. Zhang Jiang became more and more excited as she spoke, her pure white palms began to tremble uncontrollably. Fell into the water? Zhang Yi suddenly remembered, he did save a girl, in the river not far from the orphanage. At that time, after he saved the girl and made sure she was okay, he called 120 and left. But what did this have to do with Zhang Jiang? Suddenly, Jiang Yi seemed to realize something, and as he thought about why Jiang Jiang was so excited, could it be that Jiang Jiang was? Seeing Jiang Yi remain silent, Jiang Jiang became extremely anxious. Xiao. Xiao Yi, say something, sister doesn't mean anything else, just, just wants to. And Lin Ruoli also seemed to remember something, she remembered a time when Jiang Yi came back to the orphanage completely soaked, saying he had saved someone. But at that time, Lin Ruoli didn't pay much attention to it. After all, Jiang He often saved people and never left his name. At that time, Lin Ruoli always regarded Jiang He as a superhero. Now it seems that Jiang He is just a super idiot. The award for bravery is only $500. Jiang He, I remember you once. No. Jiang He interrupted Lin Ruoli directly. Miss Chang, I have never saved any girl who fell into the water. Can you leave now? The reason Zhang He didn't admit it was because he was afraid that Zhang Jian would cling to him, and his peaceful life would be disrupted again. But Zhang Jiang had already heard what Lin Ruoli said and immediately grabbed Lin Ruoli's wrist, as if grabbing the last straw for help. Please, tell me, okay? Please. Looking at Zhang Zhang's crazy eyes, Lin Ruoli was also startled but still directly shook off Jiang Zhang's hand. Since Jiang he didn't want to say, he must have his own reasons. I understand. I understand. Jiang Zhang seemed to confirm something, and her eyes towards Jiang he had changed. Xiao He, sister is begging you. Please don't hide it from sister anymore, okay? Jiang Zhang was already on the verge of collapse, her eyes full of pleading towards Jiang He, even if it was just one word, one sentence. What am I hiding from you? I said it's not me, can't you understand human language? Since you've asked, just get lost. Cough 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 cough. Jiang He was so angry that he almost couldn't catch his breath, and the frantic coughing also frightened Jiang Jiang and Lin Ruoli. Okay, okay, sister will leave now. Xiao He, don't be angry, sister will leave now, will leave now. 
Zhang Jiang knew that Zhang He was still sick now, so she hurriedly walked out of the door. But at the same time, she also made up her mind to use her actions to atone for what she had done before. But her atonement might also be a kind of harm to Zhang He. After a night of torrential rain, even though it had eased slightly, the sky was still drizzling. As expected, the roads in the suburbs of the city had been flooded, and even with the efforts of road maintenance workers, it would take some time to restore them. Fortunately, today almost all the schools in the city had announced a day off, and Erzhong was no exception. Zhang He got up at this time, feeling extremely sore all over his body, and his throat felt like it was being twisted by a knife. It had been a long time since he had been sick, and this time it hit him hard, catching Zhang He off guard. Suddenly, Zhang He's phone rang, but it was an unfamiliar number. When Zhang He answered, it was actually Zhang Bai's voice. Hello? Is this brother Zhang He? Do you miss little Bai? Zhang Bai even deliberately added a hint of sweetness to her voice, making her words sound even more charming. No. After saying that, Zhang He hung up directly. This girl calling so early in the morning, is she out of her mind? Are they very familiar with each other? But just those two words already made Zhang He's throat ache intensely. On the other side, Zhang Bai was almost driven crazy, even throwing her nearly $10,000 iPhone 15 on the ground. Phone, please turn on the microphone for communication. Why did you throw it when a man hung up on you? You, Zhang He. I want to see how long you can hold on. She didn't believe that anyone besides her could help Zhang He. Bring me another phone. I want to wait for Zhang He to call and apologize to me personally. Another phone, don't come over. Actually, it's not surprising that Zhang Bai would expect Zhang He to call and apologize to her. It's just that, in the entire capital city, no one dared to treat her like this before. Even those of the same level were polite and didn't dare to offend this lunatic easily. She has always been the one to hang up on others. Just as Zhang He was about to stand up, another call came in. Zhang He frowned, thinking it was Zhang Bai calling again. Just as he was about to hang up, he realized it was Lu Cici calling. Zhang He, are you okay? How is Ruali doing? The anxious voice came through as soon as the call connected. In fact, since last night, Lu Cici had been wanting to call Zhang He, but was afraid of disturbing him, staying up worrying until 2 in the morning. The first thing she did when she woke up was to ask about Zhang He's condition. I'm fine, Ruali is back too. By the way, are you, cough, not feeling well? Despite Jiang He's efforts to make his voice sound less hoarse, the truth couldn't be hidden. What's wrong with your voice, Jiang He? Are you sick? I'm coming over now. Upon hearing this, Lu Cici couldn't sit still and quickly packed up to go find Jiang He. Don't come, I just have a slight cold. Before Jiang He could explain further, the call was already hung up from the other end. On Lu Cici's side, seeing her daughter in a state of panic, Lu's parents understood what had happened, it must be about that boy Jiang He. I'll take you there, and we can also go see that boy. With these words, Lu Cici was also taken aback. Ha! Huh? Father, aren't you busy? Today is a day off. Cici, I don't oppose you being together, but I need to meet him in person, right? Even though Jiang He had saved Lu Cici before, Lu's father was still worried and wanted to meet him in person to assess his character. Yes, you often talk about Zhang He, and I also want to meet him. Hearing her parents say this, Lu Cixi could only nod. In fact, she was also looking forward to meeting Zhang He's family at the orphanage, she wanted to understand Zhang He's world. So, Zhang He, you better be ready to receive the care from your in-laws. On the other side, Zhang He had no choice but to reluctantly get up and tidy up. But when he opened the door, he was dumbfounded. Zhang Zhang was standing in front of him wearing the white uniform of the orphanage nurse. Did I wake up suddenly? Zhang He scratched his head, feeling puzzled. Xiao. Xiao He, I talked to the head of the orphanage yesterday, I will be a volunteer nurse here for a while, but don't worry, I won't disturb you, little brother. Hearing this, Zhang He was really starting to get a headache, he couldn't just drive away the nurse, right? No, why would you, a well-off young lady and a big star, come here to do this? 
Didn't I say before? I didn't save you, you could just continue to dislike me as before? Can this young lady take care of others? It would be good enough if others took care of her. Xiao. Xiao He, I don't dislike you. Believe me, I will prove it to you. Zhang Zhang's eyes showed both determination and pleading, she wanted Zhang He to forgive her, even if it meant sacrificing her own star career. But what's the point of love that comes too late? Unlike the calm on Zhang Zhang's side, the entertainment industry was already in an uproar, with news of the upcoming actress Zhang Zhang acting up, trending at the top of the hot search list, and netizens criticizing her harshly, saying she had fled abroad to evade taxes and enjoy life. Some reporters had even started looking for Zhang Zhang's whereabouts, planning to give her an exclusive interview. Just as Zhang Yi was still worrying about Zhang Zhang, the door of the orphanage was pushed open. So soon? It couldn't be, could it be Lu Cici? Didn't she just hang up the phone? But the visitor was unexpected by Zhang He and even Zhang Zhang. Xiao He, long time no see. Zhang Zi was dressed in a clean and neat white sportswear, carrying a huge drawing board. The drawing board was tightly wrapped in waterproof film to ensure it would not be eroded by rain. Second sister? Why are you here? Zhang Zhang quickly brought Zhang Zi into the orphanage, as it was still drizzling outside. Third sister? What's this? Zhang Zi also looked curiously at the clothes Zhang Zhang was wearing, what did being a caregiver mean? Well, I am now a volunteer caregiver at this orphanage, so I may not be going home for a while. With these words, both fell into silence. Zhang Zi ultimately did not say anything, perhaps she could understand everything Zhang Zhang was doing. Looking at the two of them, Jiang He felt a headache. What was going on with this Jiang family? Why were they all coming to him recently? Especially Jiang Jiang, it seemed like she was here to stay. Xiao He, can sister talk to you for a moment? Jiang Zi came to Jiang He, but her tone was not as urgent as when she saw Jiang He before. She already understood that Jiang He had made up his mind not to forgive them. Even if he did forgive, it would only be as strangers. So, she no longer hoped for anything, she just wanted to talk to Jiang He before leaving. Miss Jiang, my throat is not feeling well, so I won't keep you company. Not to mention that Jiang He's throat was hurting badly now, even if he was fine, he didn't want to have any interaction with the Jiang family. It's okay. Xiao He, just listen to what sister has to say. Seeing Jiang He about to leave, Zhang Zi gently grabbed his sleeve. Even if Zhang He refused to forgive her, she had to say what she wanted to say. This is a painting that sister made, please accept it. With that, Zhang Zi placed the painting in her hand, which was the artwork that had been exhibited before. On the canvas, a broken puppet lay quietly on the ground, but what was different was that in Zhang Zi's brushstrokes, this puppet seemed to come alive, as if it had human emotions. This painting had a significant impact on the entire art world, with many people willing to pay a high price for it, even reaching a million. It was rare for a painting to reach a million in modern art. As for those worth tens of millions or even hundreds of millions, they either had significant meaning or were just hyped. But this painting that made Zhang Zi famous and even elevated her to the status of a master artist, she chose to give it to Zhang He. But it was also right, this painting was originally painted for Jiang He, without any guilt or regret towards him, no matter how high her painting skills were, the puppet on the canvas was still lifeless. This also made Jiang Zi understand that painting skills were not the only thing. Jiang He glanced at it and showed no intention of accepting it. He would not accept anything from the Jiang family anymore, even if it was just a painting. Zhang Zi waited quietly like this, seeing that Zhang He remained silent, she already understood in her heart. With a sad smile, Zhang Zi said, Sister understands, I'm sorry, Xiao He. After speaking, Zhang Zi turned to leave. But when she reached the entrance of the orphanage, she stopped, took one last look back. Xiao He, can you really not forgive, sister? This question had been weighing on Zhang Zi's heart for too long. She dared not confirm the answer, yet she couldn't help but explore that elusive hope. How much she wanted to hear Jiang He's answer. Even if it was just one word. But there was none, Jiang He remained silent. 
When he left the Jiang family that day, his heart had already died. Well, sister knows. In the moment when Jiang Zi turned around, tears could not be stopped. The wind rose, and the drizzle became more intense. This time, Jiang Zi did not look back. Perhaps time will dilute everything, and make Jiang Yi change his mind about her. Even if it takes 10 years, 20 years, she will wait. As for this painting, after being rejected by Jiang Yi, it has lost all its meaning. She will sell it and donate the money to those in need. And she will leave the Jiang family. Over the years, she has relied too much on the Jiang family, to the point of losing herself, losing the eyes and soul to discern right from wrong. She wants to go to different places in the world, to meet more people and things, to experience more emotions, and to create artworks that truly have a soul. At the same time, she also wants to tell more people. Cherish love. Watching Jiang Zi's departing figure, Zhang Jiang always had an indescribable feeling. As for Jiang Yi, he doesn't care about these things, how Jiang Zi is, how the Jiang family is, has nothing to do with him. He doesn't understand, and he doesn't care. Jiang Yi finished washing up and started preparing for his review, after all, he promised the principal to be in the top 100 in the city. But at this moment, the door of the orphanage was opened again. This time, it was indeed Lu Cici who came, but Lu's father and mother also came with her. Cici, has Zhang Yi been living here all this time? Lu's father and mother looked at the orphanage in front of them, falling into a moment of silence. They never thought that Zhang Yi was an orphan. All right, let's go in first. Lu's father actually felt some emotion, it seems that Zhang Yi and Cici are both unfortunate children. But even so, he also wants to confirm whether Jiang Yi's feelings for Cici are genuine. After all, Cici's current situation cannot accept any deception, nor does she have time to accept. He wants Cici to feel as much love as possible in this short time. This is the greatest wish as a father. Jiang Yi also arrived at the door at the same time, but seeing the two middle-aged people behind Lu Cici, he couldn't help but feel a little flustered. After all, who wouldn't be nervous when meeting the parents of their date? Jiang He, why are you up? If you're sick, you should be lying in bed. Lu Cici's angry little appearance can be said to be very cute, and without any intimidation. Cough cough, it's nothing, just a little illness. Are these two uncles and aunts? Please come in. Jiang He endured the pain in his throat and tried to speak in a normal tone. But Lu's father and mother could tell, they didn't expect this kid to come to the door to meet Cici even when he was sick, it's clear that he cares a lot about Cici. After all, they didn't inform Jiang Yi in advance that they were coming. Overall, Jiang Yi made a very good first impression on them. Xiao Jiang, uncle, and aunt want to talk to you, do you have time? As soon as this was said, Lu Cici became so nervous that she involuntarily clenched her small hand. Father, Jiang Yi is still sick, why not wait for a while? But Jiang Yi directly agreed. He also knew what Lu's father and mother were worried about. Lu Cici's situation is special, even if it were him, he would do the same. Then, let's make it quick, Jiang Yi is still sick. When she said this, Lu Cici's face was flushed, after all, it took courage to say these things in front of her parents. Lu's father and mother also patted the head of the silly girl, they are not bad people. So soon you're already turning your elbows out? With these words, Jiang He also felt a bit embarrassed. Was he the main culprit? At the same time, Lin Ruoli, who had just gotten up to take care of Jiang He, also saw the presence of Lu Cici. Cici's sister? Why are you here? Just right, the two of them left first, leaving Jiang He and Lu's parents with space to talk. When Lu's parents arrived at Jiang He's room, they nodded in approval. Clean and tidy, though simple, there were plenty of books, showing that Jiang He was a hard-working child. Uncle and aunt, please have a seat first. I'll go pour you some water. But just as Jiang He was about to get up, he was stopped by Lu's father. You should lie down first and cover yourself with the blanket. Don't do these things when you're sick. As an intellectual, Lu's father was not interested in formalities, he only cared about whether Jiang He truly cared for Lu Cici. Um, okay then. Jiang Yi couldn't refuse, but it was clear that Lu's father was not unreasonable and more like a qualified elder. First, 
My wife and I want to thank you for saving Cece back then. Saying this, Lu's parents stood up to bow to Jiang He, a belated gesture they felt obligated to do as parents to their daughter's savior. Jiang He quickly stopped them, this couldn't be allowed. Uncle and aunt, there's really no need. If you do this, Cece will scold me when she finds out, won't she? Unable to do anything, Jiang He had to bring up Lu Cece. Only then did the two relent, but Lu's father immediately changed the subject. Can you tell us how you and Cece got together? With these words, Jiang He understood Lu's father's intention, to find out if his feelings for Lu Cece were genuine. Actually, at first, I didn't like Cece. I just pitied her and treated her like a younger sister. In an instant, as Jiang. His words fell, Lu's father stood up directly, his brows furrowed, his eyes filled with icy coldness. Oh? So Jiang Yi, are you saying that you don't like Cece, but agreed to be her boyfriend out of pity? Veins bulged on Lu's father's wrist. Despite being an intellectual wearing glasses, he was a veteran who had served in the military in his time, and dealing with a few troublemakers was nothing to him. Not to mention, Jiang Yi was such a fragile young man. Ahem, Uncle Lu, please don't be hasty. Jiang Yi felt a strong sense of oppression. Lu's mother quickly pulled Lu down. Let Jiang finish speaking. Hearing Lu's mother's words, Lu's father sat back down slowly, but his gaze remained sharp. As a father, he absolutely could not accept someone playing with his daughter's feelings, even if it was her savior. In fact, how could Jiang Yi not know what would happen when he said that? But he didn't want to hide anything from Lu Cici's family, it was also his responsibility to her. Next, Jiang Yi recounted to the two of them in detail the process of how he and Lu Cici went from acquaintances to knowing each other, and finally falling in love. Cici is a good girl. I like her, and I love her even more. Jiang Yi had confirmed this point. After listening to Jiang Yi's account, Lu's father remained silent for a long time, but eventually broached the heavy topic. Since you know about Cece's situation, don't let her be sad. Try to fulfill her wishes as much as possible. If there's anything, you can come to me, understood? Also, we won't use Cece to tie you down. If one day Cece is no longer here, you don't need to dwell on it. But only as a father could he understand how difficult it was to say those words. I'm sorry, Uncle Lu, my heart is small. Perhaps in this lifetime, I can only accommodate Cece. Zhang He said with a smile. At the moment he truly accepted Lu Cece, he already had an answer. As someone who had died once, he viewed life and death more openly. With these words spoken, Lu's mother couldn't hold back her tears anymore, they kept falling. At the same time, Zhang Zi had already returned to the Zhang family. Zi, where did you go? Did you find your third sister? Looking at Lu Ru's anxious expression, Jiang Zi, for some reason, felt no emotion. Yes, I found her, but she said she won't be coming home for some time, so you don't need to look for her anymore. Jiang Zi also had no intention of telling others Jiang Zhang's whereabouts, this was Jiang Zhang's own choice. Ah? Uh, why? Zi, why are you saying this? What is going on? Lu Ru now only felt deep powerlessness. Jiang Huang wanted Shaoli to leave, Jiang Jiang refused to come home, what is happening to the Jiang family now? Alright, mom, I need to leave for a while, you don't need to worry about me. With these words spoken, Lu Ru instantly panicked, tightly grabbing Jiang Zi's arm. WH, why? Isn't your art exhibition going well recently? Why do you need to leave? And upstairs, Jiang Li also heard the commotion downstairs. Upon hearing that Jiang Zi was leaving, she quickly came downstairs. Second sister, why are you doing this? Is it because of Jiang He, brother? At this moment, Jiang Li still didn't forget to shift the blame onto Jiang He. Jiang Zi looked at Jiang Li, at this person she had favored countless times, at this brother she had loved so much. Xiao Li, if you still recognize me as your second sister, tell the truth to your sister, did you intentionally break the puppet I gave to Jiang He? This was her final chance for Jiang Li. With these words spoken, Jiang Li's expression changed, her hand involuntarily clenched. It's Jiang He again. It's always Jiang He. Sister, I just wanted to spend more time with Jiang He, 
After all, Jiang Yi has always disliked me. After speaking, Jiang Li even shed a few tears, making it seem like she was wronged. Answer your sister's question, did you do it on purpose? Jiang Zi remained patient, she just wanted to know if Jiang Li was really as she thought. Seeing that this tactic didn't work on Jiang Zi, Jiang Li couldn't help but panic. I didn't. I really just wanted to look at it, it was an accident. Jiang Li raised her head to look directly at Jiang Zi, her eyes were red. Seeing that Jiang Li was still being stubborn, Jiang Zi was thoroughly disappointed. She had also considered that Jiang Li had done it intentionally, but as long as Jiang Li was willing to change, she wouldn't say anything. But now it seems. Z, it's just a puppet, if Xiao Yi likes it, we can buy another one, your brother is not. Lu Ru wanted to continue, but was directly interrupted by Jiang Zi. I understand, mom, I'll leave now. With that, Jiang Zi went upstairs to pack her things. Now she could somewhat understand Jiang Yi's previous situation. Partiality and prejudice, for a person, were so desperate and helpless. And she, too, had once been that partial existence. Z. Lu Ru quickly followed, she really couldn't afford to lose Jiang Zi now. Tell mom, okay? Where are you going? For how long? Lu Ru was so anxious she was about to cry, what had she done wrong? But Jiang Zi remained calm as she packed her things. I don't know either, maybe I'll be back soon, or maybe, never come back. Lu Cici followed Lin Ruoli to her room. Lin Ruoli's room was similar to Jiang Yi's, very simple, with a desk piled high with study materials. But overall, it was cleaner than Jiang Yi's room, with a brown teddy bear on the bed, giving a warmer feel. There were only a few pieces of clean clothes on the hanger, which was really quite scarce for a teenage girl. However, Lin Ruoli didn't mind at all. She was naturally beautiful, and even the simplest shirt couldn't hide her radiance. Have a seat. What tea would you like? Black tea or green tea? Lin Ruoli took out a box from under her bed, containing several cans of different teas. These teas were gifts from the dean's grandmother, who knew she liked tea. However, these teas were all given to the dean's grandmother by children who had left the orphanage on special occasions. Black tea is fine. To be honest, it was a bit nerve-wracking for Lu Cici to be here for the first time. Cici, I. Lin Ruoli was about to say something when a knock on the door interrupted her. It's Zhang Jiang, can I come in? Zhang Jiang had also made up her mind to seek forgiveness from Jiang He, starting with the people around Jiang He. It had to be said that Zhang Jiang and Zhang Huang had reached a consensus on this matter. Jiang Huang had even started planning to meet Lu Cici. But Jiang Zhang's primary target was naturally Lin Ruoli. From Jiang He's behavior yesterday, it was clear that Lin Ruoli was very important to Jiang He, and she had unintentionally offended Lin Ruoli before. She had come now to see if she could mend things with Lin Ruoli first. What are you here for? Lin Ruoli frowned slightly. She knew how this woman had treated Jiang He before so how could she possibly be friendly towards her? I, just want to chat with you and apologize. Zhang Jiang stood outside the door, feeling a bit uneasy, afraid that Lin Ruoli would shut her out. Come in. But Lin Ruoli was not a heartless person and couldn't just leave Zhang Jiang standing outside like that. Thank you. By the way, who is this? Zhang Jiang asked curiously about Lu Cici's identity, as she hadn't seen her before. I am Jiang Yi's girlfriend. You can call me Lu Cici. Lu Cici spoke up voluntarily, as she had never met Jiang Jiang either. So far, she had only met Jiang Huang from the Jiang family. Girlfriend? Upon hearing this, Jiang Jiang was surprised, but then she felt a glimmer of hope. If she could win the favor of these two people, maybe Jiang Yi would forgive her. It had to be said that Jiang Jiang was quite good at fantasizing. And you are? Lu Cici looked at the woman in front of her, feeling a bit puzzled. Was there a problem? I am Little He's third sister, currently working as a volunteer caregiver at the orphanage. You can call me Jiang Jiang or Sister Jiang. Jiang Jiang even sat down very familiarly between the two, making them both very uncomfortable. 
Lin Ruoli secretly complained in her heart that she shouldn't have let this woman in. As for Jiang Yi's third sister, if Jiang Yi had been treated well in the Jiang family this past year, or if the Jiang family had been good to him, why would Jiang Yi return to the orphanage? It was really shameless, calling herself Sister Jiang. I remember that little he is an orphan, so how can you be his sister? Unexpectedly, Lu Cici blurted out the question. Now it was Zhang Zhang's turn to feel embarrassed. In fact, Lu Cici could roughly understand what had happened to Jiang Yi. From Jiang Yi's attitude towards the woman who claimed to be his sister last time, it was clear that this family was not good to Jiang Yi at all. Otherwise, with Jiang Yi's character, how could it be possible? How could he say he was an orphan? Ahem, this is a long story. By the way, do you two have any favorite things? Sister can buy it for you. With that, Zhang Zhang took out her phone to let the two choose gifts. In her opinion, Lin Ruoli and Lu Cici were still young girls, how could they refuse? How about cosmetics? This store. No need, Miss Zhang, I don't need these. Lu Cici directly refused, she didn't value these things. Ah? Uh, then, how about sister takes you shopping? You can buy whatever you want. Zhang Jiang was also anxious, she didn't expect these two young girls to refuse directly, without even thinking about it. Miss Jiang, if you have nothing to do, you should go out. Lin Ruoli also spoke up, what does this woman want to do after all? I, okay. Zhang Jiang wanted to say something more, but in the end, she didn't say it. Watching Jiang Zhang's departing figure, Lin Ruoli's furrowed brow finally relaxed slightly. Zhang Jiang looked at the light rain outside, sighed deeply, did she make a mistake again? As a young lady, a big star, arrogance is not something that can be changed easily. At the same time, Zhang Li got up early in the morning, ignoring the light rain, sneaked out of the Zhang family. He was going to see two people, his biological parents. That's right, Zhang Li had known about the existence of his biological parents for a long time, even met them several years ago, and had been in contact with them ever since. Arriving at an ordinary residential area, Jiang Li knocked on the door of a house. The two people who opened the door were instantly delighted to see Jiang Li. Little Li, how come you have time to come see us in person? The two quickly invited Jiang Li into the house. There is one million in this card, make Jiang Yi disappear, understand? As soon as these words were spoken, the two were shocked, then quickly put on a pleasing face. Little Li, you see, dad has been tight on money recently and this matter is so dangerous, do you think this one million is too much? Qin Shou rubbed his rough hands, his face full of cunning, even though he was facing his own biological son. Still not enough? This house, car, everything is paid for by me, right? And the 500,000 I gave you earlier, have you spent it all? John Lee was furious, his money didn't just fall from the sky. Literally, that's not right for you to say. If we hadn't switched you to the Jung family back then, how could you have the life of a young master now? It's just one million, go and coax your foster parents for it, okay? That's right, Jung Yi was not switched by mistake back then, but intentionally swapped. The two of them were lazy and thoughtless back then, thinking that they didn't want to raise a child, so they might as well switch into a wealthy family to enjoy a better life. So one night, when the Jung family's bodyguards were changing shifts, they swapped the two children, even cutting off the surveillance lines. And Zhang Yi, they were too lazy to raise even their own biological son, how could they raise him? They casually left him at the doorstep of an orphanage, whether he lived or died was none of their concern. What did you say? Zhang Li stood up abruptly. Easy? Just one million? Do you really think the Zhang family is stupid? During this time, Zhang Li could clearly feel that the Jung family's attitude towards him had changed too much, how could he ask for money now? Let me tell you, if I'm done for, you won't have it easy either. With that said, the two quickly apologized to Jiang Li, sorry, literally, it was dad and mom's mistake, don't be angry, don't be angry. After all, they were enjoying their current life very much, not having to worry about anything every day, just having money to spend. They wouldn't give up this kind of life for any reason, mainly wanting to squeeze more money out of Zhang Li seeing this scene, Zhang Li's anger finally subsided. Then he took out another card. There is still 500,000 inside, 
Make sure to handle things cleanly for me. After finishing, go outside and hide for a while, understand? The moment he saw the second card, the man's eyes almost lit up with greed, quickly tucking the card into his chest as if afraid that Zhang Li would change his mind. Don't worry, last time was a mistake, that's why that kid is still alive now. This time, he won't be able to disturb your life and the Zhang family anymore. With that settled, Zhang Li finally relaxed, putting on a hat and mask to quickly return to the Zhang family, not wanting his parents to suspect him. As for how the two would deal with Zhang He, he didn't care, as long as Zhang He couldn't affect his position in the Zhang family anymore. Meanwhile, in the gym, Lu Duor stood in front of the transparent glass, silently watching the light rain outside. She still felt guilty towards Zhang He for what happened before. Should I call Zhang He? After much thought, Lu Duor still didn't have the courage to make the call. Of course, the mastermind behind this, Zhang Bai, was also waiting for someone's call. Miss, this is already the seventeenth one. Stop talking, bring me more. Seeing this, the bodyguard had nothing to say and obediently complied. Zhang Bai, looking at the floor littered with phone debris, gradually regained her composure. Prepare the car for me, I'm going to find Zhang He. She didn't believe that even if she went to him, Zhang He would refuse her, this delicate and beautiful flower. When the time came, she would act coquettish and enchant the boy. Then, when Zhang He revealed his true nature and tried to harm her, she would control him, allowing her elder sister to see his true colors. She was truly clever. Yes, miss, I'll go now. Wait, how are those old folks in Jing City doing? Zhang Bai's eyes suddenly turned sharp, exuding the aura of a superior. The bodyguard couldn't help but swallow nervously. They are starting to stir, even openly amassing wealth. With that said, Zhang Bai sneered coldly. Those damn old fools, when the time comes, make them spit out everything they've taken in. She wanted to completely control the Zhang family. Then, she could be with her elder sister forever. Mr. and Mrs. Liu talked with Zhang He for a long time, understanding how firm this seemingly young man was inside. They also believed that Zhang He could protect CC. CC, we're leaving now. Whether you come back tonight or not, make sure to call us to let us know you're safe, understood? This statement carried a lot of information, as Mr. Liu also knew that if they really wanted to do something, he couldn't stop them. Rather than block, after talking for so long and considering Jiang He's previous actions, he believed even more in Jiang He's character. After Mr. Liu finished speaking, he glanced at Jiang He and CC before taking Mrs. Liu back. After all, their presence here would hinder the two young people from getting along, right? Now it was just Zhang He and Si Si left. For some reason, when the two looked at each other again, a sudden feeling of shyness arose. It was like the state when parents met for the first time. In fact, it was the deepening of their feelings, showing more familiarity and intimacy with each other. Ahem, Si Si, come here for a moment. As a man, Zhang He naturally had to break the silence. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Okay. For some reason, the closer CC got to Zhang He, the faster her heart beat. Seeing CC's delicate and rosy cheeks, Zhang He also slightly lowered his head. With a loud bang, the door of the orphanage was kicked open. Zhang He Gij. Xiao Bai is here to see you. Do you miss Xiao Bai? Zhang Bai's carefree voice echoed throughout the orphanage, and a dozen little heads also curiously peeked out from the window. Only Zhang He, clenching his fists tightly, his teeth almost grinding to pieces. Me! This damn idiot Zhang Bai, why did he have to come at this time of all times? Watching Zhang He's defeated look, Lu Cixi squinted her eyes and stifled a laugh. But then she lightly kissed Zhang He's cheek, although it was just a brief moment, it took all the courage of this silly girl. Feeling the warmth of her cheek, Zhang He's anger instantly dissipated. Foom. Lu Cixi covered her small face, not wanting Zhang He to see her shy expression. Why is my Cixi so cute? Unbearable. Zhang He felt like his heart had been hit with a hundred points. Zhang He held Lu Cixi's hand, determined to see what Zhang Bai was up to. Zhang He Gij. Zhang Bai saw Zhang He appear and immediately rushed over, his voice even sweeter. Hey hey hey! Don't come over! Miss Zhang Bai, 
Don't you know what self-restraint is? Jiang Yi also took several steps back with Lu Cixi, barely avoiding Jiang Bai's attack. This left Jiang Yi completely dumbfounded, is this really Jiang Xian's sister? In Jiang Yi's mind, Jiang Xian was synonymous with elegance and intelligence, while Jiang Bai was just brainless. But Jiang Bai didn't see it that way. Damn Jiang Yi, how dare he play cat and mouse with her. She had seen this tactic too many times. Although she was right, she had indeed seen this tactic too many times. Miss Jiang Bai. Jiang Yi Gij is my boyfriend, please stop this. Lu Cixi said somewhat stutteringly to Jiang Bai, her eyes filled with determination. Although her tone was still polite, it was enough to make Jiang Yi take notice. In fact, this meant that Lu Cixi had firmly chosen Jiang Yi, not out of fear of burdening him and being ready to leave him at any time. But Sister Cixi, if you really care about Jiang Yi Gij, shouldn't you take the initiative to step back? Jiang Bai said with the most innocent words and eyes, delivering the harshest truth. Yes, this was what Lu Cixi had been avoiding facing. Jiang Bai had stumbled upon it accidentally, not knowing Lu Cixi's situation, just thinking she was stronger than Lu Cixi, if she knew Lu Cixi's situation and remembered what she had said. Feeling Lu Cixi's hand tightening continuously, Jiang Yi knew that this silly girl was overthinking again. But that was fine, Jiang Yi knew he couldn't eliminate Lu Cixi's concerns all at once, so he would slowly give this silly girl a sense of security, telling Lu Cixi that he only loved one person. Jiang Bai, what is your purpose? Stop trying to deceive me. Jiang Yi didn't think his charm was that great, he could sense something was off about Jiang Bai from the moment they met. Jiang Yi Gij, how can you say that to Xiao Bai? Jiang Bai's eyes immediately turned red, speaking in a delicate and tearful voice to Jiang Yi, as if she had been wronged. This might just be which Jiang Yi, Jiang Bai was already imagining Jiang Yi abandoning Lu Cixi and coming to comfort her. You idiot! Jiang Yi couldn't take it anymore, he said directly, and everyone present, including Jiang Bai, was instantly petrified. Was she just scolded? Was she, Miss Jiang's family, the one in control, actually scolded? After cursing, Jiang Yi directly took Lu Cixi back to the room, leaving Jiang Bai alone in place, confused. When she realized it, she was also extremely angry. In the entire capital city, besides Jiang Xian daring to scold her, no one else dared to be so bold. Jiang Bai's eyes gradually became sharp, truly treating her as a soft persimmon, thinking she wouldn't dare to touch him? But Jiang Bai suddenly seemed to have figured something out, as if she had never been led by a man like this before. Could it be that Jiang He did it on purpose just now? So that's it. This Jiang He is truly terrifying. After continuous speculation, Jiang Bai became more certain that Jiang He did it on purpose just now, deliberately stirring up her emotions. Jiang He wanted her to truly fall in love with him. Hiss. Terrifying upon careful consideration. If Jiang He heard Jiang Bai's inner monologue, he would probably add, brainless. In fact, if it were any scheming man with intentions towards Jiang Bai, it would be tightly controlled by Jiang Bai, but unfortunately, it was Jiang Yi. So, Jiang Bai also chose to temporarily retreat and wait for the next opportunity. In her view, Jiang Yi is about to reveal his true colors. When Jiang Yi saw Jiang Bai leave, he also breathed a sigh of relief. He had just scolded her so much, this idiot shouldn't come looking for him again, right? Lu Cixi also looked at Jiang He with some concern. Brother Jiang He, Miss Jiang Bai is after all Dr. Jiang Xian's sister, was what we did just now really okay? Although she didn't like Jiang Bai, and even found her annoying, Jiang Xian treated her very well and regarded her as a close friend. Then I might be taken away by her, are you really willing to push me towards her? Jiang He also smiled and touched Lu Cixi's hair. This silly girl always overthinks things, but why did his words just now sound ambiguous? Of course not. Brother Jiang He is mine. Lu Cixi blushed, Jiang He belonged only to her, no one could take him away. Very good, very spirited. At the same time, Zhou Ruoyun in the noodle shop was also idly leaning on the table. The weather was bad today, hardly anyone on the street, she enjoyed the leisure. But sometimes, when she was daydreaming, she would think of Jiang He. Oh my! Zhou Ruayun, what are you doing? Jiang He belongs to Cici. 
How shameless can you be? Just then, a tall figure appeared in front of Zhou Ruoyun. Hello, are you Miss Zhou Ruoyun? The person took off her expensive sunglasses, with a delicate and beautiful face, she was Jiang Chong. Who are you? Zhou Ruoyun quickly stood up, to be honest, she had only seen this kind of temperament on TV, like a star. Zhang Chong was also a person of high status, naturally impeccable in terms of temperament. I am Jiang Yi's sister, you can call me Jiang Chong. Ah? Uh, Jiang Yi's sister? Hello, hello. Upon hearing that she was Jiang Yi's sister, Zhou Ruoyan quickly asked Jiang Chong to sit down and went to pour her a cup of tea. Seeing that Zhou Ruoyan did not reject her, Jiang Chong also breathed a sigh of relief, it seemed that Zhou Ruoyan did not know about Jiang Yi. This could be her breakthrough point. It's okay, no need to trouble yourself, I came to talk about something. With that, Zhang Chong took out a bank card from her bag. There are two million in here, consider it as help for Jiang He, don't tell him, okay? Upon hearing this, Zhou Ruoyun was stunned, what did this mean? Zhang Chong saw that Zhou Ruoyun hesitated to accept, and felt anxious. WH, what's wrong? Miss Zhang, please take it back. Although I don't know what your intentions are, I won't keep it from Jiang He. Jiang He was her lifesaver, Zhou Ruoyun was not so greedy as to accept this. No, Miss Zhou, I didn't mean anything else, I just. But before Jiang Huan could finish his sentence, Zhou Ruoyun's phone rang. Zhou Ruoyun was also puzzled, who would be calling her? Hello? Is. Is this Jiang He? I'm Lu Duer. Lu Duer didn't know what determination she had made to make this call. Zhang He, I'm sorry, I really couldn't come up with that one million. What one million? When Lu Duer heard a female voice on the other end, she was also stunned for a moment. Wasn't this a call from Zhang He? Yes, Zhang He left the phone number of the noodle shop. Zhou Ruoyun furrowed her brows, wondering why he hadn't mentioned this one million matter to her. This was a situation caused by Jiang Yi himself, he couldn't possibly drag Zhou Ruoyun into this mess, right? After listening to Lu Duer's story, Zhou Ruoyun felt completely drained. One million. Even if she mortgaged the shop to the bank, it would barely be enough. But this shop was the only thing her mother left behind. Zhang Huang, on the other hand, was listening attentively and his heart was filled with even more excitement. Even in this situation, you still won't accept this money? Zhang Huan looked at Zhou Ruoyun as if victory was within his grasp. Zhou Ruoyun hesitated indeed, she couldn't bring herself to mortgage her only hope. Cici, how about I take you home? Zhang Yi said, trying to get up, but was stopped by Lu Cici. Zhang Yi, you're still sick, and it's raining outside, so, how about? I'm not leaving tonight. Lu Cici's small hand nervously gripped her clothes. But before Lu Cici could finish speaking, Lin Ruoli burst into the room. Lin Ruoli was also shocked, her heart instantly thrown into chaos. Yes, Cici, why don't you sleep with me tonight? Lin Ruoli's mind was racing, she couldn't bear the thought of Jiang He being with another woman. Sure. Don't bother, Ruoli, I want to take care of Jiang He. Jiang He was about to say something. But Lu Cici interrupted him, not knowing where she found the courage to say those words. I. Seeing Lu Cici's firm attitude, Lin Ruoli slammed the door shut with a bang, turned around, and hurriedly left. Ruoli. Lu Cici reached out to stop her, but her hand remained suspended in midair. How could she not understand Lin Ruoli's feelings? Cough, Cici, are you sure you want to sleep with me? Aren't you afraid of getting infected by me? Jiang He didn't refuse, as he wouldn't do anything to Lu Cici, at most. At the same time, Lin Ruoli, who had run out of the room, returned to her own room, threw herself onto her bed, and cried holding her teddy bear. Stinky Jiang He. Why didn't you refuse? You pervert. This was a misunderstanding of Jiang He, he really didn't have any intentions towards Lu Cici. And Lu Cici, too. But then she remembered that Lu Cici was Jiang He's girlfriend, so there was nothing wrong with what they were doing, and Lin Ruoli cried even louder. No. I. I have to go see. Lin Ruoli suddenly got up, 
wiped the tears from her eyes, and went to see if Jiang Yi and Lu Cixi had done anything inappropriate. And so, Lin Rolly, who was eavesdropping in the corner, appeared. Cixi, I still want to read for a while, why don't you go to sleep first? Actually, Jiang Yi's bed could barely accommodate two people. Okay. Lu Cixi first fed Jiang Yi his medicine, then went to freshen up before returning to the room. At this moment, seeing Lu Cixi leaving, Lin Rolly quickly hid behind a pillar in the cover of night. It wasn't until Lu Cixi returned to Jiang Yi's room that Lin Rolly slowly emerged. In truth, Lin Rolly was truly afraid of hearing certain sounds she didn't want to hear. But even if she heard, what could she do? Lin Rolly also understood that she was nothing more than a defeated dog now. Brother Jiang He, then, then I'll come up. Lu Cixi's face was already red, her hands trembling uncontrollably. This was her first time sleeping with a boy. As Lin Ruoli listened at the door, her heart turned cold and tears flowed uncontrollably. She regretted why she had been so proud to Jiang Yi, why she hadn't expressed her feelings to him earlier. But what use was regret? Lin Ruoli at this moment was like a soulless body, leaving in despair. Whom, hmm, you sleep inside. Jiang Yi was afraid the girl might fall off in her sleep. As for what had just happened at the door, Jiang Yi was naturally unaware. Feeling the girl trembling beside him, Jiang Yi smiled slightly, gently patting Lu Cixi's head. Go to sleep, don't think too much. Hmm. Lu Cixi's voice was as soft as a mosquito, she didn't dare to look at Jiang Yi, just feeling his warmth made her too shy to speak. But despite Jiang Yi's calm appearance, his heart was in turmoil. He had no experience in this area. So the two of them remained in a stalemate. It wasn't until a while later that Lu Cixi spoke up. Brother Jiang Yi, what do you want to do in the future? Lu Cixi knew she might not wait until that time, so she wanted to hear Jiang Yi's thoughts on the future. Me? Let me think. Jiang Yi closed his exercise book, he hadn't thought about this question before. Maybe a teacher, maybe a businessman, maybe a volunteer, anyway, I want to experience different lives. Having lived two lives, Jiang Yi no longer valued fame and fortune as much, he wanted to experience the world in his limited life. Really? That's great. Lu Cixi also smiled, this was the future she had once dreamed of, although it was out of reach, it was still fascinating. Brother Jiang Yi, can you promise Cixi one thing? What? Jiang Yi could sense something off in Lu Cixi's tone. If one day Cixi is no longer here, just forget about Cixi. Lu Cixi didn't want to be a burden on Jiang Yi, she wanted him to carry her expectations and explore the world on her behalf. With these words, both fell silent for a long time. Don't think too much, rest first. Jiang Yi always tried to avoid this question, but it kept getting closer, making it hard for him to breathe. Hmm, I'm sorry, brother Jiang Yi, I shouldn't have said these things. Jiang Yi kissed the silly girl's forehead and then embraced her. Regardless of what happens in the future, Jiang Yi just wanted to make this moment and every moment with Lu Cixi in the future, let this cute and silly girl feel loved. Until the next day, Jiang Yi took Lu Cixi to school, and they didn't see Lin Ruoli again. In the afternoon, Jiang Yi received a notice from Lin Ruoli's class teacher that there would be a parent-teacher meeting at Lin Ruoli's school tomorrow. Actually, Erzhong, which is Jiang Yi's school, is also having a parent-teacher meeting tomorrow. However, Jiang Yi's situation is special, as the homeroom teacher and principal have agreed that Jiang Yi's parents don't need to attend, and Jiang Yi can either take a day off or study in another empty classroom at school. As for Jiang's family, they have always ignored him, so how could they? Possibly hold a parent-teacher meeting for him? Jiang Yi had mentioned it to his family before, but was directly rejected by Jiang Qin. After all, in Jiang Qin's eyes, Jiang Yi is a bottom-ranking existence, so having their family attend a parent-teacher meeting would be embarrassing for the Jiang family. On the other hand, since middle school, Jiang Yi has always attended Lin Ruoli's parent-teacher meetings. However, this is the first time Jiang Yi is attending Lin Ruoli's high school parent-teacher meeting, and he doesn't know how this girl has been doing in high school. But Jiang Yi is not worried about Lin Ruoli's grades, as she has always been smart and usually ranks first, overall performing better than him. How about I accompany you tomorrow? Lu Cixi held Jiang Yi's hand as they walked home together. 
Originally, Jiang Yi was supposed to help out at the medical room, but Jiang Xian informed him in advance that she had something to do, so Jiang Yi had to give up. Sure, but you should inform your uncle and aunt in advance. Anyway, they could say she was Lin Ruoli's sister-in-law, and she could change into slightly more mature attire. When Jiang Yi arrived at the noodle shop, he found Zhou Ruoyan waiting for him at the door. CC. And Mr. Jiang He. Zhou Ruoyun hurried over when she saw the two of them. What's wrong, Miss Zhou? Is something the matter? If there was nothing wrong, Zhou Ruoyun wouldn't be waiting for them at the door. Yes, something happened. Lu Duor's calls have all come to me. How long did Mr. Jiang He plan to keep this from me? Zhou Ruoyun looked at Jiang He with a tilted head. She was Jiang He's business partner, and he hadn't even mentioned such a big matter as one million, really. Ha! Huh? What happened to brother Jiang He? Lu Cici also became nervous in an instant. Jiang He slapped his head, how could he have forgotten about this? Ahem, maybe we should. No! X2, looking at the two of them, Jiang He knew he couldn't keep it a secret any longer. The reason Jiang He didn't want to talk about it was that he knew the one million was because of him, otherwise he would have discussed it with Zhou Ruoyun. Mr. Jiang He, here is one million, please accept it. Zhou Ruoyun took out a brand new bank card from her pocket and handed it to Jiang He. Upon hearing this, Jiang He was also surprised. Where did this girl get so much money from? This was one million, not one hundred cabbages. Oh, don't worry about that. Cece, let's go inside and talk. As for the source of this card, it all started when Zhang Huan came to her yesterday. Miss Xiao, you seem to be in need of this one million, so just take it. Zhang He won't know. With that, Zhang Huan pushed the bank card with two million towards Zhou Ruoyun. Looking at the bank card on the table, it seemed to have a tempting power, enticing Zhou Ruoyun to reach out. And indeed, under Jiang Huan's expectant gaze, Zhou Ruoyun reached for the bank card. But the next moment, to Jiang Huang's surprise, Zhou Ruoyun pushed the bank card back. Miss Xiao, this is. Miss Jiang Huang, please give this card to Mr. Jiang He yourself. With that, Zhou Ruoyun got up and left, returning to her own kitchen. Jiang Huang had no choice but to leave disappointed. In the kitchen, Zhou Ruoyun dragged out a locked box from the depths which contained the property certificate of the shop. That day, Zhou Ruoyan looked at the thin little book for a long, long time. She seemed to see her gentle and incredibly strong mother again. I'm sorry, mom, really sorry. The girl's tears were firm and sad, falling to the ground without even a speck of dust splashing up. Without Jiang He, she and her sister might not survive. She couldn't do anything to betray Jiang He, even if there was only a one in a thousand chance. At the same time, she believed in Zhang He, believing that one day she would redeem the certificate containing countless aspirations from the bank. Hey, have you heard? That Lin Ruoli in our class is actually an orphan. Really? With her sly look, she deserves it. Maybe her family was killed by her. Stop, she's here. Why not? I'm going to say it. This girl, upon seeing Lin Ruoli return to her seat, shouted even louder. Because Lin Ruoli had such good grades and was so beautiful, they were jealous. Lin Ruoli, how did an orphan like you survive? Did you have to sell? But before the girl could finish her sentence, there was a crisp sound. The girl covered her reddening face in disbelief. Lin Ruoli! You sly fox! How dare you hit me, you bitch! I'll fight you! But Lin Ruoli was not the soft persimmon she used to be, how could this hothouse flower be her match? She didn't expect that even in high school, there were still such boring people. Of course, the consequence of Lin Ruoli's direct action was that both of them were called to the homeroom teacher's office. Lin Ruoli's homeroom teacher was a middle-aged woman, and in her eyes, the fact that two people dared to fight openly in the classroom was a challenge to her authority. Regardless of right or wrong, she made both of them call their parents the next day, and then she kicked them out of her office. In the corridor, the girl from before was very pleased. Seductive fox, let's see how you, an orphan, bring your parents. Why not call the old man who supports you? Ha ha. 
But before the girl could laugh, she was startled by Lin Ruoli raising her hand high, and she dared not provoke her again, running away in a hurry. However, is Lin Ruoli really as calm as she appears on the surface? No one knows. Until the next day, at the Jiang family villa, Jiang Qin and Lu Ru were also ready to go together to meet with Jiang Li's parents. At this moment, Jiang Huang also slowly descended from upstairs. You all go meet with Jiang Li's parents, what about Xiao Hu? As soon as these words were spoken, both of them were stunned. Lu Ru also just remembered that she had never met with Jiang Yi's parents before, no wonder she was kicked out of Jiang Yi's school last time. Then, then I'll go find Xiao Hu now. Mom was careless and forgot. But, was it really carelessness? This matter was something only Jiang Qin had the authority to speak on, as he was the one who had personally rejected Jiang Yi. Jiang Qin felt a bit embarrassed and quickly took Lu Ru to find Jiang Yi. However, they were stopped by Jiang Huang. You go meet with Jiang Li's parents, I'll meet with Xiao Hu. After saying that, Jiang Huang turned and left the Jiang family's gate, leaving Jiang Qin and Lu Ru behind. Lu Ru was even more heartbroken, her eyes slightly red. Do you think Xiao Wang is blaming us for not bringing Xiao Hu back? As soon as these words were spoken, Jiang Qin's hand trembled, but then he regained his composure. Regardless, Xiao Li is the one we personally held a coming-of-age ceremony for, recognized by the upper-class society as a member of the Jiang family. If we drive Xiao Li away, what will others say about our Jiang family? After some time, Xiao Hu will come to his senses and come back, don't think too much about it. Jiang Qin comforted Lu Ru. At the same time, Jiang He and Lu Cixi also changed into more formal attire. But no matter how they dressed, they still looked like recent college graduates at most. But that was enough. When Jiang He brought Lu Cixi to Lin Ruoli's school, he found that he didn't know where Lin Ruoli's classroom was, so he immediately called Lin Ruoli's homeroom teacher. Hmm. Lin Ruoli's parent, right? Come to my office first. With these words, Jiang He was also stunned. What's going on? Why was he asked to go to the office? Did something happen to Lin Ruoli? Didn't Lin Ruoli tell you when she came home yesterday? She got into a fight at school. Hurry up and come over, the other parent is also waiting. With these words, Jiang He furrowed his brows. He knew that Lin Ruoli would never hit someone without reason, unless someone provoked her. Thinking of this, Jiang He couldn't suppress the anger in his heart and directly brought Lu Cixi to the homeroom teacher's office. But before Jiang He could push the door, he heard a commotion inside. Teacher, look, this little bitch beat up our Zihan. And a middle-aged man had even rolled up his sleeves, ready to hit Lin Ruoli. I said, she provoked me first, getting hit was her own fault. Lin Ruoli remained fearless, she was right and that was it. What did you say? If you didn't go to sell yourself, would I say that about you? You slut, don't know how many men you've seduced. Zihan, seeing her own parents there, became even more arrogant. As for the middle-aged homeroom teacher, faced with such unreasonable parents, he didn't dare say a word. You hit our Zihan, I'll hit you back. With that, the middle-aged man was about to hit Lin Ruoli. The next moment, Jiang He kicked open the office door. With a loud bang, the other teachers in the office were startled, thinking it was some kind of terror attack. Who the fuck do you want to touch? Jiang He deliberately left Lu Cixi outside, rolled up his sleeves, looking like a little ruffian. Jiang He did this because he had dealt with these unreasonable people too many times, they wouldn't listen to reason. Who are you? What's wrong with me seeking justice for my daughter? Seeing Jiang He looking difficult to deal with, the middle-aged man who was about to hit Lin Ruoli instantly wilted, even starting to explain his reasons for doing so. Isn't it funny? Lin Ruoli also glanced over, not wanting Jiang He to see her in such a sorry state. Justice? Your little bitch at home dared to insult my sister, believe it or not, I'll make her disappear when she leaves the school gate. Damn it, I spit on you. Whether it was true or not, harsh words had to come first, to make these people fear, they might not believe it, but they definitely wouldn't dare to gamble. Jiang He stared fiercely at Zihan, like a ruthless young person in society. 
Zihan was even more frightened, retreating repeatedly, hiding behind her mother with tears streaming down her face. Wasn't Lin Ruoli an orphan? She dared to do this because she thought Lin Ruoli had no one to protect her, but who knew Jiang he would show up out of nowhere? In fact, Lin Ruoli's experience was a reflection of many orphans, there were many such cases online. You're an orphan, without parents, others have parents backing them up, so what if you suffer a little injustice? Pacify the situation, target whoever is easy to bully, that's the usual way of schools and teachers, they don't care about fairness and justice, as long as they can calm things down. What are you trying to do? I warn you, this is illegal. The middle-aged man was also flustered, standing in front of Jiang He, trying to educate Jiang He about the law? As if he had forgotten that he was about to hit someone, which was also illegal. What the hell am I afraid of? At worst, I'll go in and squat for a few years. Seeing Jiang He about to make a move, the middle-aged woman who had been silent all along, the class teacher, hurriedly spoke up to mediate. Sir, calm down first, don't act rashly, let's talk about it slowly. With these words, Jiang He's gaze also fell on the class teacher. You old bitch, when that old beast wanted to hit my home's Ruali just now, why didn't you speak up? If you dare say another word, I'll slap your teeth out. Seeing that Jiang He was unyielding and about to act, even the principal was alarmed. He politely invited Jiang He to his office to sit down, but Jiang He directly refused. Jiang He doesn't give face to anyone now. He is very clear that whoever shows weakness first will lose out. It's really ridiculous when you think about it. Good people are always the ones who get hurt in this world, while the bad ones roam free. But Jiang He also believes that in the end, there are more good people in this world. However, when facing bad people, you have to be even more ruthless than them. Alright, have that little bitch apologize to my Ruali, and we'll consider this matter settled. Jiang He also gave the other party a way out. His goal was not to fight, he just wanted to get justice for Lin Ruali, alright, Zihan, quickly apologized to Lin. Zihan's mother was also frightened. By Jiang Yi's fierce appearance, afraid that this madman would really lay hands on her precious daughter. The middle-aged man also nodded in compromise. He knew that young people like Jiang Yi, when they act, they don't consider the consequences. Just apologize, if you really provoke this madman Jiang Yi, that would be a loss. I've... I'm sorry. I was wrong. Zihan bowed apologetically to Lin Ruali, trembling with fear. She was truly scared. Speak up louder. If I hear you badmouthing behind my back again, I'll rip your tongue out first. Zhang He saw the little bitch crying in fear and didn't say anything more. He then warned Lin Ruali's class teacher. Old pig, if I find out you dare to make things difficult for my Ruali or give her a hard time, I'll come to your door myself and see if your family can withstand my knife. Do you understand? Alright, I promise I won't. As a class teacher, this middle-aged woman had always been treated with respect by the parents. She had never encountered a madman like Jiang He before and could only nod repeatedly. Alright, Ruali, come with me, I'll hold a parent-teacher meeting for you. With that, Jiang He took Lin Ruo Li's hand and left the office. Jiang He could feel Lin Ruo Li's body trembling slightly. They were orphans, without this tough exterior to protect them, they would be taken advantage of. I'm sorry. Lin Ruo Li finally said after a long pause. She always thought she was strong, but now it seemed that she was still far from Jiang He. You know how to apologize now? Jiang He snorted coldly and Lu Cici quickly stepped forward to persuade Jiang Yi not to get angry again. What? Do you think you've grown up? You think you can handle things on your own now? To be honest, Jiang Yi was really angry, but at the same time, he was also afraid. What if she really got beaten up? What if she got bullied? Speak. I'm sorry. Lin Ruo Li lowered her head, tears falling heavily to the ground. She didn't cry when she was falsely accused, she didn't cry when she was wronged, she didn't even cry when she was almost beaten. But when faced with Jiang He scolding, her emotions burst out like a dam being torn apart, unable to hold back any longer. All right, all right, Ruoli, you already know. Lu Cici also quickly hugged Lin Ruoli to comfort her. She also knew that Jiang He truly cared about Lin Ruoli, 
But after all, Lin Ruoli was still a young girl. At this point, Jiang He calmed down slightly. Seeing Lin Ruoli crying like that, he also knew that he had been too harsh with his words earlier. I was too harsh just now. Take me to your classroom first, and I'll hold a parent-teacher meeting for you. Okay. Lin Ruoli also leaned against Lu Cici's embrace, nodding with a choked voice. When Zhang He arrived at the classroom, all eyes were on Lin Ruoli, as everyone knew she was an orphan. Cici, you and Ruoli wait for me outside the door. Generally, students are not allowed to attend parent-teacher meetings, and only one parent can sit at a table. Zhang He noticed that there was a letter on every other parent's table, except his, and he awkwardly touched his nose. In fact, Lin Ruoli had never expected Jiang He to come, as she hadn't told him about it. If it weren't for the school's notice, Jiang He wouldn't have known. However, Lin Ruoli was indeed outstanding, ranking first in nine subjects in high school, with three of them being the top in the whole school. Her overall ranking was also close to the top spot. If she could maintain this performance, the possibility of getting into Qingbei was high. Of course, when the time comes for Lin Ruoli to choose a school, Zhang He won't interfere. But the premise is that this girl can keep her composure. What if the previous incidents happen again? It will definitely have a big impact on Lin Ruoli. So this time, Zhang He was well prepared. As the parent-teacher meeting was about to end, Zhang He walked straight to the platform. Instantly, it caused whispers among the parents below. Who is this? What is he doing up there? It seems to be the parent of the top student. I'm so envious. Why did my child say that the top student is an orphan? Could he be her boyfriend? Dating at such a young age, it's really shameless. Even some students outside the window were looking at Lin Ruoli with curiosity. Since Lin Ruoli said she's an orphan, this must be her lover, right? He looks handsome. No wonder he could get that flirtatious Lin Ruoli. Haven't you heard? These kind of delinquents are what good students like Lin Ruoli are attracted to. Oomph, good student? I think she's just a flirt. These words were like sharp knives. Will they realize the harm their words can cause to others? Maybe not. They might be jealous, unrequited in love, unintentional, or just joining in the fun. Lu Cici also furrowed her brows and was about to leave with Lin Ruoli. These people were really outrageous. But the next moment, Jiang He's voice reached everyone's ears. I'm sure everyone here has more or less heard about my daughter Ruoli, right? With these words, the whispers grew louder, but Jiang He remained composed. Yes, my daughter Ruoli is indeed an orphan. Before Jiang He could finish speaking, many students outside the window began to look at Lin Ruoli with amusement, as if watching a joke. At the same time, I am also an orphan. Jiang He said without hesitation, looking directly into everyone's eyes. I know that you may pity, mock, find it funny, or think that as an orphan, I have no right to stand on this platform. Each and every one of you, including the students outside, listen to me. Jiang He's voice was like a bell resonating in everyone's ears. I am an orphan, but Lin Ruoli is not. She has a brother, a sister-in-law, people supporting her. Having someone's support is such a precious thing for an orphan. If you think it doesn't matter, feel free to try it. Jiang He's voice had just fallen, when an untimely sneer emerged from below. Jiang He didn't hesitate, and immediately kicked over the table of the parent in charge. What are you laughing at? Seeing Jiang He's seriousness, the room fell silent in an instant. I'm asking you, what are you laughing at? It was only then that everyone realized that the young man in front of them was truly crazy and would not give anyone face. I, I'm sorry, I just, fearless of getting into trouble, Jiang He said no more and left the classroom. Jiang He's fierce image was deeply imprinted in these people's minds. Even the students who had been indifferent a moment ago scattered like birds and beasts, afraid of catching Jiang He's attention. Only one girl, despite trembling as she passed by Jiang He, approached Lin Ruoli. Ruoli classmate, I. I'm an orphan too, can I study with you? This girl was truly timid, shaking all over just passing by Jiang He. Seeing the girl's appearance, 
Lin Ruoli couldn't help but smile, even with tears in her eyes. Sure, I'll protect you, just like my brother Zhang Yi. As Zhang Yi walked out of the school gates, Lin Ruoli and the girl waved goodbye to him. Go back, call me if you need anything. With that, Zhang Yi left with Lu Cici. Cici, do you think I'm too violent? Walking back to school, Zhang Yi held Lu Cici's hand, worried that she might see him as a violent person. Well, Zhang Yi's brother is indeed very violent. From scolding unreasonable parents and teachers to kicking the person who mocked them, this version of Zhang Yi was indeed more violent compared to his usual gentle self. But Zhang Yi brother, your violence is to protect yourself and your loved ones, it's against the bad people. In Cici's eyes, it's handsome. As the last two words left Lu Cici's mouth, Zhang Yi's tense heart finally relaxed. He knew violence was not the answer, but it was his only weapon. If he didn't fight back, those people might not even spare him a glance, just seeing him as a joke. An orphan, isn't that an easy target for bullying? Perseverance was Zhang Yi's life principle, and what he wanted to teach Lin Ruoli. Meanwhile, Zhang Huang had also arrived at Zhang Yi's school, successfully blending in. When he reached Zhang Yi's classroom, he found that Zhang Yi was not there. Hello, I'm Zhang Yi's sister, do you know where Zhang Yi went? The student looked Zhang Huang up and down. You're Zhang Yi's sister? In these three years, why hasn't Zhang Yi ever mentioned having family? Zhang Huang felt uneasy, as they had previously forbidden Zhang Yi from mentioning that he was part of the Zhang family. Maybe Zhang Yi just forgot, I really am his sister, I'm Zhang Huang. I'm here for the parent-teacher meeting. Although the student was skeptical of Zhang Huang's words, he didn't know Zhang Yi well enough to question her, so he led Zhang Huang to Zhang Yi's seat. When Zhang Huang arrived at Zhang Yi's seat, it was as awkward as when Zhang Yi held a parent-teacher meeting for Lin Ruoli, with the only difference being a letter that other parents had. And Zhang Yan's mother, Zhang Yi's deskmate, also looked at the glamorous woman beside her with some confusion. She has come several times, but has never met Zhang Yi's family. Her son also said that Zhang Yi is an orphan and should be taken care of. So who is this woman? As the homeroom teacher entered, he also looked puzzled at Zhang Yi's seat. This seat has always been empty, so did a parent sit in the wrong place? All right, we would like to invite the parents of outstanding students to come on stage and share their educational experiences. When it was Jiang Yi's turn, Zhang Huan was also taken aback. How could it be Jiang Yi? Jiang Yi's grades are not at the bottom. In fact, when the homeroom teacher called Jiang Yi's name, it was just a formality. However, when Zhang Huang went on stage, even the homeroom teacher was stunned for two seconds. May I ask who you are? Ah, uh, ah. Uh, I am. I am Jiang Yi's sister. With these words, the homeroom teacher was even more confused. When did Jiang Yi have a sister? Could it be a cousin? However, Jiang Huang's speech that followed made the homeroom teacher even more suspicious. Zhang Huang's words were confusing, she didn't even know how many points Zhang Yi scored, how much progress he made, or what rank he was in the city. Miss, are you really Zhang Yi's sister? Or? Faced with the homeroom teacher's question, Zhang Huang blushed for a moment. Perhaps she herself had never thought that she knew so little about Zhang Yi. This was not how a sister should act. I? I'm sorry. Zhang Huang couldn't find the words to say, so she had to step down first. The parents below were whispering to each other, some even suspected that Zhang Huang was a human trafficker. As for Zhang Yan's mother, she was also fierce and didn't give Zhang Huang any face. Miss Jiang, you don't know anything about Zhang Yi, and you dare to call yourself his sister? With these words, Zhang Huang couldn't hold back anymore, facing so many eyes, she felt too ashamed to stay in her seat. She went downstairs in tears, she was not, she really wasn't. But not matter how she thought about it, the fact was right in front of her, she was not worthy of being Jiang Yi's sister. At the same time, Jiang Qin and Lu Ru had just finished the parent-teacher meeting for Jiang Li facing Jiang Li's ranking in the top 800 in the city, Jiang Qin was very satisfied. As long as Jiang Li worked harder, there was still a chance to get into Tsinghua University. By then, they could also give face to the Jiang family. But Jiang Li, who was focused on how to harm Jiang He, it was unknown whether his grades were real or fake. 
But Jiang Yi's top 10 in the grade and top 100 in the city were real achievements. When Jiang Yi and Lu Cixi were preparing to return to school, they unexpectedly met the person he least wanted to see on the way. Jiang Yi cursed in his heart, he never expected to run into Jiang Qin and Lu Ru. Logically, even if Jiang Li wanted to have a parent-teacher meeting, it was not on the way to Jiang Yi's school, so why did they meet? Jiang Yi held Lu Cixi's hand and was about to turn around to take a different route, but it was too late, and Lu Ru saw them. Xiao He. In fact, Lu Ru and Jiang Qin were not on the way, they had come to find Jiang He. But Jiang He pretended not to hear, he was not stupid, he knew they would stop him if he heard them call out. But when Jiang He reached the school gate, he bumped into Jiang Huang. Xiao He. Jiang Huang was pleasantly surprised, she didn't expect to run into Jiang He just as she was about to leave. Jiang He thought to himself that he must have had bad luck today for not checking the almanac before going out. After getting rid of Jiang Qin and the others, Jiang Huang showed up? He still ignored her and led Lu Cixi back to the classroom. Xiao He, wait. I just went to attend the parent-teacher meeting for you. With these words, Jiang He's steps halted, and he almost couldn't resist swearing. No, Jiang Huang, are you out of your mind? Jiang He really couldn't understand, what's wrong with the Jiang family? Before, when Jiang He begged them to come, they were afraid of losing face and none of them agreed. But now, he has cut off ties with the Jiang family, and one after another they come. What the hell is this? Xiao. Xiao He, sister knows that she hasn't cared much about you in these years, but now sister really knows she was wrong. Xiao He, please give sister a chance. Jiang Huang said, habitually reaching out to grab Jiang He's arm. She really wants Jiang He to give her a chance, a chance to understand and care for Jiang He. This scene attracted the attention of many passing parents and students, and even many female students began discussing with their friends whether someone was being a third party. It must be said, these people have really big imaginations. Seeing the situation getting bigger and bigger, Jiang He didn't mind, but it would be bad if it implicated Lu Cixi. But seeing Jiang Huang's posture, it seemed that she wouldn't give up in the short term. Cici, you go back to the classroom first, and help me tidy up the books. This was just an excuse to send Lu Cici away. Lu Cici knew she could only cause trouble here, this was Jiang Yi's own business, if Jiang Yi wanted to say something, he would naturally tell her. Well, then I'll wait for you in the infirmary. Seeing Lu Cici walk away, Jiang Yi also breathed a sigh of relief. Just when Jiang Huang thought Jiang Yi would give her a chance to talk, Jiang Yi suddenly shook her off and broke free from Jiang Huang's control. Joke, he was just worried about Lu Cixi earlier, now that Lu Cixi was not around, would he be stupid not to run? He didn't want to waste time with these Jiang family members. Xiao He Jiang Huang was also dumbfounded, standing still. Just as she was about to chase after him, there was a loud snap, and one of her high heels broke. And coincidentally, Jiang Qin, with Lu Ru, also arrived at the school gate and happened to meet Jiang Huang, so they hurried over. Xiao Huang, what's wrong with you? But Jiang Huang completely ignored her own situation and limped over to find Jiang He. I know where Xiao He is. I know. Jiang Huang remembered that Jiang He would always go to the infirmary where Jiang Xian worked after school. She had to go now. On the other side, Jiang He had indeed arrived at the infirmary. Brother Jiang He. Lu Cixi saw Jiang He return so quickly and hurried over. But Jiang Xian still looked worried, not even noticing Jiang He's arrival. The reason she had something to do yesterday was to talk to Jiang Bai. But Jiang Bai couldn't listen to anything, so she had to give up. Ah, this Jiang Bai, how did he become like this? In fact, this couldn't be entirely blamed on Jiang Bai himself, just like Jiang He, madness and fierceness were her means of protecting herself and her sister. When there was no absolute safety, she absolutely couldn't let down her guard. Xiao He When Jiang He heard the voice not far away, he couldn't help but sigh, what's wrong with these people? Can't they let go? Seeing that Jiang He showed no intention of leaving, Jiang Huang took off her high heels and ran to Jiang He. Xiao He, sister just wants a chance to understand you, to protect you. Looking at Jiang Huang's pleading expression, Jiang He was truly speechless. 
No, there's really no need now. There were so many chances in the past to understand me, you didn't take them, so why make a scene now? Xiao He, are you still blaming sister? Sister really knows she was wrong. Seeing Jiang Huang's tears about to fall, Jiang Qin couldn't hold back anymore and coldly looked at Jiang He. Jiang He, look at what the Jiang family has become because of you. If you still have a conscience, come back soon. Once this was said, Jiang He couldn't help but widen his eyes. All because of him? Because of me? Jiang He even pointed at himself in disbelief. And Jiang Qin's voice remained cold and stern. If it weren't for you running away from home, would Xiao Zi have left? If it weren't for you, how could Jiang Jiang have been insulted online? Look at the current state of your eldest sister, does she look anything like a group CEO? Aren't all these because of you? The Jiang family was originally fine, but because of you alone, the entire Jiang family is in turmoil. Jiang Qin's words reached the ears of everyone present, perhaps even convincing himself with his own words. Yes, Mr. Jiang, you are right. Xiao He. Jiang He also nodded, thinking that way was simply perfect. So Mr. Jiang, can you leave now? Stay away from me, the troublemaker, and everything will be fine, right? Once this was said, Jiang Qin was even more furious. What do you mean? If you know you're wrong, come back home with me right away. Come home now, and bring your second sister back. But before Jiang Qin could finish speaking, Jiang He interrupted directly. No, do you really believe that? Jiang He himself didn't expect that his father would actually think all of this was his fault. No, I haven't even gone to find any of you from the Jiang family until now. What about Jiang Zi? What does it have to do with me? Did I make her leave the Jiang family? I damn well didn't know about this, and you're blaming me? You! Jiang Qin was momentarily speechless with anger. What about me? Jiang Huang, did I ever come looking for you? And Jiang Jiang, who knows why she suddenly wanted to volunteer at my orphanage. Since I left the Jiang family, have I ever actively sought out any of you from the Jiang family? Damn it, do you even know how to give face? If you don't speak up, you really think you're in the right? Jiang He vented all the anger he had been harassed by the Jiang family for these days. He was usually very gentle, not speaking much, but the events of these days, including Lin Ruoli being bullied, really made him unable to suppress his anger. No, Xiao He. Your father is just confused with anger. Xiao He, don't be angry. Lu Ru also wanted to reach out and hold Jiang He's hand, but he still avoided her. Jiang He, no matter what, I am still your father. Is this the way to speak to your father? Seeing that he couldn't win over Jiang He, Jiang Qin also brought out the word father, trying to save face for himself. What father? Haven't we already severed ties long ago? Jiang He sneered, not buying into it. Fine, fine, Jiang He, you are really stubborn. When you enter society, you will understand what the identity of a Jiang family member means. One day, you will kneel down and beg me. Jiang Qin was unyielding, he had already given Jiang He a way out. Ha, ah, the truth is out, right? In your eyes, the Jiang family is an unattainable existence for someone like me, isn't it? Jiang He was also amused, if he really coveted the wealth and status of the Jiang family, how could he have severed ties? Jiang Qin, remember this, I don't care about the Jiang family, so you Jiang family members don't need to come looking for me again, got it? Once this was said, Lu Ru was even more anxious and tears fell from her eyes. She never imagined that her initial bias and prejudice would turn the Jiang family into this state. He he, Jiang he, I want to see how long you can keep up this tough act. Let's go. Jiang Qin wanted to see, when Jiang Yi graduates, how he would handle his tuition fees. University tuition fees are not as simple as a few thousand dollars. There is also the orphanage where Jiang He is located. Recently, the government is planning to cut back on some welfare institutions, and that orphanage is included. This is why Jiang Qin is so confident that Jiang He will return to the Jiang family. Without the help of the Jiang family, that orphanage will have to disband. Fine, you, Jiang He, have integrity, but what about the many orphans in the orphanage? 
He wants Jiang Yi to understand that without the Jiang family, he is nothing. He wants Jiang Yi to kneel down and beg him, this father. He wants Jiang Yi to know that all the decisions he, as a father, makes are correct. Jiang Huang. Can't you hear me? Let's go. There was no way, Jiang Huang could only look at Jiang Yi one last time, a tear also slid down her delicate face. Why, why is Jiang Yi unwilling to give them a chance? But what she doesn't know is that Jiang Yi is a person who has died once before. When he was burned to death in a fire in his previous life, no one gave him a chance. Watching the few people leave, Jiang Yi also breathed a sigh of relief, but faced with Lu Cici's nervous expression, he still smiled. Jiang Yi Gij, Cici wants to know, wants to know about your past. Wants to share all this with you. Lu Cici gathered her courage, she wanted to bear all the future events with Jiang Yi. Is that so? Then I will slowly tell you. Jiang Yi looked relaxed, since Lu Cici wanted to know, he didn't need to hide anything. At the same time, in the capital city. As the capital city, Jing City is naturally bustling, even as the sky darkens, the streets are still filled with pedestrians, tourists, couples, and even students who have just finished school. The street lights are already on early, the city that never sleeps is not just a reputation. However, as one of the major families in Jing City, the Jiang family seems a bit deserted. Lu Mu, the private secretary of Jiang Bai, dressed in a traditional maid outfit, was sitting upright, looking at a few old men in front of her. Note that the maid outfit here is not for the sake of luxurious and beautiful dressing, but for the convenience of working in that traditional maid outfit, without much decoration, it actually looks no different from most work outfits, maybe a bit more elegant. Xiao Lu, now that Mr. Jiang is not here, everyone is speculating that something has happened to Mr. Jiang and he may not come back. Can you give us an explanation? Yes, yes, if Mr. Jiang were here, we naturally wouldn't dare to say much, but now the whole group is. These old foxes are all cunning, naturally there is more than meets the eye in their words, implying whether Jiang Bai can continue to serve as the head of the Jiang family and the controller of the Jiang group. I say, Mr. Jiang is only away for a few days, and you are all jumping around like this. Aren't you afraid that Mr. Jiang will come back and deal with you? Lu Mu raised her delicate gold-rimmed glasses, elegant and intellectual, as if she was born for it, every move was natural, showing no discomfort. With these words, the old men looked at each other in surprise. If that lunatic Jiang Bai were here, they naturally wouldn't dare to act rashly, they could only quietly nibble away at some assets behind his back. But now it's different, Jiang Bai has been out of contact for several days. And it's the kind of complete silence. So there is only one possibility, that Jiang Bai is really in trouble, deliberately blocking the news. Thinking of this, these old men instantly straightened up again. It must be said. These old guys are quite brave. After all, as long as they can get rid of Jiang Bai, they will no longer have to live in fear as usual, and then they can make money as they please. Alright, Lu Mu, you're just a dog by Jiang Bai's side, don't act tough, when I kick you out of the group, it'll be fun to see you become a stray dog. But Lu Mu was unfazed, as Jiang Bai's personal secretary, she had seen it all. She slammed the table and stood up, facing the old folks directly. Do you think no one knows what you've been up to? How much money you've embezzled, you know it, how many years you deserve, you know it too, I don't need to say more, right? With these words, the old folks were instantly furious, they didn't expect their actions to be discovered by this damn Lumu. So what? In a few days, there will be a shareholders meeting, if Jiang Bai doesn't show up, the whole Jiang family will be ours, even if it's black, it can turn white. Who do you think you are? You used to have Jiang Bai backing you up, now that Jiang Bai is gone, you're nothing. As the argument escalated, Lumu clapped her hands, and instantly four or five burly bodyguards with sunglasses entered and stood in front of the old folks. Instantly, the old folks wilted. It was fortunate that they were facing Lu Mu, if it were Jiang Bai, she might have personally broken their arms, that's not an exaggeration, Jiang Bai was that kind of crazy person. Otherwise, there wouldn't be so many people in the capital afraid of Jiang Bai. Escort them out. With that, the bodyguards reached out and ushered the old folks out. Lu Mu. Just wait, in a few days, you'll be driven out of the group like a stray dog, let's see how you survive then. 
Lumu sat in the chair, looking at the empty office, unable to help but take off her glasses and rub her forehead. Miss Jiang Bai, where have you gone? Lumu's eyes were filled with exhaustion, these days, the pressure of the entire Jiang family, even the Jiang group, fell on her alone. But in the end, no matter how capable she was, she was just a young girl in her early twenties. In fact, it was also Jiang Bai's fault, for the thoroughness of this plan, she didn't even mention it to Lu Mu, whom she trusted the most, showing how much Jiang Bai had sacrificed to eradicate the cancer of the Jiang family. Miss, if I can't hold on, please don't blame me, I will personally step down and apologize to you. For Lu Mu, Jiang Bai was her pillar of strength, if Jiang Bai was really gone, she would follow suit. Meanwhile, in the coastal city, Jiang Bai also received shocking news. What? Jiang Yi has made up one million? This, this, how is this possible? Jiang Bai was completely stunned. You should know the consequences of deceiving me. Jiang Bai frowned slightly, how could Jiang Yi have raised one million in such a short time? Could it be that the owner of this gym lied to her? Think what you want, since Jiang Yi has completed the task, if I, Lu Hui, go back on my word, then I'm not a man, I'll accept whatever you throw at me, I want to see if I can fight to the end. Lu Hui also hung up the phone fiercely, he had lived an honest life all his life, never afraid of anyone. Now in his middle age, he had to consider his daughter. But now, he had broken his promise, and his daughter no longer saw him as an idol, if he went back on his word again, was he still a man? Could he still set an example as a father for his daughter? At worst, he would take a risk, he had started from scratch, seen all kinds of storms, even if he failed and lost everything, he could still make a comeback. Jiang Yi, I wish you good luck. Lu Hui quietly called his daughter, Lu Duer. Go, take this agreement to Jiang Yi, our Lu family doesn't want the profits from this cooperation. With these words, Lu Duer's body also trembled slightly. Dad, this time. No more nonsense, when have you ever seen your dad back down? Go quickly. Yes. In Lu Duer's eyes, that towering, upright father seemed to have returned. This is the essence of passing on spirit, a strong physique, coupled with a resilient spirit. Lu Hui believed that even if he was no longer around one day, Lu Duer would still be able to stand on her own. On the other side, Jiang Bai was not feeling so comfortable. The latest model iPhone, which had not lasted a few days, once again had an intimate encounter with the ground, its parts shattered into pieces. You, Jiang He. Although I don't know how you did it, next, I will definitely expose your fox tail. A crazy plan took shape completely in Jiang Bai's heart, she was soon going to leave the city, and when she was gone, Jiang He might easily influence Jiang Xian. After all, Jiang He's level was unheard of to her, even after just a few days of interaction, she had developed a strong interest in Jiang He, which was the terrifying aspect of Jiang He. Indeed, one was a daydreamer, the other was indifferent. At the same time, when Jiang He brought Lu Cici to the noodle shop, they happened to meet Lu Duer who had just arrived. And when Lu Duer saw Jiang He for the first time, she subtly clenched her hands, unsure how to face him. After all, she had looked down on Jiang He first, and then went back on her word. Would Jiang He see her as a bad woman who bullies orphans? But she really didn't mean that, what should she do, how should she approach Jiang He? Just as Lu Duer's brain was spinning rapidly, frozen in place, Jiang He, with Lu Cici, also walked up to Lu Duer. Miss Lu? Miss Lu? Jiang He called twice, but Lu Duer still didn't react, which puzzled Jiang He even more. What's wrong with Lu Duer? Is she frozen? Miss Lu, what's wrong with you? Lu Cici reached out and shook Lu Duer, who then came to her senses. Jiang He, I'm sorry. In front of everyone, Lu Duer bowed deeply to Jiang He, showing a spirited demeanor that could rival Zhou Ruoyan's. In an instant, countless eyes fell on the group, their faces filled with curiosity, after all, gossip was a pastime for all ages. Ahem, Miss Lu, let's talk. Inside. Jiang He was also taken aback, not knowing, one might think it was another melodramatic plot unfolding. Lu Duer also noticed the many pairs of eyes watching them, a blush rising on her healthy, wheat-colored face. She quickly followed Jiang He into the noodle shop. Inside, Zhou Ruoyan also greeted them, but her gaze kept avoiding Jiang He's. 
This is the cooperation agreement my dad asked me to bring, do you see any issues? Lu Duer pushed the agreement in front of Zhang Yi, the blush on her face gradually fading, revealing her healthy wheat-colored complexion. Looking at the agreement in front of him, Zhang Yi carefully read through it. Although he wasn't very knowledgeable in law, he could still spot some obviously problematic clauses. But this cooperation agreement not only had no traps to deceive, but instead, it was unbelievably good. Miss Lu, is it true that we don't need to split the profits, only a portion of the management fee? Isn't this equivalent to the gym providing services to the noodle shop owners? Oh, my dad personally arranged it, so there shouldn't be any problem. Besides, my dad doesn't care about this small amount of money, so you can rest assured. That's the truth, after all, he is a billionaire, and this profit, even if distributed, would only amount to a few hundred thousand. But at this moment, a group of unexpected guests arrived at the orphanage. Hello, we are staff from the municipal welfare office, is the matron here? Three government workers dressed in white shirts, straight trousers, and carrying briefcases knocked on the orphanage's door. Soon, the heavy door was opened, and the person who came was Lin Ruoli. What can I do for you? Lin Ruoli looked very alert at the three people in front of her. Don't be afraid, young lady, we are here to talk to your matron about something. Seeing Lin Ruoli's reaction, the three people couldn't help but smile wryly. It was good to be cautious, as human traffickers had become rampant again for some reason, and law enforcement officers everywhere were on high alert, but still couldn't achieve comprehensive protection. Wait here, I'll go find the matron. Soon, the matron herself came to the door and welcomed the three people inside. Please, have a seat. The matron seemed to know that the three had come for another purpose. Seeing this, they took out some documents and placed them in front of the matron. Matron, this time. As soon as these words were spoken, the matron closed her eyes and fell silent for a moment. The three people quickly explained, Matron, you are getting older, and although this orphanage is not old, it is located on the outskirts of the city, making it inconvenient for the children to go to school due to transportation issues. Moreover, moving to the city. Before the three could finish their sentence, the matron interrupted, What conditions are needed to keep the orphanage? At this, the three staff members looked at each other and could only sigh. A savings guarantee of two million. For a single orphanage, considering a dozen children, the annual expenses would definitely exceed 200,000. Over the years, as government welfare policies improved, the number of orphans decreased. Therefore, the government was considering shutting down some orphanages and centralizing management to provide more welfare to each orphan. However, centralized management and increased numbers meant that the children would find it difficult to receive the love from adults. In the matron's heart, each of these dozen orphans was like her own child, and each child deserved to feel the love of a family. That's why the children here were lively and had strong personalities. All of this was thanks to the matron's nurturing love. Standing aside, Lin Ruoli clenched her small hands, feeling uncomfortable with her nails digging into her flesh. If this orphanage were to be disbanded, she would hardly see Jiang He, the matron, and this group of mischievous yet lovely and progressive children again. I understand. Can you give us a little more time? The matron's somewhat cloudy eyes gradually opened as she pondered something. I'm sorry, but... How about two months? This is the maximum authorization we can give. With that said, the matron nodded. Even if she emptied her savings in these two months, it might not be enough. But earning a little more would still be better. Then, she could distribute it to each child. It might not be much, but having money would bring peace of mind, and having the confidence to fight back when bullied. This was the last thing the matron could do, at the same time, Zhang Yi happened to run into the three who had just come out of the orphanage. Zhang Yi was very puzzled, as there were hardly ever people coming to the orphanage. Xiao He, you're back. Zhang Zhang rushed to Zhang Yi's side, reaching out to help him with things, but Zhang Yi still dodged away. What were those people doing just now? Ha? Huh? I don't know, I was in the kitchen just now. Zhang Jiang was indeed helping in the kitchen preparing dinner. To be honest, with Jiang Jiang around, things got even busier. But Jiang Jiang was indeed making progress, that couldn't be denied. Miss Jiang, why don't you just leave, 
What can you do by staying here? Zhang Yi really couldn't understand what was going on with Zhang Zhang. Leaving aside the fact that she was a young lady and a big star, she had been recently heavily criticized online. Was all of this worth it? Zhang Yi had said long ago that he had no relationship with the Zhang family anymore, even if Zhang Zhang kept pestering him, it was useless. But Zhang Jiang surprisingly calmed down, just looking straight at Zhang Yi. Xiao He, sister just wants a chance for you to forgive me, as for the result, whether you forgive me or not, I'll accept it. Ever since Zhang Zhang found out that Zhang Yi was the boy who had saved her before, she couldn't sleep for several days thinking about her attitude towards Zhang Yi when she was at the Zhang family. She dreamed of getting Zhang Yi's forgiveness, even if it was just a little bit. But after she found out that Zhang Zi had left the Zhang family, she understood that the Zhang family had hurt Zhang Yi too deeply. Perhaps, this chance, she might never be able to reach in her lifetime. Forget it, think whatever you want. Zhang Yi waved his hand, he didn't care how Zhang Zhang felt, anyway. But when Zhang Yi arrived in the hall, he found Lin Ruali sobbing uncontrollably. Seeing that it was Zhang Yi who had come back, Lin Ruali quickly wiped away the tears on her face with her hand, pretending to be fine. But how could she possibly hide it from Zhang Yi? Tell me, what happened? Zhang Yi stepped forward to block Lin Ruali's way out. You promised me before that you would tell me everything. Seeing that Zhang Yi was persistent, Lin Ruali had no choice but to recount what had just happened. Brother Zhang Yi, you can't forget about me. Seeing the little girl about to cry again, Zhang Yi chuckled and then gave her a tap on the head. What are you doing? Feeling the slight pain in her head, Lin Ruali looked at Zhang Yi with resentment in her eyes. Just laughing at how silly you are, leave this matter to me. Zhang Yi looked relaxed, as if he didn't care about the two million at all. Lin Ruali was indeed taken aback by Zhang Yi's words, her eyes filled with surprise. This, this is a criminal offense, you can't. But before Lin Ruali could finish, Zhang Yi tapped her head again. Zhang Yi was now at a loss, wait, was he really a criminal? Alright, go back to your room, this matter is not for you to worry about. However, was Zhang Yi's heart really as calm as his face? Two months, two million. What a desperate number, for a moment, Zhang Yi was also lost in confusion. In the Zhang family villa, Zhang Qin snorted coldly upon receiving the notice that the orphanage was about to be reduced. He knew that Zhang Yi had a deep affection for this orphanage and couldn't just watch it disappear. But even if Zhang Yi could come up with 30,000 to give back to the Zhang family, how could he come up with 2 million? How could an ordinary student like Zhang Yi come up with 2 million? When the time comes, won't you have to kneel down and beg him as a father? Won't the Zhang family have to take action to settle things? Zhang Yi, you are still too naive after all. Society is not that simple. As for Lu Ru, she naturally knows about this matter. But she also tacitly approved of Zhang Qin's actions. She believes that as long as Zhang Yi is willing to come back, she will treat Jiang Yi well, and Jiang Yi will definitely forgive her as a mother. Xiao He, mom just wants you to come back. Lu Ru is deceiving herself like this, do you find it ridiculous or not? At the same time, the infirmary of Erzhong school is still brightly lit. Jiang Xian looked at Jiang Bai in front of her, feeling a bit uneasy. After all, her crazy younger sister is capable of anything. Sister, tell me the truth, do you really have feelings for Zhang Yi? At this moment, Zhang Bai's eyes, under the glare of the fluorescent light, showed a hint of eeriness, completely different from her previous innocent beauty. Hearing this, Zhang Xian furrowed her brows. She had said countless times that she had no romantic feelings for Zhang Yi at all. Why doesn't Zhang Bai believe her and keep pestering her? In fact, Zhang Bai is mainly too afraid of Zhang Xian getting hurt her protective instincts towards Zhang Xian bordering on obsession. Yes, I like Zhang Yi, so what? Who do you think you are? I am your sister, do you have the right to control me? Zhang Xian was also getting impatient, speaking bluntly, wanting Zhang Bai to leave. She really has no romantic feelings for Zhang Yi, at most, she feels a bit jealous and envious of Zhang Yi and Lu Cici's sweetness at times. Sister! You finally admitted it! Zhang Bai rushed forward, staring at Zhang Xian's eyes intently, 
the obsession almost visible in her eyes. Oh, now you believe me? Jiang Xin sneered. Wasn't it just now that no matter what she said, Jiang Bai wouldn't believe her? But Jiang Bai seemed to be completely indifferent. Since you said so, little sister will help you see through Jiang his true colors. The next moment, Jiang Xin felt a sudden dizziness. What have you done? Suddenly, Jiang Xian's eyes caught sight of the half-empty cup of lukewarm water on the table, which Jiang Bai had just poured for her. At that time, Jiang Xian thought Jiang Bai had come to her senses, so she didn't think much of it. But now it seems. Before long, Jiang Xian fell into Jiang Bai's arms, completely unconscious. Jiang Bai was now completely insane, she couldn't bear to see her sister fall into Jiang Yi's trap. Sister, when you wake up, everything will be over. Then, Jiang Bai took out a brand new phone, even the SIM card was new, to prevent Jiang Yi from tracking her through the phone. Hello? Is this Jiang Yi? Jiang Xian is in my hands now. If you don't want anything to happen to her, you better do as I say. Jiang Bai's voice was completely unrecognizable after being processed by a voice changer. After hanging up the phone, Jiang Bai turned off the phone and threw it into the trash can. This was the first test. If Jiang Yi didn't come, everything would naturally be over. Jiang Yi, will you come or not? Jiang Bai muttered to herself. She didn't believe that Jiang Yi would risk his own safety to save Jiang Xian. People only reveal their true nature when facing danger. Jiang Bai used to believe in friends, but since being betrayed by a friend, she understood that the only person she could trust was herself. Looking at Jiang Xian in her arms, Jiang Bai gently tidied up her slightly messy hair. Sister, you used to protect me, now it's my turn to protect you, I won't let anyone hurt my sister. No one is allowed. Jiang Bai's eyes gradually became crazy, and the dangerous aura even scared the mice in the corner, making them dare not move. Meanwhile, Jiang Yi, who was in the orphanage, rubbed his forehead after hanging up the phone. He had already guessed that this matter was probably done by Jiang Bai. But, Jiang Yi didn't dare to bet. Even if there was only a one in a million chance, Jiang Yi couldn't risk Jiang Xian's life. At the same time, Jiang Li's biological parents were also discussing taking action against Jiang Yi tomorrow. It has to be said, this is quite a coincidence. It's just unknown who will strike first among these two groups of people. Honey, do we really have to? Jiang Li's mother, who was a young girl back then, wouldn't have done the thing of giving her son to someone else to raise if she hadn't been. But if it came to personally killing someone, she didn't have the courage. And Jiang Li's father was also uneducated, but his mind was sharper than Jiang Li's mother's. Are you stupid? Murder is a serious crime, you could lose your head. Are you willing to risk your life for one and a half million? In his eyes, his own son Jiang Li was just a money tree, he would never sacrifice himself for Jiang Li. Moreover, it's the information age now, once a real murder case happens, it's as difficult as ascending to heaven to escape. But Xiao Li said he wanted Jiang He to disappear forever. Li's mother also cautiously inquired, afraid of upsetting Li's father, who was like a god in her eyes. Back then, she defied her family's opposition and resolutely dropped out of school to follow Li's father, even when her mother fell ill from anger, she never went back to visit even once. Love really makes people irrational. Disappear, doesn't mean we have to kill him, I've already contacted boss Zhang, we'll just kidnap that kid sell him to a remote mountain area to be a servant for life, isn't that enough? Li's father seemed to think he was very clever, even if he was caught later, he would only get a few years in prison. He had been in prison many times before. Just then, Li's mother's phone suddenly rang. What? Mom is not doing well? I? But before Li's mother could finish speaking, Li's father snatched the phone away. Hello? This is Qin Shou. Do you remember me? You were so against us back then, now look at us, living in a big house, with plenty of money. I guess you just want money, right? Let me tell you, you won't get a penny. After saying that, Lee's father hung up the phone directly, he was no longer the ruffian he used to be, he had money. On the other side, Lee's mother's brother, watching his mother lying on the sickbed, struggling for breath, couldn't help but shed tears. 
Mom, my little sister is doing well, don't worry. His tone was light, but the bitterness could be heard. But in his heart, the hatred for Lee's mother was overwhelming, clearly the family had been so good to her back then, even he, who had excellent grades, decided to go out to work without hesitation, leaving the only opportunity for education to Lee's mother. But what did she do? She ran out to date a thug, and even got pregnant with that thug's child. The family asked her to abort the child, but she brought the thug home, causing the mother to fall ill and never recover. Such a beast, why does it seem like she's being favored by the heavens, why? Is. That so, then I can, rest assured. The voice was faint, but you could still hear a mother's concern for her daughter. For some reason, people always seem to not know how to cherish love. The affection that Zhang he once wanted to desperately obtain was seen as a neglected existence in Li Mu's eyes. Lu Ru once could have received Zhang He's love completely, but she didn't care at all, even detested Zhang He. But when she wanted to find it again, she found it was already too late. Love is not a renewable existence, if not cherished, no matter how much love, it will eventually burn out. Until the next afternoon, Zhang He first sent away Lu Cixi. When Zhang He arrived at the designated location as mentioned by the person before, he was suddenly abducted by two black-clothed strong men. This startled Li Fu and Li Mu who had been following Zhang He all the way. What's going on? Could it be that Zhang Gu acted early? After much thought, Li Fu decided to first meet with Zhang Gu to understand the situation. At the same time, the high city public security, special police, together with the local armed police, were preparing for a comprehensive crackdown on human traffickers entrenched in high city. This operation was highly confidential, and many people only received specific operational tasks before departure, to ensure that no criminals slipped through the net. When Zhang Yi saw the light of day again, Zhang Xian was tied up with hands bound and mouth taped in front of Zhang Yi. Jiang Xian's eyes widened involuntarily upon seeing Jiang He, desperately trying to say something but only managing to make sobbing sounds. At this moment, Jiang Xian's heart had cursed Jiang Bai from beginning to end. This lunatic could really do anything. He even drugged her. Absolutely insane. But now, Jiang Xian could only helplessly watch Jiang He. Jiang He, an orphan, was already pitiful enough. She not only hoped that Jiang Bai, that lunatic, wouldn't harm Jiang He, or she would truly feel guilty for a lifetime. At this moment, a masked strong man appeared in front of Jiang He. Naturally, this was Jiang Bai afraid of being recognized by Jiang He, so she sent her bodyguard in her place. You are Jiang He? With these words, Jiang He calmly nodded. But Jiang He's heart was far from calm on the surface. He was observing his surroundings looking for an opportunity to rescue Jiang Xian. Jiang Xian's sister ran away with our money, and now there is no news. How do you think this account should be settled? The strong man suddenly stepped forward and punched Jiang He in the stomach. Ugh! Jiang He felt a sharp pain in his abdomen, almost vomiting. Seeing Jiang Bai really going all out, Jiang Xian struggled even harder, tears welling up in the corners of her eyes. She never expected Jiang Bai to be so crazy. Jiang Bai, who had always been behind the scenes, watched the scene of Jiang He's pain, furrowing her brows slightly. But seeing her elder sister so excited for Jiang He, madness once again overcame reason. Only when facing pain and death will a person's true nature be revealed. Jiang He, it's time to expose your ugliness to the eyes of the elder sister, let the elder sister know that in this world, the one who truly cares for her is only me. When Jiang He slowly got up from the ground, he took a deep breath to calm himself. Kid, I'll give you two options, you choose. Saying that, the strong man walked behind Jiang Xian and aimed her at Jiang He's face. Either you give me 20 million, or I'll sell your girlfriend's organs, I believe. But before the strong man could finish his sentence, Jiang He's roar interrupted him. Jiang Bai. How long are you going to act like a fool? Once this was said, Jiang Bai, who was behind the scenes, was shocked. He, he, what is he saying? Jiang Bai was also momentarily panicked, how could this be possible? At this point, how could Jiang He possibly think it was her doing it? Could it be that Jiang He was just pretending? Yes. It must be like that. 
But the next words completely shattered Jiang Bai's illusions. Jiang Bai, if I were your sister Jiang Xian, I would definitely hate you for a lifetime. Jiang He also realized that this idiot always thought he was interested in Jiang Xian, no wonder things were so wrong before, he was causing trouble for him, right? Once this was said, Jiang Bai was completely panicked as well, she could accept anyone hating her, except Jiang Xian. Only her sister could not. No. Jiang He, shut up. Jiang Bai couldn't hold back anymore, she came out from behind the scenes and went forward to tightly hug the bound Jiang Xian. Sister, you won't hate me, right? I'm sorry? Jiang Bai tremblingly tore off the tape from Jiang Xian's mouth. At this moment, Jiang Bai was completely panicked, she had never thought about Jiang Xian's feelings before doing this. She just, just loved Jiang Xian too much. She just didn't want her sister to get hurt. What was wrong with that? Jiang Bai, from now on, we are no longer sisters. Jiang Xian's words were very light, but for Jiang Bai's heart, it was like a heavy blow. Sis, sister, you must be joking, right? You love me so much, how could you? I'm not joking. Jiang Xian's eyes were devoid of any emotion, what she said was true. The sister she once cherished was dead in her heart. Hey! Is this Miss Jiang Bai? You finally answered my call. On the other end, Lu Mu, Jiang Bai's secretary, was on the verge of tears. Sister doesn't want me, sister doesn't want me. Jiang Bai sat dazed on the steps at the door, from sunset to complete darkness, she kept repeating this sentence. While Jiang Xian and Jiang he had already left. Miss Jiang Bai, what's wrong with you? Who doesn't want you? Is it Miss Jiang Xian? Lu Mu listened to the helpless and pitiful voice on the phone, wishing she could fly over to comfort Jiang Bai right now. Sister doesn't want me, doesn't want me. Jiang Bai continued to repeat this sentence, feeling like her heart had been torn apart, even breathing became difficult. But wasn't she the one who caused all this? If she hadn't been so crazy, even involving Jiang Yi, how could Jiang Xian be completely disappointed in her? All of this was her own fault. Miss Jiang Bai. You must pull yourself together. The Jiang family needs you now, don't you want to protect Miss Jiang Xian? Do you want to see the Jiang family fall into the hands of others? Lu Mu knew Jiang Bai very well, she knew that at this moment, bringing up Jiang Xian was necessary. Think about it, if the Jiang family is gone, and Miss Jiang Xian is bullied, how will you protect her? This struck a chord with Jiang Bai. Jiang Bai immediately stood up, the madness and fierceness in her eyes almost bursting out, she was determined to eliminate all threats for Jiang Xian. I'll go back right away, prepare the materials, you should understand what I mean. Seeing Jiang Bai regain her composure, Lu Mu on the other end of the phone also breathed a sigh of relief. Jiang Bai took one last look at the brightly lit city, a clear tear involuntarily slid down her cheek. Sister, I will always protect you. Jiang Bai now realizes that her sickly love is too heavy a burden for Jiang Xian, even evolving into a form of harm. I'm sorry. Jiang Bai fell silent, turned and walked away. This time, she will completely crush the parasites and tumors of the Jiang family, leaving nothing behind. Not long ago, Li's father and mother also arrived at the territory of Snakehead Zhang and Haishir. At this moment, Zhang was loading the abducted children into a car, the youngest being under 7 years old and the oldest looking about 12. Zhan. Zhang Long frowned as he saw the two people approaching empty-handed. Where are the people you mentioned? Why aren't they here? With these words, Li's parents were momentarily stunned. Wasn't it you who did it? Then who could it be? Who abducted Jiang He? Damn it! What do you mean? Are you kidding me? Seeing Zhang Long about to lose his temper, Li's father quickly pulled out a stack of banknotes and stuffed them into his arms. Sorry, sorry, maybe we made a mistake. Zhang, please calm down. Looking at the money in his hand, Zhang Long casually flicked away the cigarette but and said nothing more. Money talks. Li's parents quickly left, as long as Jiang Yi disappeared, they didn't need to get involved. Li's father immediately called Jiang Li, trying to get more money. 
As the snakehead, Zhang Long watched the two leave without saying anything. He knew their true colors very well and they wouldn't dare to report to the police unless they wanted to be caught. Lighting another cigarette, he chuckled as he looked at the securely bound little girl. Be careful, these are gold bars. If you damage them, you can forget about your fingers. After all, a child could be sold for three to four hundred thousand, or even more. But do you think these children, once sold, will lead a normal life? Those lucky enough might be sold to remote mountain villages, where life may be tough but at least they can survive. However, those with good looks are likely to be bought at a high price by perverts, and what awaits these children is true hell. This is why despite the strong crackdown on human trafficking, there are still people taking risks, as long as the profit chain exists, it will never disappear. Please, uncle, let me go, my mom is waiting for me at home. The trembling voice of the little girl did not evoke any pity from these beasts, but rather laughter. One of them even reached out his dirty hand towards the little girl. Suddenly. A loud bang. Hands on your head. Don't resist. Dozens of special police officers rushed in with guns, and in less than a moment, they had the situation under control. Don't be afraid, I'll take you home. Perhaps this scene will never be forgotten by these children. The flame of hope burns on. When Zhang Xian helped Zhang He back to the orphanage, Zhang Jiang had been waiting at the door for a long time. Seeing Jiang He being supported back, she couldn't help but panic. Xiao He, what's wrong with you? Zhang Jiang stepped forward to help Zhang He, but halfway through, she withdrew her hand. Zhang He would definitely avoid it. Zhang He, how are you? Does it still hurt? Should we go to the hospital? Zhang Xian helped Jiang He into the room, frantically tucking her in. As she spoke, Zhang Xian couldn't hold back anymore, tears streaming down her cheeks. I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, I never thought Zhang Bai would go to such extremes, but... Zhang Bai has always been the most important presence in Zhang Xian's heart. The words that severed their relationship also caused Zhang Xian deep pain. The feeling as if a knife cut through her heart even made her suffocate, unable to breathe. I'm fine, I should be better tomorrow. Zhang He could feel that the bodyguard who attacked him was skilled, the punch only hurt but did not injure. But this also made Zhang He feel a sense of crisis, he was indeed still too weak. It seems he needs to seek guidance from Lu Duer. Really? Then you lie down properly, I'll go pour you some water. With that, Zhang Xian went out to get hot water for Zhang He. But as soon as Zhang Xian left, Zhang Zhang pressed her against the wall. Speak. What's the matter with Xiao He? What did you do to Xiao He? Zhang Zhang grabbed Zhang Xian's collar, glaring fiercely at the unfamiliar woman in front of her. In fact, with Zhang Xian's strength, she could easily overpower Zhang Zhang, but now Zhang Xian was completely panicked and allowed Zhang Zhang to confront her. I'm sorry, I really didn't mean to. I don't want to hear your apologies. Zhang Jiang was not interested in this woman's apologies, she only cared about why Zhang He was injured. I? There was no way, Zhang Xian had to tell Zhang Zhang what had happened. After listening to Zhang Xian, Zhang Zhang slowly released her grip on Zhang Xian. Regardless, you are involved in this matter, get out of here. Even if Jiang Xian was not responsible for this matter, it still happened because of her. I? I want to stay here to take care of Jiang He, I'm a doctor, I can help. Jiang Xian quickly grabbed Jiang Zhang's hand, she didn't want to leave. Please? Jiang Xian was so anxious that tears welled up in her eyes, completely opposite to her previous image as an elegant and calm female doctor. Jiang Jiang also sighed, having a doctor around would be helpful. Xiao He, how are you? Still in pain? Zhang Jiang sat directly beside Zhang He's bed, full of concern. It has nothing to do with you, can you leave first? Zhang He frowned, recently Zhang Jiang had been pushing her limits, asking her to stay at the orphanage as a caregiver was already too much. Xiao He, sister just wants. Get out! With some force, Zhang He felt another sharp pain. Okay, okay, sister will leave now. There was no choice, Zhang Jiang could only take one last look at Zhang He before choosing to leave. 
When Zhang Jiang reached the door, she lowered her eyes and sighed softly. Could it be that her love could no longer make amends? It's not that love cannot make amends, love is like a rubber band, the deeper the hurt, the longer the band stretches, the tighter it becomes. When the hurt is too deep, this stretched rubber band will eventually break. How can a broken rubber band be repaired, love is the same. Just then, Jiang Zhang's phone rang, and the caller ID showed that it was her agent. But after hesitating for a moment, Jiang Jiang still hung up the phone. On the other end, the agent was getting anxious. My lady, my madam. Why did you hang up the phone? There are voices of insults against Jiang Jiang all over the internet now, and there are even professional paparazzi claiming to have found Jiang Jiang's location and will soon go live to confront her face to face. This is why the agent is so anxious. At this time, Jiang Xian handed the warm water to Jiang He, just about to feed Jiang He some water, but Jiang He took the cup directly. I'll do it myself. Okay, Jiang Xian also realized that it was not quite appropriate for her to do this, after all, Jiang He was Lu Cici's boyfriend. Diara Jiang, it's not early now, you should go back first. Jiang He didn't blame Jiang Xian at all. This was not her fault to begin with. If anyone was to blame, it should be Jiang Bai, who insisted on causing trouble for no reason. Can I stay a little longer? Jiang Xian was truly afraid that something might happen to Jiang He, so she wanted to accompany him a little longer. Jiang He didn't say anything, just nodded, and sent a message to Lu Cixi, letting her know that Jiang Xian was with him, just to reassure that silly girl Lu Cixi. My sister Jiang Bai, she wasn't like this before. There was a hint of sadness in Jiang Xian's tone, but for some reason, everything had changed. When we were young, Jiang Bai always liked to follow me around. Wherever I went, she would follow. Perhaps after suppressing it for too long, Jiang Xian didn't hide anything and poured out all these past events. After the family had a major change, both parents passed away. After that, Jiang Bai became more and more dependent on me to the point of being somewhat pathological. Whenever she saw me getting close to someone else, she would go crazy. Faced with such a major change, most people couldn't accept it. It was at that time that Jiang Bai developed that twisted love for Jiang Xian. But it's also my fault. I was busy managing the company and sorting out the Jiang family, so I let Jiang Bai continue to cause trouble. If I had found out earlier. As she spoke, Jiang Xian was already in tears. Jiang Bai was once her most beloved family member, and the pain of losing a loved one was beyond what ordinary people could imagine. Jiang Xian cried until late at night, and only the light in Jiang He's room was still on in the entire orphanage. Crying uncontrollably, Jiang Xian couldn't hold back anymore and fell asleep at the head of Jiang He's bed. Seeing Jiang Xian with tears still in her eyes, Jiang He sighed. He didn't expect that while Jiang Xian appeared so mature and resilient on the outside, her heart was full of wounds. Perhaps everyone has their own sadness buried deep in their hearts. Jiang He got out of bed and carried Jiang Xian to Lin Ruoli's room. After all, even though they had informed Lu Cixi, it wasn't suitable for the two of them to stay together all night. Lin Ruoli didn't say anything, just woke up with sleepy eyes, showing a bit of morning grumpiness. Until the next morning, Jiang Xian suddenly woke up from her bed. And what shocked her was that her coat seemed to be missing. In an instant, Jiang Xian's brain crashed. Could it be that last night, Jiang He did something to her? It had to be said that sometimes Jiang Xian's imagination was quite wild. But at this moment, Jiang Xian was still comforting herself, after all, Jiang He was not that kind of person in her heart. I must have been overthinking, I must have. Saying that, Jiang Xian cautiously reached out with her hand, praying in her heart continuously, praying not to encounter anyone. However, the warm touch that followed made her tremble all over, her blood running cold. Jiang He, how could you? Jiang Xian covered her face, feeling a bit overwhelmed now. And at this moment, Jiang He, who was about to wake Jiang Xian up, stood outside the door hearing someone calling his name, instantly filled with confusion. Jiang He, how can you do this? Are you being fair to me? Are you being fair to Cici? I really misjudged you. But the next moment, Jiang He appeared in front of Jiang Xian, 
and directly asked, Uh, Dr. Jiang, did I do something to upset you and Cece? Jung he was truly puzzled. Had he lost his memory? Or was there a misunderstanding? At this moment, Jung Xian was also dumbfounded. You are Jung He, and the one on the bed is. Suddenly, Lin Ruoli on the bed also let out a sob, obviously being awakened. Hmm. So tired. Lin Ruoli rubbed her eyes and sat up from the bed. Good morning, Dr. Jiang, and brother Jung He. Seeing that the person next to her was Lin Ruoli, Zhang Xian's pretty face involuntarily turned red. She had just thought that Zhang He had done that kind of thing to her. Good morning. I. I have to go to school first. Zhang Xian quickly put on her clothes and ran out of the orphanage's gate. What's wrong with Dr. Zhang? Zhang He also felt helpless. Why was everything he said so confusing? But Jiang He didn't think much about it, thinking it was related to Jiang Bai's matter, causing a great impact on Jiang Xian. If Jiang He knew what Jiang Xian had just thought, he would probably. At the same time, Li's parents were shocked to see the news of Snakehead Jiang being arrested. Luckily, they had left early, or they would have been in big trouble. At this moment, Li's father remembered that he should call Jiang Li to report. Since Jiang He had been abducted, whoever did it, he couldn't control, as long as Jiang He disappeared. Hello? Is this Xiao Li? At the same time, at the Jiang family, Jiang Li, who was having dinner with his parents, was startled by the sudden phone call. Jiang Li glanced at the caller ID and frowned. Damn, didn't I tell these two idiots not to call unless absolutely necessary? Seeing Jiang Li hesitating to answer the phone, Lu Ru reminded him. Xiao Li, answer the phone. With these words, Zhang Li couldn't help but feel nervous when he looked at the two people in front of him. But in order not to let Zhang Qin and Lu Ru notice anything wrong, Zhang Li finally answered the phone. As soon as the call connected, a middle-aged man's voice came from the other end. Hello? Is this Xiao Li? The task you mentioned earlier has. Enough. I already know. Jiang Li hung up the phone directly. After the call was hung up, Li's father almost cursed out loud. This kid really doesn't treat him as his father. And he hasn't asked for more money yet. After hanging up the phone, Jiang Li breathed a sigh of relief. What's wrong, Xiao Li? Did something happen? You look pale. Lu Ru not only didn't suspect Jiang Li, but even cared for him by bringing a cup of freshly heated milk. If Lu Ru knew that the call from this little brat just now was to deal with her own son, what would she think? The foster son wants to get rid of the biological son, yet the mother is still caring for the foster son. It's really ironic. At the same time, two paparazzi, one responsible for filming and the other for explaining, were quietly approaching the location where Jiang and Jiang were. Brother, is it not good for us to do this? The chubby paparazzo carrying the camera looked a bit scared as they approached their destination. The skinny paparazzo in charge of explaining just kicked him hard. What nonsense are you talking about? What do you mean by not good? Is it about money? Is it about views? The skinny paparazzo really wanted to see what was inside the chubby one's head. What are we? The skinny paparazzo asked the chubby one like that. Paparazzi? As soon as he said that, the skinny paparazzo rushed at him. You even know we are paparazzi. After the fight, the skinny paparazzo calmed down a bit. Alright, start the live broadcast. With that, the skinny paparazzo put on a black mask. Doing their job, the most taboo thing is to show their faces, after all, if those crazy fans of celebrities see their true faces, they will definitely be doxxed. At that time, not to mention work, they would have to wrap themselves up tightly when going out. And Zhang Zhang's agent also found out about Zhang Zhang's whereabouts in the upcoming live broadcast news, but no matter how many times the agent called Zhang Zhang, Zhang Zhang didn't answer. What on earth are you thinking, my goodness? With a bang, the agent's office was suddenly pushed open. And the person who came in was the head of Seven Star Entertainment, who was already very dissatisfied with Zhang Zhang. Previously, he was wary of the Zhang family behind Zhang Jiang, and Zhang Jiang did have real power, so he couldn't say anything. 
Regarding Jiang Jiang's behavior, he basically turned a blind eye. But now, Jiang Jiang couldn't be reached directly. How could he bear it? As Jiang Jiang's agent, Lu Yan, you must give me a reasonable explanation today, otherwise, don't blame me for not recognizing you. With these words, the other agents and colleagues around Lu lowered their heads and whispered to each other. Serves her right. This kind of person should have been fired long ago. Yeah, yeah, if it weren't for leaning on Zhang Zhang, how could this person climb to the position of a gold medal agent? Now still thinking about saving Zhang Zhang, what a joke, based on her. Is she even worthy? After all, when Lu was chosen by Zhang Zhang, how many people envied her? Zhang Jiang had real power and background, as long as you followed her, it was basically a win. But this opportunity was actually taken by Lu Yen, a newcomer. How could these old hands not envy, not be jealous? But now, Zhang Jiang dug her own grave, so they couldn't blame them. They wanted to see Lu Yen, this despicable person, fall from a high place into the mud, and then be ruthlessly trampled on by them. This is human nature, when you are doing well, they will flatter and please you, but once you fall, sorry, they will quickly draw a line and then kick you a few times, so you can't get up. Listening to the discussions around her, as Zhang Zhang's agent, Lu Yen could only sigh and prepare for a final struggle. After all, she could survive here because of Zhang Zhang's help. If Zhang Zhang really fell, she wouldn't need to stay here. Boss, I believe Zhang Jiang wouldn't disappear for no reason, there must be a reason behind this. With these words, the boss also snorted coldly. Fine, as long as Zhang Zhang's online reputation turns around this time, I won't pursue it anymore, and I will do my best to support Zhang Jiang. But if not, you can get ready to leave. After that, the boss turned and left directly, slamming the door heavily. In an instant, countless sneers, insults, and all kinds of unbearable voices flooded into Lu Yan's ears. That's how people are, Lu Yan comforted herself on the surface that everything was fine, but in her heart. Back at her desk, all kinds of unbearable voices continued to assault Lu Yan's eardrums. Looking at the photo of herself and Zhang Zhang on the desk, Lu Yan gently wiped it. If it weren't for Zhang Zhang back then, she would still be bullied by this group of seniors all day long. Regardless of Zhang Zhang's outcome, she accepted it. Even if she had to be expelled from the company, she had no regrets. And all of this, Zhang Jiang naturally had no idea, she didn't even know that she was about to be broadcast live. Right now, she was cooking for the children who would be coming back from school at noon. Because most elementary schools do not provide lunch, Zhang Jiang would have to personally pick up those children later. Fortunately, the government's welfare primary school is not far from the orphanage, so it's not too difficult. But before Jiang Jiang came, these things were all done by the orphanage director alone, or sometimes Jiang he would come to help when he was on vacation, but that was a minority. It has to be said that Jiang Jiang's work has been getting better and better recently. From not washing rice when cooking at the beginning, to being proficient now, Jiang Jiang has completely transformed from a young lady to a qualified caregiver. However, the orphanage director also realized that Zhang Jiang did not belong to the orphanage, so she never forced Zhang Jiang to do anything. Because she knew that Zhang Jiang would understand one day, and when that time comes, there will be a broader world waiting for Zhang Jiang. Director Grandma, I'm going to pick up the children. Little did Zhang Jiang know that the moment she stepped out, a camera was aimed at her. In an instant, when Zhang Jiang appeared in the live broadcast room, the number of online viewers skyrocketed exponentially. It was a real surge, even the fat and thin dog brothers were taken aback. In less than a moment, it had already surpassed 50,000. You should know that being able to reach 50,000 online viewers in just 5 minutes, even those big anchors with millions of fans can't do that. And this number is still rising. 100,000. Hurry up and catch up. The thin dog brother was about to take off in excitement, this time he was really going to be popular. Actually, this phenomenon was not very surprising. After all, the incident of Zhang Zhang not attending the press conference caused quite a stir, even dominating the top three hot searches for several days in a row. A hot favorite to be named the best actress, actually absent from the most important press conference. Even if Zhang Jiang is talented, even if she juggles movies and music, she can't withstand the criticism of netizens. 
At the same time, the name Zhang Zhan once again shot up to the top of the hot search list after a few days. This undoubtedly added fuel to the fire for this live broadcast. In an instant, the live broadcast room featuring Zhang Zhang was directly recommended on the front pages of major websites. As soon as users clicked in, the first thing they saw was definitely Zhang Jiang. 5. 500,000. The fat dog brother's hands were trembling, 500,000 online viewers. The views even surpassed 3 million. You should know that it hadn't even been 10 minutes, and probably even those super big anchors couldn't achieve that. Of course, all of this was also related to Zhang Zhang's fanbase, after all, Zhang Jiang is a big star herself. And once the people in the live broadcast room increased, all kinds of comments started pouring in. Isn't this the same Zhang Jiang who dared to play big at the press conference and stood people up? She dares to show up now. What do you mean by playing big? She already explained that she had important matters and couldn't make it. But soon, this netizen was. I didn't expect this kind of celebrity to have brainless fans, it's really hilarious. Still defending her? Have you no shame? Exactly, a scandalous artist like Zhang Jiang, what important matters could she have? Probably off playing with her sugar daddy. Brainless fans. Get lost right now. Many fans who spoke up for Zhang Zhang were subjected to varying degrees of attacks. Actually, these netizens were not entirely wrong, Zhang Jiang did intentionally not show up. But it wasn't about playing big, it was about not caring anymore. In other words, she no longer cared about being named the best actress, she only cared now if Jiang he could forgive her, if Jiang he could call her sister again. Hmm, where is this Jiang Jiang going? In fact, the thin dog brother was also a bit puzzled. Normally, a big star like Zhang Zhang wouldn't live in such a remote suburb, even if it was a villa in the city center, she could afford it, keep up. The number of people in the live broadcast room is still increasing, and it looks like it's about to break through a million people. But compared to the noise and excitement online, Zhang Jiang here seems unusually calm. Stripped of the gorgeous attire, Zhang Jiang appears even more naturally elegant, and even those black fans who insult her can't help but marvel at her looks. What is this Zhang Zhang up to? What is she doing at the school gate? Oh my god. Could it be an illegitimate child? Could it be? As soon as these words were spoken, the barrage in the live broadcast room skyrocketed. Zhang Zhang picking up her illegitimate child from school became a hot search, firmly topping the charts, which further boosted the popularity of the live broadcast room. After all, gossiping is human nature. At the Seven Star Entertainment headquarters, the managers who mocked and wished Lu Yen dead were also watching the live broadcast, occasionally making sarcastic remarks. She's coming out, she's coming out. Suddenly, a little girl rushed to Zhang Zhang's side. This scene almost crashed the live broadcast room. The barrage covered the screen so the audience couldn't see the picture. And then, an even more explosive scene unfolded, another child came to Zhang Zhang's side. Two illegitimate children. Until the third child appeared, all the viewers in the live broadcast room were dumbfounded. How, how, how can Zhang Jiang give birth to so many children? But then, several more children came to Zhang Zhang's side. It was only then that the people in the live broadcast room reacted. Could it be that these children? It seems like Zhang Zhang's starting point was a suburban orphanage. So all this time, Zhang Jiang was actually. In an instant, the barrage in the live broadcast room fell into a blank gap. Even the netizens who were typing to insult Zhang Jiang stopped their keyboards. Even the paparazzi, fat and thin, were momentarily stunned in place. Over the years, they had secretly photographed many celebrities. But regardless of size, those celebrities always looked ridiculous in their lenses. This led many people to subconsciously believe that celebrities should indulge in luxury and break the law. And indeed, that was the case. But the Zhang Jiang in front of them, treating these children with such sincerity and gentleness. It sent a shiver down their spines, and the netizens in the live broadcast room shivered too. Stay close to sister, don't run around. Careful Jiang Jiang confirmed each child, and she found that after this period of living, she had become more patient, more able to calm down, and understand everyone around her. 
Sister Jiang Jiang, did you make lunch today? With these words, Jiang Jiang pursed her lips. What are you talking about? Sister's culinary skills have greatly improved recently, absolutely no problem. It wasn't until Jiang Jiang gradually led the children away that the fat and thin paparazzi realized and quickly caught up. When Jiang Jiang brought the children back to the orphanage's gate, the thin paparazzi directly closed the live broadcast. Brother! The fat paparazzi looked surprised at the man next to him. You know, this man is a figure who spares no effort for traffic. He even sneaked onto a cruise ship for a celebrity scandal, and in that situation, any small mistake could have been fatal. But now, he actually directly shut down the live broadcast. All right, let's go back. The thin paparazzi kicked the fat paparazzi and walked away. To be honest, Zhang Zhang really shocked him. Since he started in this industry, he had seen too much dirt, really too much. Even once made him lose himself, thinking since everyone is like this, why should he stick to his bottom line? But now it seems. There is a way for thieves, and paparazzi also have their own sense of morality. Zhang Zhang was completely unaware of this matter. At the same time, the heat of this matter did not stop because of the closure of the live broadcast. Zhang Zhang's reputation instantly reversed. Of course, Zhang Zhang was still completely unaware of this, only Zhang Zhang's agent Lu Yan, sitting at the desk, was already in tears. It wasn't until the afternoon that Zhang Yi brought Lu Cici to the noodle shop. It's just that he doesn't know what's going on with Zhang Xin today, he actually refuses to say a word to him. That's because of what happened in the morning. Zhang Xin really thought that Zhang Yi had done something to her before, so now she doesn't know how to face Zhang Yi. How did today's cooperation go? Zhang Yi looked at Zhou Ruoyun in front of him, full of worries, and knew that today's cooperation might not be smooth. I'm sorry. We, we succeeded. In an instant, Zhou Ruoyun was also jumping and crying with excitement while holding Lu Cici, Cici, Mr. Zhang Yi, thank you so much. Wah! Wow. She was really so scared, if this cooperation failed, her shop might really be taken over by the bank. But fortunately, everything went very smoothly, just the revenue for one day exceeded 10,000. You know, this is just the beginning. All right, all right, isn't this something to be happy about? Miss Zhou, don't cry. Lu Cici also comforted Zhou Ruoyun softly in her arms, it was clear that this little girl had been exhausted recently. Mm, I won't cry. Zhou Ruoyun wiped her tears and quickly recovered, she would work harder to redeem the noodle shop from the bank as soon as possible. By then, the one million deposit could also be retrieved from the gym. But what Jiang Yi didn't know was that not far away, Jiang Huan was quietly watching him. She had originally planned to help Jiang Yi when he failed, after all, in her eyes, a small noodle shop, and Jiang Yi was just a student, how could he achieve results so easily? But now it seems she was wrong. Xiao He, how can you forgive sister? Zhang Huang fell into a long period of confusion, perhaps only by driving away Zhang Li, could. What are you doing? Why is Jiang He still here? Zhang Li hid in the bathroom of his own room, questioning Li Fu on the opposite side in a low voice. He had specially gone to Zhang He's school today just to see if Zhang He had really disappeared. But unexpectedly, this Zhang He actually appeared intact in front of him. I'll give you 1,500,000, is this how you do things? I'll give you three more days, if you can't deal with Zhang Yi, don't ever think about taking a penny from me again. With that, Zhang Li angrily hung up the phone. Zhang Yi, why is your luck so tough? Twice in a row, he managed to evade Zhang Yi. Zhang Li could feel that the entire Zhang family was drifting away from him. First it was Zhang Zi's questioning, then Zhang Huan wanted to drive him out, and now even Zhang Zhang didn't come back. Just like the family dinner a few days ago, none of his three sisters showed up. You know, no matter how busy they were before, they would always make time to accompany him, but now? Damn Jiang He. Don't make me take action myself. If it weren't for Jiang He, how could the Jiang family have ended up like this? It's all Jiang He's fault. A parasite, hating its original owner instead, is really shameless. Meanwhile, Jiang Zi, who has left the Jiang family, carrying her own drawing board, embarked on a journey that belonged to her alone. In these days, she met many interesting people and heard many interesting stories. 
The most impressive to her were a pair of siblings in Dali. The siblings were from a reconstituted family, but their parents both passed away in an accident. Every time she painted on the stone bridge in Dali, the sister would always sit on a nearby stone pillar, quietly watching her. Sometimes, it would last for an entire afternoon. Zhang Zi didn't pay much attention at first, until his brother appeared. The young boy looked about 11 or 12, with a sunny exterior but dragging a crippled right leg, even needing a cane to walk alone. What time is it and you're still not going back? Do you want me to starve? The boy's words made Zhang Zi frown involuntarily. The boy's tone was sharp, and his voice was full of impatience. What Zhang Zi didn't expect was that the sister not only showed no anger but instead gently approached to help the boy home. Get lost, do you want me to be laughed at by others if you help me? The boy still showed no gratitude, instead constantly blaming his sister. At this point, Zhang Zi couldn't bear to watch any longer, quietly put down her paintbrush and approached to educate the young boy. However, the sister smiled and waved her hand to refuse. Just as Zhang Zi was puzzled, the sister pointed to the boy's small hand. It was then that Zhang Zi noticed the boy's hand trembling nervously due to anxiety. It was only then that Zhang Zi understood that the boy's actions were probably intended to make his sister dislike him. That way, his sister wouldn't have to carry the burden of him. The sister warmly invited Zhang Zi to her home, and Zhang Zi did not refuse, but the young boy continued his clumsy performance. When Zhang Zi arrived at the sister's so-called home, she was shocked by the scene before her, describing it as having nothing but bare walls. It wasn't until they were home that the boy finally dropped the act, somewhat shyly offering to pour water for Zhang Zi. Big sister, how long will you stay here? The sister asked with her head tilted, her delicate face shining brightly under the dim incandescent light. Probably a few more days. Zhang Zi didn't stay in one place for too long, she wanted to travel far and wide, to see different sceneries, and to pour her soul into every painting she created. Really? Can big sister teach me a little? But the sister suddenly thought of something else, her eyes that were once full of spirit dimmed. I'm sorry, big sister, I have no money, let's forget about it. Zhang Zi just smiled slightly, how could she charge money? However, the boy who had been silent and sitting on the side couldn't hold back anymore, crying and yelling at his sister. Why do you have to control me, sis? You could go to school as long as you leave me, you could fulfill your dreams as long as you leave me, what are you thinking? Watching the boy crying and trembling all over, the sister just comforted him softly. At that moment, time seemed to stand still. On the day Zhang Zi was about to leave Dali, the sister told her own story. Since he calls me sister, I must protect him. That day, Zhang Zi saw the sister's tears for the first time, falling on her delicate cheeks. Time, space, and all things in the world cannot stop love. At that moment, Zhang Zi probably understood what Zhang Yi had been pursuing all along. Goodbye, Dolly, goodbye, Shawit. As time passed, the college entrance examination was approaching. Zhang Yi's ranking had stabilized in the top 10 and sometimes even broke into the top five. Lu Cici's grades were already good, although slightly lower than Zhang He's, she had never fallen out of the top 20. In these days, the Zhang family had not come to harass him again, allowing Zhang He to study and consolidate more peacefully. What Zhang He didn't know was that Zhang Qin and Lu Ru were waiting for the day when the orphanage would be shut down. In their eyes, Zhang He would definitely come to them for help. As for Zhang Huang, in order to numb himself, he buried himself in endless work, often staying out late due to overtime. As the school bell rang, Zhang He subconsciously packed his bag, preparing to go to the infirmary to help Lu Cici. But he suddenly remembered that he didn't need to go anymore. Cici, how about going shopping later? Walking on the street, Zhang He naturally held Lu Cici's hand. Zhang He believed that a balance between work and rest would lead to better learning. Sure. Oh, Zhang Yi, I remember there's a lantern festival today. With these words, Zhang Yi also remembered something. He seemed to have come to this lantern festival with his family a long time ago. But that was all in the past. Meanwhile, Zhang Huang, who was working, received a call from Lu Ru. What's wrong, mom? Is everything okay? Zhang Huang's eyes looked tired, but she dared not stop. 
She was afraid that if she stopped, she would think of Jiang He, of the truth from years ago, of her own weakness. Huang Er, can you accompany Mom to the Lantern Festival today? You haven't been home for so many days, Mom misses you. With these words, Jiang Huang's nose tingled. Indeed, she hadn't been home to the Jiang family for many days. Okay, I understand. Suddenly, Jiang Huang asked Lu Ru on the phone, is Jiang Li going too? In an instant, Lu Ru was stunned. She didn't understand why Jiang Huang asked that. Normally, the whole family would go to the Lantern Festival together. But now, Jiang Zi and Jiang Jiang probably wouldn't come. The only good news was that Jiang Mo had returned from Beijing on vacation, after all, middle school had a much earlier break than high school. Li is also coming, what's wrong? With these words, Jiang Huang wanted to refuse directly, because she found it hard to accept that her beloved brother, even though she later found out he wasn't her real brother, Jiang Li, would do such a thing. But Lu Ru's next words made Jiang Huang swallow her refusal. Mo also came back today, she really wants to see you. At this point, Jiang Huang had no choice but to remain silent. So, the two groups of people set off almost at the same time. Back to Jiang He, holding Lu Cici's hand, slowly walking towards the Lantern Festival venue. The noodle shop had been increasingly busy these days, and Zhou Ruoyun alone was obviously overwhelmed. She had hired a few girls who needed to work and study diligently, and even recruited a delivery person specifically to deliver meals to the gym. It was believed that before long, the bank's debts would be repaid, and even the orphanage would be saved. Zhang He, look at this. Lu Cici squatted in front of a small stall, where various lanterns were displayed, similar to headbands worn by girls, but with added glowing decorations. Many young people around were wearing various styles of lanterns on their heads. Do you like it? Then let's buy one. Zhang He also said with a smile, he really enjoyed this feeling very much, the feeling of being with his beloved, making people intoxicated all the time, reluctant to let go for a moment. In this life and the previous life, the harm and pain that the Jiang family brought to him, at this moment, were diluted. Okay, but Jiang He Gij also has to wear it. With that, Lu Cici put a decoration, a flower-shaped lantern, on Jiang He's head. Oh my, Jiang He Gij looks so cute now. Then, Lu Cici couldn't help but kiss Jiang He's cheek. Although in front of so many people, Lu Cici still felt a bit shy, but it was much better than before. If it were in the past, Lu Cici would have been blushing by now, after all, it's like a love runaway train. Ahem, really? Let me see. Zhang He cleared his throat and took out his phone to look. Um, a bit funny with a touch of frivolity, elegant yet not lacking in style. Well, it's quite ugly, but in Lu Cici's eyes, Zhang Yi is probably the best no matter how he changes. At the same time, the Zhang family also arrived at the Lantern Festival venue. After all, it's an annual large-scale event, describing it as crowded with people is not an exaggeration. Zhang Huang really had no interest in looking around, she remembered how she treated Zhang He at the Lantern Festival years ago. Big sister, what's wrong with you? Zhang Yamo, the fifth sister of the Zhang family, in a plain white dress, reached out her fair little hand and pulled Zhang Huang. Zhang Huang also reacted and quickly wiped away the tears from the corner of her eyes with the back of her hand. It's nothing, big sister's eyes were just stung by the wind. Zhang Yamo didn't say anything, just followed Zhang Huang, walking silently at the back. Big sister, are you thinking about Zhang He Gij? Zhang Yamo didn't spend much time with Zhang He, as the whole Zhang family didn't like Zhang He, she didn't dare to approach him. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. How did you know, little sister? Zhang Huan was a bit surprised for a moment, after all, Zhang Yamo had always been studying in the capital. Zhang Yamo shook her head and said, I know some things from before, and besides, Zhang He Gij has never appeared until now. With that said, there was a period of silence between the two. Actually, I never understood, what did Zhang He Gij do wrong? Jiang. Mo looked at the various colored lanterns around her, she never understood, clearly Jiang He was the one who should have been favored. She just went to school in the capital, and could often return to her parents, feeling the love between family members. But even so, she often felt homesick late at night. While Jiang He had lived alone for 16 years. 
She couldn't imagine how he could endure such a life. I. For a moment, Jiang Huang couldn't say what she wanted to say, it stuck in her throat. She didn't know how to explain to Jiang Mo, or perhaps, she couldn't explain at all. Actually, I'm also very sorry to Jiang Yigij. Jiang Yimou stopped in her tracks and just looked at Jiang Huang like that. She knew Jiang Yi's situation in the Jiang family back then, but because she was timid and afraid of angering Jiang Qin, she chose to remain silent. Big sister, do you think if I had been braver back then, Jiang Yi Gij wouldn't have left? In an instant, Jiang Huang couldn't hold back anymore, tears kept flowing, dropping to the ground without causing any ripples. Yes, if she had been kinder to Jiang Yi back then, even a little bit, would he have chosen to leave? But, in this world, where do such us come from? At the same time, at the center of the Lantern Festival, colorful fireworks burst open, instantly attracting the attention of the majority of tourists. Jiang He and Lu Sisi were no exception. Brother Jiang He, let's go over there. I heard there will be a bonfire at the end. Lu Sisi's face was filled with excitement, and Jiang He naturally had no reason to refuse. In fact, Lu Sisi also had a selfish motive. It is said that couples who hold hands and make wishes together by the bonfire at the Lantern Festival can be together forever. Lu Cici understood that in her situation, she might not be able to be with Jiang Yi forever. But even a moment of happiness would be enough to make her cherish it. When Jiang Yi arrived at the central venue, there was already a long line in front of the booth for drawing numbers. This was another activity where if your number was selected by the officials, you could go on stage to interact and even win a mysterious prize. Jiang He didn't have much hope for this, after all, with so many people on site, the chances of being selected were slim. But since he was with Lu Cici, he decided to participate. Brother Jiang He, what number did you get? Lu Cici opened the small ball in her hand, revealing the number 8, and there were a few candies inside the ball which served as a consolation for those who were not selected. Jiang He also opened the small ball in his hand, revealing the number 75. Let's go, the performance is about to start. Jiang He took a quick glance and then led Lu Cici to the center of the venue. After all, if they arrive late, they might not get a good spot, and they might end up being squeezed to the back, not even able to see anything. As for being selected, Jiang He didn't care. The Jiang family was not far behind Jiang He. It's just that neither side noticed each other. Sister, if Xiao Li is selected, Xiao Li will give you the number. Jiang Li looked at Jiang Huang with a smile in his eyes, wanting to take this opportunity to get closer to Jiang Huang. With these words, Lu Ru also smiled and patted Jiang Li's head, while constantly looking at Jiang Huang's face, hoping for a response from Jiang Huang towards Jiang Li. But Jiang Huang's response poured cold water on Jiang Li, no need, keep it for yourself. Jiang Huang's tone didn't reveal any emotions, and for a moment, Jiang Li couldn't help but tear up. Sister, did I do something wrong? Just tell me, I will change. But this time, Jiang Huang didn't comfort him as Jiang Li had hoped, instead, she didn't say a word and turned to leave the line, wanting to be alone for a while. Jiang Huang. Come back here. Even Jiang Qin's low scolding couldn't make Jiang Huang turn back. I'll go find Big Sister. After saying that, Jiang Yimou also left the line and ran towards Jiang Huang's back. Seeing this, Lu Ru didn't say anything more, just comforting Jiang Li, saying that Jiang Huang might be too busy recently. And Jiang Li, being understanding, nodded. But deep down, he had already grown to hate Jiang Huang, even though Jiang Huang had been very kind to him before. Another reason was that Jiang Huang held a high position in the Jiang family, so he had to try his best to please Jiang Huang now. Jiang Li was thinking that when he took over the company, he would kick Jiang Huang out directly. It's just unknown if his dream would come true. This was also one of the reasons why Jiang Li was trying so hard to get rid of Jiang He. Jiang Huang sat alone on a bench by the roadside, quietly watching the passing crowd, it had been a long time since she had relaxed like this. Big sister, are you okay? Jiang Yimo also ran up to Jiang Huang. Why did you come here? Jiang Huang forced a smile, she just couldn't face Jiang Li, not knowing why Jiang Yimo, this little girl, followed her. I think, but before Jiang Yimo could finish speaking, he froze. Jiang Chong, seeing this, also looked at Jiang Yimo in confusion. 
Jiang. Jiang Higij. It's Jiang Higij. With these words, Jiang Chong was also surprised. Following Jiang Mo's gaze, he indeed saw the figures of Jiang He and Lu Cici. Wait, little sister. Jiang Chong was about to stop Jiang Mo from disturbing Jiang He, but it was already too late. Jiang Mo took small steps and ran to Jiang He's side. Helplessly, Jiang Chong had to follow along. When they reached Jiang He's side, Jiang Mo's eyes were instantly blurred with tears. Honestly, she didn't know how to face Jiang He now. When she was at the Jiang family before, Jiang He had been really good to her, often taking her to various places to play. Once caught by Jiang Qin, Jiang He had taken all the blame alone, even enduring beatings without a word. But what about her? She didn't even have the courage to speak up for Jiang He. Jiang He Gij. Jiang Mo's voice choked up, tears falling continuously. These things were indeed difficult for a middle school student to bear. Jiang He seemed to hear something, turned his head, and looked slightly puzzled. Jiang Mo? Are you on break? Lu Cici also curiously looked at Jiang Mo Jiang He had told her the previous stories, so she naturally knew about Jiang Mo's existence. Yes, yes. Jiang Mo suddenly hugged Jiang He, trembling all over. Jiang He Gij, I'm sorry, Xiao Mo is a coward, really sorry. Memories of her moments with Jiang He kept flashing in Jiang Mo's mind, intensifying her guilt towards him. Seeing the girl on the verge of tears, Jiang He comforted her. It's okay. I've never blamed you, don't cry. That was the truth, Zhang He had never blamed Zhang Mo. After all, she was still young, so it was normal for her not to speak up for him. Really? Zhang He Gij, you really haven't blamed me? Hearing this, Zhang Mo let go of Zhang He, her voice gradually returning to normal without choking up. Of course, when have I ever lied to you? Zhang He said with a smile. Meanwhile, Jiang Chong stood silently watching everything that had just happened. At that moment, Jiang Chong even felt a bit envious of Jiang Mo, envious of Jiang He's attitude towards her. But did she have the right to be envious? Everything that had happened was her own fault. Jiang He Gij, can you come home with Xiao Mo? Jiang Mo looked at Jiang He with teary eyes, not knowing how he had been these days, but it must have been tough. With these words, Everyone fell into silence instantly. Even Jiang Chong nervously looked at Jiang He, feeling a hint of anticipation in her heart. She even began to fantasize that Jiang He would return to the Jiang family because of Jiang Mo. Sorry, Xiao Mo, I won't go back. The Jiang family doesn't need me, and I shouldn't stay there. Jiang He's tone was calm, devoid of the sadness from before. In fact, he had always believed that the Jiang family shouldn't have taken him back giving him hope only to crush it and trample on it in the end. Xiao He. How can the Jiang family not need you? After hearing Jiang He's words, Jiang Chong couldn't hold back anymore and rushed to Jiang He. Xiao He, please come back. The Jiang family really can't be without you. Seeing Jiang Chang's anxious expression, Jiang He didn't react much. What are you saying? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Can't be without him? He clearly remembers the attitude of the Jiang family towards him before, those disdainful looks, and even a feeling of wishing he were dead. But now to say such words, is it ridiculous or not? All right, I'll leave first, take care of Xiaoma. Zhang He did not call Jiang Mo sister again, perhaps he never blamed Zhang Mo, and could also treat Jiang Mo as a friend. But it would only be a friendship, no longer family, this is Zhang He's attitude towards the Jiang family. Seeing Jiang He about to leave, Jiang Mo wanted to say something, but was stopped by Jiang Huang. She understood that no matter what they said now, Jiang He would not turn back. Sisters, why are you here? Jiang Li spoke to Jiang Huang, and Jiang Mo shouted. But the next second, when Jiang Li saw Jiang He's figure, he was also stunned. He never expected to see Jiang He here. Even if he hated Jiang He, he couldn't show it in front of other Jiang family members. Lu Ru wanted to step forward, but was pulled back by Zhang Qin. He was now waiting for the orphanage term to end, for Zhang He to bow to him. Helplessly, Lu Ru could only look at Zhang He with a heart full of pity. Brother Zhang He. Xiaoli misses you so much. 
In an instant, Jiang Li's eyes turned slightly red, seemingly showing true feelings, making people doubt the deep brotherly bond between him and Jiang He. Saying this, Jiang Li wanted to step forward and hug Jiang He. This scared Jiang He. Damn, you disgusting thing, stay away from me. Saying this, Jiang He held Lu Cici's hand and ran, he didn't want to be touched by this crying little animal, bad luck. But today was indeed unlucky, encountering Jiang Mo was bad enough, and now he even encountered other Jiang family members. Brother Jiang He, I just wanted to. But before Jiang Li could finish, Jiang Huang angrily interrupted. Enough! Jiang Li, how long are you going to pretend? With these words, even Jiang He's steps slowed down. Ha! Huh? Jiang Huang was actually getting angry at Jiang Li? Quite rare. Sis, sister, why are you saying this? Jiang Li never expected Jiang Huang to say these things to him in front of so many people. Seeing Jiang Li still unrepentant, Jiang Huang couldn't bear it anymore and directly questioned Jiang Li loudly. Why did you frame Xia He for stealing my necklace back then? In an instant, everyone present showed surprise. And Jiang Li was completely panicked. How could this be possible? How could Jiang Huang know about this? He had done everything flawlessly, even tampering with the surveillance and the nanny, so much time had passed, how could this matter be discovered? But Jiang Qin scolded, Huang Er, that's enough. With these words, Jiang He, who was about to leave, suddenly became interested. Indeed, no one could resist the allure of gossip. Facing Jiang Qin's scolding, Jiang Huang acted as if he hadn't heard at all, still speaking to Jiang Li, Jiang Li, tell me, why did you do this? Jiang Huang's feelings for Jiang Li over the years were genuine, but what did her sincerity bring in return? Sister, I didn't. Jiang Li wanted to make a final struggle, but it was futile. Still trying to argue? The previous nanny, the previous surveillance, do you think no one knew? With these words, Jiang He also looked at Lu Ru, Jiang Qin, and the two of them. It turns out, these two had known the truth of this matter a long time ago. That was really funny. Xiao, Xiao He, Mom just. Lu Ru's face turned pale, wanting to explain something to Jiang He, but she didn't know how to say it. But do you think Jiang He would feel angry about these things? Jiang He didn't care at all. The injuries and unfair treatment he suffered before were much more than this. Do you think Jiang He still cares about these things? He is just an ordinary bystander now. Even though it's his own business. Sister, I. I'm just afraid that if Jiang He comes back, you won't want me anymore. I'm just afraid that you won't love me anymore. Jiang Li also burst into tears in an instant, making people feel sorry for her. Sister, I really know I was wrong, I just love you too much. Then, Jiang Li directly threw herself into Lu Ru's arms, trembling all over. Huang Er, Xiao Li was just confused for a moment, this matter. But before Lu Ru could finish her sentence, Jiang Huang interrupted. Is that it? What about the suffering Xia He went through back then? Should Xia He be wrongly accused? Jiang Huang's eyes were also wet with tears. It was her who punished Jiang He to kneel in the rain all night. And Jiang He knew he was wronged, but because of her words, it ended up like this. Jiang He said that he was being stupid back then and it's not worth worrying about. Mom, it's my fault. Sister, you tell me, as long as you and Jiang He are willing to forgive me, I'm willing to do anything. It's that familiar taste again. Fine, then leave the Jiang family. Jiang Huang said directly to Jiang Li. For a moment, the atmosphere quieted down. Jiang Huang. You're not even listening to me now, are you? Jiang Qin couldn't help but be furious, and slapped Jiang Huang across the face. With a crisp sound, everyone present was stunned in place. Jiang Qin, what are you doing? Huang Er, wait for mom. Lu Ru hurriedly followed, she couldn't afford to lose her eldest daughter again. At this moment, Jiang Qin also realized he had been too impulsive, just as he was about to say something, Jiang Huang had already turned and left. I? I just? Jiang Qin was speechless, standing there at a loss. He was just, acting on impulse. After all, he had told Jiang Huang not to bring up this matter again, 
But she wouldn't listen, so he. But Zhang Qin was still the head of the Zhang family, feeling unable to apologize, he could only stand there at a loss. Zhang Yi lost interest in watching the drama unfold after everyone left, and left with Lu Cixi. On the way, Lu Cixi nervously held Zhang Yi's hand, through what had just happened, she roughly understood the situation. Now it seems that the grievances and prejudices Zhang Yi suffered before were far more serious than what Zhang Yi had told her. Zhang Yi, just now. Seeing Lu Cixi's hesitant expression, Zhang Yi smiled. Are you wondering if I'll be upset because of what just happened? With these words, Lu Cixi nodded slightly. From the tightness of her small hand, it was clear that this silly girl was really worried that Zhang Yi would be upset. Actually, I'm used to these things, if it had happened a year ago, I might have felt angry and sad. Zhang Yi waved his hand. But now, I have nothing to do with the Zhang family, I don't care how they see me or treat me. Just like earlier, the previous Zhang Yi might have confronted Zhang Li and accused Zhang Qin and Lu Ru. But now, he's just a quiet bystander. If you don't care, how can you feel sad? Let's go, the show is about to start. Zhang Yi once again held Lu Cixi's hand and walked towards the central venue. I wonder what the mysterious grand prize of this lantern festival is. Lu Cixi was not interested in the mysterious grand prize, she just wanted to make a wish by the bonfire, to fulfill her little selfish desire. At the same time, Zhang Xian, who was just about to get off work, rubbed her sore eyebrows. Just then, an unfamiliar phone call rang. And across from her was Zhang Bai, who had long since returned to the capital. Miss Jiang Bai, are you really going to do this? Aren't you afraid I'll betray you? Lu Mu, dressed in a classic pure white made outfit, looked worried in her originally elegant eyes. Since Jiang Bai returned to the capital, the entire city has been shaken by a commercial earthquake. Those parasites, accomplices, were quickly eliminated by Jiang Bai's extremely ruthless methods. Now the whole city is spreading the fearsome reputation of Jiang Bai, those jackals and tigers who wanted a piece of the Jiang family's cake now realize the madness they have provoked. But now, Jiang Bai actually wants to hand over the entire Jiang family to Lu Mu, a maid, to manage on her behalf. If this were to be known, no one would believe it. After all, the Jiang family now is on a higher level, already showing signs of competing with the capital's family clans. You won't. Zhang Bai not only believed in Lu Mu's abilities, but also in her own methods. Even if Lu Mu's vision was clouded by power, she had the ability to take back what belonged to her. But the most important thing is that she understands that without Jiang Xian, the Jiang family has no meaning for her. So what she has to do now is to obtain Jiang Xian's forgiveness at all costs, even if it means risking the entire Jiang family. Seeing Jiang Bai's determination, Lu Mu could only sigh softly and then pick up the phone she was dialing. Zhang Xian also picked up her phone at this time. Hello? What's up? Zhang Xian was also a bit puzzled at this point. Even at this late hour, even if it was a scam call, who would be looking for her? Could it be Zhang Yi? As this thought crossed her mind, Zhang Xian quickly shook her head. She now realized that she was increasingly unable to forget Jiang He, and would even think of him from time to time. Even though Jiang He had not appeared in her clinic these days, suddenly, a terrible thought formed in her mind. She couldn't possibly. It's impossible. There is a six-year age difference between them, and she is not someone who likes younger partners. It must be that she hasn't been resting well lately, it must be. Miss Jiang Xian, do you remember me? When the voice came from the other side, Jiang Xian was slightly stunned. Lu Mu? Lu Mu? Why are you calling me? Jiang Xian remembered that Lu Mu was Jiang Bai's person, could it be Jiang Bai's instructions? But Jiang Bai's previous actions had already disappointed her completely, she would never forgive Jiang Bai. Can you call me? Lu Mu too? Lu Mu on the other side changed her elegant tone to become extremely arrogant. What do you mean? Jiang Xian frowned slightly, sensing something was wrong. Even if she had fallen out with Jiang Bai, she was still the young lady of the Jiang family. When did it become Lu Mu's place to meddle? What do I mean? Ha, Jiang Xian, listen carefully, now I am the master of the Jiang family. 
Lu Mu's voice was full of disdain, showing extreme contempt for Jiang Xian, even with a hint of hatred. Your useless sister has already been kicked out of the Jiang family by me, guess where she is wandering now? With these words, Jiang Xian stood up abruptly, she never expected that Jiang Bai would be. Jiang Xian did not doubt Lu Mu's words, because Lu Mu had no reason to lie to her, or rather, if Lu Mu did not have power, she would not dare to speak to her like this. Lu Mu, when you were homeless back then, who took you in? Has your conscience been eaten by dogs? Jiang Xian's tone was stern and every word was sharp. She clearly remembered that Jiang Bai had brought Lu Mu home when she was wandering alone outside. Over the years, Jiang Bai had never mistreated this little wretch, but she never expected this little wretch to. Conscience? Why don't you think about your useless sister now, whether she can accept the fact that she was kicked out of the Jiang family? Oh, by the way, there have been quite a few people jumping off buildings recently, guess who, ha ha ha. After speaking, Lu Mu hung up the phone directly, taking a deep breath at the same time. Looking at where Jiang Bai had been standing, Jiang Xian fell into a daze. You! Hearing the sound of the call being hung up on the other end, Jiang Xian slammed her phone hard on the table. But in an instant, Jiang Xian thought of Jiang Bai again, and her heart suddenly raced. Jiang Bai was such a proud person. Even though Jiang Xian couldn't forgive Jiang Bai at the moment, Jiang Bai was still her only relative in this world. Her love for Jiang Bai had always been genuine. Jiang Bai, you idiot, please don't do anything stupid. With that, Jiang Xian tremblingly picked up the phone in her hand and dialed the number that had long been blocked. In just over 10 seconds, Jiang Xian felt like she had lived through centuries. But fortunately, the call went through. Jiang Bai, where are you? What are you doing? Jiang Xian just connected the call and bombarded Jiang Bai with questions. But what made Jiang Xian even more anxious was that Jiang Bai hadn't said a word until now. And Jiang Xian could hear the strong wind on the other end of the phone. Could it be? Jiang Xian's guess was correct. Jiang Bai was indeed standing on the rooftop, without any protective measures. Jiang Bai had one more thing hidden from Lu Mu. That is, if Jiang Xian couldn't forgive her, she would jump from here. After losing Jiang Xian, her world had turned gray, and now, anyone who could threaten Jiang Xian's existence had been eliminated by her. If Jiang Xian really couldn't forgive her at all, then she had no reason to live. Jiang Xian, why are you calling me? With these words, Jiang Xian's heart turned cold halfway. She knew that this was the first time Jiang Bai hadn't called her sister. I know. I'm just a stray dog now, Jiang Xian, you must look down on me, right? Jiang Bai laughed self-deprecatingly a few times, accompanied by the howling wind, sounding so desolate. What nonsense are you talking about? Come down right now. Do you hear me? Jiang Xian slammed the table hard, her tone filled with urgency and anger. Enough! Jiang Xian, I know you hate me, I know it all. Jiang Bai squatted on the rooftop, sobbing, her voice full of sadness and choking. Listening to the shouting on the other end, Jiang Xian fell silent for a moment. Jiang Bai was right, she did hate, hate how Jiang Bai treated her, hate Jiang Bai's sick feelings for her. We'll talk about all this later, can you come down first? Let's talk slowly. Jiang Xian's tone softened, no matter what, Jiang Bai was her only relative, she had lost her parents and couldn't afford to lose her again. But Jiang Bai's emotions did not ease at all because of Jiang Xian's words, but instead became more agitated. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be living in this world. Jiang Xian, as long as I die, you won't hate me anymore, right? Jiang Bai's tone was resolute, which surprised Jiang Xian. Sister, I'm sorry, I will never make you angry again this time. Jiang Bai stood on the rooftop, arms open, facing the strong wind. That's enough. Jiang Bai. Come down. If you jump, I'll. I'll. Jiang Xian took a deep breath and shouted into the phone. I'll jump with you. With these words, Jiang Bai instantly came to her senses. She could die, but her sister couldn't, absolutely not. Seeing no movement from the other side, Jiang Xian finally breathed a sigh of relief. Where are you now? I'll come pick you up. 
With these words, Jiang Bai couldn't hold back anymore, burying her head in her arms and crying uncontrollably. These days, she was really on the verge of collapse, she really couldn't accept a life without Jiang Xian. But making Jiang Xian completely forgive Jiang Bai was probably not that simple. Back at Jiang Yi's side, the show had ended, and next was the drawing segment. The host turned the lottery box on the rotating platform, and after a while, the first numbered ball dropped. As expected, neither he nor Lu Cici were chosen. All right, let's go to the bonfire site. Just as Jiang Yi was about to take Lu Cici away, he noticed a familiar figure. Is that Miss Ruayun? Lu Cici also recognized the lucky audience on stage, wasn't it Zhou Ruayun? At this moment, Zhou Ruayun herself didn't expect to be chosen. Wow, I didn't expect our lucky audience to be such a beauty. Instantly, the applause below became even more enthusiastic, after all, Zhou Ruoyun was indeed very beautiful, and her aura and spirit made people admire her involuntarily. After all, she was very spirited. Since she saw a familiar face, Lu Cici planned to stay until the end, greet Zhou Ruoyun, and then leave, as there was still a long time before the bonfire started. As for Jiang Yi, he naturally had no reason to object. These days, thanks to Zhou Ruoyun, the collaboration between the noodle shop and the gym was successful. Saying hello was no big deal. However, what Jiang Yi didn't know was that he would soon regret his decision. The host, also an elegant lady, approached Zhou Ruoyun and handed her another microphone. Miss Zhou, right? Next, if you answer some questions, you can win a mysterious grand prize. Will you accept? By the way, the value of this grand prize is no less than 100,000. With these words, the cheers from the audience below became even louder, even Jiang Yi was surprised, was the organizer of this lantern festival so generous? Zhou Ruoyun on stage was also surprised, she had only planned to go up and then come down, but she didn't expect the prize this time to be so generous. In order to redeem the noodle shop soon, Zhou Ruoyun decisively accepted. All right, Miss Show, there are a total of five questions, just answer them honestly to pass the challenge. Please listen to the first question. The host then opened the card with the questions. Zhou Ruoyun nodded solemnly, she was determined to win this 100,000. Please answer the first question, Miss Show, do you have someone you like? With these words, the audience below started to stir, even Jiang he was intrigued. In his impression, Zhou Ruoyun didn't seem to have anyone she liked, right? Yes. Zhou Ruoyun blushed, this was the first time she admitted to liking someone. Zhang Yi and Lu Cixi exchanged a glance in the audience. Could it be Zhang Yan? Zhang Yi was the first to voice his question. At the same time, the host on stage also posed the second question. Next question, Miss Zhou, is the person you like here with you? With that said, Zhou Ruoyun shook her head. No, I came alone. Instantly, whispers erupted in the audience once again. Could it be unrequited love? This is too exciting, isn't it? Such a beautiful lady, could she really be experiencing unrequited love? Many people expressed their doubts. If they could be secretly admired by a beauty like Zhou Ruoyun, it's simply unimaginable. All right. Third question, Miss Show, does the person you like know that you like him? I don't know. Zhou Ruoyun suddenly thought of that face with a hint of youthfulness. When she was about to be violated, it was like a light shining into her world. But that light ultimately did not belong to her. Okay, fourth question, if the person you like is standing in front of you right now, would you express your feelings to him? The host also felt a bit sorry for the seemingly strong girl, unrequited love is indeed not easy to bear. No, he doesn't belong to me. Zhou Ruoyun was somewhat relieved, she wouldn't do anything to betray Lu Cici. All right, last question, Miss Zhou, what is the name of the person you like? Instantly, Zhang He and Lu Cici also looked curiously at Zhou Ruoyun on stage. Could it really be that kid Zhang Yin? Zhang Yi joked to Lu Cixi, never expected that Zhang Yan would have a day like this, he would definitely be thrilled when he hears this news later. But Lu Cixi shook her head, as a girl, she was sensitive and could naturally tell from Zhou Ruoyun's usual behavior towards Zhang Yan that Zhou Ruoyun didn't have special feelings for him. Ha! Huh? Not him? Could it be me then? 
Zheng He also joked with a smile. However, the next moment, a name came out of Zhou Ruoyun's mouth. The, the name is Zheng He. After saying this, Zhou Ruoyun seemed to lose all her strength, her whole body felt a bit weak. She felt that at this moment, Zhang He shouldn't be here, which gave her the courage to finally speak out the name buried deep in her heart. After holding it in for so long, saying it out now, Zhou Ruoyun also felt a sense of relief. At the same time, Zhang He in the audience was completely dumbfounded, standing still. He never expected that he would be the subject of gossip again this time. No, what's going on here? Lu Cici also couldn't believe her eyes as she looked at Zhou Ruoyun on stage. Mainly because Zhou Ruoyun's performance was too good, she seemed completely uninterested in Zhang He on the surface. Zhang He, as the person involved, didn't feel a thing, his impression of Zhou Ruoyun was still stuck at very spirited. Zhou Ruoyun's words today really shocked Zhang He. At the same time, Zhou Ruoyun on stage inadvertently caught sight of two familiar figures. When she saw clearly, her mind went blank in an instant. CC. CC? Dumbfounded, truly dumbfounded. Zhou Ruoyun on stage was now blank, how could she not have realized that Lu Cici and Zhang He were actually standing in the audience? What did she just say? Seeing Jiang He about to lead the somewhat bewildered Lu Cici away, Zhou Ruoyun quickly jumped off the stage, wanting to explain to Lu Cici through the crowd. This scene also left the host on stage bewildered. She had never encountered someone who would just run away after answering a question. Miss Zhou, wait. Your prize. But Zhou Ruoyun had no intention to deal with this now, she just wanted to explain things clearly to Lu Cici. Suddenly, there was a wave of sighs from the stage and the audience, what had they witnessed? Seeing this, the host had to inform the backstage staff, luckily they had collected phone numbers when drawing the small balls earlier, they would call Zhou Ruoyun to confirm the location and then send the prize over. However, Zhou Ruoyun was not so lucky. The Lantern Festival venue was crowded with people, even if Zhou Ruoyun tried her best to get close to Lu Cici and Zhang He, it was in vain. Upon reaching the bridge at the Lantern Festival, Zhou Ruoyun finally couldn't hold back anymore, she squatted on the ground and cried out loud. I'm sorry Cici. I'm sorry. But she was just a young woman who had recently graduated from college. Even though she appeared strong on the outside, deep down, she also had a side that longed to be cared. 4. Even though she usually acted tough, like a shrew, it was just a way to protect herself. But she had fallen for someone she absolutely shouldn't have. Jiang He, why? Zhou Ruoyun choked on her words. Why didn't she even have the right to like someone? She didn't even dare to think. Zhou Ruoyun suddenly remembered the scene when Jiang He rushed into the underground casino to save her. It was from that moment on that her strong heart was filled with Jiang He's figure. Jiang He was a light in her life, but like light, she couldn't grasp onto it. Yes, how could someone like me dare to hope for these things? Zhou Ruoyun silently stood up, with two clear tear marks on her face, and then she smiled sadly. Yes, how could a woman like her deserve love? Not only did she have a gambling father, but also a sick sister. Did she even deserve to seek love? It's really laughable. Laughable. Let alone doing something that would betray Lu Cici, even if Jiang He wasn't Lu Cici's boyfriend, how could she, this burden, drag Jiang He down? When a person is very clear headed, they become miserable. Cici, I'm sorry, once I redeem the shop, I will leave here, never to return. Zhou Ruoyan looked at the rippling water surface under the bridge, the wind blowing her hair. Even though she knew she might never forget Jiang He in her life. But who doesn't long to be loved? A crystal tear fell from the bridge, hitting the lake surface and creating small ripples. Those who love but cannot have, will be trapped for a lifetime. At the same time, Jiang Hua, who had been slapped by Jiang Qin, staggered to a taxi and went to the company. She couldn't understand, was the Jiang family's reputation really that important? Lu Ru was also afraid that Jiang Hua might do something drastic, so she immediately took a taxi and told the driver to follow the car in front closely. As for Jiang Li, he had originally wanted to go together, but was rejected by Lu Ru, after all, this matter was caused by Jiang Li. Lu Ru was also afraid that Jiang Li would provoke Jiang Hua. 
And Jiang Li, left behind, tightly clenched his fists, he now wished that Jiang Yi would just die. When Jiang Huo returned to the company, her assistant was also puzzled. General Jiang, why are you back? The next moment, when the female assistant saw the red mark on Jiang Hu's face, she almost exclaimed. What happened to you? I'll go get the medicine for you. But just as the female assistant was about to turn and get the medicine, she was stopped by Jiang Chong. Don't go, stay, and talk with me, okay? Jiang Chong leaned one hand on the desk, the other hand covering his eyes. She didn't want her weak appearance to be seen by others. From that moment just now, she truly understood Jiang He's situation in the Jiang family back then. She understood why Jiang He left with such determination. Why, Xia He clearly did nothing wrong, why can't it be said? Jiang Chong desperately tried to hold back the tears, but it was futile. The warm tears eventually fell down Jiang Chang's cheeks. This scene also made the female assistant sigh softly. In her eyes, Jiang Chong had always been an extremely strong woman, but now, only by truly being by Jiang Chang's side could one feel the intensity of Jiang Chang's sadness. Suddenly, Jiang Chang's phone rang. Jiang Chong was about to hang up, but was drawn in by the caller. It was actually Jiang Jiang. You should know, Jiang Jiang hadn't returned to the Jiang family during this time. Hello? What's wrong, third sister? Jiang Chong quickly adjusted her state, at the same time taking the tissue handed by the assistant to wipe away the tears. She didn't want Jiang Jiang to know her current state. Big sister, you've cried, haven't you? On the other end, Jiang Jiang had only wanted to ask Jiang Chong something, but didn't expect Jiang Chong to be crying. Ah? Uh, no. No. Why would I cry? But Jiang Chang's reddened eyes were truly heart-wrenching. With these words, Jiang Jiang also fell silent for a moment. Jiang Chang's voice was off, how could she not hear it? Big sister, is it because of Xiaohi? Instantly, upon hearing the name Xiaohi, Jiang Chong couldn't hold back anymore, but still tightly bit her lip, not letting herself cry out loud. After hearing no response from the other end, Jiang Jiang also let out a soft sigh. She was no different. Third sister, I'm sorry for Xiaohi, truly sorry. Clearly, she was the big sister, clearly she should have protected her younger brother well. Jiang Chong remembered how she had treated Jiang He before, why did she do that, why did she trample on Jiang He's kindness to her? Thinking about it, Jiang Chong directly slapped herself in the face, the force of it startling the assistant beside her. Just as Jiang Chong was about to continue, the assistant quickly stepped forward to stop her. It's all my fault, it's all my fault. If she hadn't assumed Jiang he was a thief without investigating properly, how could it have turned out like this? If she hadn't favored Jiang Li, how could she have hurt Jiang He's heart so deeply? Enough! What use is it for you to regret now, big sister? Jiang Jiang on the phone was also in tears. Then, Jiang Jiang hung up the phone. Perhaps she already knew what to do next. At this time, Lu Ru also arrived at Jiang Chang's office, seeing Jiang Chong unharmed, she breathed a sigh of relief. Chong'er, it's mom's fault, but mom really can't let go of Xiao Li. Lu Ru came to Jiang Chang's side, holding Jiang Chang's hand, her eyes full of pleading. After all, Jiang Li had been by her side for so many years, even without a blood relationship, she found it hard to let go of this bond. But Jiang Chong stood up directly, shaking off Lu Ru's hand. Then why did you bring Xiaohe back? Jiang Chao looked at Lu Ru like this, she wanted a reasonable explanation. Xiao. Xiao he is my own flesh and blood, how could I bear to see him wandering outside? But before Lu Ru could finish speaking, Jiang Chao interrupted her. Lu Ru, all of this is caused by you. Suddenly, Lu Ru. Was struck as if by lightning, standing frozen in place. Chao. Chower, what are you saying? How could you blame me? Lu Ru was completely flustered, she never expected Jiang Chao to say such things. And Jiang Chao, with red eyes, stared at Lu Ru in front of her, wondering why this woman was still pretending to be clueless. Do you not know how you treated Xiao He? Last year, on Xiao He's first birthday back at the Jiang family, what did you do? You were at the hospital celebrating Jiang Li's birthday, just because Jiang Li had a slight cold. 
Xiaohe waited until late at night, and you still didn't come back, have you forgotten everything? Zhang Chao's voice choked up as she spoke, because she knew she was also the cause of all this. I? I was just too busy and confused, I didn't mean to. And what about this year? Are you too busy and confused this year as well? Zhang Chao said each word slowly, each word seemed to pierce into Lu Ru's heart. Do you think you are not at fault for all this? Shouldn't you be blamed? Listening to Zhang Chao's scolding, Lu Ru was also stunned in place. Because she couldn't explain, or rather, what Zhang Chao said was all true. Xiao He, he wouldn't blame his mother, yes. Xiao He said before. He's not angry, he doesn't blame me. Lu Ru seemed to grasp at a lifeline, she clearly remembered that on Zhang He's birthday, after returning from the hospital, Zhang He wasn't angry. Zhang He said it's okay? Yes, it's okay. Zhang He said it himself. Lu Ru, at this moment, was starting to lose her mind. She didn't want to accept that all these things were caused by her favoritism. Indeed, it confirmed the saying. Biased people never think they are biased. Lu Ru, you are really, ridiculous. Zhang Chao suddenly laughed. But as she laughed, tears fell down for some reason. It turns out that bias is so difficult to shake, and that all this is so helpless. Only by experiencing it once can one feel that deep despair, that sense of powerlessness, enough to crush someone. You clearly know how much Xiao He wishes for you to be there as a mother, to spend a complete birthday with him, you clearly know. But what about you? You just look down on Xiao He. You look down on Xiao He for not receiving a good education since childhood, you look down on Xiao He as a wild child. Zhang Chao's words undoubtedly tore off Lu Ru's last fig leaf. In an instant, Lu Ru's eyes also turned red. I? I just want Xiao He to do better, I didn't. Lu Ru wanted to argue, but was interrupted by Jiang Chao again. Lu Ru, have you ever thought about why Xiao He has been an orphan for 16 years, it's all because of you and Jiang Qin. Have you ever thought about how Xiao He has survived all these years? Jiang Chao became more and more excited as she spoke, even trembling uncontrollably all over. I have thought about it. I am his biological mother, how could I not have thought about it? At this point, Lu Ru could no longer hold on, kneeling on the ground. I really have thought about it. Lu Ru covered her face with both hands, tears soaking her collar. As long as Xiao Yi comes back, I'm willing to do anything, as long as Xiao Yi comes back. Suddenly, Lu Ru stood up as if going mad, staring straight at Zhang Chong. Chonger, don't you know about these things? Aren't you aware of them? With these words, Zhang Chong was also somewhat unfamiliar with the mother in front of her. She didn't expect Lu Ru to use her as a shield. Chonger, don't you want Xiao He to come back? Lu Ru gasped heavily, she was now going crazy, the guilt towards Zhang He and self-blame in her heart had made her mind chaotic. She couldn't accept that she was an inadequate mother, she wanted to atone, she wanted Jiang He's forgiveness. Chonger, as long as the orphanage where Jiang He is located is demolished, he will definitely come back to the Jiang family for help, then we can bring Xiao Yi back, right? With these words, Jiang Chong also couldn't help but whiten her eyes. You, 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 you're crazy. Jiang Chong never expected Lu Ru to do this. But Lu Ru directly reached out and held Jiang Chang's hand, her eyes full of confusion. Mom is not crazy, don't you want Xiao Yi's forgiveness, Chomer? As long as Xiao Yi comes home, there's still a chance. Suddenly, Jiang Chong fell silent. She wanted Jiang He's forgiveness, she was on the verge of going crazy. But Jiang He had always refused to see her, she had no way to atone. I? At this moment, silence said it all. How could the two not know that by doing this, they would surely incur Jiang He's resentment? However, they had no other choice, they could only go all in placing all their bets on the orphanage. Xiao He, believe in your sister, as long as you come home, your sister will treat you a hundred times better, absolutely. Zhang Chong wiped away the tears from the corner of her eyes, she knew she was despicable, even disgusting. But she was pushed to a dead end. Meanwhile, Zhang He brought Lu Cici to the bonfire scene, where the staff were preparing for the final ignition. And everywhere at the scene were couples holding hands, it was like a wholesale scene of dog food. 
At this moment, the two of them were so tacit that they didn't speak. Lu Cixi naturally believed in Zhang He, if Zhang He wanted to do something to her, he would have done it long ago. As for why Zhou Ruoyun fell in love with Jiang He, Lu Cixi could roughly figure it out. After all, it was Jiang He who rushed into the casino alone and rescued Zhou Ruoyun. In such a situation, Zhou Ruoyun, as the victim, was at her most vulnerable, who wouldn't be moved. So, she wouldn't blame Zhou Ruoyun for falling in love with Jiang He. As the countdown ended, the staff threw the fire starter into the prepared pile of firewood. In an instant, the bright and warm firelight reflected on the faces of everyone at the scene. Lu Cixi looked at the burning firelight in front of her, raised her small hand as if trying to grab something. But how could the firelight be caught? Suddenly, a hand warmer than the firelight covered Lu Cixi's small hand. Cixi, you may not be able to grasp this brilliant firelight, but my hand will always be with you. So, Cixi, can you hold my hand tightly? Zhang He came to Lu Cixi's side, smiling. How could he not see the worries and sadness hidden deep in Lu Cixi's heart? Yes, fireworks are fleeting, even the brightest bonfire will eventually burn out. However, passing away does not mean anything, just like this bonfire, at this moment, deeply engraved in the hearts of everyone present, warming everyone. Brother Jiang He. One drop, two drops. Warm tears, under the glow of the fire, fell on Jiang He's hand. Brother Jiang He, I want to be with you forever, really want to. Lu Cixi is not a saint, she cannot help but think about this, she cannot help but fantasize about life with Jiang He. Perhaps their life together won't be grand, without great waves. Perhaps they will argue over small things, and then prepare a gift for each other at night to express apologies. They will have a lovely child, and she will also hope for Jiang He's return at sunset. Everything is so, beautiful. Is that so? Miss Lu Cixi, would you like to make a wish with me under this bonfire? With these words, Jiang He immediately looked at Lu Cixi. Jiang. Brother Jiang He, do you know the legend here? Seeing Lu Cixi's belated silly look, Jiang He couldn't help but slowly move closer. Otherwise? In an instant, Lu Cixi's face blushed, not sure if it was the reflection of the bonfire or for some other reason. She didn't expect that her little selfishness would be noticed by Jiang He from the beginning. Cixi, promise me, okay? Jiang He leaned forward and gently kissed Lu Cixi's forehead. In an instant, countless eyes gathered on the two of them. Lu Cixi's cheeks were even more frighteningly red, as if steam was about to come out of her head. The heart with a congenital defect was also beating wildly for Jiang He at this moment. Promise him. Promise him. The onlookers, also holding hands, loudly cheered for Jiang He. Amidst the cheers of the crowd, Lu Cixi shyly nodded. Jiang He couldn't help it anymore and embraced Lu Cixi. Wow! The scene erupted in enthusiastic applause. However, Jiang He's eyes were already filled with tears, how could he not know? But even if this relationship would eventually come to an end, he wanted Lu Cixi to understand his love. Next, hand in hand, the two made their wishes by the bonfire in front of numerous witnesses. What Jiang He didn't know was that at the last moment, Lu Cixi opened her eyes. She knew about Jiang He's past, knew how much he longed for family. How could she let Jiang He live a lonely life because of her? Brother Jiang He, when Cixi is no longer here, forget about Cixi. This was Lu Cixi's final wish. Truly fortunate, Brother Jiang He is loved by so many people. Thinking about it, Lu Cixi showed a gentle smile, a clear tear silently falling, without a sound. Until the bonfire came to an end, Jiang He took Lu Cixi back. Along the way, their hands never parted. When Jiang He returned to the orphanage, Jiang Jiang was already waiting at the door. Jiang He originally wanted to ignore her, but was stopped by Jiang Jiang's words. Xiao He, sister is leaving here. With these words, Jiang He was stunned, could it be that Jiang Jiang had finally come to her senses? But sister just wants to ask one more question. Jiang Jiang saw Jiang He stop in his tracks, slowly approached, and looked into Jiang He's eyes like that. Um, go ahead and ask, why are you so close? Since Jiang Jiang is leaving, Jiang He naturally cannot keep her, 
But during this time, she must thank Zhang Zhang for her help at the orphanage. If she wants to know something, Zhang He will not hide it. Anyway, Zhang He doesn't care. Xiao He, back then, was it really you who saved me? In an instant, under the moonlight, Zhang Zhang's eyes were particularly serious. Even though she knew in her heart that the boy who saved her back then was Zhang He, she still wanted to hear the answer from Zhang He's mouth. With these words, Zhang He had no choice but to nod. Yes, he did save someone in the river back then, just didn't expect it to be Zhang Zhang. If it wasn't me who saved you, would you still treat me like this? Would you still stay at the orphanage as a caregiver? Zhang He also smiled at Zhang Zhang. Yes, Zhang Zhang was originally the whole Zhang family, the one who hated his existence the most. I? In an instant, Zhang Zhang was stunned by Zhang He's words. Yes, if Zhang He hadn't saved her, she might still think that Zhang Li was her savior and would continue to ignore Zhang He, even hurt him. Don't think too much, I just asked casually, you can leave now. With that, Zhang He turned to go back inside. But the next moment, Zhang He was firmly held by Zhang Zhang's sleeve. Xiao He, sister really doesn't know what to do. At this moment, confusion surged in Zhang Zhang's heart. She also knew how she had treated Zhang He before. Like when the whole Zhang family went on a trip, because Zhang Li fainted, they left Zhang He alone in the same place. In fact, at that time, she knew that Zhang He was left behind. Even Zhang He's phone, she deliberately left it in the car, just to let Zhang He understand that there was no place for him in the Zhang family. But when the police brought Zhang He back to the Zhang family, he didn't suspect anyone. He would rather believe that he had not paid attention himself, rather than believe that his family would treat him like that. 